is touching the truth. POV, I stood before the mirror and stared at my reflection in a daze. Staring straight back at me was a young woman with aquamarine eyes. She has a truly beautiful appearance. I pinched my cheek and pulled as the woman in the mirror did the same. Eventually, I let go and groaned as my face became slightly swollen with redness, contrasting with my soft porcelain skin. I sighed and fiddled with the light blue hair that ran down my shoulders, reaching my waist. Finally, I glanced down at my chest, where there were two large melons that made my shoulders stiff. I poked the melons and they made a strange bouncy noise, this isn't happening. I muttered, and a soft, charming voice left my throat. A slash N, MC's appearance is based on his death. I threw myself onto the bed in the corner of the room and buried my face in the pillows. I screamed and kicked the bed in frustration. After ten minutes of yelling and rolling around, I sat up with a tired expression and observed myself in the mirror. Even with messy hair, I looked good. Now you may be wondering, who am I and why I'm currently having an identity crisis as we speak. In the simplest way possible to say it, I've died. If I said this to a stranger on the streets, I would probably be considered an insane person and be locked away in an asylum. However, despite this absurd claim, I knew I'd died since this wasn't my original body and a body I woke up in. My past name was Akikudo, and I used to be an ordinary Japanese girl. Well, normal wouldn't be the correct word to describe me as a nerd. I never had any friends and people will always avoid me due to my gloomy atmosphere. Dark silky hair that covered my face, I walked with my head lowered and was shunned. Naturally, being ignored everywhere made my self-esteem extremely low and my social level was so horrible that I would be too nervous to even talk to anyone in the first place. Thankfully, even with all these downsides, there was something that made my life enjoyable. UGO, a game of dueling monsters. I love the card game and would spend my entire time dedicated to this game. Chatting on forums, buying cards left and right, building my own deck, and of course, dueling in tournaments. When I duel, I don't have to worry about my social anxiety. It's a game where anyone was accepted, and nobody will question your identity, as long you have cards, you can duel. Now, onto my death, I died in a foolish way. One night, I spent so much time browsing through the UGO forum and tripped on the stairs. The next thing I knew, I woke up here, in a new world and a new body. I know that you're confused about what I mean by a different world, but I'm not lying to you. I really transmigrated into a different world and what specific universe I'm talking about. I sat up and unveiled the curtains beside the bed. I summon Vorus Raider in attack position, and I will attack your feral imp. No, not my feral imp. The child whined as he dropped his cards in defeat. Yep, I have been sent to the UGO world. I smiled wryly and watched two children below my apartment before collapsing back onto my bed, I still couldn't believe it, I'm in the UGO universe. I chuckled in disbelief. I always imagined what would happen if those ice guy troops happened to me in real life. Now that it really happened, I don't know what I should do. No, what am I saying? Since I'm in UGO, it's normal for me to duel, right? The more I thought about it, the more excited I have become. It really sounded amazing, and I sprang onto my two feet with newfound confidence, all right. I will become one of the best duelists in the world. I shouted. Thankfully, there was no one else in my home, or else I would really die of embarrassment. Now that I've set my goals, I first need to gather some information. The name of this current body was called Unisano, and she's a student at Domino High School. Already knowing this much got me excited to the point that I'm dancing with joy. Domino High School. That's where all the main crew was from. However, from what I could gather, I don't have any relationship with the characters, so despite how pretty I was, I'm still an extra. Well, it's okay, not that I really care. Besides my school life, I live alone in this tiny apartment. Yuna's parents supposedly passed away when she was young, so I'm living off of their inheritance. Thankfully, there's still a lot of money left, so I should be fine for a while. With my situation sorted, I need to plan my next move. Well, the first step as a duelist was I need a deck, right? Yuna doesn't seem to own anything related to dueling monsters, so I have to build one from scratch. However, with the current timeline in UGO, it may be difficult. 
host successfully assimilated into body. Starting download. Huh, what was that? My eyes darted around the room when I heard a mechanical voice. 5%, 67%, 100%, installing, suddenly, a bright blue screen appeared before me. I was startled and hurriedly jumped back, but the display seemed to follow me, is this one of those godly systems in those cliches? I wondered. I nervously reached out and waved my hand. My fingers phased through the digitized panel, confirming my suspicion. Accepting this fact, I took a deep breath and calmly observed the screen, name, Unisano 1 title, rookie duelist credit, zero task, 1, inventory, 1, shop, the system seemed more straightforward than I expected. I hovered over the shop button and pressed it. The display shifted, and hundreds of cards were listed in front of my very eyes, sorted by their rank from common to ultra rare. My pupils shone with excitement, and I vigorously scrolled through the list of cards. A slash N. They're ranked like how Master Duel ranks them. The shop also sells things like booster packs and structure decks that make things very alluring. However, apparently, all these items could only be purchased with something called credits, and I noticed that my current credit count was zero. Some cards also cost way too much that I don't even think it's worth it. Well, at least it's there for me to gawk at. I sighed with a heavy heart and exited the shop. Then I pressed the task function, and the display changed once more. Task, 1, make yourself known. Start your dueling career by first making a name for yourself. Reward, 500 credits, 500 credits. I grabs my chin deep in thought. From what I've seen previously, that much should at least get me some common or one rare card. However, the task description was highly vague. Can I do anything as long I could be famous as a duelist? I hummed and finally went to the inventory section. My eyes widened in surprise, and saw the item waiting for me. Duelist Starter Pack, 1x Starter Deck 1x Ultra Rare Ticket 1x Card Box, yes. At least I get something. I hurriedly pressed the Duelist Starter Pack, and I heard the sound of a bell ringing inside my head. I felt something fall onto my lamp, and when I glanced down, it was a small box. I opened the box, and inside was a small deck of UGO cards and beneath was a ticket in rainbow colors with the letters UR printed in the middle. I skimmed through the deck with anticipation, but my face quickly turned into despair, what the hell is this? I yelled angrily and tossed the pile of cards across the room. I collapsed on the ground, how the heck I'm going to duel with these? Alligator sword, armail. An armored zombie. What are these garbage? I screamed. I don't even get a single effect monster. Even with spell and trap cards, they were mediocre at best with things such as reinforcement, wakeaboo, and sparks. At least among the pile of trash, there was a monster reborn, which I'm at least happy with. Calm down, Yuna. Maybe you think of these as rubbish, but it's arguably good in this day and age where Link, XYZ, and Synchro don't exist yet, right? Who am I kidding? I sighed and stared at the floor in a daze. Remembering the ultra-rare ticket on the bed, I reached for it and frowned. On the ticket, it explained that I should tear it and it gifted me a random ultra-rare card. I sighed, even with an ultra-rare, there were still chances that I would get something useless. Well, what's there to lose? I tore the ticket with a heavy heart, and the card I got was. Next day in Domino High, Yuna POV, clack 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 the sound of my heels echoed across the school hallway. I kept my gaze straight and tried my best not to observe the stares of the students I passed. My heart beat loudly, and I felt my back sweat from nervousness. Even now, my anxiety remains, and I can't help but imagine what other people think of me. In the corner of my vision, I noticed all the students purposefully avoiding me, their faces were full of fear and surprise. Yuna, what did you do? I thought with a stiff face. Gathering my courage, I approached a girl who was by herself. She seemed terrified and stared at me with a pale expression. I wanted to say hello, but words won't leave my mouth, when was the last time I actually tried to hold a conversation with someone? Okay, I read online that to first make a good impression you need to smile. Alright, Yuna, you got this. I slowly raised the edge of my lips, H, he. Hey, I stuttered. I'm sorry. She screamed and barged past me. The student then ran off while covering her face. 
I sighed and tightly clenched my fist. I guess that once a loner, always a loner. Third POV, meanwhile in the corridor, the student gasped and hurriedly made way for the beautiful girl walking down the hallway. Yuna Sano, everybody in this school knows her name. Her appearance fits the title of the Ice Princess, a silent person that seemed to hold a domineering presence. Her personality was extremely distant, and she would refuse to interact with anyone. In the past, students would try to talk to her but all they will receive was a stare they said that can create trauma. There were rumors that Yuna was in the mafia or that she was from a powerful family that can easily destroy someone's life. Even if the rumors were false, it didn't help nonetheless. Eventually, people stopped trying and deemed Yuna a cold beauty that could only be observed from afar like a thorny rose. Anyone near her would seem irrelevant as all the focus was on her. However, today seemed to be different as Yuna approached a student, which she had never done. She stopped in front of a young girl, and with her height, she easily loomed over the student. Under everyone's watchful gaze, Yuna's lips twitched and twisted into an arc. It was a horrifying smile that felt like it was reminding you that compared to her, you're nothing. Yuna then said something intelligible, but the students assumed it was something bad as the girl ran off crying. As they watched the leaving figure of Yuna, they sighed tiredly and continued their day. Yuna POV, I groaned and rested my chin on my hands. It seems like I had to be alone in this life as well, around me were empty desks that nobody seemed to want to sit at. Luckily, I chose a window seat so I could at least distract myself from the loneliness. In front of me was laughter as a group of students gathered around a table. There were three boys and one girl playing the game of dual monsters. Their appearance was familiar as they were the people I'd seen on a screen. I particularly stared at the short boy as he explained the rules to his friends. Yugi Moto, the main character of Yu-Gi-Oh and the one that held the Millennium Puzzle. I observed with interest another person that piqued my curiosity, the tall boy sitting across the room. Kaiba Sido, Yugi's rival. Seeing these two here made me realize that I'm in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh, or else I would feel doubt. The class soon began, and everyone returned to their seat. Surprisingly, the desks beside me were filled, but the people sitting there were desperately averting their gazes. I sighed once more, causing people near me to flinch. Am I that scary? The lessons were relatively normal, and I ignored the teacher while focused on my system screen. The ultra-rare card I received yesterday really surprised me. I hovered at the inventory section and read the card for the hundredth time. Name, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Rank, you are. Attack, 2800 Defense, 2800 Description, if this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can target one monster your opponent controls or in their graveyard, banish it, and if you do, this card gains ATK and def equal to the banished monster's original level slash rank X 100. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can target one level 7 or 8 dragon type monsters in the graveyard, except, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, special summon it to your field. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Seeing it made my mood sour. Ultra rare, my ass, wasn't that a rare card? Where's my ultra rare? I still remember what happened last night, and I really felt that I was being played with. Flashback, what is this? Isn't this a rare card? I'm being scammed. Glitch detected within system, the UR ticket's appearance was altered, and in actuality, it's a rare ticket, then apologize. I demand a refund. I screamed. Unfortunately, the user has already utilized the ticket given, WHJTTTTT so I don't even get a refund. WHYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYYY
I sighed as summoning DDLF was already pretty difficult, counting the fact that all my monsters have no effect. I glanced at the young Yugi intently listening to class, seems like I need to get some cards. And I know just the right place. Next day. Yuna POV, I checked the direction on my phone and stared at the small building with anxiety. Kane Game, a store that sold dual monsters cards, and it's also the shop managed by Yugi's grandfather. You may be wondering why I would go somewhere like this. Well, wouldn't you? This was the place where it all started and I will be damned if I don't visit here once in my lifetime. Gathering my minuscule amount of courage, I entered with shaky steps. When I opened the door, the smell of fresh books assaulted my nostrils. I approached the counter where there was an old man with grey hair, wearing a green apron with a dark black cap that covered his messy hair. The man smiled upon my arrival, hello how may I help you? I froze and cautiously stared at the man. His full name was Solomon Mudo, grandfather of Yugi. I wanted to return the greeting but words won't leave my lips. After minutes of standing idly like a weirdo, I pointed at a card on the glass counter. Ah, you're interested in dueling monsters. Grandpa Mudo said with a soft smile. I nodded and he placed the card I pointed on the counter. I gently picked it up and I couldn't describe my excitement. On the picture of the card was a large pot with a smiling face. Pot of Greed. A spell card that allows the user to draw two cards. A card that was banned in Yu-Gi-Oh and deemed one of the most powerful cards in the game. That same card right now was in my hand and it wasn't even banned yet. H, how much? I muttered. That card? Grandpa Mudo repeated, that 65 yen. Each each 65 yen. Was it only that cheap? A slash n, that's around 50 cents, I stared dumbfounded and shyly held up three fingers. Grandpa Mudo smiled and packed the cards in the bag. I then pointed at the other cards and they were apparently just as cheap as Pot of Greed. Graceful Charity. Call of the Haunted. Foolish Burial. Mohahaha they're all mine. I snickered and continuously by those powerful cards. I raised my head and noticed Grandpa Mudo staring at me with a worried expression. No way, did my face show. Kya ITS so embarrassing, hmm, are you sure you want those cards? They're cheap because they aren't that good. Grandpa Mudo explained. Um, what? Did you say that they're not good? Excuse me I think my ears have malfunctioned. He really just said it right. Sensing my doubting gaze, Grandpa Mudo cleared his throat, cards that just send other cards in the graveyard for no reason. I don't really know why they made cards like that. I felt like I'm going to vomit blood. If anyone else in my words hears this they will tell you to switch to a different game because obviously, you don't know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. But right now, the one that's telling me this was none other than the grandfather of the Duel King, which makes my headache even worse. It's. Okay. I mumbled. Grandpa Mudo smiled, well as long as you're happy. I hugged the bag close to my chest and made my way toward the door with fast steps as that was already enough interaction for today. B.A.M. Suddenly, the door to the store was swung open with force. I was knocked to the side as three large men dressed in suits entered. They marched towards the counter and the man in the middle pointed at Grandpa Mudo with scrutiny. Solomon Mudo, you are coming with us. He stated. May I ask what for? Grandpa Mudo responded with a frown. Master Kaiba wished you duel you for your treasured card. They declared. Humph, Grandpa Mudo scoffed, what if I decline? I'm sorry we must insist or else we may have to use force. The man warned as the two bodyguards stepped forward and revealed. Holy sh asterisk t was that a gun. I watched quietly like a mouse hoping that they won't notice me if I don't make a noise. Grandpa Mudo wasn't phased by the weapons and even cursed Kaiba, calling him a naive brat that doesn't understand the real purpose of the game. As I watched this tense scene, I muttered a praise of bravery for Grandpa Mudo as he continued to ramble on and on, not afraid that the guards will actually use the guns on him. Eventually, he agreed and followed the three men. Wait a minute. I remembered now, they're going to meet Kaiba right? This was a major opportunity right before my eyes. Get a hold of yourself Yuna. You can't let this go. Third POV, as the four men went through the door, Solomon stopped as he felt someone grabbing his sleeve. He turned and saw the shy girl pinching his clothes tightly. 
T. Take. With. You. Solomon understood what Yuna was saying and shook his head, no it's dangerous, I obviously couldn't let you get involved. He tried to shake Yuna off but she held on, can fight, Yuna raised her head and stared into Solomon's eyes. Despite the emotionless face, Solomon could see the fierce determination in her eyes that made him want to trust her. You don't have to force yourself. He said with a wry smile. At first, he was surprised by Yuna's unapproachable atmosphere, Solomon realized that she really was just a timid girl so he assumed that she must be terrified. Unbeknownst to him, what Yuna was actually thinking was how much profit she could gain right now. W. Want help? She said with resolve and Solomon eventually agreed. Yuna POV, currently, we're in a black luxurious car and being taken to Kaiba Corp HQ, a multi-millionaire company managed by Sido Kaiba himself. Knowing this information, I always wondered that even if Kaiba was so rich already, why does he need to attend a normal high school? He's pretty much like a loner like me so I don't really understand his choices. But since I'm not a millionaire so I could only judge him on a common sense level. As I was saying, the ride was pretty comfortable in itself and I spent the time organizing my deck through the system while also rechecking the task. During my time at the shop, I concluded that right now was the best moment for me to complete the first task. If I could defeat Kaiba in a duel, it would easily make me known as a strong duelist. Also wouldn't rescuing Grandpa Mudo be a win for me as well? The way I see it, he's going to be so grateful that at the minimum I could get a discount in his store. This was obviously a golden opportunity for me. Why the heck would I ignore this? While I was thinking of my reward when I win, I felt someone tapping my shoulder. It's okay, they won't really hurt us. Grandpa Mudo soothed. Um, I'm not really scared you know. Why would you think I'm terrified? Unfortunately, all I could muster from my mouth was a weak yes, further amplifying the misunderstanding. Me and my speech impediment. We eventually arrived and were ushered out of the vehicle. I stopped before the building and was pretty impressed. Kaiba Corp HQ was a tall skyscraper with two statues of blue eyes white dragon by the entrance. I was impressed by Kaiba's obsession with BEWD but it wasn't explained why other than that it was his main summon in the Egyptian time. But still, this might be too much. As we entered the building, we were guided toward the elevators. The ride was long and uneventful as nobody opened their mouth. When the elevator stopped, we stepped into a large office. The room had a wall made of glass that allowed people to overlook the entire city, at the end of the room was a large desk and there sat a tall young man with brown hair and sharp features. He watched us with narrowed eyes as Grandpa Muto and I approached the desk. Third POV, Sito stared at the two before him, he was satisfied with his subordinate's result of successfully bringing Solomon here but frowned when he glanced at the girl behind the old man. Yuna Sano was someone that always has a mysterious charm floating around her. She gave the reputation of being perfect and elegant while keeping everyone away. But why was she here? What was his relationship with this old man? These unknown variables made Sido feel cautious as he stood up. He eyed Solomon who was watching him calmly, you have something that I want. I told you, boy, I'm not handing that card to you, Solomon replied sternly. I already gave you your chances geezer. Sido growled, this time, I will take it by force, I challenge you to a duel. If I win you will give me that card. He declared while pointing at Solomon, then if I win, I will give you my most valuable card. Very well. I will teach you a lesson on respect. Solomon responded. Good, follow me, old man. Sito scoffed and walked towards the elevator with Solomon following close behind. Wait. A soft voice froze them in their tracks as they turned around. Yuna clenched her fists tightly as she stared at Sito, F, fight me. Sido couldn't believe what he was hearing, fight her. As in a duel, he clicked his teeth, no, I'm busy. S, scared. What did you say? Sido scowled and glared at her. Yuna coldly stared back as Sido subconsciously shivered. He felt that her eyes were piercing into his soul and mocking him simultaneously, how dare you taunt me, do you know who I am? Yes. Want. Fight. Yuna answered and stood her ground. Solomon was surprised watching this exchange, he could sense the confidence extruding from her and thought that Yuna might have something on her sleeve. So what? You have nothing to offer me, Sito replied. 
Yuna grasped her chin and seemed to be deep in thought. Her eyes showed a conflicting emotion before returning to firm determination, H, have a card. Why, you want? Impossible, Sito frowned, there's no card I can't obtain, don't tempt me with lies. And, not lie. Yuna shook her head, why, you can't get. Only one. Sito's eyes widened as he interpreted her word. A card he couldn't get and she has it. Silence dominates the room and they stared at each other. Humph, let's get this over with, Sito gave in to his curiosity as the elevator door opened. Before Yuna could accompany Sito, Solomon stopped her, you shouldn't risk it. He warned. Yuna shook her head, I, want, then take this, Solomon gave Yuna a card and her eyes widened, since it's supposed to be my fight, the least I could do was to give you this card. See, can I? Solomon nodded as they all went in. Ten minutes later. The trio went underground of the Kaiba Crop HQ where a massive stadium awaits them. Yuna and Solomon stared in awe at the complex construction while Sito walks to one side of the field. This is the virtual stadium, I designed it myself and I believe it will make the game more interesting. Sito boasted. He ordered Yuna to press the button on the monitor. She nodded and hesitantly interacted with the computer on the side. Boom the technology activated and together, they were lifted off the ground, since this is my place, we will play by my rules. We will each have 2000 life points and the first one that reaches zero loses. Yuna agreed as she placed her deck in the designated area. Sito smirked, you better be ready, I won't show you any mercy. Yuna closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Her eyes snapped open and her aura changed dramatically. Sito was caught off guard by her change in attitude. Yu-Gi-Oh was her life and she dedicated her entire being to it, she won't let her personal issues get in the way. Her breathing relaxed and she lost her focus to her surroundings. Yuna met eyes with Kaiba and smirked Yuna was ready. It's time to duel, X2. Yuna, 2000 LP, Sito, 2000 LP. Yuna POV, it's time to duel. Kaiba and I shouted in unison. Sito Kaiba, 2000 LP, Yuna Sano, 2000 LP, huh, what's happening? I placed my hand over my chest and felt my beating heart. It's calm. Why am I not scared? Why can I speak normally? I stared ahead as Kaiba played his first card, I summon Hitatsumi Giant. He yelled. Hitatsumi Giant, 1200 attack, 1000 defense, the space between us lit up like a Christmas light as an enormous green cyclops emerged. The monster's pupil dialed on me and roared, and it felt so real as I instinctively covered myself with my arms. Even if I knew it was an illusion, seeing it now still frightened me. I took a deep breath and looked at the monster in amazement. This was what dueling was about. My eyes shined in awe, and my shoulders trembled in excitement. However, Kaiba seemed to take that as a sign of fear as he smirked, it's not over yet. I used the equipped spell invigoration. My Hitatsumi Giant now gains 400 attacks and 200 defenses. Hitatsumi Giant, 1200 and GT, 1600 attack, 1000 and GT, 1200 defense, I will then set a card and my turn. Kaiba announced, and a face down card appeared on the back of the field. I end my turn, let's see how you fare against that. He laughed with arrogance. I drew my card and relaxed my mind. I encouraged myself and cleared my throat. For the first time in years, I yelled at the top of my lungs, full of confidence, first, I use foolish burial and send one of my monsters from my deck to my graveyard. I took my deck and searched for the card I wanted. I smiled as I slid that card into the graveyard. Kaiba, who was watching me, scoffed, have you played before? Why would you waste a monster like that? Humph. I pouted and ignored him as I continued my turn. I will summon Alligator Sword in attack position. I said while a lizard wearing armor appeared on the field. It wields a massive ornamental scimitar and waves the weapon intimidatingly. Alligator Sword, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, next, I will play Banner of Courage, during the battle phase, my monsters will gain 200 or more attacks. I shouted, and a large flag appeared on the side of my field. Now, Alligator Sword, attack Hitsumi Giant. I pointed at Kaiba's monster. Alligator Sword roared and charged toward the Cyclops. The Banner of Courage emitted a strange light, 
engulfing my monster, and the lizard roared as strength entered its body. Alligator Sword, 1500 and GT, 1700 attack, 1200 defense, with newfound power, Alligator swung its sword, and the giant was slashed into pieces. Tisk, Kaiba clicked his teeth as his life points dropped. Sido Kaiba, 2000 LP and GT, 1900 LP, I will also set one card face down and end my turn, I said in a calm tone. Kaiba drew his card, and his smile widened, seems like the match has already ended. I frowned and felt a bad premonition happening, I commend you for coming this far, but it's over. First, I use ancient rules. An old map appeared on the field, ancient rules allows me to summon a level 5 or more monster from my hand. A level 5 or more. Could it be? Noticing my disturbed expression, Kaiba laughed, yes, I showcase to you my trump card, blue eyes white dragon. Goo. A monstrous roar shook the stadium as an enormous dragon manifested out of thin air. The dragon was blue, with two massive wings growing from its back. The creature has sharp claws and rows of sharp teeth, and the dragon's howl bursts my eardrum. Blue eyes white dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, now, blue eyes white dragon, destroy that garbage monster. Kaiba ordered. The dragon soared into the sky and dived down on the alligator sword, instantly killing it. I clicked my teeth and saw my life points draining right before my eyes. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 500 LP, damn, one attack has already taken more than half of my life points. Things were not looking good. Kaiba smirked, now, I will activate Mystical Typhoon to destroy that lousy banner, it's over, I will end you on my next turn. I drew a card with a calm expression, I will set one of my monsters to face down. Then I will set another card, and end my turn. Two cards appeared both face down on my side, and I watched Kaiba, who was grinning so wide that his lips were reaching. His ears, no matter your reputation at school, it seems like you're still mediocre at best, this is goodbye. Third POV, Sido drew his card, and he chuckled with a face full of arrogance, I first summon Lord of D. Lord of D, 1200 attack, 1000 defense, then I use flu of summoning dragons. That allows me to summon two more dragon-type monsters from my hand. Sido announced. Two more dragons. Yuna muttered, so it seems. Yes. I special summon two more blue eyes white dragons. Sido bellowed, be proud to be faced with my full power. Two blue eyes white dragons were summoned, and they roared at Yuna. Together with the third, they truly made a horrifying presence that made her feel that she was going to collapse. Solomon, who was watching on the sidelines, grimaced, would I even win if I was the one up there? He muttered. The old man stared at the young girl facing Sido, and he felt shame. Why would he agree to let her duel? It's my fault. Solomon thought, should have been the one fighting. Grandpa. A young voice yelled. Solomon turned around and saw Yugi and his friends running toward him. They stopped to catch their breath and were relieved to know that he was okay. However, their expression stiffened when they noticed the battle happening right before them. Hey, that's Sinosin, right? Why was she dueling? Joey wondered out loud. Another question was, why is she fighting Kaiba? Yugi added. They were greatly confused, the last person they would expect to play cards was standing right there. The group felt like their reality was shaken, and they turned to Solomon for an explanation. The old man sighed as he retold the story of how he was forced to duel Sido, but Yuna herself stepped up and even bargained her cards to protect him. Everyone felt a tremendous amount of respect for the beautiful girl. They all thought that Yuna was a cold person, but who knew she could be so kind? Unbeknownst to them, her actual reason for battling was to gain profits, but that's something Yuna herself will never admit. Hey, but isn't she losing? T asked, and they all had complicated expressions. Yes, at this rate, she will lose. Yugi answered with a sad tone. They couldn't do anything but watch as Yuna would get destroyed by Sido's monsters. Ha ha ha, seems like more people will witness your defeat. Sido mocked when he noticed the crew, my blue eyes annihilated her with burst stream of destruction. In unison, the three BEWD opened their mouth and fired a white beam. Boom smoke littered the field as everyone waited for the aftermath with bated breath. However, once the smoke settled, 
their eyes widened with shock as Yuna's life points were seemingly unchanged. Before you attack, I activated my trap card, Wakabu. For this turn, I take no battle damage, and monsters cannot be destroyed by battle, Yuna yelled as one of the trap cards she set revealed itself. You only extend your life for one turn, and I will win soon enough. Sido shrugged without a care in the word, I will end my turn for now. Yuna smiled as she drew her card, unfortunately, the one loss will be you. Sido's eyebrows narrowed, stop joking. Can't you see the situation you're in? Yuna merely laughed before staring with confidence, I use Pot of Greed. Which allows me to draw two cards. She added two more cards in her hand before playing another, then I use Graceful Charity. Which allows me to draw three more cards and discard two. End it with the Fruitless Acts. You can draw as many cards as you want, but you will never beat my dragons. Sito declared with pride. Yuna drew three cards, and her eyes shone with relief. She discarded two cards and crossed her arms, you continued to taunt, but unfortunately, you couldn't predict your loss. Ina, I used a spell, which removes one set trap or spell card on the field. Sido frowned as he watched his set card explode into a million pieces. So what? Sido, destroying me the set card is not enough. Yuna ignored him and activated another spell card, I use Monster Reborn. I will special summon a monster from my graveyard. Special summon as many as you want, but no monsters can beat my blue eyes. Sito retorted. However, what if I tell you there is? Yuna said, you have shown me our trump card, but now it's time to show mine. The creature that has been resting in my graveyard all this time. I call upon you. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand boom the ground rumbled as a golden portal appeared. A fast figure burst out of the warp gate and displayed its beauty upon everyone. It was a dragon the same size as the blue eyes with golden armor plating covering its body. Two large wings grew from its back, and steel spikes ran along its body. The monster's red reptilian pupil zoned in on the monsters on Kaiba's side and howled with elegance. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, defense, 2800 defense, so that's the rare card you have been talking about. Kaiba chided, it's useless. Its attack was weaker than my dragon's. That may be true. Yuna smiled wryly, but Felgrand's first effect activated. Once I special summon this monster from the graveyard, I can banish one monster my opponent controls, and then Felgrand will gain attack and defense equal to the banished monster's original level slash rank x 100. I banish one of your blue eyes. What? Sido muttered in shock as he watched one of his blue eyes die right before his very eyes. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3600 attack, 2800 and GT, 3600 defense, now my monster is much stronger than your blue eyes white dragons. Yuna yelled, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack one of his blue eyes. Felgrand roared and vanished in a blink of an eye. The monster bit a blue eyes white dragon in the throat, killing it. Sido Kaiba, 1900 LP and GT, 1300 LP, damn, but it's not enough. I still have one blue eyes left on the field, and you can't possibly destroy it. Oh yes, I can, Yuna responded, Felgrand's second ability activated. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can target one level 7 or 8 dragon type monsters in the graveyard, except, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, special summon it to my field. Yuna, I choose the blue eyes white dragon from my graveyard. Everyone. I see. Solomon smiled, realizing her intention, so that's her plan all along. What do you mean, Grandpa? Yugi asked. Solomon smirked, the blue eyes she summoned was mine. I gave it to her earlier to help her win against Kaiba. The group, Gu. A blue eyes white dragon appeared on Yuna's field. Blue eyes white dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, since it's still my battle phase, I will use my blue eyes to kill yours. But both blue eyes white dragon are both going to die. They have the same attack. Sido yelled. Yuna didn't as she shrugged, and the two blue eyes white dragons killed each other, finally, my last move. I use call by the haunted I've set earlier and revive my blue eyes white dragon. Sido was too shocked even to speak as he understood it was all over. 
Rise my blue eyes and attack king of D. Roar boom, Cito Kaiba, 1300 LP and GT, 0 LP. Yuna POV, as Kaiba's life points dropped to zero, he collapsed onto his knees and dropped the cards in his hand. His face was full of shock and he couldn't accept his defeat. I patted my chest and felt my thumping heart. My breathing was shaking as the adrenaline was still coursing through my body. That battle was unlike any duel I have ever played. Everything felt so real. Was this what it feels like? To be a real duelist? I watched as the virtual monsters slowly disappeared from the field and the device automatically turned off. I was let down from the platform and was immediately confronted by a group of people. Sinosin. I heard them calling my name. When they got closer, my eyes widened, why were the main characters here? I stared dumbfoundedly at Yugi and his friends as strange scenarios played in my head. Oh god, I didn't do anything weird right. I definitely said some cringy things during that duel. Ah, what were those looks you're giving me? Turn away don't stare. Wah, my social life went down the drain right before my very eyes. Oh, wait, that probably died long ago. I never knew you were so good at dueling Sano. Joey praised. Yes, that's right. That's amazing. T added. Tristan, you showed him, Kaiba, all right. It was really an outstanding feat, Yugi said with a smile. Ah, all these praises feel so embarrassing. What were does looks, the smiles, they're too bright. My retina burn. So much positive energy was directed my way it's longer's biggest weakness. I groaned and lower my head so I don't have to see their admiring gazes. I hurriedly barged past them and approached Grandpa Mudo. If I stay with that group any longer I'm going to faint from their outgoing auras. I stopped before the old man and nervously held out the blue eyes white dragon he gave me. Earlier, I was really caught off guard when he handed me that card as it was his prized possession. I would have gladly kept it but my consciousness and my pride in being a UGO player. So with a regretful feeling, I returned the card. At least I should be glad that Kaiba didn't tear it in half or else I would have really gone mad. Grandpa Mudo grinned with pride and he laughed, to think you're such a great duelist. Good work. NN, I averted my gaze and groaned. I muffled a sigh, seems like my anxiety returned and I could barely speak again. Do I really change when I duel? I don't really understand but it's nice to know that I won't be too afraid to say anything during a fight or else I might as well give up my duelist dream right then and there. Grandpa Mudo laughed even louder as he patted my shoulder like a master being proud of their disciple. I felt my face heating up with awkwardness, damn these guys were way too kind. Thankfully, I managed to escape and finally went towards Kaiba, who was still lying there in a daze while muttering something unintelligible. I hesitantly poked him and he flinched. Kaiba glimpsed at me with sunken eyes as I nervously opened my mouth, lost, I said, card. I reminded Kaiba of our wager, he stared at his deck and gulped. It was obvious that he was unwilling to follow through, but knowing his personality, his pride won't allow him to weasel his way out. Kaiba reluctantly gave me his deck and I eagerly skimmed through his cards. He watched anxiously and with every flip of a card, his breathing became tenser. Eventually, I found a card I wanted and presented it to him. He snatched it out of my hand and frowned, you want this? I nodded and he gnashed his teeth, stop fooling around, you would definitely take my blue eyes white dragon, won't you? What were you on about? Didn't I show you the card I wanted? Kaiba didn't seem to believe me and I felt that I'm being treated as an idiot. I shook my head, want. This, Kaiba still seemed doubtful, your jokes aren't funny. I told you I'm not joking. I want this card. Screw your dragons. Just gave it to me. Serious. I said calmly, this card. Kaiba scoffed and tossed the card toward me, and I caught it in midair. He stood up, and his height easily towers over me. Kaiba glared and whispered in a rageful tone, next time, I won't lose. Um okay. Does it kind of sound like you just set up a flag for yourself? Without a word, he left with quick steps. Kaiba must have assumed that I would change my mind and take his blue eyes white dragon so it's best to get his wives out of there. Well, I don't blame him as the BEWD seriously looked very tempting. I read the card in my hand, it was a spell card, 
and the picture of the card showed an image of a woman as she holding a love heart in her hands. On one side, the woman has the appearance of an angel, while on the other was a demon. Name, Change of Heart Description, Select and control one opposing monster, regardless of position, until the end of your turn. My lips slowly formed a smile, another card that was deemed severely overpowered in modern times. This was definitely better than a dragon any day. Suddenly a bell noise rang inside my head and a display appeared before my eyes. Task, 1, complete. Collect reward. I happily accepted and watched eagerly as my credits went up from 0 to 600. Grandpa Mudo appeared beside me and huffed as he watched Kaiba leaving, what card did he give you? Surely he gave you one of his blue eyes white dragon. I shook my head and showed him my new card. Seeing my reward, Grandpa Mudo frowned, that lying brat, does he have no shame? Eh, what are you talking about? This was already as great as the blue eyes white dragon, you know. No. Better. I tried to explain, and thankfully, he seemed to get my point. If you're satisfied, then I won't argue any further. Grandpa Mudo sighed, I still haven't thanked you for what you've done. Next time you visit, you will definitely get some special benefits. My ears twitched, and I held my breath. Woohoohoo yeses. That's what I'm talking about luckily, I made sure not to let my smug face show and bowed. With all matters settled, I returned home thinking I would get some rest but oh boy how wrong I am. A week later. Yuna's POV, I lay on my bed while fiddling with the system. Name, Yuna Sano title, the one who defeated the champion 1 credit, 200 task inventory shop, almost a week has passed since my victory over Kaiba. Things have been relatively quiet. Kaiba has stopped coming to school recently, and when he does come, he ignores me like I'm air. I assumed he wanted to forget about his humiliating loss. It's okay, I get it. It definitely didn't hurt or anything. Also, by beating Kaiba, I wondered what had changed. I'm not sure if Kaiba now would see Yugi as a rival since I basically stole the spotlight. But somehow, I felt like I didn't have to worry too much. They have to cross paths one day, you know, with the ancestral history of dual monsters and everything. So, no matter what I do, it should probably be okay. Anyway, along with Kaiba's defeat, I also gained 600 credits for my system shops. With that amount, I could only get one rare card or three standard cards. The super rare and ultra rare cards were truly expensive, with the super rares costing 1,800 credits while ultra rare cost 5,400 credits, which was three times as much as the super rares. Don't even get me started on the structure decks, as they cost even more. One day, Yuna. Fortunately, the cards I wanted there relatively cheaper, and I decided to use 400 of my credits to purchase two common cards. Two of them were monsters while one was a spell, all related to the Felgrand series. Name, Guardian of Felgrand 1 type, monster, level 4, attack, 500 defense, 500 description, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can equip one level 7 or 8 dragon type monsters from your hand or graveyard to this card. This card gains ATK and def equal to half the ATK and def of the monster equipped to it by this effect. You contribute one monster in this card, then target one level 7 or 8 dragon type monsters in your graveyard, special summon it. Name, Return of the Dragon Lords 3 type, spell description, target one level 7 or 8 dragon monster in your GY, special summon it. If a dragon monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your GY instead. My options were somewhat limited, and these two cards were the best I could get. Thankfully, I still got a lot of extra cards I bought from Grandpa Mudo. After being rewarded, I may or may not have been abusing his discount lately. Well, who wouldn't? It's fine as long we're both happy, right? Thanks to Grandpa Mudo, I was able to get many cards at very cheap prices. They were cards I barely used, but it's best to have them since it would give me alternatives. Also, it's very cheap, so my wallet won't take a dent from the purchases. Ding dong the doorbell to my house echoed loudly, and I sat up from my bed. Strange, who would come to find me at this time? I don't recall hanging out with anyone. Perhaps. I jumped onto my feet and cursed. I sprinted towards the door and swung it open with great force. There it was, an ominous white box resting outside my entrance. 
I gulped and hesitantly picked up the package. I went inside and placed it on the table. I nervously pranced around the room while eyeing the box. Oh God, please don't be what I think it was. I gathered my courage and carefully opened the package. Inside a weird gauntlet, two stars, and a VHS tape. Damn it, I muttered and grabbed the VHS tape. Knowing what awaited me inside this VHS, I didn't really feel like I should play it. Pegasus, that crazy madman. Unfortunately, I don't have a grandpa for his soul to get taken in case I lose, so I think it's best if I don't risk it. I approached the bin and held the tape between my fingers. Task, 2, Impress Maxillion Pegasus during the Shadow Duel. Reward, 3000 credits, I froze and stared at the display that suddenly appeared. Well. 3000 credits sounds really alluring right now. Wait, Yuna, this was a shadow game we're talking about. Your life's important. But with that many credits, just how many good cards can I get? After debating for an hour, I shrugged and excitedly shoved the VHS into a record player I found in my living room. The device began to play, and a man appeared on the screen. He wore a bright red suit with long white hair covering one side of his face. Greetings, my name is Maximilian Pegasus, the president of Industrial Illusions and the creator of Dual Monster. Unisato, I have heard of your recent victory against Sido Kaiba. Pegasus smiled, you intrigued me. Um, alright, thank you, but your looks were giving me creepy vibes. Without knowing my inner thoughts, Pegasus continued to speak, your skill interests me so much that I wish to have a duel with you. How about it? We will play for 15 minutes, and the one with the highest life points in that time wins. He didn't even wait for me to answer, and my surroundings turned dark. I felt an eerie coldness, and time seemed to freeze in place. Welcome to the Shadow Realm. Pegasus announced with pride, do you know the cards we're using are magical? Ho. Oh. You don't seem to be surprised. Pegasus chuckled with amusement. What were you talking about? I'm pretty surprised you know. Can't you see my eyes widening by like three centimeters? No matter, let's have some fun, shall we? He said and drew five cards. Wait. I stopped him before our duel, can prepare. Pegasus was stopped in his tracks, and he burst into laughter, all right, go for it, however, no matter what you do, it won't help. Hold on, what does that supposed to mean? I glanced at his amused smile, and I would do anything to wipe the grin right off his face. I checked through my inventory, and an idea formulated in my mind. Fine, I was going to make a regular deck, but now you really set me off. I will make this duel the most painful one of your life after a few minutes of rebuilding my deck. I took a deep breath, Arf, ready. Humph. Let's begin then. Pegasus scoffed. Duel, X2. Third POV, Unisano, 2000 LP, Maximilian Pegasus, 2000 LP, Pegasus smiled as he made his first move, I will first set one card and a monster both in face down position. Then I will end my turn. Hey, do you want to raise the ante a little? He suddenly asked as Yuna flinched. She stared at the man suspiciously, what are you planning? Pegasus was slightly caught off guard when Yuna spoke in a perfect sentence as she uses broken words earlier. He hummed and tapped his finger on the desk, I'm hosting a tournament and if you lose I wish for you to attend. That's it? Yuna asked. Hearing this, Pegasus frowned, were you expecting more? Yuna shook her head before muttering something that Pegasus couldn't hear. She eventually raised her head and stared, what will happen if I win? Pegasus froze before erupting into laughter, that we will talk about when you win, for now, please play your card. Two minutes have already passed, and he still hasn't seen what she's capable of. Thankfully, Yuna agreed and drew her card. All right, prepare yourself, she warned. Pegasus suddenly felt a shiver down his spine and he twitched. What was that feeling of unease just then? He thought. He dispelled the unnatural feeling and activated his millennium eye. He observed Yuna's current hand and frowned, they're all traps and spells. Where were the monsters? Pegasus smiled wryly and felt disappointed, like others told him, maybe Yuna really won using luck and he was wasting his time. No monsters, what kind of deck did she even build? He deemed that it was useless probing her mind since he assumed Yuna's panicking right now. However, he could be never all wrong. 
I will first set two cards to face down and end my turn. Yuna smiled innocently. Did you really end your turn? Pegasus muttered. Yes. She grinned. Pegasus drew his card and chuckled, acting doesn't work against me, I can see through everything, he boasted, I summon flying elephant in attack position. Flying elephant, 1850 attack, 1300 defense, Pegasus, then I will reveal my set monster, Dark Rabbit. Dark Rabbit, 1100 attack, 1500 defense, my monster will now attack. Pegasus ordered, seems like it will end quicker than I expected. Not so fast. Yuna yelled and flipped one of her set cards, I used Wabaku. All attacks are negated. The two monsters stopped their actions and stood still in a daze. Pegasus clicked his teeth, that trap only saved you momentarily, let us continue then. Yuna smirked and drew her card from her deck, I will reveal my set card. Behold my trap card, Solemn Wish. I will gain 500 LP every time I draw a card. Pegasus's brows furrowed, why would she use a card like that? She has no monsters that could protect herself, even if she does, I can summon a third monster soon so why? Wait. Pegasus's eyes widened and used his Millennium Eye again, his mouth opened and he finally understood her strategy. I use Pot of Greed. Yuna shouted. A large smirking green pot appeared on the field. The pot showed its large tongue as if mocking Pegasus before vanishing. Yuna picked up two cards and smiled. Yuna Sano, 2000 LP and GT, 3000 LP, then I will use Pot of Greed again. Wah! Pegasus muttered as he helplessly watched Yuna draw another two cards. Yuna Sano, 3000 LP and GT, 4000 LP, thankfully, he noticed Yuna have run out of the Pot of Greed in her hand and he sighed with relief. Unfortunately, it was only the beginning. Yuna, I then use Graceful Charity. I can draw three cards while discarding two cards from my hand. Yuna Sano, 4000 LP and GT, 5500 LP, Pegasus watched Agape as Yuna's life points increased to an absurd level. If anyone else should hear about this, they would naturally deem it a myth. Yet that unbelievable event was happening right before his eyes. I will use my final pot of greed. Yuna Sano, 5500 LP and GT, 6500 LP, her hands were filled with cards and Pegasus thought that any second it will all fall down in a pile. Yuna then set one monster card and one spell slash trap card onto the field. Hey, are you finished? Pegasus asked with a strained smile. Nope. Yuna cheerfully replied, I will use card destruction. We each discard all our cards in our hands and draw the same number of cards that we discarded. Pegasus gulped and counted the cards in her hands, 1, 2, 3, 5, t, 10. He counted as he felt a massive headache rising. Even with the Millennium I what could he do to stop this onslaught? Yuna and Pegasus discarded all their cards and draw the same amount. The man stared pitifully at the massive amount of life points. Yuna Sano, 6500 LP and GT, 11500 LP, now I will end my turn. Yuna smiled mischievously, your move. Pegasus stared at Yuna in a daze, he hesitantly picked up a card, I, I use Monster Reborn and I will revive my Ryuran that I discarded back from my graveyard. He said with clenched teeth. A small egg appeared on the field, the shell split open as two legs and arms burst out from the side. A pair of bright yellow eyes peeked through the cracks and the monster growled angrily. Ryuran, 2200 attack, 2600 defense, there's no need for concern, she merely has high health and with only one monster and one set card on the field. I just have to keep dwindling her health and I will succeed. Pegasus smiled and persuaded himself. Then I play negative energy. My dark type monsters will have their attack doubled. Dark Rabbit, 1100 and GT. 2200 attack, 1500 defense, now attack. Pegasus yelled. Hold on. Yuna restored and flipped open her set card, once again I will use Wabaku. Pegasus's monster attacked but they dealt no damage. However, in doing so, they have successfully revealed the face-down monster on Yuna's field and he recoiled in shock. It was a tiny jar made of a strange black metal. The vase tipped over and revealed a large eye and mouth within. 
It giggled and Yuna said in a clear voice, my monster morphing jar's ability has been activated, once flipped, both of us have to discard as many cards from our hands as possible and draw five cards. Pegasus wanted to scream and jump through the TV at this absurd strategy he was witnessing. However, as the one who initiated the duel, he must follow the rules. Thus they discarded all the cards in their hand and redrew five more cards. Unisano, 11,500 LP and GT, 14,000 LP, F, 14,000. Pegasus mumbled. He sighed and ran his hand across his hair, I, I end my turn. Yuna smirked as it was her turn once more. Yuna, 14,000 LP and GT, 14,500 LP, she stared at her card and her smile widened even more. Pegasus scowled and hurriedly checked the card in her hand with his millennium eye. His face turned pale and he dropped the cards in his hand. I will use Sword of Revealing Light. This card will be destroyed automatically during the end phase of your third turn. However, when this card was activated and on the field, all monsters you control won't be able to attack. Dozens of bright swords dropped from above and surrounded Pegasus's monsters, trapping them, I will end my turn. Yuna said. Pegasus clenched his fist, this was the first time he felt this humiliated before. He couldn't do a thing to stop her from completing this absurd strategy and now his only hope for a last-ditched attack was gone as well. He glanced at the timer he settled and only one minute remained. Pegasus angrily glared at the girl before him and dejectedly lowered his arms, I surrender. Yuna POV, I watched as Pegasus surrendered with a hopeless smile and felt a sense of euphoria. Jay, how do you like that honestly, I got insanely lucky with that duel. Not that I relied everything on luck, but only just a little bit. I promise. I planned my deck based on stalling the game as long as possible. It would only work since Pegasus has set a timer on the game. Otherwise, I would have died. My entire deck only consisted of spells and traps while only adding a couple of monsters, just in case. I couldn't describe the panic when I used a risky move and discarded my hand using cards of destruction while holding most of my monsters. It truly felt like a heart of the cards moment when I drew the sword of revealing light and trapped Pegasus entirely, crushing his will to continue. Otherwise, I felt that I would be defeated on the following turns. So take that, ha. Huh? I resumed my celebration while keeping a composed face. However, my shoulders shook at my all-out effort to control my laughter. Pegasus sensed what my feeling as he sighed and pinched the bridge of his nose. Noticing his disturbed mood, I stopped. Wait, I shouldn't be laughing, right? Pegasus still controls the Shadow Realm. He won't change his mind and take my soul, right? Right? I averted my gaze and nervously fiddled my thumbs. Pegasus glanced at me, and I instinctively flinched. It was a cold glare devoid of emotions, and I thought my life was over. But the intense feeling disappeared as he laughed, to think there's a strategy like that. He wiped the tear from his eye, seems like you really beat Kaiba Boy with your skills. Unfortunately, another boy I recently dueled didn't meet my expectation. He muttered. Yuki. I asked to confirm my thoughts. Yes, him. Pegasus repeated, but I hope to see his growth in the future. So Pegasus dueled with Yugi anyway? How does that work? But now, thinking about it more properly, I don't think it's impossible. With how frequently I visited Grandpa Mudo's store, Pegasus will naturally know about him and eventually discover the Millennium Puzzle in his possession. I glimpsed at Pegasus, who was observing me keenly. When I returned my attention to him, he smirked, this time, it was my loss, but I hope you will still come to my tournament. It would be an honor to have you participate. K. I nodded. Despite him being the antagonist, he sure has some humility. Even if I wasn't invited, I still planned to attend somehow. From the anime, the first place prize was like three million dollars. Who in the right might pass a golden opportunity like this? Finally, there's one more thing I wanted to ask you, Pegasus said and held out a paper. The paper passed through my TV screen, which weirded me out, and I hesitantly took it, T, this? It's the rules for my Duelist Kingdom tournament, I want to have someone of your caliber review it for me. E.H. me? Hold on, did our duel bring you enlightenment or something? Why were you putting so much pressure on me? You treated me like a nobody a few minutes ago. Don't get me wrong. 
Pegasus interrupted my thinking and said sternly, I only show respect towards people that deserves it. Hearing being respected by Pegasus himself felt pretty good, and I obediently read through the content. Each player begins the duel with 2000 life points. Direct. Attacking the opponent is not allowed. Only one monster is allowed to declare an attack per turn. Players can summon monsters regardless of their levels 5. If a player fails to summon any monsters during their turn when they didn't control one, they will automatically lose the duel. 6. When a card effect destroys a monster, the card's owner takes damage equal to half of that monster's ATK. What were these stupid rules? I looked at Pegasus with disbelief, but he seemed proud of his creativity, how is it? It's pretty good if I say so myself. However, I shook my head, and his expression immediately turned sour. All these rules sounded so annoying, and I still couldn't accept them as the card game I know and love. There was one that extremely infuriated me that I couldn't accept, no matter what. I pointed at rule number four, bad. Is that so? Care to elaborate? Pegasus said with a frown. To the best of my ability, I tried to explain that it's useless for monsters to have levels if they can be summoned normally. What will be the point if everything comes down to who got luckier on their drawing? But that's the original rule of dual monsters. Are you suggesting that we should change it entirely? Um, what? So you're saying that has always been a thing? I stared at Pegasus with a deadpanned expression and slumped my shoulders, no strategy. Pegasus grasped his chin deep in thought, then I assume you have something in mind. I nodded and began to explain the concept of tributing. I knew this rule was eventually implemented later on during the Battle City arc but it's best to have these rules early. It wasn't giving me an advantage since almost everyone has decks filled with normal monsters. Definitely not. Yep. That's an interesting idea, Pegasus muttered and smiled, you're truly an intriguing person. Very well, let's try it, as you said, it would be more fun. Phew. I wiped the imaginary set from my forehead. At least I could convince him, I still wanted to change all the other rules but as long as I'm careful, I should be fine. Why did I feel like I just set a flag on myself? Anyway, it's unfortunate, that our conversation has to end here. It will be goodbye for now. Pegasus waved as he disappeared and my surroundings returned to normal. I collapsed on the floor tiredly and sighed, thank goodness I survived. I mumbled. However, I immediately sat up, wait didn't I win? Shouldn't I get something? I glared at the TV where Pegasus have already left and screamed, I got scammed agnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnn
With everything ready, I encouraged myself and nervously approached the group. Third POV, as the duelist was waiting to be let in. They all heard a sharp noise of footsteps approaching from behind. Everyone instinctively turned their head and gasped. It was a majestic woman with light blue hair and eyes. She had an appearance of a celebrity, and the people held their breath and watched with awe. However, immediately, they all felt a sense of unease. They stared at her face, it was an extremely beautiful face, but strangely it was exceedingly cold. It felt like her eyes could pierce their souls, and everyone instinctively averted their gaze. The woman pursed her lips. Even that motion was elegant, and people blushed. She continued her steps, and the duelists got out of her way. She approached the bodyguards waiting by the entrance and presented her identification. The men dressed in suits snapped out of their days and hurriedly checked her invitation. Instantly, their eyes widened, Ms. Sano. W. We've been waiting for you. Hearing the flustered voice, everyone tilted their heads in confusion. Sano. If they remember correctly, that's the name of the duelist who defeated Sito. They stared with awe and thought that she had the presence befitting of one that defeated the strongest in Japan. Hey, let me go. Everyone suddenly turned their heads and spotted two officials wrestling with a tall boy with blonde hair. I'm sorry, sir, but you don't have any star chips, so leave. They shouted sternly. The three people resumed their struggle until another boy ran towards them frantically, Joey, what are you doing here? Joey's expression brightened, ah, Yugi, there you are. He's with me. You gotta let him on. Yugi explained. Only people with star chips are allowed to enter, no exceptions. One of the staff explained. Joey does have a star chip. Yugi said and beckoned Joey to hold out his hand. To people's shock, Yugi handed Joey one of his star chips and smiled brightly, see, he has a star chip, so it's okay to let him board the ship. I'm sorry, sir, I'm unsure if we're allowed to do that. The guards replied apologetically. Joey and Yugi clenched their fists with helpless expressions. However, to their shock, an unexpected figure decided to help them. Let. Them, a soft charming voice echoed across the pier. Everyone's eyes zoned in on the girl standing in the middle of the stairs. She gazed at Joey and Yugi with an indifferent expression that they couldn't grasp her thoughts. But, Ms. Sano. It's. Fine. Yuna muttered and went up the stairs. The two guards stared at each other and shrugged. They had been warned to listen to Yuna's request to the best of their abilities unless they want to lose their jobs. The staff let Joey go and proceeded with the boarding. Yuna POV, as I got on the ship and turned around in the corner. I made sure there was no one near me and exhaled with relief. That was way too stressful. Everyone's eyes were on me. I tried to lay a low profile, but they turned their heads anyway. And why Pegasus? You don't know the shock I got when the staff called my name out like that. Also, why the heck did I help Yugi out? It was unnecessary, but I felt that Joey wouldn't be let on if I didn't do it. Ah, they must think I'm an arrogant woman abusing my power I sighed, there's useless worrying about this now and let's check my room. Normal participants would sleep together in the common area, but Pegasus told me I would get my room instead. Wait, Sinosin. I turned around and noticed Yugi and Joey running toward me. Wait, what do you guys want from me now? Please leave. Unfortunately, I couldn't transmit my thoughts to those two, and they approached me with wide smiles. Thanks, Sano. You saved our hides back there. Joey said. Well, maybe don't get caught while sneaking on a high-end cruise next time. Anyway, seems like they're just thanking me, so I will make my leave now. However, I froze when Yugi grabbed my wrist. Eh, you can't just grab me like that. What would people think? Haven't you heard of manners? Yugi immediately let go and rubbed the back of his neck, sorry, don't go yet. I need to give you something. He slipped a card into my hand, and my eyes widened. What's the blue eyes white dragon doing here? What? My mind went blank as Yugi continued to explain, my grandpa got sick, he muttered vaguely, I brought this card with me, and I want to lend it to you since you're the only one that earned his trust in this card. From your skill, I believe that you won't let him down. Hearing his explanation, my mood slightly dampened. After getting to know Grandpa Mudo better, 
it hurt a little that his soul was kidnapped, but despite how harsh it sounds, it's something Yugi has to solve himself. Still, it was really surprising to meet with Blue Eyes White Dragon again. But since it was presented on a silver platter, I will gladly take it. I stored the card away and began to leave. However, I stopped. Taking Blue Eyes White Dragon so free like that made me feel bad. After all, nothing was free. I sighed and hurriedly scrolled through the system store. After picking the correct card, I tossed it at Yugi. He caught the card, and his eyes widened, this is. I didn't respond and used this opportunity to escape. However, I stopped and sighed. I glanced at him from the corner of my eyes and hesitantly opened my mouth, Weevil. Be careful. It took Yugi a few seconds but he seemed to understand my message and nodded. Guessing that's enough for payment, I walked away without turning back. Next day. I woke up with a pleasant feeling and felt light in my steps. The room I was given was truly a luxurious one with a large soft bed, walls with lavish designs, a comfortable sofa, and my own private bathroom. I like to think of this as the apology gift from Pegasus so I will accept it with a sense of bittersweet. As a habit every morning, I opened my system and checked my status, name, Unisano title, the one who defeated the champion credits, 2600 task inventory store, I navigated towards the task option and read the brand new objective I received. Task, 3, earn 10 star chips and safely advance to the next stage of the tournament. Time limit, 48 hours reward, 1000 credits per duelist defeated, hmm, there's a timer for this task. It most likely corresponds to the time limit we were given to reach the duelist castle. The rewards for this task seemed pretty good, 1000 credits for every win. With some calculation, look like I will earn a minimum of 4000 credits. I changed my clothes and opened the door. Instantly, I was confronted by a huge gust of wind and was reminded that we were still at sea. I brushed my hair to the side and stepped out of my room while tightly clutching the handrails. I stared into the distance, where lay a large island. The land was covered by a forest with an enormous flat hill at the center. Above the hill was a medieval castle and the entrance was connected to a long staircase going all the way to the bottom. Knowing our destination was near, I returned to my room and organized my belongings. By the time I finished, we had already arrived, and I walked toward the boarding area. Countless duelists were already waiting but they immediately cleared their path when I appeared. Jeez. I even prepared myself nicely this morning. Was it still not enough? I sighed, causing people beside me to flinch. Hey, I'm not dangerous, you know. The only people that would talk with me were Yugi and his friends. I noticed he and Tristan were amongst the group as I remembered that they must have snuck onto the ship last night. As we left the boat, the staff informed us that we would be climbing the long sets of stairs to reach the castle. The top. I stared at the staircase with a complicated feeling. I never knew that becoming a duelist needed this much physical prowess. Alright, here goes nothing, I thought and begrudgingly took my first step. One hour later. Finally. I survived. I stiffly raised my foot and stepped on the final set of stairs, geez Sano, how aren't you tired yet? I heard Joey complaining from behind. Um excuse me, what do you mean? My legs were killing me you know. Yeah look at her, she's not even breaking a sweat. Tristan exclaimed. But I am. Just because I'm not expressing anything that doesn't mean I'm not tired. Didn't you guys see me drinking a lot of water on our way here? I groaned, it's much more time consuming to solve the misunderstanding so lets them believe what they want to believe. I stopped paying attention to their chattering and focused on the top of the castle. A security guard emerged from the balcony and announced in a gruff tone, Attention, your benevolent host will now be greeting you all. We heard the sound of footsteps approaching from within the castle. A man with white hair and dressed cleanly in a red suit appeared with a smile. Welcome to my duelist kingdom. Pegasus spread his arms and declared, I have invited each and one of you due to your outstanding skills in the game of dueling monsters. However, once this tournament ends, only one can be crowned as the Duel King. He said while crossing his arms. In this competition, new rules will be implemented that would challenge your skill as a duelist like never before. Pegasus seemed to be staring at me with amusement while saying that particular part of the speech. To track your progress in the tournament, you've been each given a dueling glove and two precious star chips. 
You will need to wager your star chips for each duel and one that earned 10 star chips then you will gain permission to enter my castle. Now set forth duelists. You got one hour to prepare yourselves and good luck. This was it, I clenched my fists. Those three million dollars will be mine. A few hours later. Ha, huh, where am I? I checked my surroundings but the only things I could see were trees and nothing else. After the one hour preparation have ended, I decided to travel to the forest on the north side of the island but somehow got myself lost. Yugi and his friends have asked for me to follow but that's not a very good idea. There were already two duelists among the group and they have to find a lot of people to duel just so everyone can make it to the castle. So it's best if I just go alone, well only if I'm not lost though. Wait what's that smell? I raised my head and sniffed the air. It smelled like someone was cooking something in the distance. Hope relit in my heart and I excitedly followed the scent. If there's food then there will be people. I marched with purpose and after passing the nth tree, I emerged from one of the bushes. To my surprise, I seemed to have left the forest and found myself at the border of the island. I stared at the ocean filled with crystal clear water and gasped. It was beautiful, on the ship, I haven't paid attention to the sea as the trip was at the night, and in the morning I was more focused on preparing for the event. However, when everything was slowed down, I felt that I couldn't take my eyes off it. I reluctantly glanced away and spotted a campfire still burning on the rocky shores. Strangely, I felt a sense of deja vu but couldn't recall why. I cautiously approached the campfire as the smell of cooking became more evident. There doesn't seem to be anyone while I knelt beside the fire and observed it. It was very recent as the fire was still burning and there were fish on sticks by the side. Who cooked this? I muttered to myself. Phew. Suddenly, I noticed something burst out of the water, generating a whistling sound in the air. I frowned and squinted at the object traveling towards me. When I finally gained a clear view, my eyes widened and I stepped backward. Thunk a long harpoon embedded into the ground close to my feet. A man climbed up from the cliff and pointed at me, stop. My name is Mako Tsunami and you have taken my bait. Ah. That's why it felt so familiar. Hi, guys happy Easter. Well by the time you're reading this, Easter will probably end in a few hours or probably already ended. Oh well. Third POV, I challenge you to a duel. Mako declared boastfully. He was extremely happy that his plan had worked, luring people with the smell of his deliciously cooked fish just so he could catch them off, guard. Mako scratched the side of his face pride and eagerly checked his opponent. However, the fisherman immediately froze and realized that he may have landed a bigger catch than expected. He stared at the dashing woman that stood rigidly as the waves splashed from behind, creating an extravagant appearance. Her azure eyes shinned fiercely and Mako subconsciously flinched under her intense glare. Oh. It's her. That was the first thing that came to his mind when he met her gaze. Mako couldn't remember much but he faintly recalled her name was Yuna. Other than that, all he know was that she was the person that defeated the infamous Sito Kaiba, the world champion of dual monsters. Mako noticed the harpoon he had thrown embedded by her feet and he began to sweat profusely. No way, was she mad at him. His suspicion was only confirmed by her intimidating expression. Despite the unease, the fisherman continued with his plan and he awkwardly cleared his throat, ahem, you're going to accept aren't you? Thankfully, Yuna nodded and reached for the deck in her bag. Mako's confident smile returned and excitedly led her to the end of the shoreline. He found the hidden button built into one of the stones and pressed it. Whirr a mechanical clamor overwhelmed the loud sound of the ocean and a platform slowly surfaced out of the water. It was a large dual arena, a technology with two podiums and using Kaiba Corp's holographic technology to create amazing illusions of the monsters and cards that the player summon. Mako eagerly climbed onto one side while Yuna approached the other. He crossed his arm and smirked, let's wager one of our star chips for this duel. Why, yes. Yuna muttered quietly and detached one of the stars from her gauntlet before placing it on the side. Mako, alright, here we go. Let's duel. Mako Tsunami, 2000 LP, Yuna Sano, 2000 LP, Yuna POV, when I heard the signal for the battle, I felt my heartbeat increase and adrenaline entered my body. My mind relaxed and placed all my attention on this duel as my surrounding became quiet. 
I drew my cards and waited with anticipation as Mako made his first move. I summoned Fiend Kraken in attack mode. Mako declared and placed his card, I then end my turn. Fiend Kraken, 1200 attack, 1400 defense, a monstrous roar echoed across the field and a dark shadow appeared under the water. I immediately frowned and remembered a concept in the Duelist Kingdom, field power bonus. Essentially in each dueling arena, each had the properties of a specific landscape. If a monster was summoned onto a field it favored, it would receive a 30% increase in its ATK and DEF. The monsters will also gain a special ability depending on the field. For the sea terrain, all aquatic creatures gain a 30% increase in their stats while also allowing them to hide beneath the depth so opponents couldn't attack them. I sighed, this was already getting annoying. Unfortunately, unlike Yugi, I couldn't perform the infamous attack the moon strategy so I have to think outside the box. Fiend Kraken, 1200 and GT, 1560 attack, 1400 and GT, 1860 defense, I check my field, which was a dry land that was beneficial towards dinosaurs, zombies, and rock-type monsters, so it's useless to me. I glanced at my hand and clicked my teeth, I will summon Dragon Knight of Creation. A burst of white light shined down from the sky, and once it disappeared, a tall figure stood with elegance. The monster has an appearance of a knight with a red mane and golden armor while holding a large sword. Dragon Knight of Creation, Attack, 1800, Defense, 600, another new card I purchased from the system store. It's a monster from the Felgrand series. Unfortunately, I couldn't utilize its effect as I have to destroy my opponent's creature through battle and this was the only creature I can play at this moment. You may be thinking, what does that supposed to mean? Well let me explain, it was due to a specific rule that people usually gloss over in the Dual Kingdom arc. During your turn, if you couldn't able to summon a monster, you lose automatically. It was a very strange rule but it's logical as you couldn't attack a player's life point directly so I couldn't build my deck as I wished. Thankfully, this rule was changed later in the Battle City arc so I really have to thank Kaiba for that. But I should have complained with Pegasus when I have the chance. Anyway, what's done was done so I will chew Pegasus out later. I will end my turn, I declared with a calm expression. Macro grinned and drew his card, seems like today will be a great harvest. I will now call upon Great White Terror. Great White Terror, 1950 attack, 1600 defense, Great White Terror attack. Mako laughed. An enormous shark burst out of the water. My dragon knight swung his sword but missed as the Great White Terror dragged the knight into the depth. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 1850 LP, I will set a card and end my turn. He smiled with confidence, your move Yuna. I nodded and activated a spell, I will use Foolish Burial and send a card from my deck to the graveyard, I yelled and discarded one of my cards from the deck. Then, I will use Return of the Dragon Lord and Special Summon 1 level 8 or even Dragon from my graveyard. The monster I choose is Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. A white dazzling light came down from heaven, the clouds dispersed and a golden dragon soared down from the sky. Dragon Lord Felgrand roared and its mere howl blew the waters away. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, Mako gritted his teeth at the pressure exerted by the Golden Beast. Fortunately, he has a backup plan and hurriedly triggered the set card he placed in the previous turn, not so fast. I activate my trap card Fiendish Chains. The monster that you special summoned will have its effect negated and won't be able to declare an attack. Dark black chains appeared out of nowhere and wrapped around my dragon. Felgrand bellowed with rage and was dragged to the ground and restrained like a caged bird, ha. With your dragon trapped, you couldn't make a move now. Tisk, I clicked my teeth, I will set a monster face and a card down and end my turn. Mako smirked as he drew his new card, with this, the win will be mine. First I activate Mystical Space Typhoon and destroy your set card. Bang my placed card instantly shattered and I frowned in annoyance. Now. With no obstruction. I will bring out my strongest beast. I sacrifice my fiend Kraken and summon my most powerful card. Kairushin. One of the monsters on Mako's side exploded and a huge sea monster replaced where the fiend Kraken previously stood. The monster slowly surfaced from the dark depth of the ocean and roared. It resembled an eel with blue skin and rows of sharp teeth. Kairushin, 2340 attack, 
1950 defense, then I will set the field spell Umiaruka, giving my sea monsters 500 more attacks while removing 400 defense points. Mako declared. A slash N, by the way, field bonuses are not field spells so players can still set their field cards. The sea on his terrain rose to an extreme level and even my field was flooded by the ominous waters. I could spot the shadows of Mako's creature hiding amongst the waves and I felt a sense of unease. Kairiushin, 2340 and GT, 2840 attack, 1950 and GT, 1550 defense, now, I activate my equip spell Steel Shell. I can increase one of my sea monster's attacks by 400 but lower its defense by 200. Mako smiled, I think you already know which monster I'm equipping this to. Kairiushin, 2840 and GT, 3240 attack, 1550 and GT, 1350 defense, Mako, now attack Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Kairiushin burst out of the ocean and clamped down on the restrained dragon. My Felgrand was destroyed, and I watched helplessly watch my life points drop. Yunasano, 1850 LP and GT, 1410 LP, Mako, then my great white terror will attack your face down monster. Following the sea serpent, the shark attacked my card, revealing my Kamuri dragon. My monster was killed off, leaving my field barren and defenseless. Ha ha ha, I will end my turn, he said. I drew my card and frowned, I will use Pot of Greed to draw two more cards. When finished, I stared at my hand with a complicated expression. What can I do? I will use Graceful Charity. I can draw three cards while discarding two cards from my hand. I inhaled sharply and nervously grabbed three cards. I stared at them in silence and sighed. I glimpsed at the image of the large silver dragon before checking the rest of my hand. Wait. This might actually work. If I couldn't attack Mako's monsters, then I will just force them out. I gently held the blue eyes white dragon card between my fingertips and prayed. Please help me out once more. With graceful charity's effect I will now discard two of my cards. I shouted as I slipped my blue eyes white dragon and another card into my graveyard, now I will use Monster Reborn. Are going to revive your divine dragon lord? It won't work, my monster's attack is higher. Mako yelled. No. Instead, I will summon a monster I just discarded. I call upon you, my blue eyes white dragon. What? Mako stumbled backward in shock. A silver dragon appeared on the field and its enraged roar shook the entire arena. Blue Eyes White Dragon, wasn't that Kaiba's card? Why was it here? Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, Mako seemed to be anxious but announced hesitantly in his attempt of calming his nerves, it doesn't matter. My Kairiushin's attack power will still be higher than your dragon. I ignored him and set two more card face down, my turn ends. Looks like this battle will be in the bag, he cheered, now Kairiushin, destroy that blue eyes once and for all. Mako's Kairiushin snarled and appeared before my blue eyes white dragon. The two powerhouses roared and were going to tear each other apart, but that's what I was planning all along. I activate my trap card reinforcement. I can select one monster on the field and this turn that monster gains 500 attacks during the battle phase. Blue eyes white dragon, 3000 and GT. 3500 attack, 2500 defense, now my blue eyes white dragon is stronger than your Kairiushin. I yelled. Wait Kairiushin get out of there, Mako shouted desperately. Unfortunately, that's impossible and I activate my second trap card. Battle Mania. I waved my arm and my second face down card revealed itself. All fac up monsters my opponent controls are changed into attack position and couldn't change their battle positions this turn. Then all monsters must attack this turn. No, Mako clutched his head in panic. The Kairiushin lunged and the blue eyes white dragon bit the serpent on the throat, killing it instantly. Mako gasped and he watched his strongest creature die. Mako Tsunami, 2000 LP and GT, 1740 LP, this duel is not over. Mako gritted his teeth but froze under my smile. But it is. Whoosh suddenly, amongst the waves, the great white terror that had been hidden all this time voluntarily appeared. As if possessed, the shark threw itself toward the large dragon and performed a suicide attack. Mako seemed confused but his expression immediately turned pale, all monsters must attack. 
Yes, that's right, so the Great White Terror must also attack no matter what. I screamed. What? Mako shouted in disbelief. Blue Eyes White Dragon opened its mouth and fired a bright stream that completely dissolved the monster. Mako Tsunami, 1740 LP and GT, 0 LP. Yuna POV, I stared at Mako's zero life point and finally relaxed. My heart rate slowed down and I took a deep breath to calm my nerves. Thank goodness it actually worked, I really had a moment of doubting myself there. I picked up the card that won me the duel. Battle Mania another card was deemed useless in the community. I understood their mindset why would you activate a card that just asked your opponent to kill you. However, with the number of high attack monsters I have in my deck, this card can truly determine a win or a loss. As the duel arena switched off and we were brought onto land once more. Mako sighed and detached a single star chip from his gauntlet, a strategy one have never seen before. Amazing. He held out the star with a grin, here, you earned it. I nodded and took the star from his hand. I placed the token in my own gauntlet and felt happy at my achievement. Alright, seven more to go. My lips twitched and slowly transformed into a smile. Anyway. He said while rubbing the back of his neck, would you like to have some food? These fish will go to waste soon if nobody eats them. I glanced at the cooked fish resting by the fire and the delicious scent entered my nose. Suddenly, my stomach rumbled and I blushed. Oh God, that was so loud did he hear that? He must have. I nervously sneaked a glance at Mako who was staring at me with a stunned expression. My face paled and my legs felt weak. Goodness. He heard it. Suddenly, Mako burst into laughter and I felt my eyes getting teary, don't worry, I have more than enough, please enjoy. Wait you didn't think that I'm weird. I felt troubled and before I could beg for forgiveness, Mako was already walking towards the campfire. Am I really overreacting? I patted my stomach with a complicated expression. Well. Despite how shameful it was, who would pass a free meal? Meanwhile. In a distant forest, two people were in an intense duel. Ku ku ku, it's useless Yugi. A young boy with cyan color hair and large round yellow glasses, my great moth can't be defeated. Yugi gritted his teeth, and on his said laid a single curse of dragon while on Weevil's field were the powerful great moth and Hercules beetle. Weevil has 1400 life points left while Yugi has merely 700. Great moth, attack, 2600, defense, 2500, Hercules beetle, attack, 1500, defense, 2000, curse of dragon, attack, 2000, defense, 1500, things were not going well but Yugi refused to surrender. He drew a card and his eyes widened, this. Yugi glanced at his field and nodded to himself, I will set a monster and another card face down. Then I will end my turn. Weevil laughed, looks like that's the best you can do. Now Great Moth attacks his Curse of Dragon and my Hercules Beetle go attack that set monster. The Great Moth dived down from the sky and caught the dragon with its jaw. The Curse of Dragon was killed without effort as Yugi's life points dropped, Yugi Moto, 700 LP and GT, 100 LP, when it was Hercules Beetle's turn, the giant insect charged. Instantly, the set card revealed itself as a large arm emerged from the card, grasping the beetle by the horn. The monster revealed itself to be a stone giant and it tossed the Hercules Beetle away. Giant Soldier Stone, Attack, 1300, Defense, 2000, Weevil scoffed as Hercules Beetle's attack failed and he received damage from the aftermath. Weevil, 1400 LP and GT, 900 LP, you may survive this turn but my bugs will crush you soon enough Yugi. Yugi clenched his teeth as Weevil taunted with arrogance. He took a deep breath and draw a card from the deck. Yugi's excitement grew as he potentially drew the card that would help him win this game. Yugi's shoulder trembled and he laughed with relief, unfortunately for you Weevil, luck is on my side today. I will activate my set card. Eternal Soul, a large stone tablet rises from the ground. The tablet has a carving of a strange mage and multiple unreadable hieroglyphs. Eternal Soul. I've never seen that card before. T muttered while watching the duel. Ah. That's the card Yuna gave him. Joey yelled as he remembered the event a day ago, 
We encountered Yuna on the ship and that time Yugi gave her his grandfather's blue eyes white dragon and in return, she gifted him a powerful card. Really? What does Eternal Soul do exactly? Tristan asked with curiosity. Well. Joey murmured, it's best if Yugi explains it to you. They all resumed spectating the duel as Yugi regained momentum, with Eternal Soul's effect. I can special summon one Dark Magician from my hand or graveyard. So come out my strongest card, Dark Magician. The stone tablet glowed with brilliance and a person wearing a purple robe and armor appeared. He held a green scepter as the mage spun the staff in the air. Dark Magician, Attack, 2500, Defense, 2100, Humph. Your Dark Magician may be strong but it's not strong enough. Weevil declared with confidence. Yugi smirked, that may be, which is why I will activate my spell card, Book of Secret Arts. This spell allows me to increase the attack and defense of my spellcaster monster by 300. Dark Magician, Attack, 2500 and GT, 2800, Defense, 2100 and GT, 2400, then I will tribute my giant soldier of stone and I call upon my summoned skull. A bolt of lightning struck Yugi's stone giant and the monster was absorbed. A demonic laughter echoed across the field as a fiendish demon with wings appeared where the giant soldier of stone previously stood. Summon skull, attack, 2500, defense, 1200, Yugi chuckled, now I have two powerful monsters, you must know what this means weevil. The insect fanatic flinched and recoiled in shock, no. It. It can't be. Yes. Yugi smiled, dark magician, attack the great moth. Dark magic attack. The dark magician waved his staff and fired a stream of black magic toward the insect. The great moth exploded and was instantly defeated by the attack. Weevil, 900 LP and GT, 700 LP, let's end this once and for all. Summon skull, destroy that Hercules beetle. The demon roared and charged toward the beetle while brandishing its claws. Summon skull stored through Hercules beetle's armor like paper and died. No, Weevil screeched while grasping the side of his head. Weevil, 700 LP and GT, 0 LP, alright Yugi won. Joey cheered while the rest of Yugi's friends shared the same celebratory feeling. As the podium set Yugi down, all his friends rushed towards him, Yugi you're amazing. T praised with sparkling eyes. Yeah, you really showed that brat how it's done. Tristan said. Yugi rubbed the back of his neck, actually, the person we really should be thankful for was Sinosin, her card really helped me out. Everyone felt extremely grateful for the unexpected but welcoming help. They each muttered a thank you in their heart to the mysterious girl in their class. Back at the seashore. Achu, Yuna gently sneezed and dropped the cooked fish in her hand, was someone talking about me? I hope they're not badmouthing me right. A few hours later. Yuna POV, now, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack and defeat his Gemini elf. I shouted. I watched Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand soar into the sky before puffing up its chest and unleashing a deadly beam that wiped out the last monster on my opponent's field. The duelist gasped in shock as he couldn't comprehend his loss. As we were lowered to the ground, the duelist handed me his remaining star chips with a face as if he had eaten something sour while I collected my winnings with satisfaction. After finishing lunch with Mako, I decided to set out and part ways with the fishermen so I can search for more duelists to battle. Now I have five star chips, half the amount I needed to enter the castle. In my opinion, it was a good result, and I earned myself a break. The sun was also beginning to set so I should find somewhere to rest. However, even during nighttime, I have to be alert for duelists, especially the Eliminators, they were people Pegasus hired to purposely remove weak participants from the match. I don't know where the man got those Eliminators from since from the show, each and one of them got something wrong with them. Well, if I play it safe then I should be fine. As I wandered through the forest and I searched for an area that could block the cold. The sun was setting as the orange light illuminated the leaves, my pace quickened as walking in the dark was not really ideal. Asterisk Russell Russell huh, what was that? My head darted to the noise occurring in a nearby bush. Was it a wild animal? I observed keenly while tension crept up my body. If it was an animal please be small like a rabbit, I don't want to be forever known as the girl that got mauled by something like a mountain lion while participating in a UGO tournament. 
I nervously stepped backward as the sound grew louder and more intense. Whoosh suddenly, a figure burst out of the plantation and rushes towards my direction. At first, I thought it was a beast, but instead, the figure had the appearance of a small boy. He wore a mismatched red shirt with a striped orange sleeve and blue pants while his face was hidden by a light blue bandana. I was momentarily stunned as the boy bumped into me before running away. However, in the corner of my vision, I spotted something shiny in his hand. My body moved in a flash, and I snatched him by the wrist. The boy struggled while my mind was still in a daze at the impulsive action. My body became rigid like a statue, and I felt like I was going to faint. I couldn't believe it, did I really just do that? My face turned white as sheets and felt like I'm going to cry even if I was the one that caught him. I'm not a child kidnapper I promise. Wait, Mr. Officer, what were you doing with those cuffs? Let go. The boy screamed as he struggled desperately, snapping me out of my intrusive thoughts. However, I refused and gently shook my arm. Suddenly, multiple small objects spilled out of his palm, and I gasped. They were my star chips. When that boy bumped into me, I sensed something was wrong, and I was right. See, I'm innocent, innocent, I tell you. Even if this seemed wrong, these were all my star chips we were talking about. You better think twice if you're going to steal them. However, what do I do now? The boy continued to fight against my restraint, the bandana covering his face loosened and fell to the ground. The boy's face was fully revealed, he has long black messy hair and large purple eyes. Eh? Isn't he Makuba, Kaiba's little brother? What was he doing here? My brain went to shut down as I was hit with another shock of the century. Third POV, get your hands off me. Makuba growled and tugged on his arm. Unfortunately, Yuna was still tightly gripping him by the wrist, and he was stunned by her strength. Makuba glanced at his capturer and froze. Why does she feel strangely familiar? Her luscious blue hair, those cold eyes, and her beautiful face. The boy's eyes widened, and Makuba tugged with all his strength. He managed to escape her grasp and dropped to the ground. Makuba stared into Yuna's eyes and gulped, fear overwhelmed his thoughts as he felt that her eyes were piercing into his soul. However, that fear soon transformed into anger, and Makuba growled, You're the one that defeated my brother, right? You're Sano, aren't you? She nodded, and Makuba scowled, It's all your fault. Yuna gazed at Makuba silently before slowly bending down to meet his eye level, My. Fault. Yes, that's right. Makuba yelled as he gradually regained his confidence, ever since that duel, he changed. Yuna frowned at his absurd claim, he hurt. Grandpa. I don't care. I will get my revenge. Makuba said as he stood up full of vigor, I challenge you to a duel, minutes later. How could this happen? Makuba muttered as he stared at the empty life point. Makuba clenched his fists in frustration. Never had he felt this useless before, sprouting all this nonsense on avenging his brother, but he couldn't even land a single scratch. Makuba glanced at his emotionless opponent, who was indifferent to his pathetic appearance. As the duel arena set both of them down, Yuna nodded at Makuba before leaving quietly. Yuna POV, as I walked, my brain was in turmoil. To think I would meet Makuba here and recalled that at the beginning of the arc, Pegasus kidnapped Kaiba's brother in an attempt to take over Kaiba Corps. Then Kaiba has to duel Pegasus just to get his brother back, but unfortunately, he lost, so Yugi has to save him. Well, I wouldn't mind helping, but Makuba seemed to be really mad at me, and I don't have the conversation skill like Yugi to change his mind, so it's best if I just leave. After all, he should encounter the main crew soon enough. But. I slightly turned and glimpsed at the boy stalking me from behind a tree. Why were you still following me? I sighed and decided to ignore him. Daylight was running out, and I still haven't found a spot yet, so I should be quick. After wandering for at least an hour, I finally found a clearing that I think it's safe and comfortable. I set my bag down and carefully build a small campfire. Thankfully, I brought the required camping tools, or else I really don't know how to survive in the wilderness. I stared at my hard work with pride as the sun set fully. I could still sense Makuba's gaze, which hindered my work speed. Was he going to stalk me all night? Thinking any more today will really hurt my psyche, so I continued to ignore him and reached for the instant noodles in my bag. 
I boiled some water and poured them into the noodle cup. I smiled with contentment, no matter in which life, cup noodles will always be the best food for loners like me. I glanced at Makuba's obvious hiding place and sighed. Honestly, why was he still here? Doesn't he hate me? In the end, after contemplating to myself, I hesitantly opened my mouth, see, come out. I muttered but loud enough for him to hear me. Makuba flinched, and he cautiously stepped into the clearing. He approached like wary prey and sat down opposite me. Noticing my gaze, his brows narrowed, don't misunderstand, I still don't like you. Ouch. I felt an invisible arrow just pierce my chest. For some reason, those words hurt even more when said by a child. As the noodles were cooked and I decided to put the depressed feeling aside and dwell on them later. I excitedly crawled towards my cooked meal, used my chopsticks, and picked up the noodles excitedly. The delicious smell entered my nostril, and I grinned, why it smelled so good. I quickly grabbed a chopstick full and brought it towards my mouth. However, I stopped and noticed Makuba's jealous appearance. The boy stared in contempt at the instant noodles in my hand, and when our eyes met, he hurriedly looked away. When I refocused on the food, Makuba was again gazing at the food like a sad puppy. Eh, hey, what's with that expression? I feel so guilty now. I sighed and set the noodles down. I gently pushed my dinner towards him, and Makuba frowned, Humph, I'm not even hungry. What were you lying for? Even a blind man can tell, you know. Fine, if you want to play that game, then let's play. I took the bowl back, and Makuba had eyes full of regret. His hand subconsciously reached out, and he looked at me like an animal caught in the headlights, W, well, my brother tells me I can't skip dinner. He lied. I slid my instant noodle over, and he hesitantly grabbed the meal. As the noodles entered his mouth, Makuba sighed with relief before vigorously wolfing the food down. Watching Makuba eat also made me a little hungry, thankfully, I have more in my bag, so I don't have to starve. We ate in awkward silence, both of us were too anxious to make a conversation. With each passing second, I felt more embarrassed and lost my appetite, and I glimpsed at Makuba, who was eating with a calm expression. He must have been through a lot, separated from Kaiba and kidnapped onto an unknown island before escaping into the wild while trying his best to survive, yet right now. He looked so relaxed. I admired his confidence. Why was he like this? I want to be like him. As curiosity got the best of me so, I anxiously asked, A, hey, aren't S scared? Hmm. Scared? Makuba raised his head and shrugged, I'm terrified right now. What do you mean? Are you terrified? That's impossible. How? I said with a bewildered tone. Being scared doesn't make you weak. Makuba explained, that's what Big Brother told me. That. So. I stared at the ground, deep in thought. So, how about you? Makuba questioned, what's with you stuttering all over? I don't know what to say as my heart felt heavy. I hugged my legs and buried my face into my knees with a downcast expression, people dot scary. While drowning in my sad thoughts, I heard someone snickering across from me. I lifted my head and saw Makuba trying his best not to break down into laughter, what kind of fear is that? It sounds so stupid. You're right. It's stupid, but fear's still fear. Makuba giggled and lay on his back as he watched the stars, well, you should just believe in yourself more, you know. Who cares what other people think? If only it were so simple as that. Even now, your own opinion of me was horrifying. I smiled wryly and pinched Makuba's cheek, see, cute. I softly muttered. Makuba blushed and hurriedly sat up, who are you calling cute? Humph. As I continued to tease him, I began to relax gradually. Was this the child's plan all along? Probably not. Well, I'm grateful nonetheless. Suddenly an ominous voice resonated in the forest and stopped us in our tracks. The hair on the back of my neck raised. A man emerged from the dark forest, wearing an all-black suit with a top hat, a cane, and a white theatrical mask covering half his face. His outfit reminded me of a musical about a musician that haunted an opera or something. On his wrist were two large dueling gauntlets already filled to the brim with star chips. I immediately stood up and nervously clenched my fist, Eliminator. Oh. You know about us? 
The man chuckled, that saved us some time, then you know what I'm here for. The Eliminator turned his head and spotted Makuba as his lips curved into a smile, and also, that boy needs to come with me. Alright before we begin, you guys may be wondering about my choices in picking out cards for Yuna and her opponents. Basically, I will mostly choose cards and decks that are in the period around 2000 to 2008 where 2000 was when Yu-Gi-Oh! original anime began and 2008 when GX ended. That way, I would have more options while trying to retain balance as much as possible. Also I won't be using any absurd decks such elemental heroes but there are some that are quite strong but still can be defeated normally. Third POV, and that boy needs to come with me. The man declared and pointed at Makuba with his cane. Makuba flinched, and goosebumps crawled along his arms. He has already escaped Pegasus once. Who knew what would happen if the madman got his hands on him again? Will he show mercy like last time? As Makuba began to feel a sense of terror, his face turned pale as sheets, and a figure stepped between them, blocking the man of his vision of the boy. Makuba gulped and hesitantly raised his head as he stared at Yuna with surprise. And, no. She muttered. The stranger tilted his head, unfortunately, you can't decide that. My patron needs him. Yuna shook her head, and the man frowned, wager. She said and pointed at the dual gauntlet the stranger was wearing. Hmm. What are you suggesting? He asked with a hint of interest. I, if. Win. Leave. Then what if you lose? The man questioned, and a small smile formed on his face. T. Take. Chips. And. Boy. Makuba instantly stood up and glanced at Yuna worriedly, what are you doing? If you lose, we're both screwed. Yuna turned her head and glimpsed at Makuba's panicking expression, W won't lose. What makes you so sure? He shouted and clenched his fist. Makuba didn't understand, the risk was too great. Why would Yuna be willing to go so far for him in the first place? He wouldn't be surprised to be abandoned immediately if it were anyone else. Yet to her, he was a whining brat who fawns over his brother. Why are you doing this? Makuba yelled, what makes you think that you won't lose? See, cause. Won't. Yuna replied confidently, and Makuba froze. Makuba stared at Yuna in a daze, and the stranger laughed, such confidence. If a duel is what you want, then a duel is what I shall deliver. As if right on cue, the ground trembled as a hidden platform emerged. Once the smoke settled, they were presented with a large duel arena, and the Eliminator eagerly stood on one of the podiums. Before we start, let me formally introduce myself. He removed his top hat and bowed extravagantly, please refer to me as Ludra, and I will present you a duel you won't forget. Yuna stepped onto her side of the arena, and Makuba ran after her, will you really win? Makuba met his eyes with Yuna and felt the change in atmosphere. The air surrounding her was much different. He sensed the unwavering confidence in her attitude contrary to her shy personality. It was as if Makuba felt like he was talking to an entirely different person. Yuna glanced down and smiled gently, trust me. Makuba's expression became serious, and he nodded. Yuna felt satisfied and faced Ludera contemptuously while the Eliminator grinned with amusement. Duel, X2, Yuna POV, I drew five cards and stared at my opponent. He called himself Ludera and was an Eliminator that doesn't appear in the show. However, one of my biggest questions was why did I help Makuba in the first place? Was it because I felt guilty for the trouble I caused, or was it just another random act of kindness I did on a whim? Probably not. This duel will benefit me in some way. Yes, definitely, I won't help him otherwise. Yet, even I wasn't really convinced. I hurriedly shook my head. Why does it matter? What was done was done, and I should focus on this battle before me. I'm going first, so I activate my first card, I will use Pot of Greed and draw two cards. The infamous green pot appeared on the field, and I drew two more cards and added them into my hand, then I'm summoning Komori Dragon. A small black dragon with bright yellow eyes dived from the sky and growled fiercely. Komori Dragon, attack, 1500, defense, 1200, I will then activate Banner of Courage. My monsters will gain 200 attacks during the battle phase. A red flag surfaced from the ground. Komori Dragon roared and felt the comforting energy from the flag. 
My turn ends. I declared. The Lutera smiled and drew his card, let's end this extravagantly, I will activate this field spell pandemonium. Boom an old stone structure rises from the ground. The building has a demonic appearance with gargoyles and dark stains that suggest some horrible event has occurred in this place. Rumble a thunderbolt struck down on the center of the structure, and the empty braziers instantly lit themselves and illuminated the arena. I frowned, pandemonium. Wait, then that means. I will summon Archfiend Soldier. A demonic-looking soldier wearing black armor with horns and a cape was summoned onto the field. The monster took out a massive sword and waved the weapon intimidatingly in front of the Komori dragon. Archfiend Soldier, Attack, 1900, Defense, 1400, Pandemonium was a not-so-well-known card but a must-have support for the Archfiend deck. In short, using Archfiends, the player will always have to tribute their life points to play their monsters, as there's never a winning deal with a demon. However, Pandemonium ignored that rule so duelists could summon them for free. Damn. To think he has an Archfiend deck. This might be way harder than I anticipated. Now, Archfiend soldier, destroy that monster for me. Lutera yelled. The Archfiend soldier dashed towards my side of the field and swung his sword smoothly. Kamuri Dragon was instantly decapitated as it let out one final shrill cry and died. Thankfully, with my banner of courage, Komori Dragon's attack was boosted to 1700, so I didn't suffer as much damage as the Eliminator would have hoped. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 1800 LP, I will set a card and end my turn, Lutera said, crossing his arms and watching me with anticipation. I calmly drew my card and made my move, I summoned Dragon Knight of Creation. A golden armored knight appeared on the field. He raised his large sound, and the blade shimmered under the moonlight, then I will set two cards face down before entering my battle phase. Dragon Knight of Creation, Attack, 1800, Defense, 600, Now, Dragon Knight of Creation, Attack. With the effect of my Courage of Banner, my monster's attack increased to 2000. The armored soldier rushes to the Archfiend soldier. The demon raised his sword, but my knight cut him down mercilessly. Ludra, 2000 LP and GT, 1900 LP, now my Dragon Knight of Creation's effect has been activated. If I destroyed a monster by battle, I could send one level 7 or 8 dragon monster to my graveyard. Then I can discard a card and tribute this monster to revive one dragon. I slipped a card from my deck and hand into the discard pile. I stared at the Eliminator and smiled. The one I will special summon is Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Dragon Knight burst into bright particles and expanded in size. Slowly it gradually transformed into a shape of a beast. Gooo, the light dissipated, revealing the form of an enormous golden dragon. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand snarled at Lutera and glared at him with bloodred pupils. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack, 2800, defense, 2800, your turn. I muttered with a dissatisfied tone. Lutera whistled, impressive. I'm really impressed. But it's not enough. The Eliminator drew his card and grinned, looks like the duel is in my favor today. I will summon Terror King Archfiend. The altar on the building burst into flames, and a humongous demon emerged with bony skin, a veiny muscular frame, large pair of wings, and wielding a dark sword. The monster unleashed a fierce roar that sent chills down my spine. Terror King Archfiend, Attack, 2000, Defense, 1500, then I will equip Terror King Archfiend with Axe of Despair, giving my demon 1000 more power. Terror King Archfiend, Attack, 2000 and GT, 3000, Defense, 1500, now, Terror King Archfiend, slay that gold dragon. Lutera ordered. The demon howled and charged with its sword. Wait, with my banner of courage. My monster will gain 200 attacks. That means Felgrand will match with your monster. I shouted. However, contrary to my expectation, Lutera wasn't perturbed. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Attack, 2800 and GT, 3000, Defense, 2800, the two beasts clashed with each other and exploded simultaneously. Since they were equal attacks, we didn't suffer any damage. But that didn't remove the unease in my heart. As the smoke dissipated, both sides of our field were cleared except for the cards we had placed in advance. Lutera's shoulder shook, and he laughed, 
do you really think I didn't expect that? He revealed one of his cards in his hand. At this distance, it was small, but I could faintly see the image of a skull octopus, if you are not aware, this monster here is called Desruk Archfiend. He explained, on the field, if my Terror King Archfiend was destroyed on the field, I can discard this card and resummon the monster from my graveyard. Ludra discarded Desruk Archfiend to his discard, and the demonic altar lit up with a blue flame. A peal of low laughter echoed across the arena, and a black shape slowly reformed into a monster. Jarrarrar, Terror King Archfiend snarled and slammed its sword to the ground. Terror King Archfiend, attack, 2000, defense, 1500, I ignored Ludra's egotistical laughter and instantly flipped over my set card, I will use Call of the Haunted and also revive one monster from my graveyard. Rise again, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The Golden Dragon reappeared once more, and it seemed angrier than before. It glared at Terror King Archfiend as if saying how dare a low-level creature as you harm me. At this moment, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect will activate. I can target one monster you control and banish it while it gains the attack equal to that monster's level multiplied by 100. I pointed at Ludra's monster, the one I choose is Terror King Archfiend, and remove that monster once and for all. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand soared into the sky and generated a white beam in its mouth. I glanced at Ludra and frowned. The Eliminator was eerily calm about the situation. You really are a strong duelist, able to keep countering my strategy. Ludra praised with sincerity, however, it saddened me that you underestimated my ability to protect my own. I will activate my set card. Archfiend's Roar. Ludra announced, I will sacrifice 500 of my life points and bring back Desruk Archfiend. Ludra, 1900 LP and GT, 1400 LP, Desruk Archfiend, attack, 1100, defense, 1800, then I will activate Desruk Archfiend and Terror King Archfiend's effect if I can roll a die. If it lands on 2, 3, or 5, I can negate your monster's effect and destroy it. A large dice appeared on the field and spun with vigor. It eventually dropped to the ground, and I held my breath. It's a 3. Ludra chuckled as my Felgrand burst into pieces. And since a card effect destroyed my monster, I suffered damage equal to half of its attack. I clicked my teeth. 1400 damage. Unisano, 1800 LP and GT, 400 LP, let's see how long you can last. Ludra chuckled, in my graveyard, I will use Axe of Despair's ability. I contribute one of my monsters and bring Axe of Despair to the top of my deck. Desruk Archfiend burst into nothingness, and Ludra placed his Axe of Despair on the top of his deck, then I will end my turn. No matter what you do, it wouldn't matter anyway. I stared at my hand and bit my lower lip. The Eliminator was correct, and I truly don't have a plan right now. It felt like I was stepping on frail glass. One wrong step, and I will fall to my demise. Yuna POV, I will set a monster and two cards face down. I yelled in a frustrated tone, then I will end my turn. The Eliminator tilted his head, that's it. Seems like the show's going to reach its finale. Ludra drew his card and laughed, oh. Who'd be guessed it's the Axe of Despair? Then you already know what I would do with it. I ignored Ludra as he re-equipped Terror King Archfiend with the Axe of Despair, and the monster regained its mighty strength. Terror King Archfiend, Attack, 2000 and GT, 3000, Defense, 1400, Now, Terror King Archfiend, Attack her monster. The Archfiend raised its axe and smashed it into my defensive monster. My card was turned face up, revealing a hiding battle ox that easily fell to the fiend's blow. I watched with bitterness as the attack killed battle ox, and I grasped my cards so tightly that they creased from the stress. After that, I will summon Shadow Knight Archfiend and boost my power even further. Shadow Knight Archfiend, attack, 2000, defense, 1600, when it was my turn, I sighed pathetically, I will set another monster and end my turn. I glanced at Makuba, and he stared back with concern. Guilt washed over me, and I couldn't imagine the consequences if I lost. Can I defeat him? This Eliminator was strong, abnormally strong. Was I too arrogant? My chest heaved, and I felt anxious to continue to play. My fingers trembled, and my legs felt weak, my confidence wavered as doubt sprouted from my heart. Sano. Makuba yelled, and I instinctively flinched. 
You beat my brother, right? So what's there to be scared of? Wah! I muttered in a daze, but his shouting made me close my mouth. So defeat him. Makuba ordered in a loud voice. Yes, he's right. I took a deep breath and calmed down. I'm so stupid. The match still wasn't over yet. Like the old saying, as long as you have life points, even a losing fight can become a winning one. I will set a monster and end my turn. Ludera frowned, I will summon Vilepawn Archfiend, then attack. Vilepawn Archfiend, attack, 1200, defense, 200, Bulmai subconsciously covered my eyes as my monster burst into pieces. However, I didn't give up and drew my card. My mind went into overdrive, and I thought of the best solution for me to survive. Wait. I was reminded of a card within my deck that could turn this situation around. I glanced at my deck and gulped. Come on, heart of the cards, don't fail me now. Set a monster, and my turn end. Ludera, I will attack. I draw. I will set a monster and end my turn. Ludera, stop fooling around and destroy her. I draw again. Tisk. I clicked my teeth and set one more monster face down. I don't know how long I can last. Only two more normal monsters were left in my hand. I know I'm running out of options, but I can't give up now. The Ludera picked up a card from his deck and smiled, your strategy won't work now. Time to end this once and for all. I activate my spell card, checkmate. I will tribute one Archfiend monster, and my Terror King Archfiend can attack directly. Ludera announced. Attack directly. I gritted my teeth. Normally, this wasn't possible. However, if a card says so. Vilepawn Archfiend was suddenly absorbed into Terror King Archfiend's axe, and the metal shinned with a dark purple hue. The demon raised its weapon, dashed toward me, and ignored my set monster on the field. My eyes widened in shock as the monster swung its axe, and I watched in slow motion as the blade gradually closed in on my face. Third POV, N.O. Makuba screamed as Terra King Archfiend slashed Yuna with its weapon. Makuba covered his face with his hands, and he couldn't bear to watch the scene playing out before him. There was silence, and a minute had gone by. Finally, out of curiosity, the boy peeked through the gap of his fingers. His jaw dropped to the floor, and he stepped back in shock. Why was Yuna still remaining in the duel? Yuna Sano, 400 LP, Terra King Archfiend's axe was an inch away from Yuna's neck, and the demon seemed to be suppressed by an invisible force. I, I will reveal my trap card, negate attack. If a monster declares an attack, I can target that monster, negate the attack and end the battle phase. Yuna explained while stuttering lightly. Terra King Archfiend slowly returned to its original position. The demon let out a low grunt as if dissatisfied with failing to kill its prey. Fine, you won't get so lucky next time. Ludera gnashed his teeth and summoned another Vilepawn Archfiend before ending his turn. Vilepawn Archfiend, attack, 1200, defense, 200, Yuna took a shaky breath while grasping the handrails, turning her knuckles white. Despite there being mere holograms, it still felt too real. Are you alright? Makuba yelled from the sidelines. Yuna nodded and patted her chest, this was too close to her liking. Thankfully, she has set this card in advance, or else there's no way to survive that blow. There was still one trap card on the field. However, if Ludera activates another checkmate, Yuna will have no other method to protect herself. She drew her card, and her eyes widened. Was it really divine intervention? Yuna thought while staring at the card in her hand. Has her prayer really been answered? Yuna turned to the arena. All right, it's possible. She saw her chance of winning, all it took for her to have a chance of winning was to survive the next turn. I will set a monster and end my turn. Setting setting setting, I have enough of it, Ludra bellowed, stop this useless farce, just give up. Never. Yuna screamed back. Then suffer under my demon's wrath. He angrily yelled, I tribute my vile pawn archfiend and shadow knight archfiend to summon imprisoned queen archfiend. A humongous demon emerged from the altar that easily towered the size of divine dragon Felgrand. Her bloody red hair ran down her rotten face as chains wrapped around her wrist and ankles. Imprisonment Queen Archfiend, attack, 
2600, defense, 1700, now the king and queen were reunited. There's no chance of you winning. He declared arrogantly, now attack. Terror King Archfiend and Imprisonment Queen Archfiend charged simultaneously. But Yuna was ready and flipped over her last line of defense, I activate Wabaku. My monster won't be destroyed this turn, and I take zero battle damage. Both demons stopped, and Lutera slammed the podium with his fist. He was greatly annoyed by Yuna's tenacity and couldn't understand why wouldn't she surrender. Yuna smiled and felt the stress leaving her body. She made it, and now, it's time for her to fight back. I will tribute my two face-down monsters and bring out Blue Eyes White Dragon. A terrifying roar resonated in the forest, and a silver dragon landed from the dark sky. The dragon's scales glistened under the moonlight, and the beast howled fiercely. Blue Eyes White Dragon, attack, 3000, defense, 2500, Lutra, so what, are you going to attack with your blue eyes? It doesn't matter, as I can always summon more archfiends. No, I won't attack. Yuna corrects Lutra, instead, I will activate this spell card, a wing beat of giant dragon. By returning one level 5 or higher dragon monster to my hand, destroy all the traps and spell on the field. Blue eyes white dragon transformed into a small white orb and flew back into Yuna's hand. Suddenly, the demonic altar exploded and crumbled into pieces. Lutra frowned, what is the meaning of this? Did you think you could win like that? Yuna smiled and shook her head, actually, I have already won. What? I will end my turn. Lutera couldn't shake off the uneasy feeling in his heart. However, with his pride, he convinced himself that it was a mere bluff, and he drew his card. He grinned, there it was, his second checkmate, with nothing on Yuna's field. This time it would really be his win. I activate. Suddenly, Lutera froze and sensed something was wrong. He hesitantly raised his head and noticed Terror King Archfiend and Imprisonment Archfiend were staring at him with a strange hungry gaze. W.H., what's happening? He croaked. Did you really forget? Yuna's voice snapped Lutra out of his daze, nothing is free in this world, especially deals you made with demons. You have abused this rule with pandemonium, but now that it's gone, do you think your archfiend will let it slide this easily? Ah. During this duel, he completely forgot. To keep Archfiend on the field, he must pay life points for every stand by phase. However, Pandemonium completely controlled the Archfiends to be his slaves. Now that the only thing keeping him safe disappeared, will his monster stand idly by? Lutera hurriedly stared at his field. Terror King Archfiend must pay 800 life points. Imprisonment Queen Archfiend must pay 1000. Lutera gulped when the two demons approached him with a fierce smile, wait, stay back. However, they didn't listen and eagerly raised their weapons. With one scream, his ambitious dream of victory escaped his grasp. Lutera, 1400 LP and GT, 0 LP, Yuna POV, I took a deep breath and leaned against the podium. I won. I still couldn't believe it. This fight was way too close to my liking. I truly felt I would have lost if I hadn't drawn the correct card in time. Wingbeat of the Giant Dragon wasn't the only spell removals I have in my deck, but strangely I haven't drawn a single one yet. Finally, at the last desperation, I managed to get what I wanted. Man. I should really rebuild my deck. I was brought down from the podium, and Makuba eagerly ran towards me, you did it. He cheered. Seeing him so happy made me feel excited as well. However, I tried not to show it on my face, or else his image of me would be ruined further. You. We stopped celebrating and noticed the haggard Lutera staggering towards us, you you you. He approached us with a crazed expression, and I blocked Makuba with my arm, L, leave. I declared. Lutera's expression darkened, and he smiled, no. What do you mean no? Sano defeated you, so scram. Makuba yelled from behind. You brat. Lutera cursed and clenched his fist, you will pay for saying that. He hastily approached us and raised his fist. I closed my eyes and was fully expecting to be, for the first time in my life RKO'd for winning a duel. However, the punch never came, and suddenly a painful howl reached our ears. I hesitantly opened my eyes and saw Lutera clutching his head while screaming in pain. 
a strange golden symbol appeared on his forehead, and he collapsed like a puppet with its strings cut. After a while, Lutera slowly rises, staring blankly at the ground, good evening. He said in an entirely different tone, I have to apologize for my subordinate's unmanly action. Pegasus. I muttered upon realization. Indeed, Pegasus responded with an amused smile. The dazed looter glanced at Makuba, please refrain from leaving so abruptly next time, you've caused me a lot of trouble. What are you on about? You kidnapped me. Makuba yelled in anger. Ah, that's too crude of a way of saying it, Pegasus calmly replied, I'm just simply relocating you. I stared at the expressionless Lutera with wariness. His empty pupils met mine, you must be wondering what happened to this man, well it's simple, sometimes losing a game can cost you more than you imagine, you know? I quietly analyzed Pegasus's choice of words, and my eyes widened. No way, did he really turn that duel into a shadow game without me realizing it? Since when? I gulped, if I really lost back there, I would have lost much more than my star chips. Well, as this man promised, I will leave you guys alone, Pegasus announced, and Lutera's body slowly wobbled deeper into the forest. Oh, he stopped, I look forward to more of your duels, Yuna. Before I could reply, Pegasus left, and the forest became quiet once more. Makuba tiredly fell to the ground, what in the world was that? I felt exhausted and followed Makbua and sat on the ground. I was still creeped out by what happened but wasn't on guard as before. Despite how crazy Pegasus was, he always kept his word, so we should be safe tonight. I yawned and prepared the sleeping bag. Unfortunately, I only brought one, so I gave it to Makbua. I'm not as heartless as to let a child sleep in the open so he could have it. Thankfully, I brought a spare blanket, so it wasn't bad. I decided to wash up tomorrow as it was already very late, and losing sleep was a big no. That night, I fell asleep feeling content, knowing I seemed to have a better relationship with Makuba and my soul was still intact with my body next morning. The birds chirped energetically, and the bright sun shone on my face. I begrudgingly opened my eyes. I sat up and stretched, the sleep was more comfortable than I imagined, so I felt refreshed. Makuba was still asleep, so I quietly stood up and wandered into the forest. I found a small creek to wash my body. I dipped my toes into the water, it felt cold but soothing, and I bathed in a cheerful mood. When I returned, Makuba was still asleep, so I made breakfast with the rations from my bag. Click, don't. Move. However, contrary to the peaceful morning I had hoped. I found myself before the barrel of a gun, pointing straight at the back of my head. Click, don't move. I immediately froze upon hearing the gun cocking from behind. My hair stood on the edge, and I felt a tingle going down my spine. I have reincarnated into the UGO world, right? But why am I being held at gunpoint? Don't we settle disputes with cards? Huh, it's you. When I heard the voice again, it sounded very familiar. That egotistic and prideful tone, who have I met in this place has a voice like that? Curiosity got the best of me, and I hesitantly turned around. If I'm going to die, at least let me know who killed me so I will haunt them for the rest of their lives. Then I spotted the notorious long indigo blue trench coat, black button shirt, and pants. His brown hair and sharp features were presented fully under the bright sun. We stared at each other, and my mind went blank. What the hell was Sido Kaiba doing here? And with that gun, no less, third POV, earlier. Sido arrived in the duelist kingdom via a helicopter in the dead of night. To his dismay, he somehow met with Yugi's group and had to be interrupted by a certain annoying blonde-haired individual. After showing him his dueling skill, Sido left and traveled deeper into the forest to locate his kidnapped brother. Despite his arrogant personality, Makuba was the only one he cared for, so he had to rescue him no matter what. Thankfully, the tracker Sido placed on his brother showed he wasn't in the main castle yet, which was great news. Unfortunately, his helicopter landed on the other side of the island, as that was the only area he could land safely. Sido traveled through the dense jungle, walking for hours while avoiding Pegasus's men and some venomous creatures. He managed to subdue one of the guards and confiscate his weapon, and Sido readied himself as he approached closer to Makuba's location. It was early morning when Sido finally arrived. He smelled the scent of a campfire and sneakily hid behind the tree. 
he heard the sound of someone tending to the fire, and there didn't seem to be anyone else. Sido checked the tracker once more, and his brother was indeed there. He couldn't see him unless he revealed himself. However, once he took out that suspicious person, they could reunite with each other again. He takes a deep breath, Sido rushes behind the tree and aims his gun at the assailant, don't. Move, the person paused, and Sido frowned when he got a clearer view of the person before him, huh? It's you. The woman that was behind held gunpoint slowly turned around. Sido stared at her azure eyes and clicked his teeth as bad memories began to resurface. He noticed her calm expression and was slightly impressed by her boldness. Yuna Sano. Sido spat with disdain, where is my brother? Makuba. Yuna repeated. TSK, keep his name out of your mouth, Sido growled, tell me now if you don't want to get hurt. They gazed at each other in silence. Yuna stood up, and Sido cautiously created distance between them. Despite her frail and beautiful appearance, Sido knows it's a mistake to underestimate people due to their physique. Yuna didn't respond, and Sido's patience was reaching its limit. He pointed his gun in the air, and all of a sudden. Bang the gunshot echoed across the forest and frightened anything nearby. Sido aimed the weapon back at Yuna and frowned, I will give you ten seconds. Ten. Nine. Eight. Sido's eyes narrowed as Yuna still didn't respond. Was she even aware of the situation she was in? Why did she look so unbothered? His finger tightened on the trigger at the thought of actually shooting Yuna came to mind, and his jaw clenched shut with unease. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two. Stop, suddenly someone yelled from a distance and blocked Sido's line of sight. Sido's eyes widened, and he couldn't believe the sight, M. Makuba. What the heck are you doing? Makuba berated angrily, are you insane? Sido's confusion reached a whole new level this time, and he couldn't find the right thing to say as he stammered with fluster, no, but I. No buts. Makuba hissed, why are you threatening big sister? Yuna and Sido, B, big sister. Makuba, what are you talking about? Sido asked and clenched his fist to calm himself from this mind-numbing scenario. When I escaped from Pegasus, and he sent people to catch me, Yuna was the one that stopped them. Makuba explained, she even provided me with food and shelter. And in return, you pointed a gun at her. He screamed. Sido was caught off guard by Makuba's outburst and subconsciously lowered his arm. Makuba hurriedly snatched the pistol from Sido's hand before tossing it. He sighed and rubbed the bridge of his nose. Unlike his angered attitude, he was expressing moments ago. Makuba turned around and smiled brightly at the bewildered Yuna, let's have breakfast. Yuna POV, an hour later. I sat in silence while feeling scrutinizing eyes piercing through the back of my head. How the heck did it come down to this? When Kaiba pointed the gun at my face, everything went dark, and I'm pretty sure I fainted while standing up or something. But the next thing I knew was him counting down and Makuba rushing to save me. If he arrived a little late, Kaiba would truly put a bullet in my forehead. While being glared at Kaiba, I anxiously rearranged my deck. Last night's battle made me think I need to stop messing around. I still have a few thousand points left in my system shop, so I purchased some rare and common cards to support my deck greatly. Otherwise, what's the point of saving up if I can't win right now? The blue eyes white dragon briefly revealed itself as I shuffled my cards. I glanced at Kaiba, he was gazing at the card in my hand. His eyes flickered, and I instinctively glanced at the gun by his waist. No way, was he going to threaten me to destroy it? Noticing my cautious reaction, he scoffed and crossed his arms, Humph, I will honor our deal, but don't think you're safe yet, I will win that card eventually. Hearing this, I relaxed and patted my chest with relief before nodding with determination. Fine, come at me. I will make sure that you will lose so badly that you will never try again. So, big bro, what are you doing here? Makuba asked amidst our conversation. Kaiba frowned, isn't it obvious I come to rescue you? Hee <laughs> hee, seems like you're a bit slow. Makuba joked and smiled at me. Hey, hey, why did you say that? I could tell Kaiba's moods dampening, you know. I'm just an ordinary hard-working civilian, and your brother's a billionaire. I don't want to disappear one night because of you. So what are we doing now? 
Makoba asked his brother, should we get out of here? Kaiba stared at the floor solemnly, we can't. Huh, what are you talking about? Makuba tilted his head in confusion. The president of Kaiba Court glanced at me with a frown. I noticed that he seemed to be judging whether I was trustworthy enough before nodding to himself, I suspected the big fives betrayed me. What? Makuba stood up with anger, how could they? Well, it's not a surprise knowing how your brother treated them. I thought while quietly sipping the tea I made. In the anime, Kaiba cooperated with five corporate executives in Kaiba Corps, known as the Big Five. By promising them power, together, they overthrew Gozaburo Kaiba and placed the Blue Eyes White Dragon Loving Maniac as the head of the company. However, in the end, Kaiba never granted them the powers they wished for, thus leading them to become vengeful villains in the later arcs. From the lore, the Big Fives also planned Makuba's kidnapping. They secretly worked with Pegasus to take over the company. I watched Makuba insulting the Big Fives while kicking up dust clouds. I glanced at Kaiba and observed his mood. He has a perpetual frown on his face, but despite the anger, he seems calm, like he's planning for something. Makuba crossed his arms and turned to Kaiba with a huff, so what's our plan? I will confront Pegasus personally. Kaiba answered angrily, then I will retake back what's rightfully mine. Awesome. Makuba praised with sparkling eyes, when do we begin? Kaiba glimpsed at the excited Makuba before glaring at me. I hurriedly averted my gaze from the tension. I promise this has nothing to do with me. I won't be a snitch. Eventually, Kaiba sighed and turned to his brother, you're not coming. What do you mean I can't come? We're brothers, right, and we should always stick together. Makuba yelled. It's too dangerous. I won't allow it, Kaiba said with a voice that wanted no further arguments. No matter how caring he was for his brother, I can already predict his way of thinking. Mokubs would only be dragging him down, so bringing him is not a smart choice. Makuba must have also noticed, and he was staring depressingly at the floor. Then what am I supposed to do? He mumbled. Go with her, Kaiba answered. The two siblings stared at me, one with contempt and one with expectations. Eh. When did I agree to this? Does my opinion matter? However, watching Makuba's pouting, I felt too bad to decline. I nodded, and Kaiba clicked his teeth, if anything goes wrong with him, you will pay. He said before walking away. My body froze up in place, and terrifying thoughts appeared in my head. I swear I won't let a single hair fall from his body. So please don't kill me. Yuna POV, after the whole thing with Kaiba, I cleaned up the campsite and prepared to continue my journey. Thankfully, Makuba was there to help, and we packed everything at double the speed. However, he seemed to be in a sour mood, constantly muttering about how selfish his brother was. Anyway, when everything finished, I slung the backpack over my shoulder. Together, we left the clearing and into the deeper part of the forest. Luckily Makuba seemed to calm down, probably due to finally not having to hide around the island like a fugitive, and he began to hum a tune under his breath. As we walked, I was starting to feel a little annoyed. There should be many duelists on this island, but I couldn't find one. Hello. Anyone there? I sighed and patted my empty stomach. Lunchtime had already passed, and we still couldn't find a single person. Had they all been defeated already? Well, even then, some people should still be left, right? As I was wallowing in self-doubt, Makuba called out to me, Big sister, I think I heard something that way. He said and pointed in the direction of the trees. I still couldn't get used to the fact that he was now calling me Big Sister, but the news of finding people outweighed that. I eagerly followed him as we stopped behind a couple of bushes and got close to a waterfall. The sound of the raging waters drowned out most of the noise, but we could still detect someone's presence. We sneakily peeked from over the bushes and spotted a man by the bank of the waterfall. Just by looking at his black spiky hair and fierce face, my immediate impression of him was evil goon number one. Regardless, you can't judge someone based on their appearance, so I continued to observe him. He seemed pretty tired as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. The man approached one of the undergrowth away from us, and moments later, he returned while dragging, wait, hold on, was that a person? All right, I take it back, you should maybe, just maybe. You can assess someone on how they look. Just a little bit, though. 
I shook my head and stared at the unconscious person being abducted. He was tall, wearing jeans, a white shirt, and a green jacket. He has sporadically arranged blonde hair and hazel eyes. I frowned. Ha, huh, that's Joey, but what's he doing here? Oh wait, that's right, I thought, hitting my palm with my fist. This must be when he gets kidnapped and battles a zombie child in a cave. If I remember correctly, that guy abducting Joey was called Zion, um, no, Zeke. Zebra? I couldn't remember, as the character itself wasn't important. But all I know was that in the arc, he and two others work for Bandit Keith, the guy behind this master plan. I watched with interest and wondered if I should show myself or not since the matters would be resolved eventually if I let it be. I glanced at Makuba, and he was staring at Joey pitifully, I feel bad just watching. Should we help that weak uncle? Geez, Joey, even the younger brother's looking down on you. Deciding to save his dignity, even just a little, I emerged from my hiding spot and confronted the duelist. Third POV, damn, this guy is heavier than he looks, Zigger muttered as he dragged Joey deeper into the forest. Under his boss's order, he was supposed to kidnap a weak duelist and take their star chips in a duel. However, he was warned to avoid certain people unless he wanted to get obliterated, but Zigger wasn't listening then, so he can't fully recall what Keith said. Well. Zigger smirked, what's the chance of that happening? Stop. Suddenly, a voice echoed from behind him, and Zigger frowned. He swung around and noticed a girl appearing out of nowhere. Zigger subconsciously shivered, he remembered seeing her somewhere before, but his memory was a little fuzzy. Nonetheless, she's in the way right now, and his boss will get mad if he doesn't return soon. Go away, girly, this is none of your business. Zigger chided. Yuna frowned and pointed at Joey, L, leave him. Huh, no, can't do. Zigger crossed his arms, now scram before something bad happens. The girl didn't budge and detached three star chips from her gauntlet. Zigger's pupils flashed with greed as Yuna gently tossed the star chips before catching them midair, take. I, if win. Zigger smirked confidently, sure, just make sure you cough up those star chips once you inevitably lose. Five minutes later. A slash NP. S. Makuba survived against Yuna for ten minutes. H. How. Zyagor collapsed on all four and stared at his crumpled deck in shock. Yuna glared at him, and he flinched, T, that was just luck. I will be back. Zigger shouted before sprinting off with his tail tucked between his legs. She watched as Zigger ran away with the speed befitting of an Olympic athlete. Yuna turned to Joey and sighed. She gently nudged Joey with her foot, and his face scrunched with discomfort. Gradually, Joey stirred and clutched his head, ugh. What happened? He sat up and instantly noticed a beautiful girl standing before him. Joey's first reaction was to blush, but he relaxed when he recognized her identity. Huh, Sano. What are you doing here? Before Yuna could respond, Makuba suddenly interrupted her, shouldn't the first thing you say is thank you? Big sister rescued you after all. Joey's face turned red when he seemed to recollect what had happened before being knocked unconscious. He felt embarrassed being saved by a girl and scratched his cheek sheepishly, Ah, Thank you. He hurriedly got up and patted the dirt off his pants, this was the first time he was alone with a girl before, and Joey felt the subconscious of his actions. Fortunately, Yuna wasn't really interested in him, and he himself had a bigger problem at the moment. So you're the one that interrupted my plans. They heard a rough voice and loud footsteps approaching from the distance. Joey and Yuna tensed as a group of people appeared from the forest. The one leading the group was a buff man with a red shirt, jeans, and a black vest. He had blonde hair that was covered by an American bandana, and his black sunglass hid his eyes. Joey frowned, hold on, I know you. You're Bandit Keith, the former U.S. Dual Monster Champion. Keith spat angrily, being named as a former champion. He glared at Joey and glimpsed at the girl beside him. At first, when one of his subordinates reported that a girl intercepted his operations, Keith was angry at their incompetence but kept his composure. He was curious and wanted to check out the perpetrator that ruined his plans. However, it was someone he dreaded meeting the most. SH asterisk T, it's her. Keith cursed between his teeth. 
He knew that girl, and he especially paid attention during the gathering on the ship back in Domino City. So it was obvious he would get wind of the duelist that defeated Sido Kaiba. Keith scowled, and his glasses covered his annoyed expression. He knew some rumor that she won by luck, Keith was smart enough that sometimes rumors were deceiving. The duelist understands that his chances of winning may not be as high as he would have hoped, but there was one method. He took a deep breath and smirked, well, 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 if it isn't the famous Yuna Sano in the flesh. Yuna glared at him, and Keith laughed haughtily, heh heh heh, hey, how about it, let's have a duel. We can also put our star chips on the line, after all, may the strongest win. She felt suspicious of Keith's suggestion, knowing his personality, his brazenly challenging someone for a duel meant he had some dirty scheme planned. However, Yuna agreed as she needed the star chips to advance further into the tournament. I knew you would accept. Keith smiled, but how about we make this a little interesting? I propose a tag team duel. You and that boy while I get one of my guys here. He explained and pointed at his group with the back of his thumb. Yuna frowned and couldn't understand Keith's thoughts. She glanced at Joey, and he seemed to be really excited, all right. That's what we're talking about. Sano, let's show them how it's done. Joey stared at Yuna intently, and she felt pressured by his confident attitude. She timidly averted her gaze and nodded. Don't worry, there's no way we will lose. Joey said, but Yuna wasn't relieved of her doubt. Keith scoffed at Joey's witty attitude and turned to his group, Bonds, hurry up and get over here. A young boy frantically arrived from the group behind Keith. He has messy purple hair with sunken cheeks and eyes, giving him an expression of a ghoul. You better not mess up, Keith growled, and Bonds flinched in fear as he frantically assured his boss. When he was satisfied, Keith regained his smile, well, let's get the show on the road. He pulled on a hidden lever beside a tree, and the ground rumbled. A huge platform, much larger than an ordinary duel arena, appeared. Now four diffident podiums were located at each corner, and the field was wider to fit all the cards that would be played. The four duelists stepped onto the arena with their team standing adjacent to them, we will bet three star chips each. How does that sound? Keith suggested, fine by me. Joey and Yuna sighed as they placed their respective star chips on the dueling table. The four duelists quietly observed each other, and a serious atmosphere engulfed the surrounding. Duel, X4, Joey, 2000 LP, Yuna, 2000 LP, Keith, 2000 LP, Bonds, 2000 LP, A slash N, you may be wondering why I'm not combining their LP, since in the duelist kingdom shown, the battle with Para and Docs didn't have their LP combined, so I will leave it as it is but would change in Battle City Arc, Yuna POV, Tag Team Duel, huh? I thought while staring at Keith and Bonds across me. The concept was first introduced in the later episodes with Yami Yugi and Joey fighting against the Paradox Brothers. But to think I will be playing a tag team duel right now. The rules were fairly simple, we each had 2000 life points, and if one of us was defeated, the team lost altogether. Also, we can use each other's monsters for tributes, materials for fusion, and activating their effects, but we can't use the monsters for battle. A team also shared the same graveyard, so I had many more options. The order will be me going first, Keith second, Joey third, and finally, Bonds will go fourth. As the last player to make a turn, Bonds was able to make his first attack, so I needed to make a strong defense before starting my counterattack. I will activate Foolish Burial. I announced, this spell card allows me to send one monster from my deck to the graveyard. I searched through my cards before finding the one I wanted. And set the chosen card into the discard pile, I will then summon Dragon Knight of Creation. And activate my continuous spell card, Ruins of the Dragon Lords. A knight in golden armor and a large stone statue of a dragon appeared in my field. The dragon knight noticed the state and stood before it with a fierce attitude. I will set two cards and end my turn, I said and watched Keith as he drew a card. I couldn't shake off the suffocating feeling in my chest, and I watched his every move tentatively. Humph, first, I will summon Mechanicalcaser. He said a round floating machine with wings wielding multiple sharp weapons in its limbs was summoned onto the field. Mechanicalcaser, attack, 1850, defense, 800, now I will activate machine conversion factory. I can equip this to a machine monster, and it gains 300 attack and defense. 
a small strange factory manifested beside Mechanicalcaser. The building began to make some loud churning noises, and metal flew out and attached itself to the monster. Mechanicalcaser, attack, 1850 and GT, 2150, defense, 1100, I will set two cards and end my turn. Keith smiled. Two set cards. I pursed my lips and glanced at Joey worriedly. He was oblivious to the hidden danger and was extremely pumped up. I'm going to summon Axe Raider and end my turn. He said with an upbeat tone. Axe Raider, attack, 1700, defense, 1150, um, that's it. Shouldn't you at least set something? I stared with disbelief while Keith scoffed. He turned to the nervous bonds, play as I told you, and don't screw it up. Yes. He yelped and hurriedly played his card, I'm activating the field spell Wasteland. All dinosaur, rock, and zombie monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. The forest on the all our field withered into nothingness, and a wide desert filled the area, I will summon snake hair in attack position. A green-skinned woman with snakes for hair arrived while flicking her reptilian tongue. The monster's appearance reminded me of a monster from Greek mythology, and her slithering snakes made my skin crawl. Snake hair, attack, 1800, defense, 1500, a slash n, I already added the stat changes, now I activate Sword of Dark Destruction. I can equip this card to a monster, and they gain 400 attacks while losing 200 defense. A black sword with a hilt that has a design of a purple dragon materializes in Snake Hair's hand. She swung the weapon and smiled viciously. Snake Hair, attack, 1800 and GT, 2200, defense, 1500 and GT, 1300, now attack the Axe Raider. Bonds shouted and pointed at Joey's monster. Not so fast. I interrupted him and flipped my two trap cards, I will activate reinforcement and battle mania. Reinforcement gives my monster 500 more attacks until the end of this turn, and Battle Mania forces your snake hair to attack mine instead. Dragon Knight of Creation, attack, 1800 and GT, 2300, defense, 600, the snake hair suddenly changed trajectory and threw herself toward my knight. However, contrary to my expectation, things were not going as planned. That won't do. Keith shouted, I use Trap Jammer. His set card revealed itself, and a thunderbolt struck my battle mania, I can negate a trap activation and destroy it. How do you like that? He smirked, and I cringed with disgust. Snake hair returned to her original direction and swung her sword. The axe raider was cleaved in half. Joey, 2000 LP and GT, 1500 LP, Joey gritted his teeth when his life points dropped considerably. Keith laughed confidently, do you know? No matter how great of a duelist you are, as long you have a weak team, you are bound to fall. So that's what you're planning. I glanced at Joey with a complicated feeling. This will be tougher than I thought. Before we begin, I'm wondering how do you guys feel seeing Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand as Yuna's trump card, like Yugi with Dark Magician and Kaiba with BEWD? I will implement other decks in this story but Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will be her main. Yuna POV so they plan to target Joey, huh? Even if I don't like being in the center of attention, focus on me a little too. I clicked my teeth with frustration, I glanced at Joey, and he seemed disturbed by their cowardly strategy. Don't look down on me. Joey angrily slammed the table with his hands. Keith smirked and gestured annoyingly for me to make my move. I pouted and drew a card, I activate Pot of Greed and draw two more cards from my deck. I glanced at my replenished hand and nodded, I will summon Guardian of Felgrand. A large green-haired man in silver armor was summoned to the field. The knight smiled and crossed his arms, standing tall and rigid like a mountain. Guardian of Felgrand, attack, 500, defense, 500, with Guardian of Felgrand's ability, I can equip one level 7 or 8 dragon monster in my graveyard to this card, and Guardian of Felgrand will gain stats to half of the monster that will be equipped. The one I choose is Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Guardian of Felgrand pointed his weapon in the sky, and a beam shot down from heaven and was enveloped by the blinding light. Once the shimmer faded, a mirage of a large dragon stood behind the Guardian of Felgrand, like a guardian angel protecting its important person. Guardian of Felgrand, attack, 500 and GT, 1900, defense, 500 and GT, 1900, 
then I will activate Ruins of the Divine Dragon Lord's ability. I contribute a card on the field and special summon a token onto the field, the one I choose is Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The dragon behind Guardian of Felgrand transformed into a small orb of light and gently floated beside my monsters. By doing so, the Guardian of Felgrand loses his power and returns to its original strength. Dragon Lord Token, Attack, 0, Defense, 0, Guardian of Felgrand, Attack, 1900 and GT, 500, Defense, 1900 and GT, 500, you may wonder, what was the point of going through all this? Coo coo coo, well, let me indulge in this grand scheme of mine. Then Guardian of Felgrand's second ability will be set in motion. I contribute two monsters, including this card, and special summon one level 7 or 8 dragons back from my grave. The token and Guardian of Felgrand burst into a flurry of particles, rise again, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The bright particles slowly expanded and formed a large shape. A ferocious golden dragon occupied my field, and its roar shook the entire forest. Whoa! I heard Joey gasping with awe, that's crazy. No matter how many times I see it. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack, 2800, defense, 2800, with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability, I can banish one monster on the field and gain 100x attack and defense equal to the number of levels from the monster. The one I choose is Mechanicalcaser. Keith's Mechanicalcaser went limp and dropped to the floor. The ground opened up and engulfed the monster as it was dragged underground. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Attack, 2800 and GT, 3200, Defense, 2800 and GT, 3200, now attack Snake Hair. I ordered, and the dragon charged. No matter how sharp the Snake Hair's sword was, it couldn't compete with Felgrand's claws and was easily devoured. Bonds, 2000 LP and GT, 1000 LP, humph, how do you guys like that? If you guys target Joey, then I will target you, Bonds. I glared at the zombie child, and he flinched nervously. I faced Keith, and he was desperately suppressing his anger. Phew, seeing his angry face made me feel a little better, your move, I urged. In a single turn, I managed to destroy all the monsters on their side, so it must have landed a great impact on their psyche. However, I couldn't afford to relax. Who knew what else they could pull out of their sleeves? Keith frowned and drew a card, I will call upon Mighty Guard. He calmly summoned a green cyborg soldier that was a mix between a beefy man and a machine. The soldier unleashed a war cry and punched the air. Mighty guard, attack, 500, defense, 1200, now I will attack machine duplication, and I can choose a machine monster with 500 or fewer attacks and special summon two of the same monster from my deck, Keith explained. Two extra mighty guards were summoned, and the three monsters nodded at each other like comrades in arms. When Keith ended his turn carefreely, I felt nervous, knowing that Keith summoned three monsters in one go. It never meant something good. I glanced at Joey worriedly, be careful. Joat gulped and quietly stared at his hand. I'm glad he's taking my advice to heart and thinking about his move instead of charging in like a madman. I will set a card face down and summon Tiger Axe. He said while a huge anthropomorphic tiger wearing gladiator armor and holding a twin-headed battle axe rose to the ground. Tiger Axe, attack, 1300, defense, 1100, Joey, now attack the mighty guard. Tiger Axe rushes towards his foe. The monster raises his axe and leaps into the group of soldiers. The monster struck down, and the blade easily pierced the armor and killed one of the soldiers. Keith, 2000 LP and GT, 1200 LP, all right, this was a good start, we have already brought both of them to low health, and if we play this successfully, we can win. Strangely, Keith wasn't bothered by the massive drop in life points as he turned to Joey. You shouldn't have attacked me. He warned. Huh, what does that supposed to mean? Joey grumbled, and Keith shrugged, I will end my turn. He said cautiously. When it was Bonds's move, Keith said threateningly, follow the plan. Bonds nodded. I will tribute the two mighty guards on Keith's field and summon Zoa. A blue-skinned demon appeared, with a humanoid face with a horn, hunched back, razor-sharp claws, and two pairs of red fins behind its head. Zoa, 2600, 1900, Bonds, now attack the tiger axe. Not so fast. Joey hurriedly shouted, 
I activated my trap card, Kanai, with chain and gave Tiger Axe 500 attack and forced Zoa into a defense position. Tiger Axe, attack, 1800, defense, 1100, Tiger Axe's weapon was replaced with a metal Kanai attached to a chain. The Tiger hurled the weapon and caught Zoa. The fiend thrashed but was eventually forced to return to Bonza's side with a disgruntled expression. Phew, that was close. Joey exclaimed and wiped the sweat off his forehead. I sighed with relief, the good old Kanai with chain once again saved the day. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought things would turn for the worse. However, the best outcome has occurred, and we can now begin our counterattack. Bonds frowned when things didn't go as planned, I will set a card and end my turn. Tisk, Keith scowled, useless brat. I drew a card and sighed, another monster card. Am I breaking that badly? Even if my deck has many effect cards, it seems like I still couldn't escape the fate of a terrible draw. Sorry, Joey, I'm the useless one now. I will turn Dragon Knight of Creation into defense position, I said as the knight stabbed his sword into the ground and knelt beside the statue. I'm also setting a monster face down and entering my attack phase. I announced, then Divine Dragon Lord. Destroy Zoa this instance. Not so fast. Keith shouted, I activate magic metal force and use it on Zoa. A blinding light emerged from Keith's set card and engulfed Bonza Zoa. The monster's skin turned metallic as machine and bolts replaced its flesh, with magic metal force, I can turn monsters into a machine typing. Now Zoa has become Metal Zoa. Metal Zoa, attack. 3000, defense, 2300, huh, but what's the point? Metal Zoa was still weaker than Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, right? Metal Zoa will perish like normal, right? Bonds will lose his life points, right? Definitely not something extremely dumb that I have missed that would stop me, right? Right? Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand puffed its chest and unleashed a stream of orange flames on Machine Zoa, covering the field into a sea of fire. When the flames died down, to my shock, Metal Zoa remained on the field, and Bonza's life points hadn't changed. Oh I oh I oh I, what this they didn't even activate a trap card, and my dragon definitely attacked. Excuse me, I call the referee. Surprised, are you? Keith sneered, with magic metal forces effect, Metal Zoa won't be affected by non-physical attacks. What? Non-physical attacks? W what the at hashtag dollar. Keith clutched his stomach in laughter, and I felt my anger rising. Excuse me? What the hell was that? Non-physical attacks? How do I fight that, then? Takahashi-san, explain, A slash N, Kazuki Takahashi is the creator of UGO, such a powerful effect. Joey muttered in admiration. My eye twitched, and I felt that I needed to check my teammate's brain for a second. What kind of bull, at you was that? Hey Divine Dragon Lord, you big goof. What do you have to say for yourself? My teeth made a grinding sound as I glared at my monster. I swore the dragon was purposely avoiding my gaze, and it seemed to be saying, you're the one that ordered me to attack, but you never specified how to attack. I, I end my turn. I slumped my shoulders and leaned on the podium. Hey Joey, stop staring at me with that pitying look. It hurts. Keith chuckled. I use Pot of Greed and draw two cards. Then I'm activating Call of the Haunted and Summoning Snake Hair. Bond suddenly said. Bandit Keith nodded with a feral smile, then I will tribute Snake Hair and set a monster face down. I'm ending my turn. Sinosin, get a hold of yourself. Joey encouraged from a distance, this wasn't over yet. I sighed, don't say that. It makes people think that I'm giving up. Deciding that it's useless to dwell on that garbage effect, I straightened my back and answered, we should play it safe, we don't know the identity of Keith's monster, and Metal Zoa was way stronger than your monsters, I suggested. I see, Joey muttered thoughtfully, then I will set Tiger Axe into defense position. Joey held a card and glimpsed at me, grasping his intention, I nodded. Joey smiled and tribute my face down fodder before setting a monster of his own. It was a good idea as my divine dragon Lord Felgrand was currently protecting me, so it was smart to use my other monsters for tributes. I'm setting a card face down and end my turn, Joey said and gave me a thumbs up. My sigh became even louder. Where did that faith even come from? 
Jeez. I should have brought some aspirin, and I can already feel the headache setting in. Okay, this time, I will definitely post another chapter this week. The fight was longer than I thought, and I needed to improve the last part a bit. Besides that, was anyone else grinding the Master Duel tournament right now? I had a 40-minute battle against an Ishizu slash Naturia deck, which was an interesting experience. Short recap, Yuna's Field, Dragon Knight of Creation, Defense, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Attack, Keith, Set Monster, Magic Metal Force on Zoa, One Set Card. Joey, Tiger Axe, Defense, Set Monster, One Set Card Bonds, Metal Zoa and One Set Card. Yuna POV, I rubbed my forehead and sighed. Even after a couple of minutes of calming myself, I still couldn't get over that stupid effect. Sai who could forget that in Yu-Gi-Oh, they take card descriptions quite literally. Even a normal monster might do something unbelievable if it said something random. I glanced at Bonds while he drew his card. Bonds, I'm going straight into the attack phase. Metal Zoa, go destroy Tiger Axe. Metal Zoa's eyes flashed and pounced at the weak Tiger Axe. Joey gritted his teeth and hurriedly exposed his trap card, I use Chasm of Spikes. Before the monster's steel claws reached Tiger Axe, a large cavity expanded between them. Tiger Axe swung his axe and slammed Metal Zoa into the hole. There was a shrill mechanical cry when the robot was impaled by the dozen spikes hidden inside the hole. Metal Zoa explodes into hundreds of pieces, and Joey points at Bonds with a smile, with Chasm of Spikes, I can destroy one monster attacking monster, then my opponent will lose life points equal to a quarter of that monster's attack. Bonds's Metal Zoa has a whopping 3000 attack points, which means that Bonds will have to take 750 worth of burn damage. Bonds, 1000 LP and GT, 250 LP, Tisk. I will set a monster face down and end my turn. Bonds said with a bitter expression. Woohoo! Great job! Joey. Now I will finish this. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Attack Bonza's set monster. I yelled before stammering. Use your claws this time. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand roared and plummeted from the air. However, Keith suddenly interrupted me and shouted, I won't let you. I will activate negate attack. A barrier seemed to form between Bonza's monster and mine. Felgrand roared with rage and slashed at the barrier, but it won't break no matter what. With negate attack, I can end your monster's attack and skip the battle phase entirely. Keith explained, you need to try harder than that. I pouted and turned my head, just let me play the game for once. It felt like Joey was the only one actually doing something. When it's Keith's turn, he smiled, finally, the moment has come. I activate my set trap, time machine. Keith announced, and a large black machine appeared on the field, with this, I can special summon a monster from the graveyard that was destroyed by battle. The one I choose is Mighty Guard. The familiar cyborg returned to the field, and the soldier saluted gratefully at Keith. Mighty Guard, attack, 500, defense, 500, with this, I will tribute my two monsters on the field to summon my strongest monster. Now show yourself, Barrel Dragon. Mighty Guard and Bonza's set monster merged and transformed into an enormous creature. Its entire body was built out of metal and pieces of machinery as the monster stood on two legs. On both sides were two giant revolvers. There was also a revolver attached to its head. The dragon stomped its feet, and the revolve made a sharp noise when the hammers of the gun notched backward. Barrel Dragon, Attack, 2600, Defense, 2200, Now, I use my spell card, 7 completed. Which allows me to grant Barrel Dragon 700 attacks. Barrel Dragon, attack, 2600 and GT, 3300, defense, 2200, then I will activate Barrel Dragon's ability, and I can flip a coin 3 times and attack my opponent's monsters to how many times it landed on heads, anime effect. A golden coin appeared at the center of the field. The coin hurled itself into the air, and we tensely watched the results. Heads. Tails. Finally, when the coin landed on the floor, I cursed and glared at the head sculpted on the flat side of the coin, Kukuku, I landed on heads twice, that means I can target two monsters for battle so, I choose Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Tiger Axe. Barrel Dragon roared and aimed its gun at our monsters. 
Boom boom the revolvers fired with a thunderous roar, the bullet struck Tiger Axe and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, and the monsters succumbed to their wounds. Joey, 1500 LP and GT, 700 LP, Yuna, 2000 LP and GT, 1900 LP, Keith cackled like a maniac while covering his face with his hand, now, with the obstacle gone, your chances of winning are over. He ended his turn with a sneer, Joey clicked his teeth and glanced at me, what should we do? I frowned at the complicated situation we found ourselves in. Bonza's life points were still lower than ours, but Joey was just as fragile. It would be difficult to target Bonds directly under Keith's assault, and the zombie boy's monster will always be on the defensive, and right now, we have no choice but to protect ourselves as well. Voicing out my thoughts, Joey nodded and set a monster face down before ending his turn. When it was Bonza's time to play, he copied us and summoned another monster in the defensive position, building himself a wall of creatures. I scowled, right now, in this type of stalling, there wasn't any good way to stop them other than using cards to make the opponent's monsters attack forcibly. Well, I still have two more battle mania left in my deck, but by looking at the history of my draws in this game, I'm not counting on it. Thankfully, Bonds was playing cautiously, so his turn was usually uneventful. I drew my card and sighed with relief, finally something I could use. I activate Graceful Charity. I announced. It allowed me to draw three cards and discard two cards from my hand. I grabbed three consecutive cards and discarded two spare fodders I didn't need. My smile widened. Yes. More spell and trap cards, just what I needed. I will activate Swords of Revealing Light. All face down monsters will now be flipped face up, and no monster can attack until the end phase of my opponent's third turn. Which means you guys couldn't attack before Keith's second turn. Hundreds of white swords descended from the sky and surrounded all of Keith's and Bonza's monsters. The ones Bonza set face down were revealed. It was a large treasure chest with a mediocre design. The chest opened, and a ghoulish red monster emerged from within. Yuranzo, attack, 1300, defense, 1500, it was a normal monster with a decent defense, so fortunately, it was not dangerous. I stared at my hand and turned to Joey, who was nervously biting his nails. He must have a hand as terrible as mine by gauging his reaction. I nodded to myself, I still had life points to spare, so I needed to support him the best I could. I will play my spell card, exchange. This allows me to exchange a card with a player on the field. This was a card I purchased from the system store this morning. Even if it's a super rare card, it's one I definitely needed for my plans in the future. My eyes darted around and observed everyone's nervous reaction. Bond seemed creeped out by my stare, while Keith was smiling brazenly without a care of the world. Just you wait, and I will wipe that annoying smirk off your face. I gave everyone one final glance and decided, the one I chose is Joey. Joey's eyes widened with disbelief upon hearing his name being called. The arena's machinery came to life, and our two podiums were brought close to each other, take this, I whispered and showed him a card. He nodded and added it to his hand while I took a random monster in return. When we returned to our original position, I summoned Joey's monster in defense mode and set one card on the field before ending my turn. Right now, I hope he can put that card to good use. Short recap, Yuna, Dragon Knight of Creation, Defense, Set Monster, Sword of Revealing Light Joey, Set Monster Keith, Barrel Dragon Bonds, Yuranzo, Set Card X1. Third POV, I will end my turn, Yuna declared and glared at Keith. The duelist in question smirked, stare all you want. It's not going to change anything. Keith reached for his deck to draw a card. However, he paused and sneakily flicked his wrist, a card appeared underneath his wristband, and he added the card to his hand. Keith glanced at his two opponents and chuckled, they were too oblivious. Keith needed to reach the finals no matter the cost, even if he had to cheat to get there. After all, that's the only way he could do to regain his dignity. He could still remember the humiliating scene in the past. It all began with a match in the United States final. It was him against Pegasus, the president of the Industrial Illusions, the creator of Dual Monsters. He was winning, everything was going great until he felt Pegasus had changed. Keith still couldn't forget that eerie chuckle. Next, he knew Pegasus wrote something on a piece of paper before ordering a young child, 
who was watching from the sidelines, to play for him. By following my instructions, you can win in one turn, Pegasus said confidently before walking away. Keith then took that as a bluff, but who would have thought the child would actually win? It was embarrassing that day, Keith spiraled into depression, and now he has returned. Pegasus, with this tournament, I will have my revenge. He swore in his heart. Keith stared at the card he drew, I will activate seven completed again. My barrel dragon will gain another 700 attacks. Barrel dragon, attack, 3300 and GT, 4000, defense, 2200, 4000 attack, Keith smiled smugly, that's even higher than the blue eyes white dragon. However, his mouth tasted bitter as the swords of revealing light hindered his plans. But it doesn't matter. Keith could attack again in a few more turns, and then it would be all over. Your move, boy, Keith said to Joey, better make it quick. Joey groaned and stared at the card Yuna gave him. He was surprised that Yuna would use exchange on him instead of bonds or Keith, she even gave him a card he needed most right now. He glanced at his pathetic hand, Yash, let's not put her card to waste. I will use Pot of Greed and draw two more cards from the deck. Pot of Greed. The card Yuna gifted to him, without it, Joey would have truly been a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Even if it's such a simple effect, with a hand of nothing but normal monsters, he couldn't ask for better help than this. He eagerly drew two more cards and held his breath, there it was. With this, he might be able to make a change. Not yet, a soft voice brought him out of his excitement. Yuna glanced at him from the corner of her eyes, we still do not have what we need. Joey calmed down and nodded, and there were still a few more rounds before they could attack again. They have plenty of time. I will finish my turn by setting a card and monster. Joey announced with a serene expression. Bonds frowned and drew his card, I will use emergency provisions. I send my set trap to the graveyard and gain 1000 life points. Bonds, 250 LP and GT, 1250 LP, Joey swore under his breath while watching Bonds's life points spike up. Now he was the one with the lowest health. Bonds smiled with relief when the tension left his body. He set a monster on the field but was immediately exposed to the Sword of Revealing Light. It was a crazed zombie warrior with throwing knives and dual sabers strapped to his back. The monster waved its weapon menacingly. However, it immediately knelt in defense position and calmly protected its master. Dark Assailant, Attack, 1200, Defense, 1200, I will end my turn, Bond said, gradually regaining his confidence. His boss was right. What was there to worry about? The victory was in the bag. Let's just put this scary feeling aside. Bonds chuckled nervously. Yuna added a card from her deck into her hand. She gazed at her arsenal and nodded to herself. She locked eyes with Joey and grinned, I will turn Dragon Knight of Creation into attack position. The knight stood back up and grabbed his sword, now attack Uranzo. She yelled and pointed at Bonza's monster. Dragon Knight of Creation charged and approached the dangerous treasure chest. The red ghoul leaped out but was easily decapitated with a single sword swing. Unfortunately, Bonza's monster was in a defensive position, so no harm was done to Bonz. Then with Dragon Knight of Creation's effect. I can send a level 8 dragon from my deck to the graveyard. Yuna explained and slipped a card into her discard pile, with Dragon Knight of Creation's second effect, I can discard another card from my hand and then sacrifice my knight to revive my dragon. Rise and spread your wings again, blue eyes white dragon. An ear-piercing roar resonated through the forest. A white circle spanned across my field, and a silver dragon soared through the hole. The sunlight reflected off its scales, and the dragon landed majestically. Blue eyes white dragon, attack, 3000, defense, 2500, Keith clenched his fist nervously, so what you have, the blue eyes white dragon. It's still weaker than my monster. Yes, you're right. Yuna responded, causing Keith to frown, that's why I will set a monster and a card before ending my turn. Immediately, the sword of light surrounding Keith and Bonza's monsters dissipated, and they regained their vigor. Instead of feeling the joy of being freed from the shackles, Keith felt anxious. Has she really summoned Blue Eyes White Dragon for nothing? No, impossible, she must be scheming something, Keith thought, should destroy that dragon right away. He flicked his wrist again, 
slipping another seven completed into his hand, I will use seven completed again. My barrel dragon wouldn't be able to be defeated now. Barrel dragon, attack, 4000 and GT, 4700, defense, 2200, F, 4700. Joey stiffened in shock. That's right, and now you will face its full power. Keith shouted, now I activate Barrel Dragon's ability. The coin reappeared. Heads. 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 Keith's confidence returned, now destroy everything she owns. He roared, and Barrel Dragon aimed its barrels at Yuna, this match is over. Destroy that blue eyes white dragon and all of her monsters. Barrel Dragon fired, Yuna's field was littered with explosions, and smoke engulfed her. Keith sneered and patiently waited for the smoke to settle. However, his mood turned sour when he spotted Yuna standing where she originally stood. A barrier covered her field, beside the shield were three female priests wearing blue cloaks and green uniforms. Their hands clasped together, praying as their energy was gathered into the shield. When the attack stopped, the priests and the barrier disappeared as Yuna smiled, You have triggered my trap card, Wabaku. I take no battle damage this turn, nor can battle destroy them. Keith huffed angrily, and his card crumpled in his hand, you insect. Fine. Have it your way. Since he has targeted Yuna specifically, Joey's monster was left completely unharmed, I will end my turn for now. Keith crossed his arms. Relax, he thought, there's no way for them to win now. Joey only has one set card, while Yuna still has two monsters and one hidden card on the field. However, Keith calculated that there was no way that they could survive unless. Sinosin, I'm ready. Joey beamed. Yuna nodded, let's do this. Joey smiled, I will activate my time wizard. A large humanoid clock appeared on the field, and the monster cheerfully danced in the air, with the effect of time wizard, I can spin a roulette. If I succeed, all the monsters on the field will age. Time wizard flexed its fingers and created a large magic wheel. On the wheel, there were two sides. One side had a skull symbol, while the other was a green tick. The arrow on the wheel began to spin, and everyone watched with nervousness. The arrow gradually slowed down, and Joey's eyes widened. Time Wizard joyfully spun around and aimed his staff in the sky. Green light covered the sky and reminded him of the Aurora Borealis he had seen on those documentary shows. The light covered all the monsters on the field, and their physique began to change. Barrel Dragon groaned, and rust coated its body, weakening its strength tremendously. Unfortunately, other monsters suffered the same fate, and Yuna's monsters aged significantly. Rust coated Barrel Dragon's metal exterior, the monster groaned, and its movement became rigid. While the other monsters became a shell of their old selves. Barrel Dragon, Attack, 4700 and GT, 2350, Defense, 2200, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Attack. 3000 and GT, 1500, Defense, 2500, Dark Assailant, Attack, 1200 and GT, 600, Defense, 1200, the other monsters also have their stats altered. However, it wasn't displayed publicly since they were originally set face down. Joey chuckled, he was really glad that it worked. With this, their counterattack starts now. Then I will tribute two of Sinosin's monsters and summon my strongest card, Red Eyes Black Dragon. Darkness was dawned upon the two monsters on Yuna's field. They were completely engulfed, and a large shape was formed. When the darkness settled, a humongous black dragon appeared. The monster has spiny scales, large wings, and a beak like mouth. The dragon's pupils were blood red, and it roared with rage. Red Eyes Black Dragon, Attack, 2400, Defense, 2000, Now, I apply dragon nails to Red Eyes Black Dragon. Give it 600 more attacks. Red Eyes Black Dragon's claws grew longer, and its nails became darker. The monster bellowed at the exciting feeling of receiving its new upgrade. Red Eyes Black Dragon, Attack, 2400 and GT, 3000, Defense, 2000, Then I flip summon my set monster, Joey yelled, and a slim figure crawled out of the card. It wears a skin-tight suit while wearing a magician's cloak and top hat. The monster hit its face with a handheld mirror. Copycat, attack, zero, defense, zero, Keith, you may be wondering why I reveal this monster, right? 
Joey smirked, you will see once I activate its effect. Copycat allows me to copy a card played by my opponent, and the one I chose to copy is Magic Metal Force. Suddenly, Red Eye's black dragon skin turned silver. Its joints became gears and machines as the monster unleashed a metalized scream, with this, Red Eye's black dragon has become Red Eye's black metal dragon. Red Eye's black metal dragon, attack, 3000 and GT, 3400, defense, 2000, sh asterisk t. Why didn't I destroy it earlier? Keith gritted his teeth, and his eyes widened, no way. He stared at Yuna, who was smiling at him brightly, that blue eyes white dragon was just bait. Keith has completely glossed over Joey's monster this entire time by using all his attacks on Yuna. Ultimately, this would be his downfall. I will finally activate Grave Robber. Joey declared, and his trap card revealed itself as a small gnome carrying a shovel appeared, I can steal a card from my opponent's graveyard, the one I steal is 7 completed. In Keith's discard pile, the 7 completed was taken by the arena device and transferred to Joey's podium. He took the card and activated it without hesitation. The familiar aura manifested around Red Eye's black metal dragon, and the dragon growled at the comfortable feeling. Red Eye's black metal dragon, attack, 3400 and GT, 4100, defense, 2000, with this, it's more than enough to defeat you, Keith. Joey smiled and pointed at the rusty barrel dragon, now attack the barrel dragon. I won't let you. Keith shouted, I activate Shattered Axe. Red Eye's Black Metal Dragon will lose 500 attacks. Red Eye's Black Metal Dragon, attack, 4100 and GT, 3600, defense, 2000, Red Eye's Black Metal Dragon's nails cracked, and the monster howled at the painful sensation. With this much, you still can't win. When I survived, it would truly be over. He roared. However, Joey wasn't phased and grinned, you're right, it is over, but not how you would imagine. Yuna. Joey yelled as Keith's eyes widened. Yes. Yuna responded and flipped over her trap card, I will activate reinforcement. That means Red Eye's Black Dragon will regain 500 attacks. What? Keith gasped, no. Red Eye's Black Metal Dragon, attack, 3600 and GT, 4100, defense, 2000, Red Eye's Black Dragon's wounds healed, and the monster charged. Barrel Dragon fired its guns, but the bullets couldn't pierce its tough scales. Yuna and Joey, this is the end. The monster tore off Barrel Dragon's limbs before chomping down on its head. Crunch Red Eye's Black Metal Dragon ripped off Barrel Dragon's head. With one desperate groan and the machine, the monster erupted into a massive explosion. Keith was swept off his feet, and he screamed as everything he had built collapsed before his eyes. Keith, 1200 LP and GT, 0 LP. Before you leave, here are some clarifications in the duel. Copycat was originally a spell card in Duelist Kingdom, but it was actually a monster card, and I decided to use the anime effect. For Time Wizard, even if it's a monster card, the effect actually stated that it could be used as a spell, so I kept it in. Third POV, earlier, before the duel with Keith, after leaving Yuna and his brother, Sita walked quietly through the forest. He stared at the castle in the distance where the perpetrator of this entire mess resided. Sito patted the area of his chest where his gun was hidden underneath his trench coat. He hoped he didn't have to use the weapon but won't show mercy if Pegasus refused to yield. Before Sito realized it, he was already at the gate of the large castle. It was too quiet, and he hadn't encountered any Pegasus's men. He turned and glanced at the forest where his brother and Yuna were probably wandering around. He felt uneasy in trusting Makuba's safety to the girl, but at least Sito understood her intention was sincere. Sito took a deep breath and pushed against the gate, it moved easily, and he was surprised that it wasn't even locked. His shoes made a sharp clicking sound in the empty hallway. The interior was eerily dark, and Sito clenched his fist to calm his stirring heart. Eventually, he reached a dead end, and before him was another door. Sito could hear someone inside, he equipped himself with the pistol and entered. The door immediately slammed shut behind him, and Sito frowned. In the center of the room was a man resting leisurely on an extravagant chair. The man wears a bright red suit and cuffs. He has long white hair that covers the left side of his face, and he smiles ominously upon noticing Sito's presence. 
Welcome to my humble abode Kaiba boy, Pegasus said with his English accent Japanese. Sito scowled and pointed the pistol at Pegasus's face, this foolish act has been going on far enough. Stop now before it's too late. Pegasus chuckled, I wouldn't do that if I were you. He clapped his hands, and the lights came to life, illuminating the room and revealing dozens of armed men in black suits pointing their firearms at the young Kaiba Corps president. A droplet of sweat dripped down Sito's forehead, and he tightened his grip on his weapon. Call of your men this instance, or else I will place a bullet in your brain. Sito threatened. Oh. Pegasus tilted his head, you're not one that should be making negotiations, you know. Unless you want your brother to get hurt. What is that supposed to mean? Sito gnashed his teeth. Pegasus flicked his finger, and a white screen slowly lowered from the ceiling. The projector machine across the room began to play, and Sito gasped. It was a live video of a girl and boy strolling through the forest, unaware they were stalked. If you shoot me and my subordinates don't hear from me after a certain amount of time. Pegasus smiled, I'm sure you know the implication of my words. You dare. Sito shouted in anger. Oh, I do dare Kaiba boy, Pegasus shrugged, you see, I'm in control this entire time. So, don't make me repeat myself. His smile suddenly vanished, and Pegasus stared at Sito coldly, drop. The. Gun. Sito's arm trembled, and he glared at Pegasus with hatred. The room's atmosphere was so tense that it could be cut with a sharp knife. Eventually, Sito faltered, and his pistol fell to the floor. Pegasus's smile widened, good, now we can discuss like civilized men. All the security guards finally lowered their guns and confiscated Sido's weapon, so now he's left defenseless and under the villain's clutches. I hope you understand that it's nothing personal. Pegasus explained nonchalantly, taking over your company was merely a stepping stone to reach my grand goal. And that is? Sido questioned with a scowl. Now now, it wouldn't be interesting if I reveal everything here. He laughed, but what I would give you is a chance. Sido, a chance? Yes, an opportunity of some sort allows you to return everything to how they were. Pegasus explained, it's simple, as fellow enjoyers of duel monsters, isn't it natural that we settle our dispute with a duel? But of course, if we were to duel, you would follow my rules. Pegasus declared, since I'm currently hosting a tournament, it would be a shame if it was ruined. Pegasus took something from his pocket and tossed a red glove at Sido, and it fell before his feet, go collect ten star chips, then we can talk. Sido stared at the smiling Makuba through the screen. He clicked his teeth and picked up the dueling glove. The fabric felt soft on his finger, but it disgusted him even further. Five star chips were already implanted inside the gauntlet. Sido slid the glove onto his life hand, and Pegasus laughed. That looked good on you. He smirked. Sido turned around and approached the entrance. His hand touched the door handle and stopped, I will destroy you. Ha ha ha, Pegasus chuckled, I will await that moment then. The clock is ticking, and you only have today before it's too late. You don't want to disappoint your brother, would you? Sido's anger soared through the roof, and he punched the wall, leaving a fist mark on the structure. Pegasus watched with amusement as the young duelist exited swiftly. He shifted his seat and watched the live footage. His eyes zoned in on the girl beside Sido's little brother, how fun. I want to duel you again, Yunasano. So you better not fail my expectation. Pegasus grinned, and his laughter echoed in the dark castle. Yuna POV, present time, I smiled when Keith collapsed to the ground in shock. His arrogant taunting during the duel had got on my nerves, and seeing him in this state lifted my mood. Throughout the battle, I felt a hunch something was amiss, and it was later proven when Keith drew 3-7 completed consecutively. I might be wrong, as he possibly had the luckiest draw of his life. But familiar with his personality, I doubt that was the case. However, I'm not going to confront him about it though. Losing like that was already humiliating enough, and if I angered him even more, there was a chance he won't use cards to settle the score. Geez, I need something to defend myself. Should I get one of those self-defense tasers? As the brief thought lingered, we were lowered from the podium. Joey sprinted at me with a wide grin. That was some awesome dueling Sano. He exclaimed like an excited toddler. 
Of course, Big Sis was super powerful after all. Makuba added while appearing from the sidelines. My cheeks felt slightly heated from their high evaluation, and I could only nod weakly in response. Joey, where are you? We turned our heads when a group of people emerged from the trees. Their eyes settled on us and widened. A boy wearing a blue school uniform with hair that looked like a starfish ran towards us. Joey, we have been looking for you. Also, why is Sinosin here, and who are they? Yugi asked and gestured at the dazed Keith and his group. Thankfully, Joey was there to explain, so I didn't have to speak. Yugi seemed grateful for my rescue, and he stared at the American duelist with contempt. The rest of Yugi's crew also arrived, and together, we confronted Keith to collect our winning. To my surprise, Keith complied with a word. Even if he had resorted to cheating, he's still a man who kept his word. I inserted the urn star chips into my gauntlet. All the slots were filled, and I successfully survived the preliminary match. Hey, Sinosin, do you want to come with us? T asked on behalf of the group, who was waiting with anticipation. However, I declined the offer. Joey and Yugi still needed more star chips, and since I had gathered ten, I didn't have to search for the remaining duelists. Also, I felt my mental state would suffer with this many people, so I'm content with only having Makuba by my side. The crew was disappointed but respected my decision, and we parted ways. Makuba and I decided to proceed to the castle at the island center. We still had a few hours to spare, but the distance was pretty far, so we needed to travel steadily and not be late. I felt slightly worried about bringing Makuba to the castle, and he didn't hide his hatred toward Pegasus. However, knowing that I had a tournament to compete in, he agreed to follow me despite the risk. His selflessness tugged on my guilty conscience as to whether it was the right choice. Yet, he insisted that we should go, I can predict his way of thinking, he's probably still sulking about being ditched by Kaiba so he want to go meet him regardless of the Dagner. The journey was uneventful as no random duelist appeared from hiding, demanding a duel. Makuba and I spoke along the way, even if he was the one that did most of the talking, I enjoyed it. I tried to give him a thorough response, but the words I wanted to express refused to leave my mouth. Nonetheless, I enjoyed the company, and the few hours hike went by like a breeze. However, my spirit dampened when we stopped at the bottom of the long winding stairs. Ah! I completely forgot about the stairs. I can still feel the cramps in my legs from climbing the first time. Come on, let's go. Makuba urged and jumped on the first step. I sighed while watching him eagerly skip up the stairs. With a heavy heart, I followed after him. Another hour later. B. Break, I begged as sweat stained my clothes. Makuba, who didn't even seem remotely exhausted by the strenuous climb, stopped and nodded. I collapsed tiredly on one of the steps and gasped for air. When my pulse rate returned to normal, I dug through my bag and brought plain bread, I tore the food in half and offered the piece to Makuba. He accepted gratefully and quietly nibbled on his bread beside me. At first, I was worried that he wouldn't eat the food I prepared since I assumed that, being a brother of a billionaire, his taste buds surely would be richer than mine. We gazed at the scenery of the island. It was a refreshing sight, and I would have had fun if only we didn't have a time limit and still had to climb many sets of stairs. Arrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Before we start, to clear up any confusion, I will use Yami Yugi instead of regular Yugi when dueling but will return to Yugi when it's back to normal or other characters are talking slash thinking about him. Disclaimer, this chapter contains a lot of bullsh asterisk T but the power of the pharaoh is too strong. You've been warned. Third POV, a few minutes earlier, there's no chance your pathetic dark magician in defeat me, Yugi. Sido laughed at the boy across from him, now blue eyes white dragon, attack. The dragon howled and caught the purple mage with its claws. As the monster struggled, blue eyes white dragon slain it with ease. Yugi Mutu, 1500 LP and GT, 1000 LP, Sido smirked and felt that his win had become nothing but a certain fact. However, his anger immediately rose when he remembered who awaited him after. With Pegasus's threat, he was forced to duel with unworthy duelists to earn enough star chips. Sido defeated his enemies smoothly using his recently invented dual disc, allowing him to progress quickly. However, with the day ending and the preliminary reaching its conclusion, Sido became more desperate. He waited at the top of the castle, hoping for an unsuspecting duelist to pass by. With his luck, one came. Yugi Mutu. He's a quiet boy with no outstanding characteristics, someone similar to any random person he can find on the streets. In the end, Yugi was just another insignificant insect in his way. Sido drew his card, and his smile widened, I will activate polymerization and combine three blue eyes white dragon from my hand and field. Three blue eyes white dragon. Yami Yugi exclaimed. Sido chuckled, now, I can summon my strongest card by fusing all my dragons. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon Two of the Blue Eyes White Dragon cards in the dual disc transformed into a stream of light and were absorbed into the blue eyes on the field. The dragon's size increased, and two separate heads grew from the base of its neck. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Attack, 4500, Defense, 3800, just as his Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon was summoned, he noticed two figures sprinting toward the battle from afar. Sido frowned and glanced at the girl beside his brother. Spotting the blue eyes ultimate dragon, Yuna's eyes widened ever so slightly before returning her usual blank expression. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Sido's eyebrows furrowed, and he felt dissatisfied with the lack of reaction, aren't you impressed, Yuna Sano? He thought with a feral grin, you must feel hopeless under my dragon's power. He proudly stared at his blue eyes ultimate dragon, your move Yugi. Yugi has only 400 life points remaining, while Sido has 900 life points. Everything was going in his favor, and he shouldn't lose unless Yugi could pull a miracle. I will summon Kuribu in defense position, Yami Yugi shouted, and a small fluffy creature appeared. Kuribu, attack, 300, defense, 200, then I will use multiply, anime effect, on my Kuribu, allowing me to clone the monster and create a wall of Kuribu. Yami Yugi declared as the Kuribo emerged out of thin air, forming a large wall, protecting the duelist, with this many monsters, it's impossible for your dragon to break through. This won't work. Sido shouted, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, destroy them. The three heads unleashed a fiery white beam and exploded against the group of Kuribos. However, despite the severe attack, the wall of monsters didn't seem to diminish as more Kuribo surrounded the destroyed area. Tisk. Sido clicked his teeth, I will end my turn. He glared at Yugi, and the young duelist smiled proactively, I draw. He shouted and stared at the new card in his hand, I will activate my spell card Living Arrow, anime card. It allows me to use my spell on my opponent's monster, and the spell I will combine Living Arrow with is polymerization. Yami Yugi, in doing so, I can fuse the mammoth graveyard in my hand to your blue eyes ultimate dragon, anime. What? Sito exclaimed. A golden arrow impaled Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in the chest, and the monster screeched in pain. To Sito's shock, a skull resembling an elephant emerged from the dragon's chest. Almost immediately, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon scales rotted off its body, and its flesh melted onto the floor. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, attack, 4500 and GT, 3300, defense, 3800, how is this happening? Sido muttered, why is my blue eyes ultimate dragon getting weaker? It's simple, really, Yami Yugi explained, your blue eyes ultimate dragon is a living light monster, while my mammoth graveyard is an dark undead monster. 
By fusing the two, your blue eyes ultimate dragon will start to decompose, anime. D, decompose, my blue eyes ultimate dragon. Impossible. Sito yelled. Oh, but it is very possible, Kaiba, Yami Yugi said, since Mammoth Graveyard has an attack of 1200, your dragon will lose that amount of attack every turn as a penalty. No, Sito clutched his head in disbelief, I won't yield, continue to attack. Ultimate burst. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon endured the pain and opened its jaws. It once again unleashed a beam of destruction but to no avail, as more curable replenished what was destroyed. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Attack, 3300 and GT, 2100, Defense, 3800, I will summon Celtic Guardian. Yugi shouted, and a large elf warrior wielding a great sword arrived, then I will end my turn, and your monster will rot even further. Celtic Guardian, Attack, 1400, Defense, 1200, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Attack, 2100 and GT, 900 Defense, 3800, Sido gritted his teeth when he watched a chunk of flesh detach from Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's body, revealing its bone, I, I will skip my turn. Since your Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is lower than the penalty, it would naturally stop. However, it's enough. Celtic Guardian, Attack. Yugi ordered. The elf warrior charged and cleanly decapitated one of the dragon's heads. Your blue eyes ultimate dragon was a fusion of three dragons, meaning I must destroy all three heads. He muttered when Celtic Guardian retreated. Sido Kaiba, 900 LP and GT, 400 LP, Sido couldn't believe it. He can't lose, no, he couldn't afford to lose. The preliminary round will end soon, and Sido won't have time to search for more star chips. For the first time, he felt an emotion that he never imagined he would ever feel, fear. Sido glanced at Makuba, and a horrible feeling washed over him. He failed, he couldn't protect his brother, after this match, Pegasus took Makuba from him, can Yuna even defend his brother against an entire organization? Will she do it in the first place? Suddenly, time seemed frozen in place as Sido's eyes widened in shock. He began walking aimlessly and staring at his blue eyes ultimate dragon with a complicated emotion. Sido stopped when he arrived in front of Makuba. He anxiously reached out his hand, and Makuba's figure warped when Sido's finger grazed his brother's face. Sido watched with disbelief as Makuba's body became slimmer and his hair turned brown, transforming into a younger version of Sido. You failed. Young Sido said condescendingly. No no I. Sido stammered young Sido, you promised. You promised that you would always protect our little brother. You promised. Young Sido muttered and grabbed his wrist. Sido wrestled against his younger self as young Sido was absorbed into his body. He stared at the area where young Sido touched him. Like the blue eyes ultimate dragon, his skin melted, and he yelled in pain. Weak. Young Sido's voice resonated in his mind, how could you say that you're trying your best if you're not even putting your life on the line? Darkness consumed Sido, and he gasped as he was brought back to reality. Sido found himself at his original position and collapsed on one knee, W what was that? Was it all an illusion? Young Sido's words replayed in his head, my life on the line. He gazed at Makuba, and a sense of calmness overwhelmed his inner turmoil. His younger self was right, he should put his life on the line to protect his brother. Sido's eyes were full of resolve, and under Yugi's cautious gaze, he walked towards the castle's edge, where behind him was a cliff so steep that it would surely kill him. Yugi. I will skip my move. In your next turn, if you attacked me with your Celtic Guardian, the shockwave would knock me off the cliff, killing me. Sido explained with a composed expression. What are you talking about, Kaiba? Yami Yugi shouted angrily, are you going this far for a mere duel? Yes, Kaiba roared, you have no idea. I will do anything to win. Come on, Yugi. Attack me and kill me right here. Sido inched closer to the edge as the heels of his shoe knocked a few pebbles off the edge. Big brother. Makuba screamed. Before he could sprint to his brother's side, Yuna grasped Makuba's wrist, restraining him, let me go. He cried, but she shook her head. Sido's eyes met with Yuna, and she stared at him with a disturbed expression. He found it bizarre that despite her troubled appearance, why didn't Yuna seem surprised? 
It was like she had anticipated his move from the beginning. He chuckled to himself, Sito felt he was going paranoid. Maybe it was the mindset of moments away from his death. The young president gazed at his opponent, what was your choice Yugi? I will push myself over the edge without a moment of hesitation. That's how much this duel is important to me. Yami Yugi glared at Sito, I will. I will. His pupils flickered anxiously. Silence dominates the field as everyone holds their breath. Seconds felt like hours until Yami Yugi's expression became fierce. Looks like you have made up your mind. Sito said tranquilly. Immediately, Yami Yugi flicked his arm, here I go, Kaiba. Celtic Guardian attack. Everyone's eyes widened in shock when the elf warrior charged. Sito nodded and spread his arms, embracing his fate. Yugi, don't. T shrieked from the side, that's not you. Hearing T's scream, Yami Yugi grasped his head in agony and fell to the ground. His atmosphere changed completely, and he gasped in fear. The Celtic Guardian stopped, and the attack was cancelled. Yugi trembled in disbelief, W what have I done? Sweat drizzled down his face. Was he really going to allow Kaiba to die for a mere game? Sito quietly lowered his arms, seems like I have one. He drew his card and activated Monster Reborn, and the decapitated head regrew back onto Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's head. Blue Eyes White Dragon, head 1 attack, 3000, defense, 2500, now destroy Celtic Guardian. Sito shouted as the restored dragon head destroyed the elf with its sharp teeth. Yugi Mutu, 1000 LP and GT, 0 LP, Yugi couldn't even register his loss and sobbed despairingly. His thoughts were chaotic, and horrible guilt sprouted from within him, I, I really was going to kill him. Since he unlocked that puzzle, Yugi felt another presence taking control whenever he duels. Now that same presence has almost murdered someone just because of a game. In horror, Yugi stared at the cards in his hand and threw them away. His tears stained the stone pavement, and his friend worriedly approached him. Meanwhile, Sido packed up the dual discs and took the star chips they had placed earlier to the side as bets. He calmly placed the chips into his gauntlet. Sido glared at the castle, and without a word, he entered. Yuna and Makuba were too stunned to speak, and the two quietly followed behind Sido. Yuna went past the group and stopped. She glanced at Yugi with concern and pity. T knelt beside Yugi and gently wiped his tears. She raised her head and looked at Yuna from the corner of her eyes, G, go first, Sinosan. We. We will meet you inside. Yuna nodded and chased after Sido, leaving the startling scene behind. Sido traversed through the castle. Halls, he stopped when he heard two footsteps trailing his shadow. Sido turned around and stared at Makuba and Yuna following close behind him. His eyes set on his little brother, Makuba, Sido's tone was blunt and solemn. However, he still couldn't hide the hint of anxiety in his voice. Hearing his name, Makuba gritted his teeth and angrily barged past him. Sido was caught off guard, and his little brother sprinted down the corridor. As he gazed at Makuba's rapidly fading back, Sido sighed and turned to Yuna. They stared at each other silently, and Sido clicked his teeth at her lack of emotions, what are you looking at? He growled in a sour mood. Nothing. Yuna didn't respond and stared at Sido. You must be cursing me in your thoughts, right? Sido assumed, well, come on, then insult me. No response again. Sido was flustered and roared with rage, what are you waiting for? Berate me, call me weak. You must feel ashamed about what I did. Sido's mind was in chaos, on the one hand, he resolved as a brother to save Makuba. However, on the other, his spirit as a duelist felt nothing but shame. Now he stood on a balance where both sides of his heart weighed him down like shackles. So he wanted Yuna to decide, Sido wished she could scream at him, mock him for his weakness and tip him over. Knowing that Yuna couldn't understand his role as a sibling, he only wished she could judge him in the opinion of the duelist. But you don't get it. You never will. Sido rambled aimlessly, I did it to protect my family, and I will gladly throw away my dignity. Yet, Sido desperately defended himself and couldn't help but laugh self-depreciatingly. Even though he desired Yuna to belittle him as she was the only duelist he had ever lost to, Sido realized how much pressure her words could be. 
his chest heaved when he ran out of breath. The silence returned to the castle, the only sound audible was Sido's heavy breathing. Eventually, Yuna finally opened her mouth, and Sido waited anxiously, no. Sido's eyes widened slightly, and he frowned. Yuna walked past him, and Sido stammered, why aren't you saying anything? Aren't you disappointed with my method? Yuna shook her head, and her long blue hair swayed languidly, why, you. Kept Makuba. Safe. Sido gaped with disbelief, does she not care? But. Yuna's pause caused Sido to flinch, and he keenly listened, Val value yours. SS self more. Before Sido can retort, Yuna leaves, leaving him alone in the hallway. Her demeanor surprised him. Her soft and gentle voice played repeatedly in his head, and the young president froze in place. If Sido were in her shoes, he would feel so disgusted to be called a duelist while someone like that existed that he would quit duel monsters entirely. Sir Kaiba, amidst his thought, a man dressed in a black suit and shaved glasses approached Sido from behind, Mr. Pegasus is awaiting you in the duel room. Please follow me. Sido faced the man and scowled. He glanced at where Yuna and Makuba left before nodding quietly. Soon he will have his revenge, and everything will return to normal. Yuna POV, I strolled through the castle, searching for Makuba. I swear, this place was too big, and I'm not sure I can wander freely like this. No one has stopped me yet, so I assume it's fine. That talk with Kaiba caught me off guard, you know. Kaiba screaming like that scared me a little bit. He wanted me to insult him, but even if I thought negatively of him, I never had enough social skills to do it, the least I could do was complain in my head, but that may also be a stretch. As someone who watched the show, I know Kaiba's motive, so I would be wrong to blame him. But still, that was seriously reckless of him, so I had to scold him slightly. I hoped my tone was harsh, so my words should drill some sense into him. By looking at his expression, there can only be one thing. I must have done it correctly. I felt ecstatic knowing my social skills had leveled up, so each step felt like I was floating. After a bit of wandering, I finally found Makuba after a strenuous search. He was leaning against a wall and depressingly hugged his legs. Sido threatening to kill himself must have been a great shock, and even though I predicted it would happen, it's still startling to see it in real life. I knelt beside Makuba, and he ignored me while continuing to sulk. I poked his shoulder, and he groaned angrily, leave me alone. His mood was justified, I mean, he did watch his brother almost kill himself for a card game. The mastermind was Pegasus himself, so Kaiba was not at fault here. Thinking of that white-haired America, I felt a shiver down my spine. If this goes like the anime, Kaiba will surely lose, and Makuba will surely be devastated. Should I have given him a card? I don't know if it was the smart choice, as one card won't help him much. Eventually, I stood up as Makuba curiously glanced at me, let's find Kaiba. Makuba grumbled and expressed his disapproval. Sorry kiddo, I'm not taking no for an answer. I gently pulled Makuba by the hand and led him down the castle halls. Makuba was still pouting, but at least he behaved, so we didn't waste much time. We eventually found Kaiba by following the sound of commotion. As I opened the door, what greeted us was a large room like a small stadium. It was a place specifically built for dueling, and a large dueling arena sat in the middle of the room, almost to the walls. The door we entered didn't directly take us to the room, but instead, a long open balcony loomed over the duel arena. Aikaiba was standing at one of the podiums of the arena. His eyes were directed towards us, even if his face didn't show, he seemed relieved to see us. On the other side was Pegasus, and he chuckled upon our arrival. Ah Yunasano, I'm glad you have made it. Pegasus beamed, it would be unfortunate if you were defeated in the preliminaries, but your skill in dueling has exceeded my expectations. I frowned, so he was observing us. Was this what Kaiba was angry about? Kaiba snorted when he met my eyes and glared at Pegasus, let us begin. Indeed. Pegasus hummed, we can't drag this on any longer. The duel arena came to life as the two stared at each other intensely, duel, x2 20 minutes later. The battle proceeded just like the original, and watching it felt painful. Using his millennium eye, Pegasus read Kaiba like a book, predicting his every move. All the strategies Kaiba fabricated were instantly shot down before they could begin. 
He even went as far as to steal Kybus Blue Eyes White Dragon from him using the card prophecy, which allowed Pegasus to select a random card in Kybus' hand, if it was a monster, Pegasus could predict whether its ATK was over or lower than 2000. If he guessed correctly, he could steal that card. Since Pegasus was reading Kybus' mind with the Millennium Eye, it was cheating, so he could guess correctly no matter what. Eventually, the match became even more one-sided as Pegasus used his trump card Toon World. If this was the real world, it shouldn't be as powerful as now, but unfortunately, it's the anime world, and just like any other old cards, it was a total scam. Any monsters Pegasus played transformed into a cartoon version of themselves, and they hid amongst the Toon book so Kaiba couldn't attack them. With nothing to counter him, Kaiba must keep drawing cards as he was backed closer to a corner. Big Brother is going to lose, isn't he? Makuba asked in a worried tone. I glanced at Makuba in silence, not knowing how to respond. He trembled and bit his nails nervously. It wasn't long before the match reached its conclusion. Kaiba continued to draw until finally, nothing. He has completely emptied his deck. Kaiba's eyes widened, and Pegasus's laughter echoed across the room, looks like you lost Sido Kaiba. Kaiba gritted his teeth as Pegasus continued aggravating him, you have your only chance of getting revenge, but don't worry, I will save you from living with the shame. Pegasus revealed a card with no image from his breast pocket, and he smiled ominously. A brilliant golden light blinded my eyes, and I backed away. When the light settled, we saw Kaiba, unresponsive to the outside world. His pupils were blurry, displaying a lack of awareness. Kaiba's knees buckled, and he collapsed like a puppet having its strings cut. Immediately, Makuba recklessly climbed over the railing separating us from the dual arena and athletically landed from a couple of meters down. I hurriedly chased after him, and just as I was going to lift my leg, my body froze in place. I felt my face turn slightly red and awkwardly stared at the floor below me. Wow, I was going to do something imprudent. I timidly cleared my throat and sped to the exit door. Wait for me, Makuba. I'm coming down when I find the exit. Third POV, a few minutes later, the door to the dual room opens, and Yuna rushes to Makuba. The boy was in tears and impatiently shook his brother, but Sido wouldn't wake up no matter what he did. Big brother, wake up. He yelled. Yuna bit her lips, she didn't know how to comfort the boy, and if she tried, Makuba would probably cry more. Pegasus chuckled with amusement and clapped his hands. The guard standing beside the walls moved at once. They approached the two brothers and restrained them, seems like the fun's over, Pegasus said, take them away. Makuba struggled desperately while Yuna tried to protect him. She pushed one of the guards away and stood between them, S, stop. She glared at Pegasus, who smirked, and his subordinate approached in unison. Yuna was shoved to the ground, and they grabbed Makuba while dragging him away. She groaned and gritted her teeth. Yuna stared at Makuba, and a complicated feeling washed over her. Yuna was terrified, and her body shook with fear. However, Makuba's frightened face remained in her head, and something clicked inside her. My. Soul. Pegasus stopped laughing and raised his hand. Immediately the guards let Makuba go as he stared at Yuna with anticipation. Realizing Pegasus was listening, she gathered her courage and opened her mouth, we duel. If I win. Let them go. And why should I do that? Pegasus hummed. If you defeat. Me, Yuna stood up and smacked her chest, my soul you. Take it. Pfft, Pegasus burst into laughter, to think you even know about that. He smiled dangerously and pulled back his hair, revealing the golden millennium eye. They stared at each other as sweat dripped down Yuna's forehead. Pegasus sneered, fine, let's play your game. He glanced at his subordinate, assign their rooms and ensure they're comfortable. He turned his back on Yuna and calmly walked towards the exit. Pegasus suddenly stopped, I congratulate you on making it to the second part of my tournament. I will see you soon. Yuna POV, I gasped for breath, and I felt lightheaded. Did I put my soul at stake for these two? It was truly a spur of the moment, and my mouth moved impulsively. My brain went to autopilots, forcibly taking control of my body. When I thought about rejecting the proposal, a disturbing sensation overwhelmed my body and made me want to gag. I groaned and fearfully stood up. As I took deep breaths to remove the repulsive taste in my mouth, 
a system screen manifested before my eyes. Task, number three, complete. Collect reward. Deciding to retrieve my profits later, I sluggishly swiped my hand, and the screen disappeared. However, contrary to my expectation, another panel immediately replaced the old one, and the neon blue light irritated my eyes. Task, number four, defeat Maximilian Pegasus and take back Cito Kaiba's soul. Time limit, undetermined reward, 10,000 credits, it seemed fairly normal, and I was surprised by the generous reward. Yet, right below the task screen, a red display flashed brightly and gave me goosebumps. Warning, rejecting this task is impossible, and failure in completion may result in dire consequences. I shuddered, consequences as in getting my soul taken. Yeah, that sounds pretty dire to me. Big sister. Makuba yelled while sprinting towards me. He scowled and spoke with irritation, what do you think you're doing? Why would you negotiate with that man? Oi oi, you will also get your soul taken if I don't stop him, you know. Pegasus was the one behind why my brother is being this way, right? Makuba growled, so why would you join our fight? Why? I smiled wryly, don't. No. H.A. Makuba was exasperated, and I felt a blow to my self-esteem from his condescending gaze. While he continued to rant, the guards led us into our rooms. Makuba took Kaiba with him, I offered to carry Kaiba for him, but he readily refused before entering his room without another word. Makuba must have been putting up a front. He should be grieving for his brother. I pressed my hand against his door and sighed with frustration. I wanted to help, but I didn't know how. I have never comforted someone in my life, and I'm scared that I would only make things worse. After minutes of contemplation, I sighed again and returned to my room. I collapsed onto the bed and stared at the ceiling. My hand reached for the bright ceiling as the system reappeared before my eyes. Task, number three, complete. Collect reward. I clicked the virtual button and watched as the system calculated my earnings. Duelist defeated, X5, reward. 5,000 credits, 5 duelists. There was Mako Tsunami, the Eliminator Lutra, an unfortunate side character duelist, Bandit Keith, and Bonds. I swiped my hand and navigated toward the main menu. Name, Unisano, title, the one who defeated the champion, credits, 5,200, task, number 4, inventory, shop, whoa, 5,200 credits. This was the first time I had seen this large of an amount. However, my mood was immediately dampened knowing that I might not even get to spend it all if I don't survive tomorrow. I groaned. What did I really get myself into? Una POV, after a few hours, the men in suits returned and ordered me to follow. When I stepped out of my room, Makuba was already waiting. His eyes were red and vaguely swollen, indicating that he was crying. Seeing his pitiful state, I felt guilty for leaving him alone. Should I have said something? Unfortunately, it was too late, so I ensured he could be happy now. I approached Makuba and held out my hand. Makuba's eyes widened in surprise. He raised his head and smiled as he eagerly grasped it. My expression became tense but immediately loosened, my lips loosened, and I was satisfied by his uplifting mood. When we were ready, Pegasus's subordinate led us deeper into the castle. Makuba and I were wary and kept a fair distance from them. I still couldn't trust Pegasus even if he had agreed not to lay his hand on Makuba. We walked for five minutes, guided through multiple lavish hallways before arriving at a door. It was an extravagant dining room with chandeliers, beautifully designed pieces of furniture, and a long table filled with plates of food that only rich people could ever dream of eating. A group was already sitting at the table, and their expressions brightened when noticing us while I flinched in response. Yugi and his friends greeted us eagerly while I raised my hand weakly. No matter how often I met them, their overly friendly atmosphere felt poisonous. I had already expected their presence but thought it would be sooner. Probably Kaiba's duel started earlier than the original, so by the time they made an appearance, it ended long ago. Makuba and I sat across the Yugi's crew in silence. While sitting down, I secretly glanced at Yugi. His face was still pale, and he seemed shaken by what happened before. Well, he will eventually overcome it during the tournament. I turned my head and stared at the new person in the crowd. It was a fair-skinned woman with blonde hair, a short-sleeved purple coat, and a white tank top. 
From watching Yu-Gi-Oh for so long, I instantly knew who she was. My Valentine, a supporting character in the show. She was distant in season 1 but eventually joined the crew and reappeared throughout the story. But since I hadn't even interacted with her yet, we only nodded at each other briefly and focused on ourselves. As usual, the group tried to strike up a conversation, but unfortunately, Makuba and I weren't in the best mood to talk, so we responded haphazardly. Sensing our atmosphere, they thankfully stopped, and I focused on the food displayed on the table. My stomach quietly grumbled, complaining about the lack of nutrients. However, since nobody was eating, I was too embarrassed to be the first, so I dug my nails into my palms to endure the temptation. Suddenly the door to the dining room opened, and the person I wanted to see the most right now entered. Sensing my gaze, Pegasus's chuckled, and he sat down on the far end of the table. I sighed and unclenched my hand, it looked like I just lost my appetite. As soon as Pegasus sank onto his chair, he spoke in a relaxed tone, well, now that everyone's here, I would like first to congratulate Yunisano, Yugi Mutu, my Valentine, and Joey Wheeler for being the four duelists that survived the preliminaries match. Pegasus clapped nonchalantly, but nobody copied his applause. He smiled, unperturbed by the unfriendly welcome, and continued his explanation, now I will explain how the semi-finals and the finals will work. Suddenly, he revealed four cards from his breast pocket and presented them to us, it's simple, the four of you will draw a card, if your card matches with someone else, they will be your opponent for tomorrow. Pegasus gestured at Yugi, Joey, Mai, and me to approach. We hesitantly picked our cards and went back to our seats. I observed the card in my hand, and there wasn't anything special except for the front side of the card, where it was an image of blue eyes white dragon. I curiously rubbed my finger along the picture, and a complicated emotion welled inside me. I glared at Pegasus, who purposely avoided my gaze. As harmless as this card was, only Makuba and I knew the hidden meaning deep inside. Ah, that's the same card I have, Sinosin. Joey exclaimed and brought me back to reality. I glanced at Joey's hand, where he held the same blue eyes white dragon card. I then turned to Mai and Yugi, who also held similar cards to each other with the image of Dark Magician. Pegasus smiled, looks like you have found your opponents for tomorrow. Then allow me to explain further. He informed us that three matches would be held tomorrow. Two for staying in the semi-finals and one final match to determine the winner. He then placed two new cards on the table. I immediately recognized them as they were the exact copies of the cards he had given me before the beginning of the tournament. The one with images of gold and treasure was called the glory of the king's hand, while the card with nothing but a grey box was called the glory of the king's opposite hand. You must possess one of the cards to participate in the semi-finals, otherwise, we will be disqualified. Thankfully, I remembered to bring both cards with me, or else things would have got awkward. Anyway, the glory of the king's hand was needed to claim the cash prize, while the glory of the king's opposite hand would allow us to challenge Pegasus for the dual king title. When Pegasus finished speaking, he smiled and spread his arms, now please enjoy what I have prepared, and I can't wait to see the amazing duels tomorrow. The dinner itself was uneventful, Yugi's crew couldn't control their hunger anymore and excitedly dug in while Makuba and I ate timidly. No matter how delicious the food was, there was no way I could enjoy it while eating at the same table as that man. It wasn't long until Makuba, and I left, Pegasus remained silent and only observed us from a distance, which was more terrifying than it should be. When we returned, I stopped in front of Makuba's room and gently tapped him on the shoulder. Oh, you want to come in? Makuba asked, grasping my intentions. I nodded, and he shrugged in agreement as I curiously entered and scanned his room. Well, as I expected, it looked just like mine, so there wasn't anything special. However, when my eyes wandered to the couch in the corner of the room, I froze. Kaiba was lying there motionlessly, his eyes closed and in a trance-like state. Makuba sighed and held his brother's hand as he muttered something unintelligible. His shoulders trembled, and he hurriedly wiped his face from the tears. I patted him on the shoulder, and Makuba frowned when he noticed my sympathetic gaze, I'm not crying. However, no matter how much he tried to hide, Makuba still couldn't remove the sadness in his eyes. Eventually, he relented and embraced me. His bold approach caught me off guard, and I felt my anxiety rising again. I gulped, and my hand hesitantly wrapped around his back. We hugged silently as Makuba buried his face in my stomach. 
I had never really embraced anyone before, and I couldn't remember if I ever hugged my parents because I was pretty young back then, so it was a new experience. But, despite the weirdness, it doesn't feel as bad as I would have thought. Sister. Makuba mumbled, he raised his head and stared into my eyes, don't lose tomorrow. I gasped, seriously, this child's way too cute compared to the arrogant piece of work called his brother. I pinched his cheek, and a strange chuckle escaped my lips, won't. He nodded and was convinced by my promise. Eventually, Makuba yawned, and he rubbed his exhausted face. I guided Makuba to his bed, and he fell asleep as soon as his body hit the mattress. Today was excruciatingly long, and many things that felt pretty traumatic happened. I quietly approached the soulless Kaiba. Right now, with his soul missing, he's merely a shell. Yet he looked like he was in a deep coma. I recalled Makuba's sad expression and gritted my teeth. It's safe to say that Makuba was my first friend, and his depressed mood hurts. I don't want to see him sad and do that, and I will defeat Pegasus no matter what. I took a deep breath and stared at Kaiba. You can rest easy, I will protect Makuba. With newfound determination, I rushed to my room and activated my system. I immediately navigated towards the shop menu and fervently scrolled through the list of useful cards. Links, XYZ, Synchro, Pendulums, and Tuners, are already out of the question as these gimmicks weren't implemented in this timeline yet, so I ignored them without a second thought. I also skipped past some well-known card negations as they weren't as useful in this first season, where all effect cards were simple, and there was no point stopping them. I'm looking for monsters or spells consistent with my current deck. My playstyle revolved around sending my powerful dragons to the graveyard and special summoning the monsters to utilize their effects. Therefore, I hoped I could find more dragon monsters that allow me to send monsters to the graveyard quickly while being cheap at the same time. Since with only 5,200 credits, I couldn't even afford one ultra-rare card, and my options were limited. Should I go for a fusion as well? I muttered and crossed my arms, deep in thought. Having an extra deck won't be that bad, but considering the cost and getting fusion materials, I can, at most, have one monster. As I fervently scrolled further down the screen, I stopped when some cards caught my attention. I stared at the cards intently inside, I wanted them all, but I definitely didn't have enough. While sulking, I purchased the cards I could afford as my credits decreased rapidly. They were all monsters, and I ignored the spells as I already had a lot and needed to replace my fodders as soon as possible. Now on to my extra deck. I left enough to buy a monster in the super rare rank, but I'm having trouble with who to buy. I hoped I could get a dragon fusion monster to revive them through Felgrand's ability in case they were defeated, then, who should I choose? My dragons were mostly light and dark attributes, so they first needed light or dark monsters as materials. Jeez. There's not many, were there. Wait. A light bulb lit up in my brain, and I vigorously searched in the shop. I finally stopped at a single card, and my eyes shone excitedly. This was it. I bought the card without hesitation, and it materialized midair and fell to the floor. As I eagerly reached for the card, a phenomenon stopped me from moving. Cold sweat ran down my back as my fingers trembled in fear. Why am I feeling like this? My pupils slowly zoned in on the card, and I shivered uncontrollably. The card was extruding an eerie sensation as a wisp of purple smoke surrounding it. Gathering my courage, I picked up the card, and a petrifying fear washed over me. However, that suffocating feeling disappeared, and I fell onto my knees. I stared at the card in my hand in shock and was again reminded that Duel Monsters wasn't a simple card game anymore. Each card contained a power I couldn't fathom, and this was the first time I had tasted its might. But the question was why I hadn't encountered this situation earlier. Knowing it's useless to think about now, I focused on the card. I hurriedly placed the card into my deck as the atmosphere returned to normal. I exhaled with relief. Seriously, what the heck was that? I decided it was best to forget it, that card had stopped emitting the pressure, so I assumed everything was fine. After returning my deck to my inventory, I quickly showered before falling onto my bed. I gripped the sheets tightly, and my knuckles turned pale, I will win, no matter what. Next day, third POV, within the duelist castle, two people, one male, and one female, could be seen standing across from each other. 
Surrounding them was a massive dual arena that spans across the room. You got this, big sister. Makuba shouted from the spectator seats while the other people cheered as well. The two duelists stared at each other in silence, the man's expression twitched, and his anxiety spiked, facing her is kind of scary. He thought while glimpsing at the quiet Yuna. Unlike in the past, her altitude was fierce, like a predator stalking its prey. Joey didn't know what changed, but it was too late to turn back. He joined this tournament for the prize money to pay for his little sister's surgery, so he needed to win. Unbeknownst to him, Yuna was also fighting for something incredibly important. She knew Joey's participation purpose, but she won't give up. Are both duelists ready? The referee asked from the sidelines. Yuna and Joey nodded as the duel arena appeared, the match between Yuna Sano and Joey Wheeler has officially begun. The two duelists breathed deeply and drew five cards into their hands. They gazed at each other and smiled proactively, duel. X2 inch, Yuna Sano, 2000 LP, Joey Wheeler, 2000 LP. NVM problem solved hey guys, just letting you know, now that author notes will be placed at the end of the chapter there will be a, with a number within to index which info to answer your questions. Also after Duelist Kingdom, should I add the virtual world arc? It was only two to three episodes long but UGO consider it as an arc anyway and it honestly didn't contribute much to the story so tell me how you guys feel. Third POV, Yuna calmly gazed at her hand as a small plan formulated in her head, first, I will use foolish burial and send a monster from my deck to my graveyard. Second, I will summon dragon knight of creation, set two cards, and end my turn. The familiar knight with golden armor was summoned to Yuna's field. The knight proudly raised his fist at the thought of being brought to battle before pointing his giant sword at Joey. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, Joey frowned and recalled it was the same starting move Yuna had used against Keith and Bonds at the start of their duel. However, this time, Joey was cautious, she must have something planned. He stared at his hand, and it was perfect. Joey smiled enthusiastically and initiated his counterattack, I will summon Baby Dragon. A cute little dragon appeared on the field. It eagerly flew around and tried to act intimidating. Baby dragon, attack, 1200, defense, 700, then I will activate time wizard's effect in my hand and play this card as a spell. Joey declared, and a clock with limbs manifested in the middle of the field. With time wizard, I can spin a roulette, if I succeed, time will be altered, but if I fail, it will destroy all my monsters. Joey announced, Let's go, Time Wizard. The Time Wizard lifted his staff and created a spinner. The arrow spun rapidly before finally settling on the image of the Time Wizard itself. The clock monster eagerly celebrates and activates its magic affecting the arena and covering it in bright light. When the light dimmed, a humongous dragon stood on Joey's field. It has brown scales, sharp teeth and a body full of muscles. By forwarding time, my baby dragon has grown so now it's no longer Baby Dragon but Thousand Dragon. Joey declared. Thousand Dragon, attack, 2400, defense, 2000, however, since time has moved forward, your knight was now an old man. Contrary to his original glorified appearance, the Dragon Knight of Creation's body was frail and skinny. Unable to stand, the Dragon Knight of Creation groaned and collapsed on one knee as he barely had enough strength to lift his sword. Dragon Knight of Creation, Attack, 1800 and GT, 900, Defense, 600 and GT, 300, now it's time to attack. Joey shouted, destroy that knight. Thousand dragon charged, each step was like an earthquake, shaking the room. Dragon knight of creation was too weak to defend himself and fell to thousand dragon's claws. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 500 LP, alright. Joey almost won in one move. Tristan cheered on the sidelines. T nodded, yeah, it was surprising how much stronger that doofus is getting, right Yugi? However, Yugi didn't answer and watched thoughtfully, I'm not sure. Huh, what do? You mean? Tristan questioned doubtfully, is there something I'm not seeing? Yugi shook his head and explained, we have all seen how Sinosin has battled. She easily defeated Kaiba, the world champion. She has two set cards but has activated none of them. Isn't that weird? I might be wrong, but I just felt worried. 
Their excitement died down, and the crew watched the match thoughtfully. Yugi was the strongest among them, they should take his word seriously, and seriously, they should. As soon as Dragon Knight of Creation left the field, Yuna announced, By destroying Dragon Knight of Creation, you have triggered the Keeper of the Shrine in my hand. She revealed the card to Joey, and to his surprise, it was a monster card. Immediately, Yuna Speciali summoned the monster in defense position, and a small platform rose from the ground, and a figure sat on the elevated land. It was an elderly being with scales covering his body. A pair of dragon wings protrude from his back, and horns on his head. The old man stroked his beard and chuckled as he spread his arms, gesturing at the thousand dragon like a grandfather welcoming his grandchild. Keeper of the Shrine, Attack, Zero, Defense, 2100, with Keeper of the Shrine, whenever a dragon monster on the field is sent to the graveyard or destroyed, I can special summon it from my hand or graveyard. I see. Joey muttered, finally, I will set a card face down. It's your move, Sinosin. As soon as Joey ended his turn, Yuna smiled and immediately activated one of the set cards, I will use Solemn Wish. Whenever I draw a card, I gain 500 life points, she said while drawing, and her life points increased. Unisano, 500 LP and GT, 1000 LP, Joey gritted his teeth upon realizing Yuna had a way to replenish her life points. Now he felt like there was a time limit to the match, and he would surely lose if the game dragged on for too long. I will use Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. Yuna declared when a green vase with a goblin face appeared. The pot licked its lips before shattering as Yuna added two more cards into her hand. Yuna Sano, 1000 LP and GT, 2000 LP, then I will use Keeper of the Shrine's second effect. During my main phase, the Keeper of the Shrine can be treated as two tributes. Thus, I will use Keeper of the Shrine to tribute Summon Arc Brave Dragon. The elderly monster transformed into millions of bright particles and transformed into one shining orb. The sphere then began to stretch and contort, gradually forming into the shape of a large dragon. The monster has white scales with golden ridges and blue tints at the end of its claws, and four wings grew from the dragon's sides. An emerald was embedded on the dragon's forehead, and two crystalline bristles protruded from the back of its head. Arc Brave Dragon, Attack, 2400, Defense, 2200, Now Arc Brave Dragon, Attack 1000 Dragon. Yuna ordered, and Arc Brave Dragon charged relentlessly. Hey, won't that destroy both our monsters? Joey stammered but was surprised to see Yuna's unfazed expression, TSK, I won't let that happen. I will activate my trap, Kunai with chain. It would give Thousand Dragon 500 more attacks and force Arc Brave Dragon into a defensive position. Thousand Dragon, 2400 attack and GT, 2900 attack, 2000 defense, Yuna nodded as Arc Brave Dragon obediently returned. It lay on the floor and quietly lowered its head. Then my turn ends, Yuna said and crossed her arms. Joey draws while analyzing the field. Yuna has Solemn Wish, one unknown set card, and a monster in a defensive position. Things seemed to be in his favor, but Joey couldn't understand why he was still afraid. Frustrated, he clenched his fist, I will summon Axe Raider. A muscular warrior wielding a battle axe arrived next to Thousand Dragon. The warrior waved his weapon and smiled at the sensation of an incoming battle. Axe Raider, Attack, 1700, Defense, 1150, then I will equip my Axe Raider with the legendary sword, granting him 300 more attacks. The axe vanishes out of the monster's hand, and a sword replaces its place. Axe Raider acted disgruntled on removing his favorite weapon, but he reluctantly wielded the blade as it gave him strength. Axe Raider, Attack, 1700 and GT, 2000, Defense, 1150, Finally, I'm attacking your Arc Brave Dragon with Thousand Dragon. Go! With Thousand Dragon's potent attack, Arc Brave Dragon fell helplessly. However, in doing so, it has reactivated Keeper of the Shrine, bringing him back onto the field. Keeper of the Shrine, Attack, Zero, Defense, 2100, Joey felt a bitter taste in his mouth, and he realized that unless he banished Yuna's monster, the Keeper of the Shrine would always return to the field. Such a tough card, he murmured, it's your turn. Yuna Sano, 2000 LP and GT, 2500 LP, suddenly, Joey winced when he felt his eyes getting irritated. He glanced at the source of the annoyance and frowned. 
On Yuna's field was a shiny green gem that felt strangely nostalgic. After a few seconds of contemplation, Joey gasped. That's the emerald arc brave dragon has on its forehead. What was it doing there? As if responding to his thoughts, the emerald emitted a bright light. Everyone covered their eyes from the blindness as Yuna's voice entered their ears. Arc Brave Dragon's effect has activated. If this monster was sent to the graveyard last turn, I can special summon one level 7 or 8 dragons from my graveyard. One level 7 or 8 dragons? Joey exclaimed, wait, you don't mean. Yuna smirked, I will special summon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The emerald burst into pieces as a golden dragon replaced its place. Joey grimaced, to think I would be fighting that. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack, 2800, defense, 2800, compared to Kaiba's blue eyes white dragon, Yuna's Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was fear inducing. The monster's effect was nothing to scoff at, and he thought his chance of winning had dropped to an all time low. With Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect, Yuna continued, when it was special summoned from the graveyard, I can banish one monster on the field or grave while Felgrand gains the amount of attack and defense equal to its level multiplied by 100. The one I choose is Thousand Dragon. Thousand Dragon howled in pain as Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand condemned it, and the monster transformed into a golden orb before being absorbed by the dragon completely. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack, 2800 and GT, 3500, defense, 2800 and GT, 3500, now I will attack. Yuna shouted, destroy Axe Raider. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand howled and unleashed a beam. Axe Raider released a desperate war cry and charged with his new sword. Unfortunately, his strength doesn't match his unwavering attitude, and he dies helplessly. Joey Wheeler, 2000 LP and GT, 500 LP, I will use Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect. If I destroy a monster, I can bring a level 7 or 8 dragon back from my graveyard. I summon Arc Brave Dragon. Arc Brave Dragon, attack, 2400, defense, 2000, Yuna, then I will use Graceful Charity, and I can draw 3 cards and discard 2 from my hand. Yuna Sano, 2500 LP and GT, 4000 LP, with this, I will use Keeper of the Shrine's effect again and summon Blue Eyes White Dragon, using it as tribute. Blue Eyes White Dragon, Attack, 3000, Defense, 2500, Oi Oi, this is a joke, right? Tristan shuddered. T, poor Joey. How is he going to win now? Yugi clenched his fist, Come on, Joey, don't give up. Joey gritted his teeth and sighed depressingly. On the other side, three gigantic dragons loomed over him and his pathetic field. Despite his awful situation, losing wasn't an option for him. He desperately needed the money, but to do that, he had to win. He drew, and a plan formed in his head. With the cards in his possession, there's no way that Joey can fully defeat this powerful board, but at least the best he can do was to stall. I will first use Pot of Greed and draw two more cards. Joey declared as he filled his hand, then I will use my second Pot of Greed. After the tag team duel with Yuna, Joey understood the limitations of his deck, which was that he barely had any spells to help him. Thankfully, his friends supported him by lending them their spare cards, and Joey managed to build a stronger deck which helped him tremendously. Joey, I will set a monster and two cards face down. I end my turn. Is that so, Yuna muttered softly and drew another card. Yuna Sano, 4000 LP and GT, 4500 LP, then I will attack your set monster. Go, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Wait, not so fast. Joey yelled, I will activate my trap card, Chasm of Spikes. When my opponent's monster attacks, I can destroy that monster, and they will suffer a quarter of damage equal to the monster's attack points. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand dived downwards but accidentally fell into a deep hole full of spikes. The sharp edges pierced the monster's body, killing it. Unisano, 4500 LP and GT, 3600 LP, Yuna instinctively scrunched her brows, with my dragon defeated, Keeper of the Shrine in my graveyard will activate. I won't let that happen. Joey shouted, straining his voice, I activate my second trap, Grave Robber, and I will steal Keeper of the Shrine from your graveyard. Then I will be the one to use Keeper of the Shrine's effect, and I will special summon him in defense position. Keeper of the Shrine, 
attack, zero, defense, 2100, Yuna was surprised as her monster was summoned onto Joey's side of the field. Without her knowledge, a small smile appeared on her face. Yuna knew the reason behind Joey's desperation, and she felt guilty that Joey would be brought to despair if she won. However, watching Joey fighting with everything he got, Yuna chuckled as she realized that it would be rude to hold back. I will end my turn. Yuna said, it's your move. 1. Joey nodded and drew, his eyes widened, and a small hope rekindled in his heart, I will tribute the keeper of the shrine and summon Red Eye's black dragon. The old man chuckled and a dark shadow engulfed him. A fierce creature rose from the darkness, and the dragon screeched in rage. Red Eye's black dragon, attack, 2400, defense, 2000, then I will use dragon nail and grant Red Eye's black dragon 700 more attacks. Red Eye's black dragon, attack, 2400 and GT, 3100, defense, 2000, Arc Brave Dragon can revive Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Joey pondered, then I should defeat Blue Eyes White Dragon first. Red Eyes Black Dragon, attack. The monster roared and lunged at Blue Eyes White Dragon. The two dragons clashed, both seemed to be equal strength. However, Red Eyes Black Dragon gradually gained the upper hand and struck down its opponent. Unisano, 3600 LP and GT, 3500 LP, naturally, the Keeper of the Shrine returned to Yuna's field. Keeper of the Shrine, Attack, Zero, Defense, 2100, Yuna, I will use Keeper of the Shrine's third effect. Third effect. Joey felt baffled as he couldn't believe how troublesome this elderly monster was. If the dragon sent to the graveyard was a normal monster, I can add one normal dragon monster from the graveyard to my hand. Yuna explained and revealed to Joey the chosen card. I will bring Blue Eyes White Dragon back into my hand. Joey scowled, I will set one card face down and end my turn. Yuna Sano, 3500 LP and GT, 4000 LP, I will use Keeper of the Shrine's effect and tribute the monster to summon my Blue Eyes White Dragon again. Blue Eyes White Dragon, attack, 3000, defense, 2500, I won't let you. Joey shouted, I activate the set trap trap hole. If my opponent summons a monster with 1000 or more attacks, I can destroy it. As soon as the blue eyes white dragon arrives, it implodes. Unisano, 4000 LP and GT, 2500 LP, alright. I managed to take down her life points by a bunch. Joey pumped his fist in excitement. Yuna smiled wryly and attacked the set monster with Arc Brave Dragon before ending her turn. The monster was a weak tiger axe that perished when it couldn't even cry out in pain. Joey was deterred as the monster was originally planned to be a meat shield. He drew a card and couldn't believe his insane luck. I will activate Monster Reborn to revive Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Yuna scowled as her trump card was used against her. F.A. She could tolerate Keeper of the Shrine being stolen, but when it was Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Yuna couldn't help but feel slightly disturbed. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was revived onto Joey's field and it roared gratefully. The dragon momentarily glared at Joey before facing its own master with reluctance. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack, 2800, defense, 2800, with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, I will banish your Arc Brave Dragon, and it will gain attack equal to its level multiplied by 100. Joey explained as he tried to remember Yuna's exact words. Arc Brave Dragon was consumed by Felgrand and transformed into energy as the dragon grew and its scales became more vibrant. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Attack, 2800 and GT, 3500, Defense, 2800, I can win this. Joey grinned like a child, Sinosin has nothing on her field now, and her Arc Brave Dragon couldn't bring back any more monsters. He glanced at his friends, and they were as excited as him. Joey then turned to his best friend Yugi and paused. Yugi, however, wasn't smiling as he stared at Yuna skeptically. Joey's smile disappeared when he felt a sense of anxiety. He twisted his head and frowned when the huge turn of events didn't faze her. Instead, Yuna expressed pity and regret at what she was about to do. I, I will end my turn. Joey stammered as he couldn't attack her with no monsters, calm down, Joey. With Red Eyes Black Dragon and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand at my side, I can't lose. Yuna Sano, 2500 LP and GT, 3000 LP, 
Wheeler San, why do you want to win? She asked out of the blue, stopping Joey in his tracks. Memories of his little sister appeared in his mind, and he clenched his fist. Why does he want the money so bad? So he can pay the surgery bill for his ill sibling. Joey couldn't understand why Yuna had asked this question until he looked into her eyes. It was the same resolve as his, and he realized that she had something just as important to her. I will activate my spell card change of heart. She declared, and I can take control of one of your monsters until the end of this turn. Is she going to take back Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand? Even if she attacked my Red Eyes Black Dragon with it, I would still have 100 life points left, so it should be fine. But contrary to his belief. I will take your Red Eyes Black Dragon. Red Eyes Black Dragon roared as its mind was hypnotized. The dragon flew to Yuna's side and lowered its head like a loyal dog. Then I will normally summon Komori Dragon and activates polymerization, fusing Red Eyes Black Dragon and Komori Dragon on the field. Everyone. A terrifying black portal absorbed the two monsters as material. After a few seconds, an ominous creature emerged that could be described as horrifying. W, what is that thing? Joey uttered in shock. Wheeler San, Yuna called to Joey, grabbing his attention, I also have something important I'm fighting for, so please forgive me okay? Yuna smiled, now at hashtag at dollar attack Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, the creature howled with hatred, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was killed in a blink of an eye, and with that, Joey's life points were depleted. Joey Wheeler, 500 LP and GT, 0 LP. 1. In the Duelist Kingdom, a duelist can only declare an attack using one monster in case you forget since most duels right now was when everyone only has one monster on the field anyway. Yuna POV, once the duel was over, Joey and I were lowered from the platform. He was still in shock, and he couldn't believe his loss. His eyes were unfocused, and his friends worriedly approached him. They wholeheartedly encouraged Joey, but his mood didn't seem to improve not even once. While watching the crew interact with each other, Makuba hugged me from the side and raised his head like a cute puppy asking for attention, big sister, that was amazing. His eyes were bright like stars and his favorability meter would probably soar through the roof if this was a RPG. What the heck was that in the end? Makuba eagerly asked, I have never seen that monster before. Unable to answer his thoughts, I smiled helplessly and patted his head. Knowing I'm avoiding his questioning, he pouted but decided not to delve deeper into the matter. While messing with Makuba, I glanced at Joey in the corner of my vision. I was curious about his reactions and what he was currently feeling. This duel was more important to him than I would ever understand, so I hope he can get better soon. Noticing my stare, Joey's gaze met mine. He broke away from his friends and immediately walked toward me. I felt anxious and guilty about robbing his chance to win the prize money. Joey desperately needed the money to pay for his little sister's surgery, but I was the one that took that opportunity away from him. Before I realized it, Joey stopped in front of me, and I nervously bit my lips. He must have sensed my anxiety and smiled wryly before reaching out his hand, that was a good duel Sinosin. I was caught off guard and hesitantly shook his hand. When I let go, Joey sighed and frustratingly ruffled his hair, you're seriously way too strong. Geez, it's just my luck that you're my first opponent. And, not mad. I asked and curiously tilted my head. Huh. Of course, I'm angry. Joey shrugged, I'm angry at myself for not being a better duelist. Well, I'm probably going back to my room and cry for a bit. Then I should be better. Joey said while smiling shamelessly. B, but M.O. money. I uttered, need. It. Yeah, you must have realized it, right? Joey chuckled, don't worry, I can find other ways to get the money. I nodded and patted my chest in relief. However, I have to make up for him anyway. Don't worry, Joey. If I'm still alive after this, you can get some money too. Shortly after, we were ushered by the referees as the second match between Yugi and Mai will begin. The rest of us went to spectator areas to watch the duel, and I sat beside Makuba as he dragged me along. I was quite interested in how the battle might turn out. Will Yugi play differently with the eternal soul I gave him? Unfortunately, their duel was the same as the one from the anime. The episode was mainly focused on Yugi's struggle with the pharaoh in his body. Even if I couldn't see the interaction, 
I can tell what was happening with Yugi's random change of emotions and his pale face. Ultimately, Yugi accepted his alter ego and transformed into Yami Yugi. Then with his divine draw power, Yami Yugi summoned Black Luster Soldier that wiped out Mai's strongest monster, the Harpy's Pet Dragon. With no more cards to defeat the Black Luster Soldier, Mai surrendered, and Yami Yugi won. One, so that means I have to fight Yugi now. My body tensed, and I nervously watched Yugi approaching his friends. Suddenly, a small hand rest on my shoulder and Makuba spoke in an assuring tone, Don't worry, big sister will win. That's easy to say, but it's the almighty pharaoh you're talking about. Let's not even consider his ability to create shadow games. His strongest power was the almighty divine draw, allowing him to get any card he wanted in the deck. Heck, he might even print new cards that he's not supposed to have. I sighed and stood up as my name was called. Makuba gave me one last encouragement as I went to the dueling arena. Yugi was already waiting for me and smiled upon my arrival. It was only a quick fleeting moment but the shift in atmosphere didn't escape my detection. Yugi's entire presence has changed and if I don't know any better I would have thought he had became a new person. Ah. I thought, he's here. Let this be a great duel, Yami Yugi said, crossing his arms. I nodded, and we entered our respective areas, I won't be holding back, and I expect you to do the same. He announced. Yes. I replied, I won't lose. Are both duelists ready? The referee asked. Ready. Yami Yugi and I shouted the referee flipped a coin and landed on heads, Yugi Mutu, will you go first or second? First. Yami Yugi replied without hesitation. Referee, understood, let the final match between Yugi Mutu and Yuna Sano begin. Yugi Mutu, 2000 LP, Yuna Sano, 2000 LP, my move. Yami Yugi announced, I will use Pot of Greed to draw two cards. Then I will summon Celtic Guardian in attack position. He yelled. An elven warrior wearing green armor appeared on the field. The soldier wielded a long sharp sword and planted the blade on the ground before resting his arms on the hilt. Celtic Guardian, 1400 attack, 1200 defense, I will then set two cards and end my turn. I would be cautious when there were two set cards on the field if it were any other duelist. However, in the case of Yami Yugi, I might as well assume that there's at least a mirror force or the sword placed, and I will suffer tremendously if not careful. However, I don't have any back row removal cards in my hand, so I can only pray that the damage will be manageable. I will summon Paladin of Felgrand. I declared. A young knight with blonde hair was summoned. He wore dashing silver armor, and a white cape, and was equipped with a saber that can cut anyone who comes too close. Paladin of Felgrand, 1700 attack, 300 defense, Paladin of Felgrand's effect will activate. I can equip this card with a level 7 or 8 dragon from my hand or deck. If Paladin of Felgrand is equipped with a monster, it couldn't be affected by monster effects. Paladin of Felgrand raised his sword in the air. A bright golden light shone down from the ceiling and flowed into his blade. The knight yelled as he was wrapped with a glimmering aura. Now attack Celtic Guardian. I ordered and pointed at the muscular elf. Paladin of Felgrand charged and swung his saber. However, the blade never reached Celtic Guardian when a magic circle appeared beneath his feet. I will activate my trap card, Spell Binding Circle. Yami Yugi announced when one of his hidden cards revealed itself, I can target one of my opponent's monsters and use one or more of the following effects, the monster loses 700 attacks, negating the monster's attack or changing its battle position. I will choose to lower Paladin of Felgrand's attack. Paladin of Felgrand, 1700 and GT, 1000 attack, 300 defense, I cursed as Paladin of Felgrand's attack was already in motion, and I couldn't cancel it. The knight swung his blade but was easily parried by Celtic Guardian. The elven warrior countered with a stab and the weapon pierced Paladin of Felgrand's chest. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 1600 LP, I set a card and end my turn. I declared. Yami Yugi nodded to himself, I will open my second set card, Eternal Soul. Eternal Soul. I frowned and felt a sudden regret from gifting Yugi the card. A stone tablet rises from the ground. On it was an image of Dark Magician in all its glory. Yami Yugi spread his arms, and the picture shined a blue hue. 
you're already familiar with this card, right? Yami Yugi smiled, I will activate Eternal Soul's second effect, allowing me to special summon my Dark Magician from my hand or graveyard. Come forth, my greatest partner, Dark Magician. The stone tablet came to life, and a figure emerged from the surface. The man wore a purple robe that was combined with metal armor. In his hand was a green staff, and the man twirled the weapon before pointing it at my face. Dark Magician, 2500 attack, 2100 defense, tisk. I clicked my teeth, it was the second turn, and the Dark Magician has already revealed itself. Typically, the Dark Magician will be Yugi Sei's monster that turns a losing game into a winning one. By summoning it this early, it meant that he considered me a threat, and I don't know whether to feel flattered at his high opinion of me or feel annoyed at the rise in difficulty. I will then equip Dark Magician with the Book of Secret Arts, giving him 300 more attack and defense points. Yami Yugi explained. A book appeared in Dark Magician's free hand. He read it thoroughly, and a powerful spell emits from the tip of his staff. Dark Magician, 2500 and GT, 2800 attack, 2100 and GT, 2400 defense, then I will set one more card and end my turn. Yami Yugi announced, and another card was placed. Wait before you end your turn. I yelled, I'm activating Solemn Wish. I gain 500 life points every time I draw a card. Yami Yugi narrowed his brows, the troublesome card has arrived. Yuna Sano, 1600 LP and GT, 2100 LP, I have been depending on Solemn Wish multiple times now, what can I say? It's a great card in this day and age. With a measly 2000 life points per duel, adding 500 every time I draw can make a difference. That's why I can dominate Joey, as all his plans became fruitless. However, with Yugi as my opponent, I have to make the most of it this time, and I'm sure he has a way of removing it. I will first use Pot of Greed and draw two cards. Yuna Sano, 2100 LP and GT, 3100 LP, after Pot of Greed, I will use the spell, Graceful Charity, to draw three cards and discard two. Yuna Sano, 3100 LP and GT, 4600 LP, with my life points replenished, I can fight back with less worry. I have a new card that I haven't used that can help me in this situation. I will activate the effect of a monster in my hand. I announced, by banishing a dark and light monster from the graveyard, I can special summon light pulsar dragon from my hand. The paladin of Felgrand and the Komori dragon I discarded earlier were removed from play. Suddenly when the conditions were met, a dragon with blue and white scales was summoned onto my field. The dragon stood on two legs with sharp claws and wings behind its back. The monster's bloodred pupils stared down at Celtic Guardian and Dark Magician before howling ferociously. Light Pulsar Dragon, 2500 attack, 1500 defense, I present you the Light Pulsar Dragon, and you should also expect its sibling, the Dark Flare Dragon. But, Yuna, you may ask why I choose this card instead of Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End, which has the same stats as Blue Eyes White Dragon and arguably a much better effect than the duo while having the same summoning conditions. Well, let me explain. Chaos Emperor Dragon simply doesn't fit well with my deck. Light Pulsar Dragon allows me to revive Dark Flare Dragon from the graveyard easily. In contrast, Dark Flare Dragon allows me to send dragons from my hand and deck to the graveyard, which I must do as soon as possible to gain an edge in the duel. Also, you may say that Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect can kill an opponent in one go by destroying every card in both hands and then dealing 300 damage for each card sent to the opponent's graveyard. The easiest answer was that activating the effect was too costly. First, I have to pay 1000 of my life points, and with a starting health of 2000, I would rather not risk it unless I'm sure I will win. Also, sending all the cards from my hand to the graveyard. That's too risky, as negates were rare but not non-existent. Lastly, after activating the effect, I can't activate any more effects for the rest of the turn. Therefore, Chaos Emperor Dragon was not a good choice, so Light Pulsar Dragon and Dark Flare Dragon were my best options. Where were we? Light Pulsar Dragon, Attack Celtic Guardian. I ordered. The monster flew into the air and lunged toward the elf warrior with determination. However, before the Light Pulsar Dragon reaches its enemy, a translucent barrier deflects its sharp claws. The dragon growled and stared at the barrier with annoyance while attacking it with fury. 
You have fallen for my trap card, Yugi explained, I activate mirror force. When my opponent declares an attack, I can destroy all attacking monsters they control. Suddenly, the barrier glows an ominous red light as it condenses and exploded in the dragon's face. Light Pulsar Dragon howled in agony as its scales melted from the heat. The monster finally collapsed from the sky, its body charred. With one last roar, it succumbed to its wounds. Unisano, 4600 LP and GT, 3350 LP, I gritted my teeth and watched my life points drop considerably. To think that a mirror force will come out this early. Since Light Pulsar Dragon was destroyed and sent to the graveyard. I can target one level 5 or higher Dark Dragon Monster and special summon it. I choose Dark Flare Dragon. A black and red dragon appeared on my field. Opposite of Light Pulsar Dragon's divine appearance, this one was demonic and menacing, inciting fear. Dark Flare Dragon, 2400 attack, 1200 defense, then I will activate the Keeper of the Shrine's effect in my hand. Once per turn, if a dragon monster was sent to the graveyard, I can special summon this card from my hand or graveyard. A small platform emerges beside Dark Flare Dragon, and an old man with dragon features was spotted sitting on top of it. The man smirked as he sat crossed legs and rest his chin against his fist. Keeper of the Shring, zero attack, 2100 defense, finally, I'm activating polymerization and using the two monsters on the field as materials. Fusion Summon Yami Yugi frowned, so you're summoning it now. Words began to manifest one by one in my head. My lips moved independently and I felt a power resonating in my soul. The feeling of its spirit intertwined with my own and informed me of its impatience in unleashing itself to the world. The two dark evils that dwell in this realm. From hell hiding within your shadows. Sacrifice yourselves and birth to another terror. I fusion summon. The poisonous dragon with hungering fangs. Starving venom fusion dragon. One, forgot to add this earlier, but in the anime, it was depicted as Yami Yugi as the one dueling my however, it more looked like Yugi himself was in control. So that's why I'm using Yugi first before he fully accepting. Yami Yugi. Okay, I just realized I made a mistake with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. When it banishes a monster, it gained defense as well as attack and I felt that I haven't been doing that. Well, it's not that big of a deal but just letting you guys know as I will go back and change them. Third POV, the poisonous dragon with hungering fangs. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Darkness consumed Yuna's field as Keeper of the Shrine and Dark Flare Dragon vanished from view. Soon everyone felt a new presence amongst the shadows. Yami Yugi frowned and noticed two yellow pupils staring at him. Immediately, countless yellow and red lights illuminated the darkness, and a disturbing sound entered his ears. The horrifying noise of flesh and bones merging together made everyone's skin crawl and then a guttering roar of pain and hatred echoed through the rooms. The shockwave generated washed away the darkness, revealing a grotesque beast. The monster has green flesh with a purple carapace protecting its body, yellow and red bulbs on each of its joints, pair of large wings that stretched open like an insect emerging from a fresh molt, thin purple legs, sharp claws, ferocious face with large horns and a long tail with a poisonous stinger at the end that resembled a scythe. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 attack, 2000 defense, 1, this feeling. Yami Yugi mumbled, such terror, snapping out of his daze, Yami Yugi frowned and remembered that he was still in a duel. Yuna smirked and raised a card in the air. Then I will use Return of the Dragon Lord. I can special summon one dragon monster from my graveyard, and the one I will revive is Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Besides starving Venom Fusion Dragon, there was a golden glimmer shining from the ceilings and another dragon landed gracefully. Compared to the ominous darkness of starving Venom Fusion Dragon, this monster was akin to a divine beast sent from the heavens with its pure and intimidating aura. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability, I can banish one of your monsters in the graveyard or on the field, and it would gain the amount of attack and defense equal to that chosen monster's level. Yuna told Yami Yugi. Since I couldn't target Dark Magician because of Eternal Soul, I will banish Celtic Guardian. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand caught Celtic Guardian in its claws. The elven warrior struggled desperately but was brutally devoured. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 
3200 attack, 2800 and GT, 3200 defense, I will end my turn. Yuna declared. Yami Yugi gritted his teeth, he had seen the capabilities of starving Venom Fusion Dragon, and he couldn't help but feel intimidated by its might. I draw. He shouted, I will activate Eternal Soul's effect. I can add the spell card, Thousand Knives, from my deck to my hand. Yami Yugi searched through his deck before shuffling and placing it back onto the table, then I activate the spell Thousand Knives. If there's a Dark Magician on the field, I can target one monster and destroy it. I choose Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Dark Magician swung his staff, and knives manifested from all sides. The weapons shot towards Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. However, before it reached, a blue translucent dragon spirit blocked the attack, and the projectiles fell helplessly to the floor. I will use Return of the Dragon Lord's second effect, Yuna explained, if one of my dragon monsters is destroyed by battle or card effect, I can banish this card instead. Yami Yugi watched helplessly as Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand roared with rage, I will put Dark Magician to defense position and set a monster. Then I end my turn. A card appeared beside Dark Magician while he reluctantly followed his master's order and knelt on one knee. Yunasano, 3350 LP and GT, 3850 LP, I will immediately go into my battle phase. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack the set monster. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand swooped down from the sky and lunged at the hidden card. When the dragon reached its target, a man carrying a shield the size of its body emerged. Big Shield Gardener, 100 attack, 2600 defense, however, despite its name, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's teeth easily pierced through the shield and reached the man's flesh, killing him. Then Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability has triggered. Yuna announced, by destroying a monster in battle, I can special summon one level 7 or 8 dragon monster from the graveyard. I summon Arc Brave Dragon. Arc Brave Dragon, 2400 attack, 2000 defense, a smaller celestial dragon appeared, and it flapped its four wings eagerly. Arc Brave Dragon sneakily glanced at the two powerhouses with admiration, and it growled, determined to prove to them that it's strong too. With Arc Brave Dragon, I can banish as many face up spell or trap cards as my opponent control and it gains 200 attacks and defense for each card. I will banish Eternal Soul and Book of Secret Arts. Arc Brave Dragon, 2400 and GT, 2800 attack, 2000 and GT, 2400 defense, Dark Magician, 2800 and GT, 2500 attack, 2100 defense, you must know what happens when Eternal Soul leaves the field, right? Yuna smiled. Yami Yugi clenched his fist and said solemnly, it will destroy all monsters I control. As the stone tablet crumbled, it emitted an explosion that ravaged Yugi's field. Dark Magician tried to raise a protective barrier but perished to the blast. Yugi Mutu, 2000 LP and GT, 600 LP, since you don't have any more monsters, my turn ends here. Yuna declared with a smile. Yugi drew, and his expression became grim, I will set a card and a monster, and that concludes my turn. Yunasano, 3850 LP and GT, 4350 LP, Yuna stared intently at the set card, and her instincts warned her to be careful. Weighing her options, she nodded to herself, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon will be set to defense position, then I will attack the set monster using Arc Brave Dragon. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon obediently lay on the floor while Arc Brave Dragon charged. Yami Yugi frowned when his expectations weren't met. However, he reluctantly activates the trap to protect his monster. I will use Mirror Force again and destroy all monsters in the attacking position. Arc Brave Dragon struck a translucent shield before erupting in flames. Yuna was relieved while Yugi gritted his teeth, knowing that with Arc Brave Dragon's death, another mighty dragon would soon spawn. Yuna Sano, 4350 LP and GT, 2950 LP, Keeper of the Shrine's effect has been activated, special summoning himself to the field, Yuna announced, I will end my turn. Keeper of the Shrine, 0 attack, 2100 defense, Yami Yugi drew with a furrowed brow, and it was rare that he was pushed to this extreme, and he hadn't felt a sense of crisis looming over him even when he was battling other duelists participating in this tournament. Was it because it was the last duel he had to face before fighting Pegasus, or was Yuna simply that strong? I use Pot of Greed. 
Yami Yugi declared, I can draw two cards from my deck. Then I activate the Mystical Space Typhoon, which allows me to destroy one spell or trap on the field. Disappear Solemn Wish. Yuna frowned when Solemn Wish shattered into pieces. No longer can she regain life points, and she bit her lips nervously. Then I use Card Destruction. Both players discard their entire hand and draw the same number of cards. Yami Yugi declared and dumped his cards into the graveyard. Currently, he has four cards in total, while Yuna has six. However, he wasn't bothered and believed his deck wouldn't fail. Yuna and Yami Yugi began to draw from their deck. With Solemn Wish gone, Yuna could no longer gain life points, otherwise, Yami Yugi would be in trouble. The two duelists stared at their new hand as strategies and plans formulated in their minds. Yami Yugi's eyes widened slightly at his hand, and he realized that his chances of winning may have increased drastically. I will set another monster and end my turn. He declared. My turn. Yuna said, with Arc Brave Dragon's effect, when this monster was in the graveyard because it was sent there last turn, I can special summon a level 7 or 8 dragon from the graveyard, Rise Blue Eyes White Dragon. A thunderous roar echoed through the room, and a white dragon emerged. It howled fiercely at Yami Yugi, and he instinctively stepped back. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, while Yami Yugi was admiring the appearance of Blue Eyes White Dragon, Yuna scowled. She has detected Yami Yugi's sudden shift in the atmosphere before focusing on a particular card. A piece of her soul told her to play it now, but another part sprouted doubt and informed her to be patient. However, if she doesn't play the card now, when? If Yuna timed it wrong, it would ultimately spell her doom, so suppressing the anxiety, she shouted, I will play the card exchange. We will reveal our hands and take one card from each other. Yami Yugi felt bewildered as the podium they were standing on automatically approached one another. Eventually, Yuna and Yami Yugi stood face to face and revealed their hands. I will take the monster reborn, Yami Yugi said thoughtfully. I. Yuna frowned, I will take Exodia, the Forbidden One. Yami Yugi, so, that's your plan, he smirked, impressed with Yuna's bold idea. Using card's destruction, he retrieved Exodia the Forbidden One, the right arm of the Forbidden One and the left leg of the Forbidden One. However, it was now all useless when Yuna took one of the pieces. However, Yami Yugi knew that Yuna must have also understood Exodia wasn't his only option. By taking the Exodia card, Yuna was announcing to him that she have methods to counter his plans. Then I will set Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand to attack position and battle your set monster. Yuna pointed at the hidden card on the left, Go, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The dragon unleashed a fiery beam and swept through his field. The giant soldier of stone Yami Yugi placed earlier stood no chance and even its rocky body melted from the heat. With Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability. I can special summon Arc Brave Dragon. Arc Brave Dragon, 2400 attack, 2000 defense, Arc Brave Dragon Blue Eyes White Dragon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand Keeper of the Shrine Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Yuna's field was filled with monsters, and each one with strength sent chills down any duelist's spine. Yami Yugi gritted his teeth and watched with anticipation, Yuna Sano. The first one to push me to this extent. Yami Yugi drew from his deck as soon as Yuna set a card and ended her turn. His heart thumped against his ribs as the anxiety was gradually overtaking him. Don't worry, and we got this. Yugi's determined voice echoed in the pharaoh's head, and Yami Yugi nodded, you're right. We will save our grandfather. I will activate card of demise. I can draw cards until I have five cards in my hand. Yami Yugi declared, however, I must discard my entire hand on my fifth turn after I played this card. But we both know that this duel will end sooner than that. Yami Yugi draws as his cards have now matched Yuna's, here I come Yuna Sano. This is my final stand. I will activate your monster reborn and summon Dark Magician from my graveyard. Yami Yugi announced and the familiar mage emerges from a magic circle. He glared at his enemies and readied his staff with resolve. Dark Magician, 2500 attack, 2100 defense, then I will use polymerization. Fusing Dark Magician and Gaia the Fierce Knight in my hand. A portal appeared behind Dark Magician and the mage instantly stepped in. Soon, the sound of galloping hooves could be heard. 
a purple horse dressed in armor leapt through the portal and it ran across the dueling field. On the horse was Dark Magician but his outfit have transformed into a bluish knight armor instead of the purple robe. In his hand was a large red lance that was so sharp it can puncture the air. The warrior reined his steed as he swung his lance with murderous intent. Dark Calvary, 2800 attack, 2300 defense, with Dark Calvary's effect, it will gain 100 attacks for each spell and trap on the field or in the graveyard. Dark Calvary, 2800 and GT, 4400 attack, 2300 defense, 2, now go and attack Archibave Dragon. Yami Yugi shouted and he felt his voice going hoarse. Dark Calvary charged and pointed his lance at the Celestial Dragon. However, a magic spell struck Dark Calvary out of nowhere, as if hypnotized, Dark Calvary withdraw from attack and return to Yugi's field. I will activate the set trap, negate attack. I can target one of my opponent's monsters and negate its attack before ending the battle face. Yuna yelled as sweat visibly appeared on her forehead. It will be your turn, Yami Yugi said unwillingly, but I will end this battle on my next turn. Yuna shook her head and Yami Yugi glared with confusion, no Mutusin this duel will end right now. I will turn Starving Venom Fusion Dragon to attack mode, now go. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, attack Dark Calvary. The Dark Dragon slithered its way towards the warrior and pounced with its claws. Yami Yugi watched as Starving Venom Fusion Dragon wrapped its tail around the body of the horse. Yami Yugi clenched the railings and he was baffled. No matter how hard he thinks, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon was way weaker than his Dark Calvary and it would simply be suicide. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon roared and slashed at the rider with its claws. Dark Calvary deflected with his weapon before stabbing into the creature's chest and knocking it away. Before Starving Venom Fusion Dragon can recover, Dark Calvary stomped onto its skull. Yuna Sano, 2950 LP and GT, 1450 LP, what are you doing? He shouted with frustration, Y.A.R. Yami Yugi froze when he saw Yuna's expression. He remembered clearly that unbothered face was the exact same as when she was looking at Joey during their duel. There wasn't a hint of emotions except for her eyes, her pupils were wavering not out of fear but of pity and that's when Yami Yugi understood that he was merely playing into the palm of her hands all along. Suddenly Yami Yugi's heart sank as Dark Calvary fell off his horse. The warrior clutched the side of his stomach before glancing at his hand which was now oozed with blood and a green acidic liquid that was the exact same substance that was dripping from Starving Venom Fusion Dragon Stinger. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon's effect has been activated. Yuna said in a gentle tone, when it was defeated and sent to the graveyard, destroy every special summon monster my opponent controls. Dark Calvary's body convulsed uncontrollably, and green veins appeared along its face. It spat a mouthful of blood and fell on the floor, dead to the horrible poison. No way. A suicide attack. Yami Yugi spoke in disbelief. Dark Calvary's body began to turn white, blinding the room. Yami Yugi blocked his eyes and heard Yuna's soft voice. Mutusin, I will save your grandfather. She declared as Yami Yugi stared at her in a daze. Boom, Yugi Mutu, 600 LP and GT, 0 LP an hour later. Yuna's POV, I walked quietly down an empty hallway while reflecting on the previous match. When the adrenaline left my body, I realized the sole reason I win was the severe difference with our deck. My monsters could all be considered to have powerful effects in this era compared to Yugi's normal monsters. Also, the only cards I really should worry about were Mirror Force and the Exodia. With me beating Kaiba, Yugi really didn't have a chance to showcase it so Wevel didn't toss the cards into the sea. Now that I think about it, there must have been a poor soul in the duelist kingdom that has to taste the defeat of Exodia, they have my condolences. Finally, my thoughts end when I reached a door. I held my breath and entered, revealing a dark vacant room. In the middle of the room was a table with two chairs, illuminated by a dim light. One of the seats was already occupied by a man with white hair, dressed in a dashing red suit. I sat down across from the man and observed him quietly. He smiled at me and rested his chin on his hand, I knew you would win Yuna. Dot. My anger rose at my silky voice and he laughed, all right I get it, stop giving me that look. Let's just get this over with. I, Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of Duel Monsters, challenge you to a duel. 1. 
If you're wondering why I didn't activate Starving Venom Fusion Dragon's first effect of gaining attack to one of the special summon monsters. Well, simply it's useless as it would only last until the end of the turn and Yuna have already used her battle phase. 2. I know Dark Calvary was a monster that was made in 2019, contradicting my statement on using cards made before 2010. However, it's way too cool not to use it and it's the only fusion monster that seemed reasonable as its effect isn't as broken as the others Gaia the Fierce Knight and Dark Magican was monsters Yugi regularly used. Yuna POV, I'm sure you prefer we duel like this, right? Pegasus said while we shuffled our decks, free from outside interference and only a simple game between two duelists. Despite my dislike towards him, I couldn't help but be grateful. Having too many people watching can be stressful, so I should act at least thankful since I can fight without worry. Well, since you're the challenger, I will give you the courtesy of going first, Pegasus explained and reached for the life point counter on the side of the table. With a few clicks of a button, the device turned on, signaling the start of the match. Maximilian Pegasus, 2000 LP, Yuna Sano, 2000 LP, I took a deep breath to calm my accelerating heart. This was it. Makuba had entrusted his life to me in this duel, and if I lost, Pegasus would take both our souls. The exhilarating feeling in my body that always appeared when I duel has returned. My eyes became sharp, and all the anxiety vanished without a trace. Pegasus and I stared at each other, and we both smiled. Let's duel, x2, I first use graceful charity, and allow me to draw three cards and then discard two from my hand, I said while drawing three cards from the deck before sending two cards in my hand to the graveyard. Then, I summon Dragon Knight of Creation. I declared. Suddenly, a strange feeling appeared, and I instinctively turned around. My eyes widened with shock at the knight standing behind me. Dragon Knight of Creation met my gaze and nodded as he rested his sword on the ground. Surprised? Pegasus laughed. I told you on our first meeting, dual monsters are more than you think, they are spirits that live in another dimension, and by playing this game, we channel them through our will. He spoke, and his millennium I shinned ominously, but such power comes great consequences. I wonder if you're ready to face the responsibility. I momentarily forgot that I was in a duel with my life and stared at the dragon knight of creation in awe. I subconsciously stood up from my seat and walked around the tall knight. From his fiery red hair, glossy golden armor and alluring, fine-toned muscles. Thinking of the last detail, I used my hands as a fan and hurriedly cooled my heating face. Anyway, every part of Dragon Knight of Creation seemed so real. After a few moments of hesitation, I reached out my hand. However, contrary to my expectations, my fingers phased through his body like he was a ghost. Despite the realness, they're merely spirits only revealed to us through this shadow game. Pegasus explained upon noticing my shock, therefore, nobody except for us can see them. I nodded in understanding. I particularly noticed that I could sense the strength of the Dragon Knight of Creation. It was like my brain immediately knew the strength of my monster and its limits, as if the stats were presented right before my eyes. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, 1, it's natural to be curious, he continued, however, remember that we're still in the middle of something. I blushed with embarrassment and retreated to my seat. I lightly slapped myself on the cheek and shook my head. Get a hold of yourself, Yuna. Your soul's on the line here. Ahem, I cleared my throat, I will set three cards and end my turn. Pegasus stared at the cards placed on the table and hummed. Yeah, he's probably reading my mind with the Millennium Eye. I will use Mystical Typhoon to destroy the set card in the middle. Pegasus declared while pointing at the card he wanted to remove. A small tornado appeared on the table as it approached my back row. The tiny disaster struck one of my cards, and it flew off the desk, landing several feet away. The card flipped over, revealing my solemn wish. Yep. He's reading my cards. Pegasus, I will set a monster and two cards before ending my turn. He placed his remaining cards on the table and gave me an innocent smile. I clenched my fist furiously. This guy's mocking me. Damn it, I should have just been a little harsher on our first duel. I will go straight into the attack phase. I announced as the Dragon Knight of Creation pulled his sword off the ground, go, Dragon Knight of Creation. With a single leap, the knight flew across the table and swung his sword at Pegasus. 
Suddenly, a cartoonish black rabbit humanoid appeared to block the strike. Dark Rabbit, 1100 attack, 1500 defense, the blade slashed the monster in half, and it shrieked before fading away. Then, with Dragon Knight of Creation's effect, I can send one dragon monster from my deck or hand to the graveyard. Also, I can target one dragon monster in the grave, tribute my knight and special summon that monster. Dragon Knight of Creation raised his sword, and a light beam shot down from the sky. When the laser disappeared, a humongous golden dragon replaced its place. I special summon, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect has been activated. I will banish Dark Rabbit from your graveyard, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will gain attacks and defense equal to that monster's level. Ah! Pegasus exclaimed, the monster I have been waiting for. Seemingly unaware of the danger, Pegasus stared with joy, and his shoulder trembled as he tried to hold in his laughter, Unisano, you don't know how long I anticipated to face this creature, so you should have expected I already have plans for it. I will activate the card in my hand, Dragon Capture Jar. I can special summon this card from my hand in defense position and capture one dragon monster on the field. 2. A bronze jar manifested out of thin air and landed on the table. I glared as Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand transformed into a wisp of smoke and slowly absorbed into the vase. The dragon capture jar trembled uncontrollably as the dragon within thrashed with hatred. However, the jar soon became still, suppressing my Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's power. Dragon capture jar, 100 attack, 200 defense, since Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand has been captured, your effect has been cancelled, Pegasus said. Frustrated, I gritted my teeth, I will end my turn. That's so. Pegasus smirked while drawing a card from his deck, well, it is my move then. First, I activate the card of Sanctity. Both of us will keep drawing until we have six cards in our hands. Consider this as a professional courtesy. I snorted in disdain while we drew our cards. Upon seeing his replenished hand, Pegasus's smile widened, it was a surprise, but luck is on my side today. I will play Toon World. A giant book appeared before Pegasus and it magically spread open, revealing a pop-up of a dark castle with tiny tombstones at the corner of the pages. I've always been a fan of cartoons, Pegasus said while gazing at the book with pride, I grew up with them, and they essentially made me who I am. Yeah, and look how that turned out. I decide to not say that out loud and kept it in my head. However, Pegasus must have already read my thoughts and he smirked, I will set another monster and end my turn. I clicked my teeth at his irritating but truthful statement. If that set monster's what I think it was, I must remove it before the next turn. I will banish my Dragon Knight of Creation and the Komori Dragon I sent earlier from my graveyard, allowing me to summon Dark Flare Dragon. A slender black dragon emerged from the darkness. Its red underbelly glimmered under the dime light as it roared intimidatingly. Dark Flare Dragon, 2400 attack, 1200 defense, now, Dark Flare Dragon, destroy the dragon capture jar. Dark Flare Dragon dived towards Pegasus, its claws aiming for the bronze vase. However, during the attack, dozens of dark chains shoot out from the darkness and wrapped around my monster. Losing control of its body, Dark Flare Dragon plummeted to the ground. I activate the trap, Fiendish Chains. Your monster won't be able to attack nor activate its effects, Pegasus smiled. Then I set a monster and end my turn, I grumbled. I hadn't realized it then, but Pegasus was a real adversary. He must have been studying for this battle, and I felt he has a counter to all my strategies. No, scratch that. Pegasus most certainly have counters for everything. You're staring at my monster intensely, don't you think? Pegasus chuckled while tapping the card, I expect you to figure out already what it was. He flipped it over, and a purple vase as tall as the dragon capture jar appeared. There were golden scribing on the body of the furniture by the lid was an eye. Hands grew from the vase's side, and it held a flute, bringing it to a hole close to the eye. I flip summon my dragon piper. Pegasus announced, Watch as it plays a wonderful tune and see what happens. As if on command, Dragon Piper began to play its flute. It wasn't a bad song, but the overly stressful situation prevented me from focusing on the music. With the playing, Dragon Capture Jar reacted and spat out a large fume. 
The smoke gathered and transformed into a dragon that I was familiar with, but this time it was not on my side. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand howled with hatred and immediately lunged at Pegasus. However, its body locked in place when Dragon Piper played its flute. Now, now, Pegasus chided while wagging his finger, you need to behave. I clenched my fist as my knuckles turned white. Pegasus noticed my fury and laughed, you haven't even seen the good part yet. Now, Toon World, show Yuna your brilliance. The book absorbed divine dragon Lord Felgrand, and some strange cartoonish noise entered our ears. After ten seconds, a small hand poked out from the pop-up before dragging itself out of the book. The small creature snicked at me and happily flew around the room. Like an animate character from a comedy show, it accidentally bumped the ceiling and rubbed its head confusingly. Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 Attack, 2800 Defense, how could you? I muttered in disbelief. Pegasus shrugged, everything will fall under my Toon world, even the powerful Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand can be subdued. Now, Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Attack. Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand giggled and dashed towards my Dark Flare Dragon, its claws expanded five times the size of its body, and it slapped Dark Flare Dragon in the face, causing it to howl in pain and explode. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 1600 LP, return for now, my joyful dragon, let's play later. Pegasus said shamelessly as Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand dived into Toon World. This guy. I felt so humiliated. This was the first time I had this much anger. Was it because Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was the first card I officially received when I arrived, so I held a little sentimental value to it? Thus, watching Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand being treated like this disturbs me. At this moment, I spoke up, the Keeper of the Shrine in my hand has been activated, allowing me to special summon the monster in defense position. Keeper of the Shrine, zero attack, 2100 defense, I will then tribute my dragon capture jar and summon Ryuran, Pegasus said, and a small dragon appeared. It hid in its eggshell while its legs and arms stuck out. Ryuran, 2200 attack, 2600 defense, Pegasus, with the effect of Toon World, Ryuran will then turn into the manga Ryuran. Ryuran transformed. Its white eggshell donned a purple color with blue rings, and its body became fatter. Ryuran's upper body was sticking out of the egg while wearing the eggshell like a helmet. Manga Ryuran, 2200 attack, 2600 defense, I will also hide Manga Ryuran in the pages of Toon World, he explained as Manga Ryuran leapt into the pages of Toon World, it's your turn now Yuna. Dot. Back in the show, the card Toon World was truly foul. I couldn't harm Pegasus's monsters while they were hiding in Toon World, but he could bring out his Toon monsters anytime he wanted. Ha, I sighed frustratingly, I will use Pot of Greed, allowing me to draw two cards from the deck. However, the gods have finally given me a chance. I glimpsed at Pegasus, and he was frowning as if he had tasted something bitter. I smirked, and my mood increased. I will normal summon Komori Dragon. I announced, and a dragon with purple scales appeared beside the keeper of the shrine. Komori Dragon, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, unfortunately, I'm going to stop you right here. I activate my hidden card, trap hole and destroy your Komori dragon. Pegasus announced. A hole manifested on the ground, right beneath Komori dragon and the monster fell in. Swiftly, the cavity refilled itself as if it was never there and the last thing I heard was Komori dragon's anguish cry. Yuna Sano, 1600 LP and GT, 850 LP, then I activate one of my set cards, Call of the Haunted and bring Komori Dragon back from the grave. Komori Dragon, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, now, I use my spell card, Polymerization. Using the two monsters I have on the field as materials. Tisk. Pegasus clicked his teeth, and his mischievous expression disappeared, the troublesome one. I fusion summon. The terror with hungering fangs. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. A soul-guttering roar pierced our eardrums, and I shivered in fright. When I used Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, it had never felt this real before. I anxiously turned around and came face to face with a bright yellow pupil. I stifled a scream and quietly stared at the sharp fangs gradually approaching me. Jarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
sensing my distress, starving venom fusion dragon grunted and blew a hot breath at my face. Thankfully, it's only a spiritual body, or I will probably pass out from the stench. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon grunted and unleashed a devastating roar, it turned its head and glared at Pegasus as I sensed his eagerness to tear that man apart. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 attack, 2000 defense, it is an intimidating dragon indeed, Pegasus praised with a nervous tone, but Starving Venom Fusion Dragon couldn't gain attack because my Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was yours that I haven't taken control, so it doesn't count as a special summon. He was correct since I was the one who summoned Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, so I couldn't choose it for Starving Venom Fusion Dragon's effect, however. Wait. Pegasus scowled when he read my actual thoughts. I will use Starving Venom Fusion Dragon's third effect. I declared, once per turn, I can target one level 5 or higher monster my opponent control. Until the end phase, this card's name will become that monster's name and have its effects. Pegasus. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon hugged itself into a fetal position and miraculously shrunk to a small size. Now it has become the same appearance as Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, except for its colors. Toon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon 2800 Attack, 2000 Defense, 3, now your Toon Monsters aren't protected anymore, right? I grinned, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, Attack Manga Ryuran. The monster leapt into Toon World, and the book wobbled. A few seconds later, Manga Ryuran and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon leapt out simultaneously, and my dragon punched Manga Ryuran in the face and the fat Ryuran burst into a puff of smoke. Maximilian Pegasus, 2000 LP and GT, 1400 LP. 1. Yuna and Pegasus couldn't see this except for their LP, because of the LP counter. I added it so that you guys could understand it a bit easier. 2. I honestly am not even sure what this card's type supposed to be anymore. In wiki, it was drawn as a trap card and it was a trap in the modern UGO. However, Pegasus was playing it like a hand monster's trap like Ash Blossom or something during his duels. So I decided to just follow along and consider it as a monster with effects. 3. Lastly, you may say that Starving Venom Fusion Dragon can only copy a monster's original name so shouldn't it become Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand? Well, I was also thinking the same but in the anime, the tune isn't a simple transformation as they were categorized as its own monsters with their own unique ability to hide in tune world. Also, I considered other examples such as Joey's Thousand Dragon, Baby Dragon under the effect of Time Wizard, and Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon which were in the same situation. So ultimately I decided that tune counts as a legitimate monster instead of a simple name change. Yuna POV Starving Venom Fusion Dragon returned to my side while grinning savagely. Pegasus watched with an impressed expression, to think you have a method to counter my Toon world, I am thoroughly satisfied with your abilities. Despite his praise, I ignored him and continued playing, I activate my spell card, Wing Beat of Giant Dragon. I can return one level 5 or more dragon monster to my hand and destroy all spells and traps on the field. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon returned to its true monstrous form, and the dragon flapped its wings. All the cards on the back row immediately flew off the table and landed several feet away. The Toon World book instantly broke apart into tiny pieces, and Toon Divine Dragon Lord cried as it was launched into the air. The monster flipped all over the place before balancing itself. It stared at its body in wonder as it grew, returning to its normal appearance. Now Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, it shook its head before glaring at Pegasus hatefully. Toon World has been destroyed so that all Toon Monsters will return to normal, I explained. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, that is true, yet to destroy my Toon World, you sacrificed all of your defenses, Pegasus pointed out while staring at my now empty field, quite a brazen approach, one I didn't predict. But you couldn't attack me directly with nothing on my field. I said with confidence, I consider this even. Humph, he scoffed it is merely stalling the inevitable. When Pegasus draws a card, his expression becomes disgruntled, indicating he hasn't received the card he wanted, I will set two cards face down, then I pass the turn to you. First, I use the card of destruction. We discard our entire hand and draw the same amount of cards we have originally. As we set our hands on the graveyard pile, Pegasus hummed with curiosity. I stared at the new cards while formulating my next course of action, even while well aware of Pegasus reading my mind. 
I will use Return of the Dragon Lord and Special Summon Blue Eyes White Dragon from my graveyard. In the dim room, a sudden bright light emits between us. Once it settled, there stood a beautiful dragon with white scales. Blue Eyes White Dragon lowered its head and observed me with soft, gentle eyes before roaring fiercely at my foe. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, I will set one card face down, then attack with my Blue Eyes White Dragon. Unfortunately, I can't let you do that, Pegasus interrupted me, I use negate attack to target your Blue Eyes White Dragon and end the battle entirely. So close to rescuing your beloved beast, Pegasus sighed, such a shaw. I will set two cards and end my turn. Before he could finish talking, I interrupted him. Pegasus hummed amusingly, unbothered by my rudeness. He drew a card, and his mood finally improved, let's end this farce once and for all. I will play Black Illusion Ritual. I will tribute my Dragon Piper to bring out my trump card, Relinquished. A portal appeared beneath Dragon, and the monster was dragged in. Soon, a horrifying creature revealed itself. It was dark blue with white veins. It lacked a lower body except for a sharp point stabbing into the floor like a bay blade. The creature has huge arms with sharp claws, and instead of a face, there was a single eyeball connected by a thin long neck. Relinquished, zero attack, zero defense, behold, this is the card I made to defeat you, Yunasano. Pegasus exclaimed, be proud that you will be the first to taste its might. A card to defeat me? I subconsciously narrowed my eyebrows. Shouldn't it be the one to defeat Yugi? Or was the timeline changed so much that Pegasus has become completely interested in me instead? However, Pegasus's next words brought me back to reality. Unfortunately, that's what I wish to say, Pegasus exhaled with disappointment, I doubt its strength is enough to defeat you. T thanks. I responded with an awkward tone. He smirked, however, that doesn't mean you're safe. I will use polymerization. Using my relinquished and thousand eyes idol in my hand as materials. Now behold the beauty. The one and only. Thousand eyes restrict. Relinquished's body darkened as multiple pulsating flesh squirmed under its skin as if the monster was infested with parasites. Gradually, its skin ripped open, revealing thousands of slimy eyeballs. The main eye turned into a glossy golden color, resembling the appearance of Pegasus's millennium eye. Thousand Eyes Restrict, Zero Attack, Zero Defense, Thousand Eyes Restrict has a pretty interesting effect if I have to say so myself, Pegasus gloated confidently. Once this monster was summoned, you can no longer declare attacks nor change battle positions. Also, once per turn, I can target one of your monsters and attach it to this card. Then Thousand Eyes Restrict will gain attack and defense equal to all the monster's stats combined, with this, I will activate Thousand Eyes Restrict's effect and absorb your Blue Eyes White Dragon. Slimy tentacles shoot out of Thousand Eyes Restrict's body and wrap around my monster. It dragged Blue Eyes White Dragon towards itself, and the dragon became half-fused with Thousand Eyes Restrict. Thousand Eyes Restrict, 0 and GT, 3000 attack, 0 and GT, 2500 defense, what will you do Unisano? Your divine dragon lord Felgrand is still mine, and I have my Thousand Eyes Restrict on the board. It's over. Pegasus preached. I bit my lips with frustration. Pegasus's Thousand Eyes Restrict has no counters unless I have a card that specifically targets. The only card I could think of was Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, but it's currently under his control. I summoned Paladin of Felgrand in attack position, I shouted, and a young blonde-haired warrior wearing silver armor appeared. Paladin of Felgrand, 1700 attack, 300 defense, I was pushed to the defensive and I can feel myself getting cornered by the second. Forced to summon a monster this turn, I reluctantly continue to play while hoping I can stall well enough to survive this turn. With Paladin of Felgrand's effect, I equip Arc Brave Dragon from my graveyard to this card, then Paladin of Felgrand can't be targeted by effects. I then set a card and end my turn. Pegasus hummed and licked his lips as he stared at my back row with interest, let's begin by using my second mystical typhoon to destroy that card in the middle. A second tornado destroyed another one of my traps, and I caught the card in midair with a grim expression. That was my Wabaku, my most important defense, gone. Now, Thousand Eyes Restrict, destroy Paladin of Felgrand. Not so fast. I stammered, 
I use my trap card, reinforcement, and grant Paladin of Felgrand 500 more attacks. Paladin of Felgrand, 1700 and GT, 2200 attack, 300 defense, Thousand Eyes Restrict swung its arm like a hammer, and Paladin of Felgrand raised his sword in a desperate attempt to block the attack. Unfortunately, the blade shattered, and the warrior was ultimately defeated. Unisano, 850 LP and GT, 50 LP, I stared at my measly amount of life points in disbelief. Even a gentle breeze can spell the end for me. Pegasus's assault should have been the end for me but yet I survived. Staring at the absurd strength of Thousand Eyes Restrict, fear begins to set in. The thought of actually losing entered my mind, and I found difficulty breathing. I'm scared. What should I do? I will set a monster and end my turn, I muttered anxiously. Pegasus chuckled, is this all you can do? Thousand Eyes Restrict, capture that monster. Thousand Eyes Restrict simultaneously blinked with all of its eyes as it grabbed the monster hiding under my card. It pulled the Komori dragon out of the card, the dragon struggled in fear but was fused into the monster's body while exposing one of the Komori dragon's arms. Thousand Eyes Restrict, 3000 and GT, 4500 attack, 2500 and GT, 3700 defense, seems like that's all you can amount to. Pegasus mumbled with dissatisfaction. I flinched at his insults as each word felt like a stab to the heart. I visibly shrunk in my seat while staring at the floor with shame. I don't think I can win. He was way too strong. My vision became hazy, and I felt myself struggling to concentrate. I grabbed the corner of the table and clutched my chest in pain. W, what's happening? I gasped for breath. Pegasus sighed and shook his head disappointingly, if your heart wavered, it meant you have admitted defeat. My arms felt numb, and it was like I was slowly separating from my own body. I dropped the cards, and a single tear dripped on the table. No. Not like this. Someone help me. Makuba, I'm sorry. As I closed my eyes and accepted my demise, I sensed a hand placed on my shoulder. Thinking it was Pegasus, I gritted my teeth. Using my last strength, I reopened my eyes and stared him down. But it wasn't Pegasus. It was a woman dressed in full white. Her face was covered by a veil, revealing her beautiful lips and the hair as white as snow flowing down to her waist. Who? I groaned. The woman smiled and leaned close to my ear before speaking in a soft, silky voice, Don't lose hope. Believe in your deck. Don't give up. You can win. So. Keep fighting. I stared at her in shock as she delivered words of encouragement, and a warmness overwhelmed me. I raised my weakened hand and touched her clothes. However, like before, my finger merely went through her body. The woman giggled at my action as her figure gradually turned translucent. It wasn't long until only her head remained, and she was still smiling as bright as the sun. Her mouth moved, but no words came out, yet I knew exactly what she said. Don't be scared, Yuna, you can win. Third POV, Pegasus sighed with disappointment, and he thought Yuna would be more but turns out that the one with the highest potential will still fall to his millennium eye. As he was ready to collect her soul, Pegasus stopped and gazed at her in amazement. I, I can continue. Yuna growled. She reached for the cards on the floor and slammed them on the table. She drunkenly supported her body and glared at Pegasus, it will end. Only until I defeat you. Pegasus frowned as he couldn't believe Yuna's endurance. He felt himself losing the grip of her soul as it returned to her body. He read her thoughts, but to his shock, there was nothing. Something was placed between their connections, like a filter that stopped his intrusion. Pegasus's body tensed, and he sat back down on the chair. He observed Yuna with a solemn expression while doubting himself, what happened? Why can't I use my millennium eye? My move, Yuna spoke with conviction, reminding Pegasus that they were still in the middle of a duel. I will banish the Keeper of the Shrine and Paladin of Felgrand in my grave to summon Light Pulsar Dragon from my hand. A slim white dragon appeared, roaring confidently, although severely outmatched. Light Pulsar Dragon, 2500 attack, 1500 defense, then I tribute my Light Pulsar Dragon and summon my Dark Flare Dragon. Light Pulsar Dragon tilted its head confusingly as if saying, Finally, I got called, but you're immediately sacrificing me to get my brother. However, 
Before Light Pulsar Dragon could argue further, it was fully tribute, and Dark Flare Dragon replaced its place. Dark Flare Dragon, 2400 attack, 1200 defense, with Light Pulsar Dragon's effect. When this monster was sent to the grave, I can special summon one level 5 or higher Dark Dragon monster from my graveyard. I will revive my second Dark Flare Dragon. Dark Flare Dragon, 2400 attack, 1200 defense, the two Dark Flare Dragons conversed with each other. Seemingly enjoying each other's company. I will use Polymerization. Allowing me to fuse my two Dark Flare Dragons. I fusion summon Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Yuna shouted. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 attack, 2000 defense, finally, I will set a card and end my turn. Pegasus frowned when he stared at the two trap cards on her field, this may be troublesome. When he added a card to his hand, Yuna immediately flipped over one of those traps, I activate Battle Mania, your monsters must attack me no matter what this turn. However. Yuna explained, since you can only attack the player's monsters and not the duelist directly, you couldn't absorb my starving venom fusion dragon and leave my field empty. Fine, let's play it your way. Pegasus shrugged, thousand eyes restrict, attack starving venom fusion dragon. Not so fast. I will use Wabaku, and I won't take battle damage, or my monsters can be destroyed by battle. Thousand Eyes Restrict's claws struck a blue shield, and Yuna's starving venom fusion dragon was protected from harm. When Thousand Eyes Restrict retreated, it was Divine Dragon Lord Felgren's time to attack. The Golden Dragon flew from Pegasus's side to Yuna's and slashed at Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. However, just like before, her monster was protected by a barrier, leaving it unharmed. Suddenly, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon lashed out and cleaved Divine Dragon Lord Felgren apart with its scythe tail. Pegasus clicked his teeth, they have the same amount of attack. So you're aiming to destroy that dragon all along. But, did you forget about one thing? Pegasus asked, since I finished my attacks and starving venom fusion dragon is still on the field, it meant that my thousand eyes restrict will absorb it. During his explanation, starving venom fusion dragon was also captured and joined along with blue eyes white dragon. Thousand eyes restrict, 4500 and GT, 7300 attack, 3700 and GT, 5700 defense, it's your turn now, Yuna. Pegasus urged. Yuna nervously bit her lips. This was it, with her previous actions, there was no turning back now, and she deemed it was all for nothing. She gritted her teeth and remembered that unknown woman's words. Believe in my deck. Yuna mumbled to herself. She placed her hand on the remaining deck of cards. With a single motion, she drew a card and held her breath. Yuna's eyes widened with shock before smiling, thank you. Yuna raised her head and lifted the card in the air, I will use Monster Reborn. Rise again, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The Golden Dragon howled and appeared behind Yuna. Pegasus frowned for the first time in this duel, and Pegasus felt his anxiety grow by the second, don't tell me, you're banishing my thousand eyes restrict? No. Yuna yelled, and his eyes widened in surprise, I will target the blue eyes white dragon, that was being absorbed. Pegasus. The blue eyes white dragon howled and vanished from thousand eyes restrict. Now Pegasus realized Yuna's intention. Thousand eyes restrict absorbs monsters into its own, meaning they weren't equipped spells but became monsters he controlled. 1. Thousand eyes restrict, 7300 and GT, 4300 attack, 5700 and GT, 3200 defense, then I activate Ruins of the Divine Dragon Lord. Yuna yelled, and a small statue of Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand emerged beside her, using Dragon Lord Ruin's effect, I tribute my Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and summon a light token. The dragon furled its wings and shrunk into a golden orb that floated gracefully. Dragon Lord token, zero attack, zero defense, Yuna, I then summon Guardian of Felgrand in attack position. A tall armored warrior with green hair and a battle axe was summoned onto the field. He crossed his arms and laughed as his loud voice reverberated through the room. Guardian of Felgrand, 500 attack, 500 defense, with Guardian of Felgrand's effect, I can equip one level 7 or 8 dragon to this card, and Guardian of Felgrand will gain attack and defense equal to half the ATK and death of the monster equipped to it by this effect. The dragon I choose is Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Guardian of Felgrand shouted and tensed his body. 
His energy intensified, giving him strength like never before. Guardian of Felgrand, 500 and GT, 1900 attack, 500 and GT, 1900 defense, what is she planning? Pegasus thought while gritting his teeth. His millennium eye has refused to work, so there was no way Pegasus could predict Yuna's next move. However, despite the lack of information, all Pegasus knew was that what she was about to do would be extremely dangerous. Wait. Pegasus froze and remembered a particular moment he had seen in the tag team duel Yuna had played, don't tell me. Now I activate Guardian of Felgrand's second effect. I can summon a level 7 or 8 dragon from the graveyard by tributing this monster and the token. Guardian of Felgrand and the token burst into a stream of light. Eunice smiled and raised her hand as if responding to her call. The light swirled around her body before shooting into the ceiling. Yuna's heart thrashed against her ribs, and a golden aura washed over her. She closed her eyes and began to speak, with our tributes to the heavens. I call upon the guardian that protects this land. With your golden radiance and unyielding will. Rescue us from this sad fate. Please heed my words and show yourself. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Boom. The huge golden dragon revealed its presence, generating a massive shockwave. Pegasus gasped in shock as Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand hovered behind Yuna. Pegasus cursed as he sweated nervously, I won't let you. He shouted and slammed his hand against the table, I will use my trap card, bottomless trap hole to destroy Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, with this, you're done for. He cackled. A similar hole opened beneath Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand but this time it was much darker and more menacing. A goblin creature leapt out of the hole and grabbed Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ankles as it grinned snobbishly. However, the dragon snorted and kicked the goblin back into the hole as the cavity closes up, leaving Pegasus bewildered. Why didn't it work why? He screamed, it should have destroyed your monster and win me the game. I use the effect of Return of the Dragon Lord in my graveyard. If one of my dragon monsters would be destroyed by effect or battle. I can banish this card instead, Yuna yelled, leaving Pegasus speechless. Now, I use Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect. I banish Starving Venom Fusion Dragon from the field and gain attack and defense equal to its level. Thuandai's Restrict, 4300 and GT, 1500 attack, 3200 and GT, 1200 defense, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3600 attack, 2800 and GT, 3600 defense, now I set a card and end my turn. Yuna declared, on your next turn, this duel will officially be over. Pegasus gulped, and realization set in. He could tell what that set card was even without the Millennium Eye. As he grimly drew a card, Yuna's expression finally transformed into a smile, during the standby phase, I activate Battle Mania, and your Thousand Eyes Restrict must attack this turn. Pegasus's expression collapsed, and his arms drooped to the floor. The Thousand Eyes Restrict behind him charged fearlessly, but unexpectedly, the results were already set in stone. 1500 attack versus 3600 attack. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand opened its jaw as energy gathered in its mouth. At this moment, Pegasus stared at Yuna in a daze. Her beautiful appearance stood out under Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's radiance as her hair flew wildly by the unknown wind. For a brief moment, her pupils transformed into a golden color that didn't escape Pegasus's observation, now Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, end this duel once and for all, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand roared and unleashed the bright orange beam. The laser pierced thousand eyes restrict and traveled towards Pegasus. The man spread his arms and let go of his cards. Yuna Sano. As of today, I acknowledge you as the one who defeated me. Pegasus muttered in acceptance. Boom, Pegasus, 1400 LP and GT, 0 LP. 1. In the anime, Thousand Eye Restrict's text said that it would absorb monsters instead of turning them into equipped spells. Also, there was also the effect that if the absorbed monster was destroyed, the original user would suffer the damage. Thus it meant that it's not an equipped spell. Yuna's POV, once the duel was over, the light turned back on, revealing our mess. Cards were everywhere, and several decorated vases in the room were knocked over, crooked paintings and dark marks staining the walls. I turned to Pegasus, still staring at me in a daze. I nervously cleared my throat, 
and he snapped out of his thoughts and blinked his eyes in astonishment. Pegasus then pinched the bridge of his nose and sighed deeply, and I felt his pupils glaring into my soul. I fidgeted in my seat as multiple strange thoughts entered my head. No way he's not completing his end of the bargain, right? What if he took my soul anyway? I don't want to die. Noticing my thought, Pegasus and I stared at each other in an uncomfortable silence. Eventually, he burst into laughter. Ah, Yunasano, it's intriguing how you have such absurd imaginations. He said and wiped the tears from his face. There's nothing to fear, despite what you think of me. I'm a man of my word, Pegasus assured while picking up the cards on the floor. He grabbed the divine dragon Lord Felgrand with curiosity, to think a card like this existed, it's truly a mystery. Thankfully, he returned the card, and I swiftly packed my deck away, now that it's over, you must be wondering why I did all this. When I didn't respond, Pegasus told me about his past passionately. At a young age, he fell in love with a woman named Cecilia. According to him, it was love at first sight, and Pegasus was sure they were soulmates. However, tragedy struck when Cecilia died due to an illness right after their marriage. Distraught, Pegasus tries many ways to resurrect his past lover, eventually obtaining the Millennium Eye. He didn't delve into the details, but watching the anime, I know that in Egypt, Pegasus encountered a man named Shadi, later revealed in the show as a ghost that guards the Millennium Items. Recalling Shadi, I remember that he will appear today at the end of the tournament. Then Shadi will use his Millennium Key on Yugi to search his mind and stuff. I hope he won't go after me, and I got too much embarrassing stuff that needs to stay hidden. With the discovery of Shadi in the Millennium Items, Pegasus began studying Egyptian sorcery and learned that he could revive Cecilia. Still, he needed something called spirit energy, which can be found in souls. Pegasus also needed the Millennium Puzzle as well so that's why he created this tournament. Nonetheless, that's the end of my story. I must thank you for not interrupting me until the end, Pegasus said gratefully. I nodded while awkwardly averting his gaze, W what now? He smiled and stood up, and I complied in doing the same. Pegasus then gracefully bowed, I should congratulate you on winning the duel and earning yourself the title of King of Games. I felt my lips loosen and form into a smile, causing Pegasus to chuckle and straighten his tie, this was a very entertaining duel, and I hope we can battle like this someday. Of course, without the consequences of Shadow Games. Pegasus reached into his shirt pocket, revealing the two soul cards of Sido Kaiba and Solomon Mutu. His Millennium Eye emits a bright glow, and the picture on the cards becomes blank, I have released their souls as promised. They should wake up shortly. The. Thanks, I said, and he shrugged. Pegasus turned his back towards me and quietly walked to the other exit across the room, oh, he stopped, the check for the prize money will be delivered to you later. Wah. Wait. I hurriedly stopped him and stared at the floor. Remembering what happens to Pegasus soon after he leaves, I suddenly felt inclined to do something about it. Bakura, one of Yugi's friends and the user of the Millennium Ring will be possessed by the spirit living inside the ring. Then he would challenge Pegasus in a shadow game and eventually take his Millennium Eye. In the anime, Pegasus falls into a coma, while his fate is much worse in the manga. So shouldn't it be best if I at least warn him? It wouldn't be so bad to have the president of Industrial Illusions, the creator of Dual Monsters, as an ally, B. Be careful, I muttered, pointing at his Millennium Eye, in danger. Pegasus heard me and smiled wryly, I wonder why you say something like that. He tilted his head and laughed, very well, I will keep your warning in mind. Also, I asked him about the woman I had seen in the middle of the duel. However, to my surprise, Pegasus was confused and said he hadn't seen anyone else. He deduced that it must be my hallucinations during my soul momentarily detaching from my body. His hypothesis sounds believable, but the woman looks way too real. Third POV, in another part of the castle. Makuba pranced around nervously in the waiting room, Yuna had left to duel Pegasus an hour ago, but he still hadn't heard from her. Yugi and his friends tried to comfort Makuba, but he was cautious as the child had never interacted with them. However, their friendly and warm atmosphere allowed Makuba to relax, and they convinced him that Yuna would not be defeated. Suddenly, the door to the room opened, and Yuna entered while gasping for breath as she had run all the way there. Instantly, Makuba threw himself at Yuna, and she caught him in her embrace. Big sister. 
Makuba yelled with relief, if you're here, you must have one, right? Yuna nodded, and Makuba finally burst into tears, that means Big Brother will be fine, right? Yes. She answered timidly. Then what are we waiting for? He said with enthusiasm, let's go. Makuba sprinted out of the room at an unimaginable speed and left dust trails behind him. Yuna sighed tiredly, knowing she would be so exhausted chasing the boy. Wait, Sinosin, Yugi suddenly called to her, is my grandfather all right? She nodded, and Yugi's tense expression finally loosened. Just like Makuba, he was extremely anxious about the outcome of her duel, as Yuna had promised to save his grandfather beforehand. Thank you. Yugi said with sincerity. Yuna merely smiled as Yugi and his friends blushed, ahem, we shouldn't keep you here any longer, he said awkwardly, averting his gaze. She waved goodbye to Yugi and his friends before fervently chasing after Makuba. Yugi smiled as he watched her leave. Interacting with Yuna despite her aggravating reputation at school was welcoming. Well, as they all say, you will only know one's real personality with a duel. Hmph. Yugi glanced at T, pouting with her arm. Crossed, so, you're into big chests, huh? What are you talking about? The boy stuttered in shock. However, T didn't answer and walked away while huffing with anger. Joey and Tristan sighed, leaving Yugi even more confused. Joey, geez Yugi, you really messed up. Tristan, yeah, even I won't fail that bad. Yugi. Meanwhile. Remembering the direction of Makuba's room, Yuna moved hastily, not wanting to keep him waiting any further. However. Big sister, Makuba's panicky voice echoed in the castle. Hearing his scream, Yuna dashed towards the sound and eventually found Makuba in his room. Beside him was the motionless Sido, and seeing this scene, Yuna realized something may have gone horribly wrong. She knelt beside him with a troubled expression as Makuba trembled in fear, when I got back, big brother still hadn't awakened, and I couldn't feel a pulse. Yuna frowned and felt a sense of crisis. Has Pegasus lied? Sido was breathing before, even without his soul, so what's happening? Whatever, it was, Yuna knew that right now, she must get Sido's heart to start beating again. She took a deep breath and suppressed the rising anxiety as Yuna crawled toward Sido and placed her hands over his chest. Following the instructions she had read online, Yuna began to perform chest compressions. Yet, after performing CPR for a few minutes, Sido still showed no sign of recovering. Big Brother Makuba cried as he watched helplessly. Yuna didn't give up and continued her efforts. She stared at his mouth, then glanced at the whimpering Makuba. Gritting her teeth, Yuna hesitantly opened Sido's lips and gulped. She nervously brought her face toward Sido's, and as she was going to blow oxygen into his lungs. Gasped Sido's eyes snapped open, and he sat up with energy. However, he felt something soft pressing down onto his lips, making him difficult to rise. When Sido's pupils became focused, he froze in shock. Yuna and Sido gazed at each other silently as their lips firmly pressed together. Yuna's mind went blank, and heat rushed to her face. Sido, wa. Kyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
Pegasus managed to survive the ordeal, and he's currently resting in his room. Shadi gently pressed his ank on Yuna's forehead and spoke forebodingly, take me to her soul room. The man closed his eyes as his surroundings changed. When he reopened his eyes, the man found himself in a dark corridor. The walls were made of ancient limestones, and torches dimly lighted the entire building. He starts to walk on a straight path, searching for any clues of Yuna's true identity, not knowing the danger he put himself in. After walking for an hour, the man discovered a large vacant room. It was completely pitch black, and the only light he could see was the torches at the room's exit across from him. Using his artifact hanging by his neck, he made a makeshift light source and carefully traversed through the room, careful of any traps that may hinder man. Suddenly, the man swung around when he heard a sound from behind. However, he couldn't see a single thing. Sweat trickled down his chin as each second passed while being in this room. He felt the lingering gaze of someone getting more intense. Whoosh the man threw himself against the floor as sharp claws swiped the area where he previously stood. He gasped in shock and stared at the monstrosity that ambushed him. It was a dragon with green scales and a purple carapace built around its body. A slimy and fleshy sound echoed across the room as its joints lit up with yellow and red bulbs like a plant revealing its fruits. Its scythe tail dragged across the floor, creating sparks, and the man's expression turned pale. With a speed unbefitting of its massive frame, the dragon leapt into the darkness and vanished from trace. The man instantly stood up and sprinted towards the exit. By observing the monster's actions, he knew it was toying with him, and his body trembled at the malice extruding from the creature. Unfortunately, before escaping to safety, he was tripped by the monster's tail and thrown across the room. His back hit the wall, and he groaned in pain. The creature revealed itself and pressed its claws on his chest. Blood stained his clothes as the sharp nails dug into his skin. Anticipating death, the man closed his eyes. However, death never came. He hesitantly lifted his head and saw the monster growling at another entity in the room. It was another dragon, and compared to the menacing aura the first monster emitted, this one had a divine feeling. With gold scales, huge pair of wings and red pupils, its appearance was truly awe-inspiring. The dragon roared at each other as if they were arguing. Reluctantly, the first dragon backed down and removed its restraint on the man, allowing him to breathe. Are you alright? A voice asked, snapping the man out of his daze. Between the two dragons stood a woman. She wore an elegant white dress, matching her snow-white hair that flowed down her shoulders. A shawl covering her face's upper portion gave her a sense of mystery. I apologize if starving venom fusion dragon have been too rough with you. She said apologetically, may I ask who you are? My name is Shadi Shin, the man responded honestly, allured by the beautiful voice. It's nice to meet you, Shadi, the woman said with a smile. She glanced at the artifact Shadi dropped a couple of feet away and stretched out her hand. To Shadi's amazement, the item flew into the woman's palm, and she rubbed her finger along the gold exterior, this is the Millennium Key, correct? Still stunned, Shadi nodded haphazardly, causing the woman to giggle, I haven't seen this item for a long time. It must be fate for me for the key to fall into my hand once more. Listening to the woman's words, Shadi became solemn and laughed even louder, don't worry, I don't plan on using it. She explained and willingly returned the Millennium Key. Shadi tightly clenched the Millennium Key, and many questions surfaced in his mind. However, despite the rising urge to ask, he understands he has no authority to interrogate her. Noticing his unease, the woman smiled kindly, there's nothing to be afraid of, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon won't harm you under my watch. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand grunted and lowered its head. She patted the dragon affectionately, and it wagged its tail like a pet. The woman then scratched the side of starving venom fusion dragon, and the beast snorted but didn't move away from her touch. You must have many questions, please come with me. The woman said and quietly walked towards the other end of the hallway. With no options, Shadi followed, and he nervously passed the two intimidating spirits. Starving venom fusion dragon gnashed its teeth while divine dragon lord Felgrand paid him no attention. As they walked side by side, only footsteps could be heard. Eventually, gathering his courage, Shadi asked, Who are you? Foo foo foo, the woman chuckled, I'm merely an echo of history, a remnant that wanders in this realm. He frowned at the lack of an answer, 
then what's your purpose here? My purpose, the woman muttered in thought, I have been sentient for longer than I can count. However, all I'm doing now is to keep this place from falling apart. Ah, uh, speaking of. A massive earthquake shook the hallway, and Shadi leaned against the wall for support. The floor beyond them cracked and split apart, revealing an endless void of darkness. The woman spreads her arms, and a wave of white light emits from her body. Gradually, the earthquake became milder, and the structures repaired themselves. Shadi sweated anxiously as he stared at the walls, I have heard of this phenomenon. This only meant that. The soul is fragmented and broken. The woman affirmed with a sad smile, eventually, the damage will be irreversible. Come on, we're close. She continued, leaving Shadi speechless. The two continued to walk until they reached a door. The woman opened it and gestured for Shadi to enter. Inside, he held his breath at the majestic scene. It was an open landscape with a clear blue sky with soft grass beneath his feet. The woman walked towards the center, where a figure lay there peacefully surrounded by white and blue roses. Shadi approached the sleeping individual and noticed the familiarity, Sano. The woman nodded and gently held Yuna's hand, I don't know how long she can live for. As you know, it was only a matter of time before her body succumbed to the damage of her broken soul. How much time does she have? Shadi asked. Two more years at most. The woman smiled bitterly. But I have faith, she said, I believe Unisol can repair herself before the worst happens. Shadi, why are you so sure? The woman merely smiled and said nothing. Shadi was momentarily at a loss and remembered the purpose of his visit, recently, I sensed two millennium items clashed with each other. Do you have any knowledge on the matter? She shook her head, Yuna isn't the one you're looking for. I understand, Shade responded when he deemed the woman wasn't lying, my purpose here is accomplished, I will be taking my leave. The woman smiled and stood up, that's a shame. I wish we could talk longer. Shadi nodded and, reactivating his millennium key, his body lit up and became transparent. The woman waved in farewell, and Shadi left Yuna's mind. Once he was gone, the woman returned to kneeling by Yuna's side. It would be hard, but I have faith you can make it. She whispered and gently stroked Yuna's head, please live, for all our sakes. Yuna's POV, a few hours later. I opened my eyes and groggily sat up. I noticed Kaiba was still unconscious, and my face instantly heated up. I clutched the side of my head and released an inward scream. I can't believe we did that it was supposed to be a simple CPR in which I would blow oxygen into his mouth, but he had to wake up at that moment. While kicking the air in embarrassment, there was the sound of groaning beside me. I turned my head and saw Makuba also waking up. Big sister, he said while rubbing his eyes, what happened? Huh, hold on, shouldn't I be the one to ask that question? First of all, why were you asleep, Makuba? When I inquired about this, he said he couldn't remember. Something else must have been at play, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly what. At this moment, Kaiba also woke up, and Makuba hurriedly sprinted towards him. Like the worried brother he was, Makuba scolded Kaiba harshly, forcing him to apologize for doing something so foolish, and Kaiba could do nothing but nod. Kaiba glanced at me as he calmed Makuba down, and I instantly averted my gaze. I wish I could crawl into a hole and never come out. I can't even look at him without thinking of what happened beforehand. Why are you two acting so weird? Makuba said, come on, let's get out of here. I can't stay in this dreadful place any longer. With Makuba in the lead, we followed quietly out of the castle. Guards were waiting outside, and they guided the three of us back to the port where a large cruise ship was docked. Yugi and his friends were already on the ship, waving at us and standing by the entrance was Pegasus. Ah, Kaiba boy, I'm glad to see you well, Pegasus exclaimed as if he wasn't the one that took his soul in the first place. I hope it wasn't that much of a surprise. After all, returning one's soul made the person's body temporarily shut down like a fresh corpse before their heart restarts automatically. Wait, I froze. Did he say what I think I heard? I don't have to do all that. Kaiba will wake up by himself. Oi oi, I lost my dignity because of you. Pay it back with a thousand cuts. Anyway, here's the prize money I have promised, Pegasus said and handed me a check note. I read the numbers and almost collapsed onto my knees in shock. 
There were six zeros. A whopping three million dollars. Look, it's not even in yen but in American USD. If there weren't other people here right now I would have been dancing with joy. Fine, I guess I would let you off the hook for now. I thought and glimpsed at Pegasus who was smirking at me. The announcement of your victory will be posted later and I hope you had fun. Pegasus said, it's time for me to go now, I still have other matters to attend to. Goodbye. He soon left with the rest of his bodyguards, leaving us alone. The horn of the crew sounded, signaling its departure and we quickly came aboard. I watched with bated breath as the ship slowly sailed away by the majestic sight that was the duelist kingdom. These two days have been short but the events were crazy enough to last me a lifetime. Now, all I can hope was that the future would be kind to me, yet I already knew how unlikely that would be. A few days later. Yuna's POV, look it's Yuna Sano. Have you heard she's the new king of games who defeated Pegasus? Yeah, who knew she's that strong in dual monsters? Sitting at my desk, I sighed tiredly while hearing the constant whispers. After defeating Pegasus, he later announced it to the media worldwide and now the stares I received don't just come from my classmates but the common citizens as well. However, strangely the gazes that were directed upon me no longer felt like it was one of fear. If I have to say, it's more like pure admiration. It sounds arrogant, but that's what it felt like. S. Sinosin. A sudden nervous voice snapped me out of my thoughts. I looked ahead and noticed a female student anxiously standing before me. In her hand was a deck of dual monsters, and she hesitantly reached out, See, can I have a duel with you? My eyes widened in shock, and I nodded subconsciously. The girl was also surprised before eagerly placing a chair opposite me. Obviously, it wasn't even a few turns until I utterly demolished her, however, the girl's action started a catalyst of events. Please duel with me too. I really want to see how strong the king of games is. More and more students gathered around me and declared challenges one by one, forming a line until, eventually, they were ushered to their seats by the teacher. During lunch, I went to ask Yugi about this, but he merely smiled and answered, saying that dual monsters can bring everyone together. I was surprised and reminded that this was the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. Your strength as a duelist also represents your status in life. Naturally, as the duel king, people will start to see me in a different light. However, that amount of interaction may still be too much for me. Speaking of Yugi, I also gave Joey a portion of the money, enough for his little sister's surgery. Saying grateful was an understatement when he prostrated and flooded the classroom with tears. Even with my donation, there was still enough money to not worry about my financial issue for a lifetime. Not only from Pegasus's prize money, I also received payment from Kaiba for looking after Makuba. The amount he sent wasn't something to scoff at either and I haven't properly thanked him yet, since I can't even be next to him without being nervous. Anyway, other than that, my life became uneventful as always. A few days later. I walked in a familiar street, eventually stopping at the Kane Game card store. I opened the door and saw Grandpa Mutu working by the counter. When Grandpa Mutu noticed me, he smiled, congratulations on winning the tournament. Yugi has told me all about it. His kind attitude warmed my heart, and I excitedly approached the counter. However, my mood dampened soon after when I recalled the reason for my visit. I nervously took out my deck and presented him with the blue eyes white dragon. Sorry. I muttered. I bowed and closed my eyes. Hopefully, he can be more lenient with my actions. After all, the blue eyes white dragon card was very important to him. Out of the blue, I felt a gentle hand patting my head. Grandpa Muda smiled and told me to lift my head, how can I be angry at someone who saved my life? Don't be nervous, Grandpa Muda soothed, I'm glad you're honest and returned the card to me. I grinned with relief, and Grandpa Muda laughed, so don't worry about it. Also, I just received a new shipment of cards, and I will give you 50% off. My eyes shone with enthusiasm while staring at the box of booster packs he stacked on the table. However, before I fully immerse myself into the dual monster card purchasing spree. You there, old man. A high-pitched voice erupted from behind. We both turned around and spotted a little girl with blonde hair tied into twin tails standing by the door. She wore a light blue shirt with a pink coat, a short red skirt and knee-high socks. In her hand was a brown teddy bear. 
The girl glared at Grandpa Muda fiercely as if he had stolen her candy. May I ask who might you be? Grandpa Muda asked. The girl smirked and patted her chest, I'm Rebecca, the current American Duel Monsters champion, and I'm here to take back what's stolen from me. What may that be? He responded with confusion. Of course, it's the blue eyes white dragon card you took from my grandfather. Grandpa Mutu, ah, uh, I remember now. She's the granddaughter of Grandpa Mutu's friend, who gave him the blue eye white dragon. Rebecca didn't make much appearance other than today and a few times in the future, so she's pretty forgettable. Is your grandfather's last name Hawkins, perhaps? Grandpa Mutu asked. That's right. With pride, Rebecca declared, and I, Rebecca Hawkins, here to take the card you stole back to its rightful owner. Grandpa Mutu was obviously troubled and tried calming Rebecca down, there must have been a misunderstanding. Your grandfather and I were great friends, and he entrusted this card to me as proof of our friendship. Lies. Rebecca screamed, I don't believe you, thief. The audacity of this brat. I was already quite annoyed by her sudden outburst, but disrespecting Grandpa Mutu was unacceptable. He's the first one that has been really kind and patient with my timid nature. So watching him being berated like this despite being innocent, I couldn't help and get mad. And you. Rebecca suddenly pointed at me while fuming hotly, Mr. Keith has told me all about it, how you're freely using my grandfather's card, so you're just as guilty. What to do? Grandpa Mutu muttered as Rebecca continued to screech like a wild Siberian husky. Watching Grandpa Mutu's exhausted expression, I moved on impulses and pulled his sleeve. Surprised, he stared at me, and his eyes softened, do you have a way to solve this situation? I nodded and approached Rebecca while crossing my arms. Rebecca, what do you want? Duel, I answered, showing Rebecca the blue eyes white dragon. She instinctively reached for the card, but before she could, I placed blue eyes white dragon on top of my deck and shuffled it. Finally understanding my intentions, Rebecca clicked her teeth. Fine, if you want to battle me so badly, then so be it. She growled, but if I win, you better give me that card. But I remained silent and stared at her. Eventually, Rebecca pouted, inflating her cheeks like a chipmunk, if I lose, I will leave you alone. I nodded and took out my phone before dialing a certain number. After a few seconds, the phone picked up, hello, big sister, what's up? Makuba asked through the phone. Huh, you need a dual room? Sure thing. Well, of course, I'm coming to watch it. I have already sent you the address. I will see you there. Makuba eagerly hung up as I received the location through my text. Rebecca and Grandpa Mudu followed me and walked through the bustling city. We eventually arrived at one of Kaiba Corp's dueling facilities, and Makuba was waiting for us outside. I haven't seen him for a few days, so I'm glad he's doing well. He led us into a massive duel room as large as the one I've used in the Duelist Kingdom. Without further instructions, Rebecca and I stepped onto the podiums opposite each other. You better prepare yourself. I'm pretty strong, you know. She said. Humph, brag all you want, and I'm not the winner of Duelist Kingdom for nothing. Well, are both duelists ready? Grandpa Mutu asked and acted as the referee. We nodded in unison, and he brought his hand down, begin. Duel, X2, Rebecca Hawkins, 2000 LP, Unisano, 2000 LP, I will go first. She declared, I set a monster in a card, then end my turn. I summon Komori Dragon. Komori Dragon, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, now, Komori Dragon attack. I ordered and pointed at the set card on Rebecca's field. The dragon charged, and when it reached Rebecca's card, Komori Dragon raised its claws and slashed downward. The hidden monster was revealed, and it was a woman. She has purple hair and wearing a dark robe. However, the most prominent feature was the third eye on her forehead. The claws pierced her in the chest, and she was instantly defeated. Normally, I would have been happy with the small triumph, but I understood I shouldn't be celebrating until I realized the monster's identity. You have triggered the ability of my monster, Witch of the Black Forest. Rebecca yelled. When this monster is sent from the field to the graveyard, I can add one monster with 1,500 or less defense from my deck to my hand. Rebecca smiled and searched her deck before adding a card to her hand. I end my turn. 
I said and anticipated her move. My turn. I will use the card of destruction, and we discard both our hands and draw the same amount of cards. We dumped our entire hands into the discard pile and added the same number of cards. When I looked at the new cards in my hand, my eyes nearly popped out of my head. Hey, hold up, what's this? Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand Arc Brave Dragon Blue Eyes White Dragon Reinforcement. Oi oi, I understand that the three of you wanted some time to shine, but this might be too much. You know that if my Komori Dragon's not on the field, I will actually lose here. 1. I will set another monster and card before the end of my turn. She said as another card appeared face down on the field. Another set monster. There were now two traps waiting for me, and I couldn't help but frown at Rebecca's extremely defensive playstyle, and I can't remember her strategy in the anime. Doesn't matter, Komori Dragon. Go for it, I believe in you. Komori Dragon, sweating, now attack. My monster flew towards Rebecca and attacked the monster she had set. What was revealed was a small creature with a brown furry body, green limbs, and three eyes. Why does it always have to be three eyes? Sangon, 1000 attack, 600 defense, Komori Dragon unleashed a fiery breath, and Sangon died while making a disturbing kuk 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 noise. With the ability of Sangon. Rebecca shouted, if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, I can add one monster with 1500 or less defense from my deck to my hand. I clicked my teeth as she joyfully added another card, I will play one card face down. Your move. My turn. She said confidently, I will use soul exchange to use your Komori dragon as tribute. Despite being my monster, Komori dragon was helplessly sacrificed to summon a monster Rebecca owned, the monster I summoned with be set face down, then I end my turn. Usually, when you tribute summons, you would have summoned the monster in attack position as it was probably your trump card but set it instead. There usually wasn't a card that needed you to set in defense mode, nor Rebecca's in the situation to do that. I gently tapped my temple while trying to remember the deck Rebecca used. There were two strategies she used, but what was it again? Nonetheless, whatever it was, I should find out what it was before it was too late. I will call upon my dragon knight of creation. I declared. A knight with gold armor appeared before me. He cheered and lifted his sword, eager for another battle. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, then I activate my trap card, reinforcements. Dragon Knight of Creation will gain 500 attacks. I explained. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 and GT, 2300 attack, 600 defense, now, Dragon Knight of Creation, destroy that set card. The knight rushes towards Rebecca's field. He leapt into the air and grasped the handle of his sword with both hands before unleashing a wide downward slash. Suddenly, the set card flipped over, and a massive shield emerged. Dragon Knight of Creation's blade easily bounced off the shield, and the impact caused him to stagger backward. I stared at the imposing shield with caution. It has a red center with a golden rim o the edges, and in the center was the symbol of an Egyptian eye. Millennium Shield, Zero Attack 3000 defense, humph. With my millennium shield, there's no way for you to crack its defense. Rebecca shouted with pride. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 1300 LP, I will set a card and end my turn, I said, ignoring her taunts. Ha, now it's my turn. Rebecca declared, I will summon cannon soldier in attack position. A metallic robot with a cannon strapped to its back was summoned. The machine snapped its sharp pincers imposingly and aimed the gun at my face. Cannon Soldier, 1400 attack, 1200 defense, Rebecca, I will also play Ring of Magnetism on Millennium Shield, reducing its defense by 500, but now that your monster can only attack my shield and nothing else. Millennium Shield, 0 attack, 3000 and GT, 2500 defense, I will end my turn here, Rebecca announced, but on my next turn, it's where the real challenge begins. When it was my move, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. What's making me feel this way? I can't understand. It wasn't an emotion of worry of the impending danger. No, it's more that ever Rebecca was going to do was going to set me off. I will set a card, I said and decided to play safely, I end my turn. Rebecca smiled gleefully like I had offered her an ice cream cone. She drew a card and yelled happily, 
now prepare yourself, Yuna. I will summon which of the Black Forest. Which of the Black Forest, 1100 attack, 1200 defense, now, I activate Cannon Soldier's ability. I will tribute Witch of the Black Forest to inflict 400 damage. The Witch of the Black Forest transformed into a beam of light and absorbed into Cannon Soldier's weapon. The robot churned and fired the cannon at the projectile, striking my side of the field, searing apart with flames. Unisano, 1300 LP and GT, 900 LP, while my Cannon Soldier keep inflicting damage, you can't even harm it. Rebecca cheered and hugged the teddy bear in her arms. Ah, that's right, this by. Twat used a burn strategy. She really has no shame, huh? Today, I fought against someone with a tear lament slash a shizu, full board, and I managed to win even though I simply shouldn't. It might be the happiest moment of my life when he didn't shuffle the cards in my graveyard into my deck. Also, you might recall that cannon soldier do 500 damage. Still, after some change, it became 400 hundred damage only, as it happened in the show, so I decided to follow that instead of the card's actual effect, so the earlier chapter was changed. Lastly, if there are any errors, please point them out. I was pretty tired while editing this chapter, so I might have some mistakes. Thanks. Anyway, enjoy. Recap, Rebecca, Cannon Soldier, Millennium Shield, with Ring of Magnetism, Yuna, Dragon Knight of Creation, set trap. Yuna's POV, there were many types of UGO players out there, but in my opinion, burn decks were the worst of the worst. I mean, what's the even point of playing if you're not even interacting with your opponent? Rebecca's strategy wasn't exactly a burning type, but it isn't nice. I will activate Solemn Wish. Whenever I draw a card, I gain 500 life points. I shouted before Rebecca ended her turn. Yunasano, 900 LP and GT, 1400 LP, not intending to give up, Rebecca kept launching monsters my way, dealing a thousand and six hundred worth of damage in two turns with a series of the normal summons and special summoning. However, I survived by a hair's breadth, taking advantage of Pot of Greed and my normal draw phase, causing my life points to rest at a thousand and eight hundred on my turn. I use Graceful Charity. I shouted, and a praying angel dressed in white suddenly appeared on the field, I can draw three cards and then discard two from my hand. Yuna Sano, 1800 LP and GT, 3300 LP, 1, finally, I could discard my brick dragons and replenish my hand with more versatile cards. With the new arsenal, I fervently began my assault. I will activate Dragon Knight of Creation's effect, I will discard one card and send Dragon Knight of Creation to the graveyard and special summon. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand from the grave. Dragon Knight of Creation disappeared into a beam of light. Gradually, the light formed a shape of a humongous dragon. Its golden scales flashed brilliantly, and its roar frightened Rebecca. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, I will banish the Millennium Shield on the field, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will gain attack and defense equal to its level multiplied by 100. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3300 attack, 2800 and GT, 3300 defense, also, since Dragon Knight of Creation was sent to the graveyard, I can revive Keeper of the Shrine. Keeper of the Shrine, 0 attack, 2100 defense, now your cannon soldiers no longer protected. I said as Rebecca's eyes widened in realization, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, attack. Without hesitation, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand lunged at Rebecca's monster. The dragon grasped Cannon Soldier in its claws and clamped down with its jaw. The robot combusted, sweeping Rebecca off her feet. Rebecca Hawkins, 2000 LP and GT, 100 LP, finally, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect has been activated after destroying your monster, and I will special summon Arc Brave Dragon in defense position. Arc Brave Dragon, 2400 attack, 2000 defense, I will set one more card and end my turn, I muttered. Staring at my monsters, Rebecca sat there with a stupefied expression and nervously regained her footing. She pouted angrily and cutely raised her tiny fist, you may have just bounced back, but it's not over. First, I use Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy the Solemn Wish. Rebecca declared, and a sudden whirlwind shattered my card into pieces. Next, I will play tribute to the doomed and discard a card from my hand to destroy Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. 
hundreds of dirty bandages burst from the ground, wrapping themselves around Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's body. The monster was encased like a mummy and forcibly buried in the earth in seconds. Unisano, 3300 LP and GT, 1650 LP, I will activate my card of sanctity to draw until I have 6 cards. I will also use Pot of Greed and add 2 more cards. With this many cards, I can finally activate my strongest spell. Judgment Blaster. Rebecca laughed, by discarding 5 cards, I can destroy all the monsters on your field. A beam fell from the sky and struck the Keeper of the Shrine and Arc Brave Dragon. The elderly man and dragon exploded instantly, without a trace. Yuna, 1650 LP and GT, 450 LP, finally, I activate the spell, Monster Reborn. To special summon the monster I discarded earlier. Here it comes, my strongest monster, Shadow Ghoul. A horrifying green monster emerges. It has four legs attached to a small midsection with a slender upper torso. The monster has a stretched out face with pincers as its jaws and a green mane running down its back. The most disturbing thing was the fleshy red orbs growing out of every area of its body, similar to starving venom fusion dragon, but way more grotesque. Shadow Ghoul, 1600 attack, 1300 defense, with Shadow Ghoul's ability, it gains 100 attacks for every monster in the graveyard. Remembering the number of cards Rebecca has been discarding, I frowned. Seeing my expression, she laughed and slowly announced the monsters resting in her graveyard. Three Witch of the Black Forest, three Sangon, three Cannon Soldier, two Skeletal, two Giant Soldiers of Stone, one Electric Snake, one Mystic Clown, that's a total of 15 monsters. So 1500 attack. Shadow Ghoul, 1600 and GT, 3100 attack, 1300 defense, lastly, I use Card of Demise, Anime, and draw until I have 5 cards. But I have discarded them during my fifth turn. With her hand replenished, Rebecca immediately set three cards on the field and rendered her turn. I gazed at Shadow Ghoul intently. Considering that it was starting at a thousand six hundred attacks, it was a feat to boost the Shadow Ghoul this high. With two more set cards on the field, it would be difficult for me to defeat it. However, that doesn't stop me from trying. Since Arc Brave Dragon was sent to the graveyard, last turn, it allows me to summon a level 7 or 8 dragon monster special. I said, and light enveloped my field, I will revive my divine dragon Lord Felgrand. Divine dragon Lord Felgrand returned to my field, and I instantly activated its ability, I will banish Shadow Ghoul. Divine dragon Lord Felgrand roared and unleashed an orange beam from its jaws. Unfortunately, Rebecca already has precautions. Rebecca, I will activate my trap card, Imperial Iron Wall. While this card is on the field, we cannot banish any cards. Before the beam struck Shadow Ghoul, a massive stone wall rises from the ground. The wall shielded her monster from the attack. Plan it doesn't seem to work, but don't worry. That's why I always have a backup plan. I use the spell card Wing Beat of Giant Dragon, and I will return Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand into my hand, and I can destroy all the traps and spell cards on the field. Yet, Rebecca also has a counter to that as well. I will use my trap, Magic Jammer. I can negate your activated spell by discarding a card from my hand. Rebecca announced, also, the card I discarded earlier was actually my Electric Snake, and my Shadow Ghoul gained 100 attacks. Shadow Ghoul, 3100 and GT, 3200 attack, 1300 defense, um. That doesn't seem to work either. Unbeknownst to her, I have a plan C, and Rebecca won't know what's coming. Well, that's at least what I want to say. I gritted my teeth and ended my turn after much frustration. Rebecca giggled and instantly attacked. Since Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability didn't successfully activate, Shadow Ghoul's strength was superior. The fiend rushed towards Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. My dragon tried to drive the monster away with its claws but was easily suppressed and defeated. Unisano, 450 LP and GT, 50 LP, I will set two cards face down and end my turn. Rebecca said as two more cards appeared before her. Crap. I think I'm in trouble. My monsters couldn't gain an edge in power with Imperial Iron Wall as my trump card, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, needed to banish monsters to grow. 
Other cards, such as reinforcement or polymerization, were also used to summon starving Venom Fusion Dragon. However, those ideas were already down the drain when Rebecca used card destruction earlier and I lost both cards. Thankfully, with my credits, I added some new cards to help me, but I haven't even seen them yet. What are you waiting for? Rebecca crossed her arms, are you stalling now? Sheesh, don't rush me. Let me think this through. Unlike some of the other boss monsters I have faced in this world, Rebecca's Shadow Ghoul was rather average compared to Pegasus's Thousand I Restrict, so I can play defensively without much pressure. However, Rebecca was thriving at the number of powerful traps and spells guarding her Shadow Ghoul, and I'm sure that if I didn't do something major quick, it would come back and bite me later. While pondering, I suddenly heard a loud shout from the sidelines. Yuna Sano. Grandpa Muta yelled, don't give up no matter what. Eh, I'm not throwing down the towel yet. However, Grandpa Muda couldn't read my thoughts and continued lecturing me with a deep voice, you're a strong duelist. So believe in the heart of the cards, and you will never fail. My cheeks felt warm, and I was embarrassed by his strong belief in me. Strangely, when Grandpa Muda spoke, it sounded convincing, and I was caught up with his momentum. There was a cozy feeling in my chest, oddly nostalgic and yearning. Maybe it was the lack of parental figures in my life, but Grandpa Muda's praise excited me, and I was determined not to let him down. All right, like he said, heart of the cards, right? I will draw and see what happens. As I added a new card to my hand, I froze. Oi oi, what's this, what sorcery that Grandpa Muta deal with? Why was the card here now? I was resolved that I won't get it until after at least three more turns. Please, Grandpa Mutu, share some of your protagonist power with me too, third POV, Rebecca smiled, everything was going perfectly as planned. At first, she was greatly shocked that she almost perished from Yuna's divine dragon lord Felgrand. However, after foiling Yuna's strategies, she felt safer. Soon, I can return Grandpa's card from those thieves. However, Rebecca suddenly felt a slight chill and frowned when her opponent didn't react like she wanted. Yuna stared at the cards in her hand with a thoughtful expression. I will first play Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. Yuna shouted, then I use Return of Dragon Lords and Special Summon Arc Brave Dragon. After that, I activate Wing Beat of the Giant Dragon and bring Arc Brave Dragon back into my hand to destroy all the traps and spells on the field. Again. Rebecca thought, luckily, she had already prepared something. She smiled, assuming that Yuna had run out of options and played her card, I will use Fake Trap. If one of my trap cards is going to be destroyed by a spell or trap card, it will destroy this card instead. Rebecca thought she had won and relaxed her guard, but that was ultimately the mistake. I will then play Double Cyclone and destroy the Wing Beat of the Giant Dragon to remove your Imperial Iron Wall. Yuna declared, since I activated this spell after your Fake Trap, your Imperial Iron Wall is no longer protected. Rebecca, twin whirlwinds manifested from thin air, striking both of their fields. One of the tornadoes crashed into the massive fortified wall. Cracks ran along the structure, and the wall collapsed, revealing the hiding shadow ghoul on the other side. Then I will banish my Komori Dragon and Paladin of Felgrand in the graveyard to special summon Dark Flare Dragon from my hand. Dark Flare Dragon, 2400 attack, 1200 defense, I then used Dark Flare Dragon's effect and sent Light Pulsar Dragon from my hand and the third Komori Dragon in my deck to the graveyard and banished the giant soldier of stone in your graveyard. With the banishing, Rebecca gasped and watched as her Shadow Ghoul's attack dropped. Shadow Ghoul, 3200 and GT, 3100 attack, 1300 defense, this was only the beginning. The real show starts now. Yuna smiled, I use Monster Reborn to revive your Sangon. The small furry creature with three eyes made another entrance onto the field. However, this time, it's not on Rebecca's side. Sangon, 1000 attack, 300 defense, Shadow Ghoul, 3100 and GT, 3000 attack, 1300 defense, I will also activate my set trap, Dragon's Rebirth to banish the Keeper of the Shrine and summon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand from my graveyard. The Golden Dragon was revived, and Rebecca thought it had never looked so ferocious until now. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand snarled, displaying its array of sharp teeth, taunting her. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's effect, 
I will banish your Witch of the Black Forest in your graveyard, and it will gain attacks and defense equal to that monster's level. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3200 attack, 2800 and GT, 3200 defense, Shadow Ghoul, 3000 and GT, 2900 attack, 1300 defense, I will activate my last trap. Rebecca yelled desperately, I use Spellbinding Circle, Anime, and use its first ability so Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will lose 700 attacks. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 3200 and GT, 2500 attack, 2800 defense, now your Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's power is lower than my Shadow Ghoul. Rebecca said while sweating. So what? Yuna retorted, and Rebecca's eyes widened, who said I'm using Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand? I will use Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Dark Flare Dragon as tributes. To summon Blue Eyes White Dragon. Rebecca took a step back as the majestic dragon towered over her. Its sapphire pupils stared into her soul, and the monster roared with rage. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, now, Blue Eyes White Dragon, attack. Yuna said and pointed at the Shadow Ghoul. Blue Eyes White Dragon howled and opened its jaw and generated a blinding white light in its mouth. The dragon unleashed the deadly beam, and Rebecca screamed as her Shadow Ghoul was vaporized instantly. Rebecca Hawkins, 100 LP and GT, 0 LP, as the duel ended, Rebecca was still in shock as she opened and closed her mouth like a goldfish. Gradually, when reality set in, her face paled. Rebecca glimpsed at Solomon, who was praising Yuna for her performance. With a deep breath, she quietly approached them. Noticing her presence, Solomona and Yuna stared at her with anticipation. Rebecca clenched her fist, why, you win. I will leave you alone now. Rebecca didn't wait for their response and ran away in shame. However, she crashed into someone and tripped. She painfully rubbed her head and gasped and the girl saw the person she collided with. Gran. Grandpa. She squealed in shock. Ah, Arthur, long time no see. Solomon greeted. The old man in question smiled, indeed, I have heard of what happened here. Arthur stared at the nervous Rebecca, you should have known better. Don't you know it's rude barging into someone's store like this? But Grandpa. Rebecca reasoned, he's the one that stole your card. Bah, I don't know what you're talking about, Arthur said with a wave of his hand, I gifted Solomon that card. So he never stole it. Rebecca muttered blankly. She looked at Solomon and Arthur with horror. Her grandfather sighed and crossed his arms, do you know how much trouble you're in? I, I'm sorry, she screamed while bowing at a 90 degrees angle. As Arthur scolded the misbehaving Rebecca, Yuna tapped on Solomon's shoulder. She showed him the blue eyes white dragon with regret. No matter how much Yuna wanted to keep it, she understood that it was something she must do. Solomon stared at the blue eyes white dragon in his hand and smirked, here, keep it. Yuna, I have seen your dueling spirit and think you deserve this card. Solomon explained, besides, it's useless gathering dust in my store. Do you mind Arthur? He asked his friend. Arthur laughed, oh I arrived late, but I have seen all I need. She's perfect to have the card. Yuna stared at Solomon, who smiled kindly, you heard him, keep it. You earned it. Suddenly, Yuna hugged Solomon tightly, catching him by surprise. T, thank you. She murmured timidly. Solomon grinned and patted Yuna's back. She eventually broke away while blushing with shame. Solomon chuckled, despite Yuna's beautiful and elegant appearance, he found the girl quite adorable and couldn't help but treat her like a granddaughter. Let's go back, and I believe you still have business left in my store. Yuna nodded eagerly and after saying goodbye to Makuba, she followed Solomon back to the Kane game store. A day later. Yuna POV, Kaboom the thunderstorm outside roared fiercely as the harsh rain struck against the windows, creating a rhythmic tapping sound. Outside, the sky was dark, with no signs of life without traffic or pedestrians. I closed the curtains and sighed with boredom. Due to the heavy rain, there wasn't much to do, and I lay on my couch while staring at the white ceiling. Absent-mindedly, I muttered, System. The magical blue screen responded to my call, displaying the list of pieces of information. Name, Yunasano, title, King of Games slash Duel King, Credits, 
8,600, task, inventory, shop, I stared at the credits while drooling. Finally, I have enough to get an ultra-rare card. However, now, it all comes down to what I should buy. Well, it should first obviously be a monster, right? In this era, some traps and spell cards were already absurdly powerful and compared to having a single ultra-rare spell or an ultra-rare monster, it's evident that the latter was better. Ultimately, I bought some common and rare cards I can't usually get and called it a day. It's probably best if I save up for now, never know that I might need a card to save my life. Knock 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 I frowned when someone knocked on my door. I peeped through the peak hole but couldn't see anyone. I hope it's not a ghost. I opened the door with a deep breath, and my eyes widened when I looked down. M. Makuba. I uttered in shock, seeing his drenched appearance. Big sister. He cried, I need your help. Third POV, earlier, in Kaiba Corps. Brother, I'm unsure if this is a good idea. Makuba said with concern. You don't have to worry about it, Makuba, Sito assured with confidence, I have designed each and every program of this game myself. But still. Makuba muttered. Together they went down the elevator leading to the underground levels of Kaiba Corps. Through a set of hallways, the two entered a large room full of monitor screens and wires. A mechanical chair built into a pod was in the center of the room. As Sido approached the pod, Makuba ran before him and spread his arms. Before you do this, shouldn't you at least fire the big fives first? Who knows what they have done while you're away? Sido snorted, the big fives were nothing. I can deal with them later. This comes first. Makuba reluctantly gave in and moved away as Sido settled inside the pod. Makuba went to the control panel and sighed. He couldn't help but feel that whatever happened next would go horribly wrong. As Makuba switched on the device, he stared at Sido through the pod's glass with anxiety. Sido glimpsed at him, I will return shortly. Mind Link initiated, an artificial voice spoke through the speaker as all the lights on the pods lit up. Makuba turned to the screens and confirmed that his brother had successfully entered the game. Suddenly, the monitors distorted, and Sido's shout entered the comms, brother. Makuba yelled in panic. He ran to the game pod and forcibly opened the hatch by typing the code on the side. Makuba shook Sido's shoulder, but he remained unconscious. BAM the door to the room shut automatically as the image on the computers changed. Five of the screens showcased five separate men, and Makuba scowled. What have you done to my brother? Makuba hissed at the big fives. One of the big five members smirked, Sido Kaiba always thinks that he's invincible, but it's quite the opposite. We have trapped your brother in his own game, and now, if you simply surrender yourself or else things may get messy. Makuba heard multiple footsteps approaching the door. He swiftly turned off the monitors and took his brother's deck. Using a desk as leverage, Makuba escaped through the air vents and eventually ended up in Yuna's home. Yuna's POV, present time. I sat beside Makuba as he sniffled in tears while recounting what happened. There was a blanket wrapped around his body to keep him warm and in his hand was a cup of hot chocolate. He had been in the rain for a long time, and when I first saw him, his lips had become a little blue from the cold. WH what now? I asked. We have to go save big brother. Makuba uttered and grasped my hand, please help me, big sister. You're the only one I can depend on. So I'm getting involved in the legendary hero arcs now. What about Yugi and his friends? Will they be joining too? When I asked about this, Makuba merely tilted his head, Yugi? What about him? Big sister is all I need. With this much expectation placed on me, I couldn't help but feel a slight amount of pressure. However, since Makuba is the one asking, I will definitely agree. When I gave him my answer, his face lit up with joy and he stood up eagerly as the blanket fell to the ground. All right. We will go tonight. Let's go save Sido, he cheered, and I was caught up with his enthusiasm. For the next few hours, we prepared for our infiltration. Makuba borrowed my phone and made various calls. He explained to me that despite Big Five's takeover, there were still people loyal to his brother in the company, and they would assist us. I was pretty surprised as it was never talked about during the show. But now that I think about it, that time, Yugi and his group sneaked into Kaiba Corps way too easily, so they must have had some help behind the scenes. 
With our preparations complete, we waited until midnight to begin our operation. The rain has died down, so it made everything easier. Makuba and I stealthily ran down the quiet streets before finally reaching the Kaiba Core building. With instructions given by the employees, we entered through the back door and used the staff elevator to go down to the basement levels. Makuba led me into a large room, and he flicked on the light switch, illuminating the area. Thankfully, we still have spare rooms with those game pods, and it should be safe to use them, Makuba said as he checked the status on the computers. I approached the end of the room where two virtual game pods sat. The seat was made from soft black leather that was comfortable to the touch. Around the seat were many mechanical machineries that were flickering on and off. So, are we ready to go? Makuba asked. I frowned and stared at his innocent appearance, stay. What? He exclaimed, no, I'm coming with you to save Sito. I shook my head and pointed at the computers, too dangerous. Also, help. From. Here. Makuba pouted but relented when I glared at him sternly. He sighed, dragged his depressed self over to the table, and began typing into the console. I opened the game pod as the glass cover lifted, creating a cool futuristic sound. Big sister, please set your deck on the spot below your right armrest, Makuba instructed. I did as I was told, and the machine made a beeping noise, indicating the successful scan of my deck. Unfortunately, the big fives have prevented anyone from joining the game or changing its code. He explained, however, Cedo have made a DLC that was already operational inside the game but just haven't been published. Makuba, by activating the DLC, the game will be forced to update automatically and through that window I can get you inside. Also, instead of starting as yourself, you will actually be taking control of a character that was already made so it would give us some time before the big fives detected that another player has joined. So in a sense, it will be a transmigration. But I also have transmigrated from the modern world, so. Transmigration squared. Please close your eyes, and you will be in the game when you wake up. As the game pod came to life, Makuba said, there is a big time difference. One minute in the real world means one hour has passed in the virtual world. Good luck, and come back safely. He said and pressed the large red button on the desk. As the sound of the machine became increasingly louder, I closed my eyes and felt a pulling sensation. The best way to describe the feeling was similar to when you're in a plane while it's taking off. I took a deep breath to calm my nerves as the feeling increased in intensity. Don't worry, Kaiba. I'm coming to save you again. I wonder, what character I will possess. Sometime later. I groaned and opened my eyes. The first thing I felt was the soft fabric of a bed enveloping my body. I groggily sat up and found myself in a room. The walls were made of limestones with a window on the side, shining the sunlight into the room. There weren't many things except a wardrobe, a desk and a mirror. I checked my body and can safely confirm that it was still one of a woman, and it seemed to be the same age as me in the real world. Luckily, I seemed to be wearing a gown, so I'm not just naked. Suddenly, a bell rang in my head, and I immediately opened the system. Task number 5 Rescue Kaiba in the Legendary Heroes. Reward, 5000 credits, I wasn't surprised by the task and switched it off as the mission was already imprinted in my brain. However, another panel appeared, this time in a different color. Welcome to the Legendary Heroes. In this game, you will use your power of dual monsters to save this world. However, you must learn how to play the game before you start. Each player will be given a dueling gauntlet with the deck they have placed in the game pod. The dueling gauntlet will also display your life points, you will lose the game if you run out. Every time a battle starts, you may draw 5 cards. To use a card, raise the card you want to use in the air and shout its name. Spell and monsters cards will be activated instantly, while traps will take some time for their effect to activate. You can summon as many monsters as possible, but remember that when a battle ends. All cards used will be discarded forever unless you have spells to bring them back. 4. To summon stronger monsters, you must tribute monsters currently summoned unless otherwise. When a battle reaches its conclusion, all the unused cards will be placed at the bottom of the deck, and the defeated monsters will drop rewards that may be useful in your adventure. Good luck, I gulped and read the bundle of information presented to me. The screen vanished, and I couldn't bring them back, no matter how many times I tried. 
I assumed that must be the interface implemented inside the game instead of my system, as it acted differently. Before I could investigate further, I heard a knock on the door. Young miss, may I come in? A feminine voice asked through the door. A, ah. Yes, I yelped, and the door opened. A young girl dressed in a maid outfit entered. Upon seeing me, she smiled brightly, I'm really happy young miss is already awake. She must be excited as today's her big day. She brought me to the mirror and sat me on a chair. With a smooth motion, the maid combed my long hair as I observed myself through the mirror. In the game, I looked similar to my real-world appearance, but the main difference was my silky white hair, contrary to its ocean blue color. I really envy young Miss's beautiful hair. The maid muttered, this really shows that young Miss was the child blessed by our God. I stayed silent and tried to analyze the information. What was this God she was referring to? After combining my hair, the maid reached for the makeup cosmetics on the desk, and I stopped her. Is there something wrong, young miss? The maid said and tilted her head. Why? I asked and pointed at items in her hand. Well, I have to make young miss as gorgeous as ever. There's going to be thousands of people coming to see you today. Hold up, pause. What the heck did you say? Huh, don't tell me you forgot. The maid gasped. Today's your debut as the new priestess of the Blue Eyes. Priestess. Blue Eyes? Makuba, where did you send me? Come on, now raise your arms. The maid urged, and I couldn't even argue as she helped me change into a new outfit. At least ten minutes has passed until the maid have finished. Staring at my changed appearance, she squealed excitedly, Kya, you're so beautiful. I gazed at my reflection in the mirror, and I naturally thought the same. My lips were carefully applied with light red lipstick, and blush was applied to my cheeks. There were also eyeshadows near my eyelids, showcasing my blue pupils. My hair was kept natural except for three thin braids that hung closely from my sides and back. My outfit also wasn't something to scoff at either. I wore a comfortable dress, and there were blue-colored engravings on the clothes. As I continued to gawk at my appearance, the maid gently led me out of the room. A few minutes of walking later. We traveled through a set of limestone hallways, passing by countless guards armed with swords. I realized that we're currently set in a temple as the maid continuously preached about things like God and priests. However, what scared me the most was what do any of those things have to do with me? I'm too embarrassed to ask her and I helplessly followed while crawling deeper into the rabbit hole I dug. Young miss, she called out amidst my stupor, are you certain you will be wearing that? She worriedly pointed at the dual disc on my wrist. Before I was dragged out of the room, I managed to grab the dual disc, which was sitting on a table in the corner. Contrary to the dual disc I'm familiar with, this design was smaller and there were no slots where I can place my cards. Instead, it was only a circular disc where there was a small screen currently displaying my life points and below was my deck attached firmly so it won't fall off if I make sudden movements. I'm not sure where you got such ornament but it may look odd with your appearance. The maid said. I shook my head in denial and she kept her mouth shut. I'm sorry to be a burden, but right now, you never know what events will occur and I don't want to find out what happens when I die in this game. When we arrived, what greeted me first was a massive hall, there weren't any walls and the ceiling was supported by humongous marble pillars on both sides. The bright sun shines through the gaps in the pillars creating an ethereal feeling. In the center of the room was a statue of a dragon. Even with its stony appearance, I can instantly discern its identity, affirming my suspicion. Of course, it has to be the blue eyes white dragon, why do I even bother? If it's Kaiba and he made DLC for a game, wouldn't it be obvious to be blue eyes white dragon themed? When I stopped focusing on the designs of the room, I froze and noticed a horrifying sight. There were possibly hundreds no thousands of people gathered together, all dressed in fantasy from civilian outfits to clothes for rich people and all of them were staring at me. I was led to an elevated platform at the front of the room. I moved stiffly and felt all the pupils honing in on me like a hawk. On the platform was a lectern table where a book was placed. I approached the lectern table and stared at the pages full of scriptures, the priestess will now give her sermon. A guard shouted with a booming voice. Instinctively, everyone kneeled in silence as they gazed at me from the corner of their eyes. Their stares were full of expectations and I felt the butterfly. 
in my stomach going wild. My mind was blank and my heart thrashed with fear. Abort. Abort abort I can't take this anymore, save me, someone I screamed in my head while keeping an emotionless face. Part 2 will be released on Tuesday. Third POV, the crowd stared at Yuna in admiration. Her gorgeous and dignified appearance took their breath away, and everyone keenly focused on what she would say. Their anticipation was over the roof as the people imagined what kind of enchanting voice she would have. However, unbeknownst to the audiences, their expectations would soon be shattered. Meanwhile, Yuna's back was soaked with sweat as she glimpsed at the massive amount of people gathered before her. She gazed at the crowd and nervously opened her mouth. However, her throat suddenly felt incredibly dry, and she hurriedly reached for the glass of water on the table. Unfortunately, with the stress and pressure, Yuna's finger slipped, and she knocked the glass over. Spraying water all over the floor and on the people kneeling in the front row seats. Yuna. Everyone. After a minute of silence, Yuna cleared her throat, and her face was tinged red with embarrassment. Regaining her composure, she etched the words on the book into her memories and began to speak. On. Once up. Upon a time, Yuna muttered, trying to preach to the best of her abilities. However, after two sentences, the young maid from before quietly approached Yuna and whispered into her ears, Young miss, the people in the back can't hear you. Yuna's legs almost buckled under her, but she managed by gripping the edges of the lectern so tight that her knuckles turned white. When she calmed herself for the second time, Yuna resumed the speech. The words were very stiff, and the sentences were choppy as Yuna stuttered uncontrollably. Sometimes Yuna will speak loudly, while other times, she's quiet as a mouse. Nobody could understand her, and some thought this was a bad joke. By the end, the audience was beyond belief. Couldn't bear the embarrassment further, Yuna escaped back into her quarters. Yuna's POV, ten minutes later. I buried my face in my pillow and screamed. Thankfully, there was only me in the room, or else I would really die from the shame. It doesn't even take a smart person to know how bad of a speech it was. Right now, I only wanted to dig a hole and from this world forever knock 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 go, what now? The door opened, and the maid peeked her head through the doorway. Her face was full of pity, and she patted my head to comfort me. Even if I was the older one, I'm being treated like a child. You did fine, the maid said, it's okay to be embarrassed. I didn't respond and hid myself under the blankets. The maid giggled, she spread open the curtains, and I felt the heat of the sun through the fabric. After urging me to get out of bed, she eventually gave up and continued to clean my room. I thought the maid would leave sooner or later, so I endured her presence. However, her next words snapped me out of my sulking mood. Your mother, Kayasama, has called for you. She said. My body froze in shock, and I couldn't believe what I just heard. Mother, a word that felt extremely foreign to me, and it's like a whole other language. I held my breath and quietly stared at the maid. Unable to endure the curiosity, I left the bed and cleaned up my disheveled appearance. With the maid's help, I eventually arrived at a set of doors. Kayasama wanted to speak to you in private, the maid said, I will be off. Before I could inquire further, the maid disappeared around the corner. I touched my chest and sensed my heart beating like a wild horse. Knowing that my mother was beyond this door terrifies me. Gathering my courage, I gently knocked, and a voice beckoned me to enter. As soon as I went inside, the first thing I noticed was a tall woman with her back facing me. Hearing my entrance, the woman turned around, and I subconsciously gasped. The woman was dressed in a blue and silver dress with golden embroidery. She had long white hair and blue eyes similar to mine. M. Mom. My voice felt hoarse, and I trembled. The woman smiled, Yes, I'm here, Yuna. At first, I was initially surprised that my name was called as I imagined I would be given a new name. However, that thought left my head as fast as it entered when I felt something wet dripping down my face. I touched the side of my cheek and stared at the tear stain on my fingers. Why am I crying? Why does it feel so suffocating? Like a broken dam, my tears fell uncontrollably, and I sobbed. Oh my! The woman exclaimed and approached me, What's the matter, Yuna? I reached out my arms and embraced the woman with all my strength. I never would have realized that I would ever feel something like this. 
It was an emotion hidden in Aki Kudo's and Yuna Seno's hearts, the yearning for a family. Numbness, confusion, fear, guilt, relief and anger, I felt them all at the same time. Thoughts I never imagined manifested in my head. Why did you leave me alone? Where are you when I needed you the most? Who gives you the right to abandon me in this cruel world? I let out all my emotions in my cry, dirtying her clothes with my tears. The woman was initially stunned by my sudden outburst. But instead of pushing me away, she smiled and returned my embrace. It's okay, she muttered, mom's here now. The woman rubbed my back as I cried my heart out. Not once was she bothered by my behavior, and I was comforted until I continued to weep until tears couldn't fall from my face any longer. An hour later. I rested my head on my mother's lap as she caressed my hair, Mom, Mom. I called and giggled, yes, yes. She chuckled, gosh, you're acting like a toddler today. Do you? Hate it? I asked nervously. Mom softly flicked my forehead and smiled, how could I? Do you know how long I wished you stayed small for one more day? We stayed like this for ten more minutes, and Mom brought up something I had forgotten. I heard from Amy that your first sermon today has been quite eventful. I realized that Amy was the maid's name and remembered how much trouble I caused. I blushed and averted my gaze, sorry. It's natural to be nervous, she said, don't worry. As time goes by, you will get better. Well, it's probably my last time, though. I thought but nodded anyway. As my mother speaks, I can feel a nagging feeling in the corner of my heart. It reminds me that none of this was real, it's just a game. However, I wasn't disappointed by this obvious fact. Instead, I wished to cherish this moment even more, as it was the first time I learned what it means to have a family. Ah, look at the time, mother exclaimed while glimpsing at the clock, I wish we could stay like this for a bit longer, but there's still work I need to complete. I reluctantly broke away from her embrace, and with a warm farewell, I returned to my room. Now, alone again, I donned a serious expression and sat on my bed. Remembering the purpose of my mission, I began to recount the events that would happen in this arc Kaiba got kidnapped by the monsters in this game and is currently held in a black castle. The monsters wanted to sacrifice him to summon an evil dragon, and I needed to stop it before it's too late. The dragon in question was called the Mythic Dragon or the Five-Headed Dragon in the modern world. A beast with 5,000 attacks that couldn't be destroyed by dark, earth, fire, water and wind monsters. It may not sound that powerful, but it was close to invincible in this era. Fortunately, that won't stop me from defeating it. I scanned through the system for a card I wanted. Eventually, settling on a few that would fit perfectly in this situation. After formulating my plans, I faced another dilemma. To defeat the evil dragon, I must first leave this place, but how? At that time, I didn't realize that the answer would arrive way sooner than expected. Boom suddenly the entire temple shook, and I heard a distant explosion erupting at the far end of the building. Immediately, screams rang out from all areas, and I sighed. Maybe sometimes it's best to keep my mouth shut. Third POV, a few minutes later, Amy burst into the room and ran towards Yuna in fear, young lady, we must go. There are monsters everywhere. When the maid grabbed Yuna's hand, a creature burst through the window, showering the room with glass. The monster has green scales and red flesh. Sharp claws on each of its limbs could easily tear a human apart. Lastly, three separate heads were growing out of its torso, and each face was covered by a white mask with two slits for the eyes. Three-headed Guido, 1200 attack, 1400 defense, the monster roared, and the young maid shrieked, S, stay back. Amy warned and waved the feather duster in her hand. Unlucky for Amy, three-headed Guido growled and brandished its claws. As she was ready to fight back with her trusty feather duster, Yuna stood between them. Young miss, what are you doing? It's dangerous. The maid yelped. However, Yuna didn't listen to her warnings and drew a card from the device on her wrist. Amy watched as the three-headed Guido charged. Kia, young miss. She screamed and covered her eyes. Amy waited for the terrifying sound that she will about to hear. However, no sound came. After a few seconds, she hesitantly lowered her hands and witnessed an unbelievable sight. There stood a tall man with brown skin, and fiery red hair stood in front of her. 
He was dressed in golden armor with an open design, presenting his muscles. A helmet hid the man's face, but Amy felt he must be handsome. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, the knight caught the monster with one hand and threw it across the room. The three-headed Guido crashed against the wall, and before it could recover, the Dragon Knight of Creation pierced the monster's body with his sword. Amy admired as the knight wiped the blood off his blade before approaching Yuna. Realizing the strangeness of the situation, Amy hurriedly stepped between them, Who are you? How did you get in this room? The young maid glared suspiciously but stopped when Yuna tapped her shoulder. Amy glanced at Yuna in confusion while the Dragon Knight of Creation knelt on the ground. Satisfied with the result, Yuna drew another card from her deck and raised it in the air, I summon Herald of Creation. A burst of light blinded Amy, and she whimpered. Once the light dimmed, the young maid noticed a new figure in the room. It was a woman with blonde hair. She was dressed in a long white dress draped to the floor, and she wore the same helmet as the knight, and instead of a sword, there was a long staff in her hand. Herald of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, W what is happening? Amy muttered as her legs gave out. Yuna lowered her body to the maid's eye level. Staring into Yuna's eyes, Amy visibly flinched and noticed the atmosphere of her young master had changed. Go find mother, Yuna ordered and glanced at Dragon Knight of Creation, protect her. Dragon Knight of Creation nodded and marched out of the door. Amy was still in shock, but with Yuna's urging, she stood back up, why, young miss? Go, she said solemnly, and Amy bit her lips. Eventually, Amy left with the Dragon Knight of Creation, not before telling Yuna to be careful. Watching the young maid's figure disappearing into the halls. Yuna picked up a card that manifested on the floor. There was any text on the card except for the image of stacks of gold coins. The card abruptly dissolved in Yuna's hand, and a small bell sound reverberated in her head. Plus twenty coins. She smiled. Let the hunt begin. Yuna's POV, for the following duration, I sprinted through the temple structures with the Herald of Creation close behind me. With her strength, she easily dispatched any monsters we saw. Plus five coins. Plus fifteen coins. Plus thirty coins. Plus ten coins. The number of coins increased stagnantly, and I grinned as my nerdy mind was on cloud nine. With my efforts, it wasn't long before all the feral monsters were completely wiped out. When I could no longer find anything, I decided to locate my mother. Thankfully, it wasn't hard to find her as I followed the bundle of coins left behind by the Dragon Knight of Creation's massacre. Finally, I returned to the open area where I made my speech. Bursting through the doors, I witnessed the scene of a massive battle. Mother was in the center beside the massive statue, surrounded by knights. The swarm of monsters pounced at the group as the soldiers defended with strength. The monsters shared similar appearances, fitting the descriptions of skeletal demons with pink flesh. Out of most demons, some were purple, wearing capes and sickles. However, there was one that stood out amongst the group. The monster has a height as tall as the ceiling, a body covered in bones, wings and a pair of curved horns protruding from the side of its head. Vilepawn Archfiend, 1200 attack, 200 defense, X-35, Archfiend Soldier, 1900 attack, 1500 defense, X-15. Summon Skull, 2500 attack, 1200 defense, X-1. I also spotted the Dragon Knight of Creation in the corner of the room, fiercely protecting Amy as the Archfiend soldiers backed him into a corner. Yuna. Mom screamed, get out of here. My heart raced when I saw her terrified expression. My body was seething with anger as I glared at the monsters. Without hesitation, I drew a card and raised it into the air, attracting everyone's attention, I will use Dragon Knight of Creation and Herald of Creation as tributes. The two monsters I summoned burst into light and were absorbed into the card between my fingers. I felt the card's weight increase, but I endured and raised the card as high as possible. With the two tributes, I will summon, Blue Eyes White Dragon. A thunderous roar shook the temple as my card generated a blinding light. An archfiend soldier near me raised its sickle and lunged. As the blade inched towards my face, a humongous dragon flew out of the card and caught the demon in its jaw. Archfiend's soldier was sliced cleanly in half, showering the floor with gold coins. 
with snow-white scales, ferocious claws, serene blue pupils, razor-sharp teeth and wings, the dragon stood with an intense aura that swept through the room. Blue eyes white dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, G god. The soldiers muttered and dropped their weapons in a daze. Blue eyes white dragon, attack now. I ordered and pointed at the monsters in the room. Energy gathered in blue eyes white dragon's mouth, and summon skull wasted no time to attack. However, the demon's speed was too slow, and the dragon's breath vaporized its opponent, not leaving a trace behind. When the dust settled, all the monsters had perished, and blue eyes white dragon glanced at me, wishing for praise, good job. I muttered. Blue eyes white dragon lowered its head, and I scratched its neck with a smile. There was silence as everyone watched my treating their god like a dog, and it was seemingly enjoying it. Yuna. What? My mother said in disbelief. Why, you hurt? I asked worriedly. She shook her head, and I finally let go of the breath that I was subconsciously holding. Mon nervously approached me and flinched when blue eyes white dragon snarled in weariness. Stop, I said slightly annoyedly, and blue eyes white dragon quieted. To order a god like this. Mom muttered with a complicated smile before signing solemnly, My daughter, we are currently in great peril. The monsters have stolen the white stone of ancient entrusted by your holiness centuries ago. She explained and bowed apologetically at Blue Eyes White Dragon, It was entirely my responsibility, and I'm the only one who should be punished for this sin. Blue Eyes White Dragon glanced at me, and I realized that I was the one that had to choose. I couldn't believe that I was given this option of whether or not to punish her. Despite being merely a game, she's the closest thing to a mother I could possibly get, and I couldn't even imagine doing something like this. No, I said, shaking my head, Will, take back. I climbed onto the dragon's back, and blue eyes white dragon spread its wings, wait for me. Mom smiled, and my body felt warm, I believe the monsters will use the Stone of Ancients to revive the disaster that ravaged this world eons ago. You're the only one that can stop it, please stay safe, and I will patiently await your return. Blue eyes white dragon moved outside, and countless people watched me in awe. Some were worshipping like crazy, and I heard some calling a saint. The dragon spread its wings, and I waved at my mother as blue eyes white dragon soared into the air. Gradually the temple became smaller, and I glanced ahead. Don't worry, Kaiba, your friendly neighborhood Yunasano will rescue you. As I soared through the sky on Blue Eyes White Dragon's back, I was greeted with a game screen. Prologue quest completed. Main quest will now begin. Prologue quest. If it's a prologue quest, things would have made sense now. So the prologue was like the backstory, and the main quest will be the actual story of the game and it would be stopping the mythic dragon summoning and finding the Stone of Ancients. Alright, I know what I need to do. Rescue Kaiba. Defeat the mythic dragon. Find the stone of ancients. Let's do this. I looked below, where the scenery of the ground changed constantly. Oh yeah, didn't Yugi and his friends have to traverse through many terrains to reach the final level? But with a living flying dragon with me, I don't really need to do that. Skipping through the useless levels and going straight into the boss room felt satisfying. However, I wish to spend the coins I gathered though. Oh well. After an hour of flying, I finally spotted something in the distance. It was a tall, dark, and ominous castle in the middle of the forest. Yep, if that wasn't giving an evil boss lair vibe, I don't know what will. Blue Eyes White Dragon circled the building, and as soon as we got close, we were met with fierce defense. Humongous beehives were growing on the side of the castle, and countless deadly wasps spewed out of the hives. Beside the hive were two cocoons, and two creatures emerged. It was an insect with giant wings, green abdomens, orange horns and six legs. Great Moth, 3500 attack, 3000 defense, X2, Killer Needle, 1200 attack, 1000 defense, X15 I cursed and ordered Blue Eyes White Dragon to dodge as the horde of insects chased us relentlessly. Suddenly Great Moth fired silk from its mouth and struck Blue Eyes White Dragon's wings. I screamed as Blue Eyes White Dragon lost control and crashed into the castle. Boom I held on to Blue Eyes White Dragon with everything I had as we burst through the walls. I groaned and glanced at the Blue Eyes White Dragon, slowly vanishing. 
I clicked my teeth and glanced at my dual disc, my life points had dropped. Unisano, 2000 LP and GT, 1500 LP, the two great moth landed by the hole and snapped their disgusting mandibles threateningly. As the monsters approached me, I instantly reacted and drew from my deck. I will use change of heart and take control of the great moth. I shouted. A mirage of an angel appeared above one of the moths, and she fired a ray of light from her palms. The great moth's aura changed, and I smiled confidently, now, great moth, attack the other great moth. The insect I took control of threw itself at its friend. Together, they tumbled out of the hole, falling to their death. However, I couldn't relax. Without the great moths blocking the cavity, the hordes of killer needles began flooding in. I will use foolish burial and send my Komori dragon to my graveyard, and then banish dragon knight of creation and Komori dragon to summon light pulsar dragon. My deck glows as my Komori dragon and dragon knight of creation are banished from the game. Beside me appeared a new dragon. It shared the same white and blue color as blue eyes white dragon. However, its body was much more slender and agile. Light Pulsar Dragon, 2500 attack, 1500 defense, Light Pulsar Dragon, defend this area. The swarm of wasps charged, but their venom stingers couldn't pierce the dragon's hide, and Light Pulsar Dragon tore them apart. As Light Pulsar Dragon was dealing with the killer needles, I used this opportunity to explore deeper into the castle. There wasn't anything noteworthy, as the entire building felt like a maze. Finally, I reached a room. I placed my ear against the door and heard two voices talking. Tisk, release me this instance. A man growled, override protocol. I can't do that, another replied, it doesn't work anymore, and it's no longer your game. Soon you will be sacrificed to the mythic dragon, and there's nothing you can do. I don't have to listen further and already know who's inside. I sighed and gathered the courage in my heart. Third POV, Sido glared at the monster laughing arrogantly before him. The creature has red skin, pointy ears, blonde hair and he was dressed in a purple suit. Witty Phantom, 1400 attack, 1300 defense, let me go, damn it. He shouted angrily and pulled against the chains tied to his body. It's useless to struggle, Witty Phantom, sooner or later, your life will be forfeited. Sido's face contorted into pure rage, and he felt humiliated being trapped in his own game. He was relieved that no one else was here to see him in this state. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door, catching the two by surprise. Strange, I don't remember calling for anyone. Witty Phantom muttered and opened the door. Bam a punch sent Witty Phantom backward, and he fell to the ground, who? I summoned Paladin of Felgrand. The stranger shouted as a knight appeared out of thin air. The knight pinned Witty Phantom to the ground, bringing his sword close to the monster's throat. Sido stared at the woman whom he least expected to arrive in a daze. Even if her hair color differed, he couldn't forget her face. Yuna approached the restrained Witty Phantom and took the key from his pocket. She went to Sido and unlocked his shackles. Sido rubbed his wrist with relief before frowning. Why are you here? He asked. Re-rescue. She timidly answered. I don't need your help. Sito retorted. Yuna didn't respond and gazed at him in uncomfortable silence. However, the moment ended as Witty Phantom started to scream. Ah, uh, wait, spare me. He begged, hey, I was just joking, so please show mercy. Sito snorted, and his tall physique cast a shadow over the monster. In a swift movement, he brought his fist down onto the monster's face, knocking him out, be quiet, you're too loud. Let's go, Sido ordered as they left the room. However, the floor erupted from below immediately when his hand touched the handle. Yuna was swept off her feet as the force sent her flying toward Sido. They crashed into each other as the floor collapsed and fell into a deep chasm. During their fall, Sido noticed the dragon capture jar previously used to capture his own blue eyes white dragon falling beside them, and he hurriedly pulled a card from his dual disc, Go Trap Master, destroy the dragon capture jar. A humanoid creature wearing a green cloak and top hat appeared. Its skin was grey with dishevelled hair, and the lower body consisted of hammers, saws, and screwdrivers. Trap Master, 500 attack, 1100 defense, the monster flew towards the dragon capture jar and easily shattered it. 
There was a roar as the blue eyes white dragon was released and instinctively dived towards them. Adjusting himself in the air, Sido landed on the dragon's back, and Yuna fell into his arms. Blue eyes white dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, the first thing that came into Sido's mind was that she was incredibly light. He glimpsed at Yuna as she blushed profusely. Remembering what happened last time when an embarrassing incident occurred between them, Sido set Yuna down and took a step away from her. As Blue Eyes White Dragon touched down on the ground, Yuna and Sido jumped off of its back. They found themselves in a wide tunnel. Suddenly, five voices simultaneously resonated, Congratulations looks like you have reached the final level. The Big Fives. Sido growled, It's over, the mythic dragon has not been summoned. That means you have lost. Not so fast. There was another way to summon the mythic dragon. They declared, with the arrival of that girl over there, we retrieved the ancient stone of white, and we will use its power to revive the dragon. A glowing purple circle enveloped the ground, and a terrifying beast emerged. With a body that almost filled the entire room, the monster roared as Yuna and Sido felt their eardrums bursting from the sound. The monster has brown scales with wings. There were five dragon heads, each made out of separate elements, earth, fire, water, wind and darkness. Mythic Dragon, 5000 attack, 5000 defense, instantly, preparing for a battle, the two drew five cards from their deck. Deciding to make the first move, Yuna announced loudly, I will summon the Guardian of Felgrand. Guardian of Felgrand, 500 attack, 500 defense, with Guardian of Felgrand's effect, I can equip Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand to this card, and Guardian of Felgrand will gain an attack equal to half of the stats of the equipped monster. Guardian of Felgrand, 500 and GT, 1900 attack, 1900 defense, I will also use one of my traps that will be activated later. Yuna declared as a magic-like circle appeared beneath her feet. That's not enough power to defeat the Mythic Dragon. The Big Five shouted, We will deal with you first, Mythic Dragon, attack. All five heads of the Mythic Dragon unleashed a breath akin to their elements. All directed at Guardian of Felgrand. However, a blue barrier blocked the attack, and the breaths ricocheted in all directions. Standing beside the Guardian of Felgrand were three priests that maintained the barrier with magic. With my trap Wabaku, Yuna said as sweat dripped down from her face, I won't take damage, and my monsters won't be destroyed by battle. Looks like you can't do anything. Sido scowled, watch and learn. I will use polymerization and fuse the three blue eyes white dragon on my field and hand. Two cards shoot out of Sido's grasp and merge with his blue eyes white dragon. Two new heads grew from the side of blue eyes white dragon's body, and the dragons roared in unison. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, 4500 Attack, 3800 Defense, Tisk. Sido clicked his teeth, it's still not enough. Kaibison, distract the Mythic Dragon. I will be able to summon my Divine Dragon Lord Felgren soon. Yuna explained. Don't tell me what to do. He said with a scowl. We need to work together. Yuna insisted. Shut up. Sido snapped, causing Yuna to flinch. I can do this alone. I won't rely on you or anyone else. It had always been this way, ever since his life with his brother in the orphanage, they have been alone to face the outside world. Even when they were adopted, his life didn't become easier but more difficult instead. He only survived because he trusted no one except for his brother and himself. Relying on other people was nothing but a weakness that can be exploited on. Yuna, but. She was suddenly interrupted as Mykic Dragon began charging another attack, this time aiming for Sido. SH asterisk T. He cursed, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, protect me. However, before Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon can move, chains burst out of the floor and wrap around the monster's body, rendering it motionless. Sido noticed the still alive witty phantom smirking arrogantly in the corner of his vision, and a card was in the monster's hand. You should have killed me when you have the chance. He exclaimed, I will use this trap shadow spell, and now your blue eyes ultimate dragon can no longer save you. Sido glanced at his hand, hoping for anything that could get him out of this situation, but unfortunately, none of the cards could be of use to him, and Sido didn't have enough time to draw more cards. He stared at the impending doom while his legs refused to move. Realizing his fate, Sido could only grit his teeth in anger. 
Guardian of Felgrand, defend Kaiba. Suddenly, Guardian of Felgrand switched to a defensive position and rushed to intercept the attack. Acting as the meat shield, the Guardian of Felgrand took the attack Heaton and protected Sido from harm. Sido glanced at Yuna with wide eyes, why? He muttered. To survive, we have to work as a team. Yuna said, so cooperate wit. Boom Yuna's body was hurled helplessly in the air like a ragdoll as Mythic Dragon's third attack ambushed her. With no monsters, Yuna could not defend herself as she took the full power of the attack. She skidded across the floor and lay motionless. Her clothes were in tatters, and blood was seeping through the gaps in her outfit. Despite the pain, Yuna opened her eyes with difficulty as a purple screen appeared before her. Yuna Sano, 1500 LP and GT, 0 LP, warning, you have run out of life points and have entered the fatal state. You can purchase one more life using the coins you gathered during this time. Disclaimer, you should not take any further damage, or your current life will forfeit, proceed, cancel, the game interface flashed alarmingly, and Yuna glanced at the two buttons. She had just enough coins from the temple, and Yuna reached out with her broken arm. Suddenly, there was a roar, and Mythic Dragon was about to launch another barrage. Mythic Dragon unleashed its breath, and Yuna realized the attack would reach her before she could purchase more life. Watching the beam of destruction inching towards her, time seemed to have slowed down. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Before Yuna understood what was happening, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon appeared before her and was struck by Mythic Dragon's breath. Despite its strength, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon was defeated. Yuna pressed the button using this opportunity, and a warm sensation enveloped her. She felt her injuries heal rapidly, and all her pain gradually vanished. Yuna heard Sido approaching her, and he knelt by her side. He gently lifted Yuna's head and stared at her with a scowl. Fool, he spat in disgust, I'm not sure whether you're dumb or mentally insane. Sido began to sprout nonsensical curses directed at Yuna to hide his shock. She listened and smiled wryly as she was harshly scolded. If I didn't destroy the trap in time, you would have died. Sido growled, since you saved me earlier, consider my debt paid. Noticing Yuna's disheveled appearance, Sido coughed uncomfortably and threw his coat at her. He glared at the mythic dragon, I assume you have a way to defeat it. Yes. Very well, Sido muttered, I will listen to what you have to say. With Sido's help, Yuna got back on her feet, standing side by side. They glared at the massive dragon before them. Not giving the two duelists time to rest, Mythic Dragon unleashed its breath, creating a massive explosion in the room. As the smoke filled the room, Mythic Dragon growled, and its five heads scanned through the smoke, trying to detect any life. Suddenly a small dragon burst through the black cloud, and above the creature were Yuna and Sido. Yuna glanced at the man beside her, Kaibasen. I know. Sido shouted back, and together, they simultaneously drew a card. Yuna slash Sido, I will use Monster Reborn and summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon slash Herald of Creation. Herald of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, 4500 attack, 3800 defense, then I will use Polymerization. Yuna yelled at the top of her lungs, fusing Herald of Creation and Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon together, summoning Mysterion, the Dragon Crown. Light enveloped the two monsters' bodies, and they merged into one. Once the light diminished, Blue Eyes' ultimate dragon changed completely. Its scales have turned gold with blue crystallized horns. Its body was long like a snake, and the monster's size easily filled the room, matching the sheer mass of Mythic Dragon. On top of the dragon was the Herald of Creation, now dressed in flashy golden armor with a helmet that matched her mount. Mysterion the Golden Crown, 3000 attack, 1500 defense, another monster I have never seen before. Sido thought while admiring Mysterian's appearance. With Mysterian the Golden Crown ability, they will lose 100 attacks for every banished card in my graveyard. Mysterian the Golden Crown, 3000 and GT, 2800 attack, 1500 defense, also, since Blue Eyes White Dragon has left the field, I can immediately summon Keeper of the Shrine. However, Yuna shouted, I will use Mysterian the Golden Crown to cancel the summoning of Keeper of the Shrine and banish him. What is wrong with you? Sido asked, 
why are you doing something so strange as banishing your monster? Yuna smiled, trust me, we will win. Overwhelmed by her confidence, Sido shut his mouth and nodded. He stared at her face and was slightly entranced by her dazzling face. Somewhere in his head, a voice told him to believe in her, and Sido felt tempted by it. By banishing Keeper of the Shrine, Mysterian the Golden Crown can activate its second effect and banish all the monsters that are the same type as Keeper of the Shrine so that all dragons will be banished. Flames gathered in the rider's palm, and she shot it at the mythic dragon. Golden ropes encased mythic dragon as the binds burned into its flesh. Mythic dragon thrashed in pain. It's over. Yuna yelled, go back to where you came from. Meanwhile, golden chains wrapped around Yuna's Komori dragon, and the two immediately leapt off. They landed on Mysterian's dragon, and the warrior ordered her dragon to attack the ceiling. They broke through the castle walls with the monster's strength and re-emerged into the outside world. Sido watched the golden chains slowly pull Mythic Dragon deeper into the ground. After releasing one final screech, Mythic Dragon was banished from the world. Mysterian landed her dragon as Yuna and Sido approached where Mythic Dragon last stood. On the ground was a pure white stone that shinned brilliantly. Yuna picked up the stone and smiled at Sido, see? Unbeknownst to Sido, a smirk appeared on his face. Noticing his expression, Sido hurriedly faced away from Yuna and nodded. As Sido hid his smile from Yuna, she chuckled and climbed onto the dragon. Let's go. She said and held out her hand. Sido quietly stared at her stretched out fingers. He reached out as Yuna used all her strength to pull Sido up as Mysterian guided the dragon into the air. When they returned to the temple, Yuna and Sido were welcomed by everyone. They celebrated the triumph of their saint, and people partied all night long. Two hours later. Sido was leaning against a wall as he waited patiently. The door beside him opened, and Yuna calmly strolled out. Spotting Sido, her eyes widened, and not left. She was surprised that Sido could have left the game long ago as he had completed defeating the mythic dragon while Yuna had more tasks to complete. I need to make sure that both of us left in case my subordinates accidentally shut the game down, Sido explained. In fact, it was merely a lie, and he was only curious about the reasons for Yuna's reluctance to leave. She has already completed the assigned tasks but chooses to spend the entire night talking with an NPC. Sido knew the details of the NPC and the character Yuna was playing, so he decided to stay to figure out what they were talking about. However, the contents of their conversation truly shocked him to his core. Glancing at Yuna's tear-stained face, he sighed, Have you said everything you wanted to say? Yuna wiped her nose and nodded, why, yes. Sido typed the commands on his dual discs, and a black portal manifested in the hallway, let's go, he urged, and together, they entered. Back in the real world, Sido's eyes snapped open, and he stepped out of his game pod. Walking out of his room, he swiftly located Yuna's whereabout. Big brother. Makuba shouted with relief as soon as Sido arrived. Makuba eagerly hugged his brother, and Sido patted his back. He stared at Makuba with a complicated expression and mumbled, Makuba, what would you do if our mother appeared before us? What kind of question is that? Makuba asked ignoring him, Sido gently patted Makuba's head and walked towards the only activated game pod. Grabbing the latch, he forcibly opened the console and found Yuna asleep inside. Gazing at her sleeping appearance, he saw a single tear drop trickling down her eye. He clicked his teeth and covered her with his blue trench coat. Leaving Yuna alone, he left the room with Makuba hurriedly following behind him, Big brother, where are you going? Where I'm going? Sido sneered and cracked his knuckles, get ready, Makuba, a lot of people will be purged tonight. Three days later. Third POV, in the Domino City High Classroom, Yuna was fidgeting awkwardly. She recalled falling asleep inside the game pod and waking up with Sido's trench coat covering her body. What's worse was when Yuna woke up, she found herself drooling on the expensive coat. Too embarrassed to return the dirty coat, Yuna eventually took the coat home to wash it, planning to give clothing to Sido the next time they meet. However, Sido have not been at school for the past few days, and Yuna wasn't ready to enter the Kaiba Corps building and request to see their young president or ask Makuba for a favor. Sighing with exhaustion, Yuna gently rubbed her temples. 
Amidst the moment, she heard multiple girls screaming and cheering in the other classrooms as her annoyance grew. Noticing the noise, the female students from her class explored the sound and contributed to the commotion when they found the source. Yuna knew exactly why they were acting this way and reminiscent of an arc that should be happening now. The voices of fawning girls became louder as the door to her classroom opened. A young man dressed in a normal domino high uniform entered. He had spiky hair held up by a red bandana, green eyes, sharp features, and a handsome face. The man in question was Duke Devlin. Recently, he opened a new game shop in Domino City and became a student at this school. However, opening a game shop was merely an excuse to hide his true goals. His enrollment was because he was curious about a certain individual known as the Duel King. It all started a year ago when Duke developed a new game called Dungeon Dice Monsters. After finally gaining the chance to discuss his ideas with Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of the Duel Monsters game, wishing for him to invest in Duke's idea, however, the interview went in a different direction than he expected. Throughout the conversation, Pegasus had been praising the Duel King non-stop, even if the topic weren't related to Duel Monsters, he would find a way. Thankfully, Duke successfully gained Pegasus's support, only on the condition of adding a monster into his game called the Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Intrigued by Pegasus's obsession, Duke decided to investigate the Duel King. So it wasn't strange when he was shocked that the famous duelist was a girl in Domino High. So naturally, Duke enrolled in the school, hoping to find that person. His charisma and handsome appearance attracted many female students like a herder guiding a flock of sheep. But, no matter how many girls he met, none matched the description he sought. Eventually, when Duke entered the last classroom, he found her. He held his breath and stared at the beautiful girl sitting in the corner of the room, compared to all the ones he saw, they were nothing. Duke felt his heart beat quickly as her majestic appearance attracted him. Was this love at first sight? Instinctively, he walked towards her. Hearing footsteps approached her direction. Yuna raised her head and stared at the young man standing before her. Good morning. I hope I'm not intruding. Duke smiled charmingly, causing the nearby female students to squeal. However, Yuna didn't react and blankly gazed into his eyes. The lack of response caught Duke off guard, but his emotions were hidden with a chuckle, to think there was such a majestic flower in this plain grassy field, may I have the honor of learning your name. With a flick of his wrist, a luscious blue rose appeared between his finger, and he offered the flower to Yuna. She gazed at the flower, and her pupils flickered as Duke was happy that he managed to get a reaction. But unbeknownst to him, instead of feeling interested towards Duke, Yuna was wondering where the blue rose came from in the first place. Realizing that Duke was waiting for an answer, Yuna anxiously averted her gaze, why, Yuna? Sano. Duke was enchanted by her voice. He gently grasped Yuna's hand and planted his lips on her palm, Yuna Sano, what a gorgeous name. There was silence in the room as people were shocked by what Duke had done. Yuna stared at the hand where he had kissed her, and her brain seemed to malfunction. B.A.M. suddenly, the door to the classroom was kicked open, and a tall figure entered. He wore a neat black shirt, pants, and a white sleeveless coat with the Kaiba Core logo embroidered on his collar. Without hesitation, he approached Yuna and crossed his arms. Yuna's eyes widened, K, Kaiba. Come with me, Sido ordered. He turned his head and saw Duke holding Yuna's hand. Sido sneered, get out of my way. I have business with her. Duke gritted his teeth and reluctantly backed off. Even if he was rich, he knew not to mess with the ferocious Sido Kaiba, who could easily dispose of him without the authorities questioning anything. Yuna stood up and followed Sido out of the room. They passed by countless classmates, and she sighed bitterly when she heard the nonsensical rumors sprouting from this interaction. Yuna's POV, A, eh, how did I get here? After Kaiba bailed me out of school, I was taken to Kaiba Corps and brought to his private office. None of us spoke a single word throughout the journey, and I felt myself slowly suffocating from the silence. Now, even when I'm in his office, he hasn't done anything but stares, particularly at my right hand. Finally, Kaiba removed a few documents from his drawer and slid them across the table. I picked up the papers, and words were written in large fonts that caught my attention. Battle City Rules. I read in my head, and I felt myself getting excited. Battle City. Finally, it's here this was probably the most famous UGO arc ever, 
and the duels were amazing. However, what excites me the most was the rare cards I can get. I eagerly flipped through the documents and began to look at each rule Kaiba said enthusiastically. The rules were fairly normal, while some weren't particularly noteworthy, but there were some rules that I took an interest in. Hashtag rule 3, players begin with 4000 life points. Hashtag rule 12, players can only have up to 6 cards in their hand unless the card, infinite cards, is in play on their side of the field. Hashtag rule 25, when a fusion monster is tribute, that monster is counted as several monsters equal to the number of fusion material monsters used. Hashtag rule 27, fusion monsters must wait one turn after they are summoned before they can attack, though the quick attack card can be used to circumvent this. Hashtag rule 40, a monster that becomes an equipped card is treated as both a monster and an equipped card. When I finished reading, I set the paper down, and Kaiba was waiting for me while crossing his arms, I want to hear your opinion on this. It's good. I answered honestly. Kaiba has written the rules and details so meticulously that I couldn't find any loopholes that can be exploited. Satisfied with my answer, Kaiba stood up and gazed out the window. This will be a new era of dual monsters, Kaiba declared with pride, this tournament will be bigger than Duelist Kingdom and forever imprint itself on the world. Kaiba spread his arms and laughed like a maniac. If you add a thunderstorm and eerie music in the background, you will have a villain in the making. After laughing for a few minutes, he eventually composed himself and faced me. However, there are still some things that need to be finalized, Kaiba said, follow me. He led me down the elevator and back down to the basement levels of the corporal buildings. We walked quietly through the hallway until we arrived at an underground bunker. There was an observation window on the side, and I noticed countless researchers working diligently. I saw Makuba leading the team as he ordered the scientists, who were frantically running around like headless chickens. When Makuba noticed me, he smiled and waved. Before I could inquire further, Sido approached a control panel beside us. He typed on the keyboards, and the machine dispensed two devices I'm familiar with. These are the new prototype dual disks I have created. Kaiba explained and handed a dual disc to me, put this on. I equipped the dual disc on my wrist with Makuba's instruction through the speakers. After successfully putting on the equipment, I raised it in the air. The dual disc resembled an arm blade with a large tray attached to the side of the device. On the tray, multiple slots indicated where to place my monsters were sketched and below the monster slots were thin slits to insert my spell and traps. Like the dual disc from Legendary Heroes, the disc center includes the deck and graveyard slot and life point counter. There were tiny wheels in the graveyard slot, and like a vacuum, it seemed to suck up the cards I discarded. Finally, there were buttons at the back that allowed me to search for cards in my graveyard. Have you finished? Sido asked. I nodded, and we each went to the opposite side of the room. I want you here to test this device and duel with the Battle City rules. Kaiba explained, the profound dueling artificial intelligence I created no longer satisfies me, and you will suffice. Kaiba also said that since this was only a test, we won't place our rarest cards as wagers. I might be overthinking this, but maybe he was still traumatized when I almost took his beloved blue eyes white dragon. Are you two ready? Makuba asked. Yes. We said in unison as our dual discs activated, duel. Unisano. 4000 LP, Sido Cave, 4000 LP, I will go first. Kaiba declared, I will summon Vorse Raider in attack position. Kaiba placed a card on his dual disc, and a tall monster appeared before him. The monster looked human except for his demonic features. In his hand was a double bladed sword, which he wielded like a certain character from a space movie. Vorse Raider, 1900 attack, 1200 defense, then I will set two cards and end my turn. He declared as two cards manifested by his feet. If I recall, Kaiba's deck has a massive change compared to the Duelist Kingdom, and he now has stronger cards. However, just like Kaiba, I have also changed, so I will not be looked down upon. I will summon Starleach Safer from my hand. I yelled. A small celestial dragon, the size of Makuba, was summoned onto the field. Its body consists of multiple golden and obsidian plates that orbit around a sphere, creating a shape of a creature. Starleach Seifert, 1800 attack, zero defense, with Starleach Seifert's ability, 
I will send my keeper of the shrine and itself to the graveyard, allowing me to add one dragon monster whose level is equal to the total level of all the monsters sent to the graveyard through this effect. I showed Kaiba the card I had received, the divine dragon Lord Felgrand, and added it to my hand, then, with keeper of the shrine's effect, I can special summon itself onto the field in defense position. Keeper of the shrine, zero attack, 2100 defense, then I will set a card and end my turn, I said. Drawl, Kaiba shouted, I will activate enemy controller, anime. I can destroy your keeper of the shrine by paying 1000 life points. A controller appeared in Kaiba's hand, and after inputting a specific set of controls, the keeper of the shrine exploded, leaving my field empty except for a card. Sito Kaiba, 4000 LP and GT, 3000 LP, then I summon Battle Ox. Kaiba announced as a minotaur wielding a battle axe arrived on the board. Battle Ox, 1700 attack, 1100 defense, now, Vorse Raider and Battle Ox, attack. As the two monsters rushed towards me, I instantly activated my trap card, I use negate attack to stop your Vorse Raider and end the battle phase entirely. Before the monsters can reach me, they immediately retreated. Kaiba clicked his teeth in annoyance, and he passed his turn. I will summon Dragon Knight of Creation and then attack Battle Ox. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, my knight charged and swung its sword. However, the sharp blade never came in contact with the monster's body, and Battle Ox disappeared. Kaiba crossed his arms as one of the set cards revealed itself. I will activate interdimensional matter transporter and banish Battle Ox until this end phase, Kaiba explained, I have seen what that monster is capable of, and I won't let you accomplish your plan. I smiled at Kaiba's proactive remarks, that's only the first effect of Dragon Knight of Creation. I declared, using his second ability, I will discard one card and then send Dragon Knight of Creation to the graveyard. I can revive one level 7 or 8 dragon monster, Rise Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. A magic-like circle appeared on the ground, and a golden dragon emerged. The dragon roared ferociously, and Kaiba scowled as he glared at the monster calculatingly. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, using Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability, I will banish your Vorse Raider, and it will gain 400 attacks and defense. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3200 attack, 2800 and GT, 3200 defense, I will end my turn here, I declared. Unfortunately, I couldn't attack as I had already used him battle phase. However, the sheer presence of Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand placed a lot of pressure on the board, hinting that unless he did something major, I could ultimately defeat him. As I ended my turn, Battle Ox returned to the field, and the monster seemed nervous, confronting Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Battle Ox, 1700 attack, 1100 defense, he closed his eyes before reopening them in a few seconds, Unisano, I admit that you're a duelist matching my level, but I won't be defeated by the same strategy again. Kaiba stared at his hand and smirked, I will first activate Spell Sanctuary. We each add one spell from our deck to our hand. I watched warily as we both added a spell card into our hands. Also, while Spell Sanctuary is on the field, we can activate spells in our opponent's turns. Kaiba presented me with the spell card he had added earlier, then I will use Shrink, I can target one monster on the field and half its attack, and the one I choose is my own Battle Ox. Battle Ox's size shrunk from a giant, intimidating warrior to a small cute cow holding a tiny axe. Battle Ox, 1700 and GT, 850 attack, 1100 defense, now, Battle Ox, attack Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. I was shocked as the small Battle Ox charged without fear. It struck Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ankles, but the dragon easily punted the monster like a football. Sido Kaiba, 3000 LP and GT, 650 LP, finally, the conditions have been met. He announced, I will activate my trap card, crush card virus when one of my dark monsters with 1000 fewer attacks is destroyed by battle. Then all of your monsters on the field, hand or deck that have 1500 attacks will be destroyed, and all monsters that were destroyed can't be special summoned from the graveyard. Ah, crap. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand collapsed in exhaustion as if infected by some disease, and it gasped for breath until the dragon finally perished. Many of my cards followed my dragon as I dumped half of my deck into the discards. Now, I will summon Kaiser Seahorse. 
he declared. An armored warrior wielding a shield and spear was summoned onto the field. The monster howled and spun its spear before pointing the weapon at me. Kaiser Seahorse, 1700 attack, 1650 defense, Kaiser Seahorse, attack. Kaiba ordered, and the monster rushed towards me. The monster stabbed with its spear, and I felt the shock of taking damage. I slightly stumbled and breathed deeply. What the hell was that? I never knew that Dual Disc could do something like this. Unisano, 4000 LP and GT, 2300 LP, I may also be slightly paranoid, but when Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was defeated, I felt my stamina disappearing. It was probably because of standing too long, and my leg muscles were tired, but knowing the history of dual monsters, I was slightly nervous. So what will you do now? Kaiba asked. At this moment, the keeper of the shrine will be summoned from the graveyard. Since it was already resting in the grave, your crush card virus won't affect it. Keeper of the shrine, zero attack, 2100 defense, then I will use Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. Since my monsters were in the discard pile and I couldn't summon them from the graveyard, I have to find a way to get them back. Kaiba smirked and drew a card, glancing at his hand, the smile on his face widened, this may be as far as you will go. While Kaiser Seahorse is on the field, it can act as two tributes. With this, I can summon Blue Eyes White Dragon. I watched the intimidating dragon appear on the field. Using Blue Eyes White Dragon for a while now, and it felt uncomfortable seeing Blue Eyes White Dragon being used against me. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, Kaiba, Blue Eyes White Dragon, attack, burst stream of destruction. The dragon unleashed a flaming white breath that completely annihilated my keeper of the shrine. I gritted my teeth, seriously, what's the mechanics behind this design? I understand if it was to increase the immersion, but still. I will use Monster Reborn and Summon Keeper of the Shrine in defense position, I said, trying to hide my anxiousness, I end my turn. Keeper of the Shrine, zero attack, 2100 defense, it's over now. Kaiba laughed, I will summon Blade Knight. Blade Knight, 1600 attack, 1100 defense, Blue Eyes White Dragon in Blade Knight, attack. He shouted, and the two monsters charged. Blue Eyes White Dragon fired a white beam and instantly destroyed Keeper of the Shrine. Using this gap, Blade Knight swung its sword. It was only for a moment, but I felt myself getting cut. Unisano, 2300 LP and GT, 700 LP, I staggered weakly and coughed. What in the world was that? I touched my chest, where I sensed the sensation of being slashed. I gulped nervously, thinking a large wound would burst open any second from now. I will set two cards face down, then end my turn, Kaiba said and glanced at me. Then, I summoned Guardian of Felgrand. On my field appeared a large bulky warrior with green hair. As he appeared, I stared at Guardian of Felgrand with relief. This was probably the first time I was so glad to see this common card. Guardian of Felgrand, 500 attack, 500 defense, with Guardian of Felgrand's effect, I can equip Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand to this card. I said, then, Guardian of Felgrand will gain attack and defense equal to half of Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's attack. Guardian of Felgrand, 500 and GT, 1900 attack, 500 and GT, 1900 defense, then I will use Guardian of Felgrand's effect to send himself and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand to the graveyard. Normally, I couldn't do something like this and needed the help of the ruins of the Divine Dragon Lord. However, with the new Battle City rules, it's different now. Since Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand has returned to the graveyard, it's no longer bounded by Crush Card Virus's effect, so return to me, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. A ray of light burst forth, blinding the room. The Golden Dragon returned, and this time it was angrier than ever. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, coup. I groaned, and my legs gave out. I felt myself sweating profusely as if I just finished a 20-kilometer marathon. Why was this happening to me? What's wrong with my body? I glanced at Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Despite being a hologram, I could feel the concern directed towards me. Big sister, what's wrong? Makuba asked worriedly from the intercoms. I clenched my fist, my legs were a little tired of standing too long. I think we have enough data now, Makuba said shakily 
let's end the duel here. No. Kaiba and I shouted simultaneously. Surrendering to Kaiba. I thought and glanced at the confident man across the room. You must be joking. Gathering enough strength, I stood back up and growled, let's continue. Hearing this, Kaiba smiled, good, that's what I expected of you. I will use Divine Dragon Lord Felgren's effect to banish your blue eyes white dragon. I shouted. Like a replay from the past, blue eyes white dragon was ultimately banished, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgren strengthened. Divine Dragon Lord Felgren, 2800 GT, 3600 attack, 2800 GT, 3600 defense, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, I shouted, attack Blade Knight. That I won't let you, I will use Wabaku and my monsters won't be destroyed by battle or take any damage, Kaiba explained. I scowled as my monster's attack failed, it's your turn. Sensing my frustration, Kaiba smirked, I will first activate my trap card. Return from the different dimension, and by paying half of my life points, I can special summon as many monsters that were banished onto my field. Sido Kaiba, 650 LP and GT, 325 LP, to my unwillingness, Vorse Raider and Blue Eyes White Dragon were revived. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, Vorse Raider, 1900 attack, 1200 defense, was Kaiba going to summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon now? Strangely, I wasn't so sure if it was correct. Vorse Raider Blade Knight Blue Eyes White Dragon 3 Monsters I counted and gasped. No way. With this, the conditions have been met. Kaiba shouted eagerly, I will tribute these three monsters. Rise from your slumber and serve me. I call upon you. Obelisk the tormentor, the room's lights flickered wildly, and the walls trembled. Cracks ran along the glass, and our dual discs were alarmingly blaring. A massive blue-skinned humanoid appeared. It has wings were as large as the monster's body growing from its back, and its body was covered in spikes. I stared at the creature and shivered in fear. Obelisk the Tormentor, 4000 attack, 4000 defense, a. Eh? A god. If it were in the modern world, I would have laughed it off, but now, things were entirely different in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. My body shook uncontrollably, and I sensed its eyes staring into my soul. This is my true power. Kaiba cackled, now Obelisk the Tormentor, attack, Obelisk's massive body moved as it cocked its fist. Instantly, it swung its fists towards Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, and the dragon shattered into pieces. Unisano, 700 LP and GT, 300 LP, the force sent me stumbling backward. My drenched back hit the wall, and I gasped for breath. To think a god card will appear here. Despite the major disadvantage, I grinned and couldn't hide my enthusiasm. Obelisk the Tormentor in the Flesh I was curious to see Kaiba's reactions towards my tenancy, and he was staring at me with shock, but soon I realized that his surprise was directed at something else. I felt a warm liquid trickling down my lips, and I frowned as its red color dirted my dual disc. My mind was still in a state of adrenaline, so it took me a few seconds to understand my situation. Suddenly, feeling the urge to cough, I blocked my mouth and a splatter of blood leaked through the gaps between my finger. Ah! I thought and gazed at the blood dripping down my hand, and then everything went dark. Third POV, Sido's eyes widened as Yuna collapsed on the floor. Blood stained her lips as she lay. There motionlessly. Researchers and medical staff immediately burst into the room and rushed towards her. As this was all happening, Sido remained in a daze, unable to comprehend the entire situation. He stared at his dual disc, where Obelisk the Tormentor was placed. For the first time, instead of relishing in the god card's power, Sido felt nothing but disgust. Be careful. Make sure blood's not clogging up her airway. The head doctor shouted, lift her gently in case any fluid enters her lungs. Finally realizing the seriousness of the circumstances, Sido gritted his teeth and removed the hologram of Obelisk the Tormentor as it felt displeasing to the eye. This kind of victory wasn't one that he desired. Angered off having his triumph robbed from him, Sido left. However, despite his enraged expression, there was a moment of concern for Yuna's health. Yuna's POV, where am I? I quietly opened my eyes and found myself lying on a bed of flowers. 
Beside me was a massive tree that gave a cool shade while not obstructing the fluffy white clouds floating in the clear blue sky. I subconsciously reached out my hand, wishing to feel the clouds between my fingers. However, that thought left me immediately when I sensed another presence nearby. In the corner of my vision was a woman with snowy hair in a pure white dress. I recalled seeing her during the duel against Pegasus and always wondered who she was. But now that she's before me, I couldn't find the urge to call out to her. The woman's back was facing me and seemed unaware of my awakening. Unlike her elegant appearance, her hair seemed slightly disheveled, with signs that she had been pulling at them with frustration. The woman's clothes were also dirted and unkept, as if she had just finished sprinting from one place to another. What is he thinking? The woman yelled while biting her nails, summoning Obelisk the tormentor. Does he want to kill someone? Was she talking about Kaiba? I listened curiously as the woman continued to rant, yet, she and that dragon may as well be as brain dead as him. The woman shouted, and I felt myself wincing from the insult. To call upon a spirit despite having a broken ba and him responding to the call even when he knew that? She growled with annoyance. The woman eventually turned around and flinched in shock. Her gaze met mine as we bathed in the awkward silence. Hey! I called out to the woman, and she blushed with embarrassment. She hurriedly adjusted her outfit to maintain her elegant appearance, even if that image had already gone down the drain. You're finally awake. The woman said bashfully, are you alright? Am I dead? I asked the first thought that came to my mind, and I was surprised as the words easily left my mouth. Fortunately, the woman giggled and shook her head, no, you're still alive. Why would you ask something like that? Then I must be imagining it, I muttered and pointed at a branch, because I'm seeing a starving venom fusion dragon drooling from up there. The woman's expression stiffened, and she noticed the monster I was referring to. She kicked the tree trunk and raised her fist, get out. Can't you see you're disturbing her? Startled by the outburst, starving venom fusion dragon retreated deeper into the tree. Once the dragon left, the woman returned to her usual smile, you must have many questions. Please ask away. However, it's best if I don't tell you my identity. Heeding her suggestion, I gulped, where are we? This is your soul space, Yuna, you must have heard of something like this, right? The woman responded. I instantly understood her meaning. I recalled something like this in Yu-Gi-Oh, which was introduced at the end of the Duelist Kingdom, where Shadi invaded Yugi's head. So this is mine. I glanced at the empty grassland, was that why I can speak this freely? However, my mood soon turned solemn, I heard just then saying something about a broken ba. What was that all about? The woman smiled awkwardly, Yuna, it's obvious if I say you're different from everyone else. That you're not originally from here. I trembled in shock as my biggest secret was revealed. The woman still smiled nonchalantly as if she hadn't just dropped a massive bomb. Our worlds are quite different from each other, she explained, in this one, every person possessed a soul, and within was something called a ba and a ka. Ba is the essence of a person's personality or self and is linked to the mind. While ka is life energy channeled from ba used to summon spirits. I nervously clenched my fist, then what's wrong with my ba? The woman sighed, under the stress of living in another world, your ba is unstable and broken. With a broken ba, your life could be in danger. No way, am I going to die? I anxiously bit my lips, hoping there was any good news. Thankfully, we are here to make sure that your ba remains intact, the woman said, bringing her hands to her chest. We? I tilted my head and noticed a large shadow over us. B-O-O-M the creature landed beside us, causing the ground to quake under its weight. Under the yellow sun, its golden scales shrined brilliantly, and its red pupils were full of life. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand? I blurted. The dragon growled softly and licked my face. I giggled and gently pushed its head away. I was still surprised that Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand resided within me, but I felt secure in its presence. To think you're my spirit. I muttered while rubbing my hand along its sharp spikes. Yes, this one was quite eager to join you, the woman explained, even fighting off other spirits so that he can be the first one. Yeah, it all made sense now. That's why I received Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand instead of an ultimate rare card, and it's because this guy must have stolen the other monster's spot. Instead of feeling mad, 
I shrugged as I couldn't deny how much help he had been, and despite being a rare card, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand was not weak in the slightest. You have already seen Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. That one has quite an attitude, but he won't harm you. The woman said and sighed like a mother being fed up with her child. I stopped patting Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and glimpsed at her, knowing this much about me, you must have known about the system. I asked, and the woman nodded. That's correct. However, I couldn't disclose much. But trust me when I say that the creator of your system meant no harm. I see, I muttered in understanding. It was pointless to ask about the system's creator, so I returned to the main topic, so, is there any way for my bot to recover? Yes, there is. The woman nodded, much to my relief. As you may already know, Dual Monsters is a game connected with the world of spirits. She said, and every time two duelists battle, they will offer their ba. Only a minuscule amount of ba will be used in a normal game, so it's quite safe. Unfortunately, with the recent dual disc, the amount of ba used has increased exponentially. She explained that the dual disc was based on an ancient Egyptian artifact called the Jadank. Using life force, the user can summon spirits to fight each other. Normally, Ba would replenish after a duel, but with a fragmented soul, it's impossible. The woman explained in an apologetic tone. Then. I uttered nervously, will I die if I keep dueling? Quite the contrary, the woman said, and I let go of the breath I had been holding, you need to keep dueling using the dual disc, by winning, you can absorb the other duelist's Ba. The woman described people's souls as a cup and Ba as water. She told me that since I have a soul akin to a broken cup, it meant that my ba would be drained, and like an empty cup, it needed to be refilled. However, she warned, if you lose a game, your ba will not recover, so keep in mind to win as many duels as possible. I nodded keenly, forever archiving this important information into my brain. But one thing still baffled me, but in the match against Kaiba, I haven't lost yet. Why did I collapse? Well, the woman chuckled you're fighting against a god card after all, they can harm the soul. Don't worry, we have kept the damage to a minimum, but it would have been easier if she's here as well. She. I tilted my head. Was there another spirit here beforehand? Where was she now? More and more questions filled my mind. And I knew most of them wouldn't be answered. Please try to avoid that situation again, the woman continued, ignorant of my troubles, still, even I know that suggestion is useless. Sorry. I muttered and averted my gaze. With what will happen in Battle City, I'm afraid that Kaiba's obelisk the Tormentor wasn't the only thing I should worry about. However, this time will be different now. As long I keep winning battles, I should have enough Ba to survive. Suddenly, I felt a headache and clasped my head in pain. Looks like you're going to wake up now. The woman said in a disappointed tone. Wait, I have one last question. I yelled while enduring the migraine, why did you help me? You're not a spirit right? The woman laughed and held my hand. A comfortable warmth coursed through my body, and I relaxed, foo foo foo, Yuna, you don't know how important you are. Your transmigration wasn't an accident but planned. Don't worry, we will meet again. As I struggled to stay awake, the woman placed my head on her lap. She softly stroked my hair, stay strong, Yuna. We will overcome this together. She muttered as I lost consciousness. Meanwhile. My eyes snapped open, and I gasped for breath. Instantly, a major headache assaulted my head as I groaned in discomfort. Using all my strength, I sat up and rubbed my eyes with exhaustion. Where am I now? I'm currently in a place that resembles a hospital room. My clothes were swapped into a patient gown, and the rest of my belongings were placed on the side. I exhaled and clenched my fist, relieved that I was still alive. You're awake. A voice called out. My eyes widened in shock as I stared at the man sitting across the room. Kaiba snorted and crossed his arms, you have been in a coma for two days. For two days, I thought and held my breath. To think I have been asleep for this long. Kaiba said that after I collapsed, my body was swiftly brought to the Kaiba Corp's private hospital. Suddenly, the door slammed open, and Makuba stood by the entrance gasping for air, big sister. He yelled and threw himself into me. Luckily, I managed to catch Makuba before he could hit the ground. 
Makoba buried his face into my stomach and cried, sister suddenly collapsed. There's so much blood, I thought. I thought. Words won't form in Makoba's mouth, and he clung to me like a baby koala. I couldn't help but feel guilty for putting him through this. Within this month, Makoba was kidnapped and watched his brother's soul stolen. Then, immediately after saving his brother, he witnessed him almost getting sacrificed for an evil dragon in a game. Then, finally, I vomited blood and went into a coma for two days. The fact that he was still hanging on was amazing, and I couldn't help but admire him. I gently wiped his tears, and he sniffled. Sorry. I muttered, not. Feeling well. Recently. Is big sister sick? Makoba whimpered, what kind of disease is it? He stared at me, demanding an answer. Being put in the spotlight, I averted my gaze, a cold. Stop lying. Makuba yelled, what kind of cold have you vomiting blood? I smiled helplessly, and Makuba growled, you're just like big brother. I was never told anything. Makuba. I muttered softly, and he glanced at me with his teary eyes. I wrapped my arms around him, hugging him close. The sound of his sobs echoed through the room. I gently patted his head as an agonizing feeling sprouted from my heart. I was once reminded that I'm no longer alone in this life. Some people cared about me and felt my actions could greatly affect them. However, despite this, I was glad. It was comforting to know that I wouldn't be forgotten if I ever disappeared from this world. But that doesn't mean I will call it quits anytime soon. Won't die. I said soothingly, will live. Are, really? Makuba asked and wiped his face with his sleeves. I nodded, and Makuba finally returned to his smiling mood. It wasn't long until fatigue finally caught up with him, and he fell asleep beside me. I turned to Kaiba, who had remained silent the entire time. There was a complicated expression on his face. Kaiba pinched the bridge of his nose and sighed, on behalf of Kaiba Corps, I apologize for what happened, and we will compensate for the damages. Also, Kaiba said, avoiding my eyes, I still haven't repaid you for saving my life. What can I do to repay you? Kaiba coughed awkwardly, and he seemed slightly embarrassed. His reaction surprised me, but his expression instantly became stern, don't misinterpret my words. As a businessman, I dread having anything that can exploit me, so say your price, and then we were even. I nodded and sighed lightly. What am I expecting from him anyway? It's Sido Kaiba we're talking about here. However, I wasn't affected by his mood and began thinking seriously. As the young president of a multi-billionaire company, there were many things he could possibly do, things I couldn't even possibly imagine. 3. Favors. I eventually said and held out three of my fingers. Kaiba thoughtfully rubbed his chin. He must be calculating the ups and downs of my request. I felt tense for some reason. Will he disagree entirely, or will he change it in a way that could benefit him? All right, Kaiba agreed, catching me off guard, as long as it is within my capability, I will listen to three of your demands. Third POV, Sido felt annoyed as he had to follow Yuna's orders three times. However, completing three favors was milder than he had imagined. He can easily grant any of those money, power, or fame. Having Yuna saved his life and her being harmed within his company grounds, she could ask for things that would be detrimental. Yet, merely listening to three of her requests was considered small compared to the trouble he caused. Staring at her face, Sido grunted with dissatisfaction and stood up, wait. Yuna stopped him as he approached the door. With a frown, he turned around as Yuna reached into her bag and showed him her deck, duel, let's. Are you using one of your favors already? Sito retorted, what a waste. However, Yuna shook her head, haven't finished, continue. Understanding her implications, Sito narrowed his eyes, we both know that duel has already reached its end, and it should have been my win even if you didn't go unconscious. Having enough of the conversation, Sito placed one foot through the door but froze when he heard Yuna's next word. Satisfied? She asked while tilting her head. Sito clicked his teeth, frustrated that Yuna read his thoughts. She was right, and he was never satisfied with that type of win, and the angering emotions lingered within him for multiple days. Deep inside, he wanted to believe that Yuna had a way of defeating Obelisk the Tormentor, and the duel wouldn't end with that. 
Wishing to satisfy the intense curiosity in his heart, Sito returned and placed a small table across the room onto the free area of the bed. Yuna smiled as they placed their decks on opposite sides and began playing. In the first game, Yuna stopped his crush card virus strategy, leaving her with many monsters that overwhelmed Sito. In the second game, Yuna bricked, and Sito could summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon onto the field. In the third game, as Sito would call upon Obelisk the Tormentor, Yuna ended that thought by stealing the card using exchange and summoning Mysterion the Dragon Crown, banishing his Blue Eyes White Dragon, leaving him defenseless. They continued to play deeper into the night, and with each game, Sito's competitive spirit grew as they exchanged various battles. Finally, after 20 rounds, Yuna won 13, while Sito only won 7. Again, Sito growled and stared at his hand intently. Yuna nodded and yawned tiredly. Noticing her sleepy expression, Sito glanced at the clock and saw they had been playing well past midnight. Sito eventually sighed and packed his cards away, go to sleep, it's a pointless win if you're not at 100%. NN, having no more energy to say anything, Yuna sank into her pillow and immediately fell asleep. Picking up the already asleep Makuba, Sito stared at Yuna's sleeping face calmly before leaving. Promising in his heart that he will defeat her, no matter what. Meanwhile, in Egypt. In a deep underground, countless cloaked kneeling towards a man sitting at the far end of the room. There was no sound except for the wax melting from the candlelight and dripping onto the limestone floor. The man in question had dark skin, purple eyes, and white gold hair. He wore a purple robe and cape donned with an eye of Anubis symbol at the center. He was also equipped with gold jewelry, such as earrings, armbands, and bracelets on his body. However, what was the most noticeable was the short golden rod in his hand. At the tip of the rod was attached to a sphere resembling the Millennium Eye, and on the side of the sphere were two small blades that gave the tool a slight similarity to an axe. Is it true that my sister went to Domino City? The man asked. Yes, Lord Merrick, we believe Lady Ishizu went to Domino City for the Battle City Tournament that will be held in a few days. The man, Merrick, hummed, then what of the obelisk the tormentor? We believe she gave the card to a man named Sido Kaiba. One of the cloaked men answered. Battle City Tournament. Merrick muttered to himself. Ultimately, he stood up and glared at the crowd kneeling before him, we will be attending that tournament and take back what sister stole from me. Find a way to hack into the tournament. Odeon, Merrick glanced at the tall young man behind him. Yes, Master Merrick. Odeon said while bowing. Lead the rare hunters and participate in that battle city tournament. Locate Obelisk the Tormentor and retrieve regardless of the cost. Understood, Odeon said, and the audience was soon dismissed, leaving Merrick alone. He sat down on his throne and smiled as he fiddled with the Millennium Rod, Battle City Tournament. How interesting. A few days later. Yuna's POV, I was finally dispatched from the hospital once the doctors ensured I was healthy enough to move around. Not that there was anything physically wrong with me, and I doubt that they could detect the abnormality with my soul, so the examination ended swiftly. However, I was told to rest, so I took a school break to prepare for the tournament. With this much free time, I spent the rest of the remaining days organizing my deck. While I occasionally left my home, I noticed the increased number of people walking through the streets of Domino City. I understood that they were the duelists participating in this tournament. Apparently, Kaiba only invited duelists with a high enough ranking worldwide, and all the participants had to collect their dual disc in the Kaiba Core Registration Office. With the title Duel King, my ranking was the highest, so I didn't have to wait in a long queue to collect my dual disc. Surprisingly, the dual disc I received was slightly different than usual. It resembled a normal dual disc with a slender design instead. The central disc was made into a smaller oval shape, and the size of the tray was also minimized, not to a degree where I didn't have spaces to place my cards but small enough that it didn't feel too clunky. I found a small paper at the slot where the deck would be placed and picked up. There was a small message written, and it said, Hello, big sister, I noticed the regular prototypes may be too awkward. I designed a new dual disc that's better for you. Makuba. A small smile formed on my lips while I rubbed the note with my fingers. Due to my slender wrist, keeping my arm raised constantly was a little straining. However, this new dual disc would definitely make things easier. 
Makuba has helped me more times than I could count. Maybe I should gift him a card from the system. Imagining Makuba's happy expression with Kaiba feeling jealous, I laughed in delight. Other than the dual disc, I was also given a transparent card. I remembered that this was the locator card that every duelist would possess. If my memory serves me correctly, we needed six of those to find the location for the finals. Putting that thought aside, I carefully brought the dual disc back home. Setting it to the side of my room, I eagerly leapt into my bed and faced the feeling with a sheepish grin, Battle City. I can't wait. Third POV, next day. Yuna woke up early in the morning and quickly dressed up. The Battle City tournament begins today, and all the duelists were instructed to gather at the city square. When dressed, she approached the corner of the room and stared at a box. Yuna gulped and reached inside, grabbing her dual disc and equipping the device onto her wrist. She ran her finger along the smooth surface and grinned. Suddenly, a virtual screen appeared before her, catching her attention. Task number 6-1 make it to the final of the Battle City. Locator card, 1 out of 6 rewards, x 1000 credits for every duelist defeated. She nodded to herself and turned off the system panel obstructing her vision. Yuna stepped outside her apartment. The morning sun felt warm, and Yuna closed her eyes to calm her nerves. Finally, a few minutes later, Yuna took a deep breath and reopened her eyes. There was a fierce determination on her face as she exhaled, I'm ready, an hour later. Yuna finally arrived at the city center, where countless duelists had gathered. She saw few familiar faces, but other than that, there wasn't anyone noteworthy. She glanced at her phone, it was only one more minute before the tournament officially began. Suddenly, a duelist pointed at the sky and yelled, Look! Everyone raised their head and saw a massive airship flying over the city, darkening the street with its shadow. There was a large monitor attached to the side of the vehicle. As the duelist gazed at the airship, the screen flickered to life, displaying a video of Sido Kaiba. Welcome, duelists, to the Battle City Tournament, the largest duel monsters in the world. Sido announced, every one of you is picked because of your talent in duel monsters, and this tournament will determine who will be the best of the best. I expected each of you to read all the rules already so that I will skip that topic altogether. Instead, I will explain how this tournament will proceed. Sido lectured, all duelists were given a dual disc and a locator card. To challenge a duelist, you must wager at least one locator card and one of the most precious cards in your arsenal. Our rarest card. People blurted in shock while some were glancing at others greedily. To reach the finals, Sido continued, you will need to collect six of those locator cards, and by stacking them together, it will display the location for the finals. He laughed, but don't get too cocky as I will personally participate in this tournament, and I intend to win it. Now, what are you all waiting for? Go and set forth your journey to collect some rare cards and perhaps steal a title from a certain person. You better defend your Duel King title well because I'm coming for it, Yunisano. Instantly, all the eyes turned to a certain girl standing at the group center. Those gazes vary from admiration to envy and hostility. Yuna was annoyed by Sido's provocation and activated her dual disc, startling the people around her. Ha ha ha. Dual king. What a joke. How could a girl like you be the dual king? A man appeared before Yuna said with a laugh, but since you are, I will thank you for forking over the position to me like a silver platter. Yuna glared at the arrogant man standing on the other side. Her ears twitched as she eavesdropped on spectators murmuring. That's the Germany's number one dual monster player, Jordan Becker. One, to think he's also in this tournament. Is he going to challenge her for the dual king position? Countless whispers made Jordan's ego grow even further as he smirked at Yuna, how about it, don't tell me you don't want to duel. Yuna frowned and raised a card in the air. I will wager one locator card and my blue eyes white dragon. The spectator gasped. It was common knowledge that Sido Kaiba possessed the rarest card, the blue eyes white dragon, and they couldn't believe Yuna had won herself. Jordan's pupils flickered with delight as he imagined what it was like using the blue eyes white dragon for himself, heh, I will wager my darkness destroyer in this duel. As if on command, Yuna and Jordan's dual disc came to life as the two opponents stared at each other intently, duel. X2 inch 10 minutes later. H, how is this possible? Jordan collapsed onto his knees in shock as he watched his life points drop to a resounding zero. 
He stared at the divine dragon Lord Felgrand in fear, and the golden dragon roared triumphantly. Yuna calmly approached him and took his darkness destroyer from the dual disc. The duelist couldn't object as he cowered under the terrifying presence of Yuna's monster. To think the duel king is that strong. Maybe he's just too weak. Still, to banish that darkness destroyer so easily, isn't she amazing? People voiced their opinions one by one, and gradually, the reputation of Germany's strongest duelist crumbled into pieces. Yuna glanced at the crowd surrounding her, and the ones that met her glare hurriedly averted their gaze. She tapped the button on the side of her dual disc, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's image disappeared, allowing the gathered duelists to breathe. Yuna walked towards the spectators as the people got out of her way. Before leaving, Yuna glimpsed at the group, and everyone shivered. She doesn't need to use words as the duelist understood the message, if you want the title of the duel king so badly, come and get it. With the very first duel in Battle City ending, it ignited the fire in all the duelists' hearts. Reminding them that in this tournament, only the strong will survive while the weak will lose everything. Yuna's POV, geez, why won't anyone duel with me anymore? After defeating that arrogant guy, I'm sure people deliberately avoided me. Come on, what's wrong? Don't you want to duel? With no luck, I went home depressed and decided to go out later. I wasn't that sensitive to what happened, as my real goal would start at night. Waiting until evening, I finally left the house and continued wandering the streets of the quiet Domino City. You may wonder why I'm doing this, the answer was obvious. Currently, at midnight, it was the prime time to hunt some rare hunters. Who were the rare hunters, you may ask? They were an evil organization created by Merrick Ishtar, the main antagonist of the Battle City arc and the one that possesses two out of the three Egyptian god cards, the Winged Dragon of Are and Silver the Sky Dragon. Merrick aimed to use the three god cards power to rule the world. Still, before he could, his sister, Ishizu Ishtar, stole the third god card, Obelisk the Tormentor and gifted the card to Kaiba and informed Kaiba to take the other two god cards, which ultimately led the young president to host the tournament to lure Merrick out. Unsurprisingly, it worked, but Merrick first sent those rare hunters as minions, leading us to now. So, finally, that's where I come in. In the show, Yugi defeated those rare hunters and attracted Merrick's attention. Wanting to defeat Yugi and take his Millennium Puzzle, Merrick used Silver the Sky Dragon but lost, granting our protagonist the card. But how about, instead of giving it to Yugi, it would be me. I have to defeat enough rare hunters to get Merrick's interest, then boom, he would use S. Silver the Sky Dragon to duel me. Pretty smart, right? You might think this would be too dangerous, but remember, it's the UGO universe we discussed. Everything can be settled with a duel. If things turn south, I still have a taser for self-defense. Reflecting on my plan, I continued to wander through the streets. Eventually, I entered a dark alley. My steps echoed, and I subconsciously reached for the stun gun in my back pocket. I walked with bated breath until I finally spotted some suspicious cloaked individuals. I hid around the corner and watched as more and more of them gathered. Lord Odeon, these are the rare cards and locator chips we have gathered. One of the rare hunters told the man in the middle of the group. My eyes widened. Odeon. Merrick's right-hand man and adoptive brother. I felt nervous knowing that the second boss of this arc was close by. Maybe I should give up on this idea, or I might bite off more than I can chew. Unfortunately, it may already be too late for that. Who's there? Odeon questioned with a frown, and I hurriedly hid behind the walls. No way, did I get caught. My heart beats erratically, maybe he's referring to someone else. The one around the corner, he said with a threatening tone, come out now unless something bad will happen. Third POV, Odeon glared at the area where the intruder was hiding. It was when his subordinates were reporting to him that he detected the unwanted presence. Fortunately for Odeon, the stalker was rather amateurish at their job, and they were found rather quickly. The stranger revealed themselves, and Odeon was surprised it was a girl. Observing her face, realization donned Odeon, and he recalled the girl's identity. Yuna Sano, the current dual king. His suspicion was further confirmed when he noticed the dual disc on her wrist. This is not a place you should be, Odeon said calmly, why are you here? Yuna paused and averted his gaze, a, a cat, she lied. Odeon froze in surprise, a cat, you say? 
he pinched the bridge and laughed, to think you came here. For a cat. He knew Yuna was lying. However, the excuse was so absurd that he couldn't help but chuckle. Odeon then glanced at her dual disc and pondered. The rare hunters were too weak to stand a chance against her. Sir, should we eliminate her? His subordinate whispered. Odeon has considered this option and instantly deemed it impossible. Yuna's presence was too big, and her disappearance would hinder his master's plan. Secondly, despite her frail appearance, Odeon could sense two insanely powerful spirits residing within her. Do I have to fight? Odeon thought and nodded. He turned to Yuna, unfortunately, I have not seen the cat you spoke of. But, instead of offering nothing, how about a duel? My lord. A rare hunter called from behind, let me fight, I will defeat that girl, however, Odeon immediately turned him down, all of you are too weak. The meeting ends now, and we will meet again at the set time. All the cloaked figures reluctantly left while only Odeon and Yuna remained, if I win, I can get her divine dragon Lord Felgrand. Master Merrick will be pleased. Odeon activated his dual disc, and Yuna followed suit as the two devices came to life, duel. 1. Self-insert character 4-1 I will apologize once more for the delay, but it's here, so. Also I seem to made a mistake, apparently Battle City happened all in one day, which sounded absurd to me. So who cares at this point, I don't think a lot people realized it as well. Odeon Ishtar, 4000 LP, Yuna Sano, 4000 LP, I will go first, Odeon declared, I'm activating my field spell card, Temple of the Kings, anime. The surroundings beside them began to change. The alleyway was transformed into an ancient Egyptian mausoleum with pillars, torches and a limestone structure. Behind Odeon rises an empty gold throne that glistened under the fire and a monumental staircase that reminded Yuna of the same annoying stairs back in the Duelist Kingdom. Whenever Temple of the Kings is activated, I could activate traps the same turns they were set. Odeon explained, then I will set three traps onto the field and end my turn. My move. I will use Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. Yuna declared. Not so fast, Odeon interrupted her, I activate my set card, Magic Jammer, and discard one card to negate your Pot of Greed. As soon as the green pot appeared on the field, it shattered into thousands of pieces, and Yuna instinctively raised her arms as the virtual shards flew towards her. Undeterred by the offset, Yuna continued, I will use Foolish Burial and send one card from my deck to the discard pile. She glimpsed at Odeon, who shrugged in response, then I summon Paladin of Felgrand. A young knight with blonde hair appeared before Yuna. The warrior readied his sword, prepared to strike at any sudden enemies. Paladin of Felgrand, 1700 attack, 600 defense, with Paladin of Felgrand's effect, I can attach Arc Brave Dragon to this card, Yuna explained while slipping her Arc Brave Dragon into her spell and trap slot. However, before she could activate Paladin of Felgrand's second ability, Odeon interrupted her. Odeon, I will use Torrential Tribute and destroy all the monsters on the field. Deadly blue flames consumed the area, and Paladin of Felgrand was engulfed in the fire. Soon, the disaster ended, and the night had long vanished. Tisk. Yuna clicked her teeth, I will set one card and end my turn. I will draw. Odeon muttered, first, I will activate Temple of the King's effect and banish one monster card from my hand, allowing me to summon it later. Then I will set my embodiment of Apophis, subsequently activating it. A reptilian monster was summoned onto the field. The beast wore a dark blue and gold chest blade with a sword and shield in each hand. On the back of the creature was the body of a serpent that slithered disgustingly. The trap card, embodiment of Apophis, will be treated as a monster upon activation, Odeon explained. Embodiment of Apophis, 1600 attack, 1800 defense, then I will tribute my embodiment of Apophis and summon the end of Anubis. The reptile dissolved into black mud and gradually merged into the physique of a humanoid jackal. It has sharp and deadly claws, pale purple skin, and two large sickles attached to the ornament on its neck. The end of Anubis, 2500 attack, zero defense, while the end of Anubis is on the field, all spells, traps and monsters that target a card in the graveyard will be negated. Also, it's no longer possible to activate effects in the graveyard. Yuna, Odeon smirked, now, the end of Anubis, attack. 
the jackal monster leapt into the air, throwing itself towards Yuna. Watching the monster's jaw approaching, she pressed the button on her dual disc and the card she placed earlier flipped up. As the end of Anubis struck, a force field blocked its attack, launching the monster into one of the pillars. I will use the trap, negate attack, and I can target your end of Anubis, stopping it from attacking and ending the battle phase. Very well, Odeon reacted calmly, it's your turn. Yuna nodded and observed the field. Odeon still has one face-down card on the field. However, that's nothing compared to the significant obstacle that was the end of Anubis. It was a monster that specifically countered her playstyle and locked her main strategy of using her graveyard. Yuna, I activate Graceful Charity and draw three cards from my deck while discarding two cards. She stared at her hand thoughtfully before sending her Ruins of the Divine Dragon Lords and Starleach Seyfert into the graveyard. While Yuna couldn't use their effects now, it would change once she dealt with that monster first. I will set a monster and end my turn, Yuna said, shaking her head. My turn. Odeon shouted and added a card into his hand, I will summon Royal Keeper. Rise again, warriors that guard this sacred ground. A tall coffin rises vertically from the ground. The coffin's lid burst with a boom, and a zombified mummy emerged. The monster wields an old spear and shield, wearing golden jewelry that has lost its shine. Royal Keeper, 1600 attack, 1700 defense, now, Royal Keeper, attack. Despite being a century-old corpse, the zombie maintained its fighting form and unleashed a swift strike with its spear. The face-down monster was revealed as Dragon Knight of Creation leapt out of the card. Sadly, the knight was weaker and perished under the attack, now you have no monsters to defend you, so go end of Anubis. Not so fast. Dragon Knight of Creation's defeat has triggered Keeper of the Shrine's effect in my hand. Before the jackal's claws could land, the Keeper of the Shrine arrived on the field and tanked the attack, sacrificing himself for Yuna's safety. I will pass my turn, he said reluctantly, show me what you can do. No need to tell me, Yuna remarked, first, I will use Card of Sanctity, allowing both of us to draw until we have six cards, then I will use Magical Mallet, Anime. I can send any number of cards, including this spell, to my deck, and then I can draw the same amount of cards. Choosing three cards from her hand and the magical mallet on the field, Yuna returned them to her deck, and her dual disc automatically shuffled it for her. Finally, she added four new cards and nodded with satisfaction. Then I will activate polymerization. Fusing Herald of Creation and Light Pulsar Dragon in my hand. Yuna shouted and showed Odeon the two monsters, I will fusion summon Mysterium the Dragon Crown. A golden wyvern with a long body appeared in the sky. On top of the dragon was a person dressed in ceremonial golden armor that matched the dragon's appearance. Mysterion the Dragon Crown, 3000 attack, 1500 defense, fusion summon monsters won't be able to attack the turn they were summoned. Odeon reminded Yuna with a frown. That's why I use this spell, quick attack. Then Mysterion the Dragon Crown can attack this turn. Yuna yelled, now, Mysterion the Dragon Crown, crush the end of Anubis. Energy gathered in the rider's palm, and she fired a bright beam from her hands. The laser vaporized the end of Anubis into nothingness, and Yuna felt a huge weight lifted off her chest. Odeon Ishtar, 4000 LP and GT, 3500 LP, I will end my turn, Yuna said with a relieved expression. The end of Anubis was defeated, and she felt a deep weight lifted off her chest. Odeon was impressed by Mysterion the Dragon Crown's power and felt his excitement soar, I draw. First, I activate my trap card, Curse of Anubis. All effect monsters on the field will be changed into defense positions, and their defense stats will be changed to zero. Lastly, they cannot switch positions except by a card effect. On both Royal Keeper and Mysterion's chest, there appeared a symbol of the Eye of Anubis. The tattoo's color brightened, and the two monsters felt a massive pressure that forced them to the ground. Mysterion the Dragon Crown, 3000 attack, 1500 and GT, 0 defense, Royal Keeper, 1600 attack, 1700 and GT, 0 defense, now, I will activate a second embodiment of Apophis and summon the trap as a monster. Embodiment of Apophis, 1600 attack, 1800 defense, Odeon grinned and pointed at Mysterion the Dragon Crown, attack. Embodiment of Apophis slithered towards the monster and swung its sword. 
Under the restraint, Mysterion the Dragon Crown fell helplessly to the attack and left the stage. My turn. Yuna declared, I will use Card of Demise and draw until I have five cards in my hand, but I have to discard my hand on the FTH turn. After that, I will banish Mysterion the Dragon Crown and Keeper of the Shrine in my graveyard and summon Dark Flame Dragon. A reddish portal manifested out of thin air, and a slim dragon with obsidian scales emerged. The monster landed before Yuna and shrieked, excited at being summoned for battle. Then I will summon another Keeper of the Shrine onto the field, then use polymerization again. Keeper of the Shrine, zero attack, 2100 defense, another one. Odeon exclaimed as Dark Flare Dragon and Keeper of the Shrine transformed into shadows. Using two dark monsters on the field, I fusion summoned Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. The shadow transformed into a slimy puddle on the floor. Suddenly, an arm burst out of the liquid, its claws leaving marks on the walls. The abomination pulled its massive frame out of the darkness, and Odeon felt intimidated by its presence. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 attack, 2000 defense, the power he couldn't sense from Mysterion the Dragon Crown could be detected now. Odeon's gaze met with the dragons, and he glanced at his trembling hand, so that's one of her spirits. How vexing. Odeon clenched his fists, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon won't be able to attack this turn. I know, Yuna said, him being here is enough. I'm using Pot of Greed to draw two more cards before ending my turn. Being familiar with Starving Venom Fusion Dragon's ability, Odeon realizes that Yuna wasn't speaking empty words. If Starving Venom Fusion Dragon were to die, it would bring along any monsters Odeon specially summoned with him. Odeon touched his chest, where his heart was beating erratically. The enthusiasm of a duel, he had never truly felt this sensation before. Regarding duel monsters as ranking, Odeon would be above the mid-level range, even more powerful than some well-known figures. While he's still below his brother and sister, Odeon wasn't a simple pushover. So, knowing that he's being pushed to his limits in this duel, he couldn't help but smile, looks like I can't hesitate any longer. First, I will use Pot of Greed to draw two cards. Odeon said, then, I will activate the Temple of the King's effect and tribute half of my life points. Odeon Ishtar, 3500 LP and GT, 1750 LP, Odeon spread his arms and laughed as a light shot out of his body and injected into a blazer in the middle of the staircase. By sacrificing my life points, I can summon the monster I have banished from my hand on the previous turns. Odeon smiled as the temple behind him lit up with a brilliant golden light, I will summon my strongest monster and my companion, Mystical Beast of Circuit. Yuna felt goosebumps as a gurgling shriek entered her ears. She glanced up and saw a humongous insect crawling on the ceiling of the buildings. The monster resembled a purple scorpion, with armored spikes, sharp pincers, claws at the end of each of its legs and a tail with a stinger dripping with venom. There was a symbol of the eye of Anubis carved onto its back, and the eye glowed ominously as the beast rested on the temple stairs. Mystical Beast of Circuit, 2500 attack, 2000 defense, then I will set two cards and activate them both through the Temple of the King's effect. Chains shoot from the ground, wrapping around starving Venom Fusion Dragon's body, the first one is Shadow Spell. Your monster will lose 700 attacks. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 and GT, 2100 attack, 2000 defense, the second trap I will use is Metal Coat. This trap card can be equipped to a monster, and while equipped, that monster won't be able to be destroyed by card effects. A silver liquid covered the scorpion's body. Like a coating, the fluid protected mystical beast of circuit from anything that may pose a danger. Now, the stage has been set, Odeon declared, mystical beast of circuit, attack. The scorpion pounced and destroyed the weakened starving venom fusion dragon with ease. Suddenly, Dark energy erupted from the corpse of the fusion monster and launched itself at the mystical beast of circuit. However, before it could land, the metal coat on the scorpion's body deflected the attack and dispersed it into the air. Unisano, 4000 LP and GT, 3600 LP, with mystical beast of circuit's effect, every time it destroyed a monster, it would gain half of that destroyed monster's attack. Mystical beast of circuit, 2500 and GT, 3900 attack. 2000 defense, then I set two cards and activated emergency provision, sending these two traps to the graveyard. I can gain 2000 life points. Odeon Ishtar, 1750 LP and GT, 
3750 LP, finally, I will also use card of demise and draw until I have 5 cards, Odean draws, and he smiles in delight, my wave has been rewarded, I will use eye of truth, anime. You must reveal all your cards in your hand until the end of this turn. Yuna's eyes widened in surprise at the absurd effect. Unfortunately, she was forced to comply, and Yuna begrudgingly flipped her cards over, allowing Odean to scan her hand. Light Pulsar Dragon Return of the Dragon Lord's Monster Reborn Quick Attack Wing Beat of Giant Dragon Komori Dragon Some cards may be troublesome, but Odean believed he could handle them, I will set four cards face down and end my turn. What will you do? He questioned proactively. Yuna bit her lips and stared at the five trap cards, one currently face up and four still hidden, waiting for the opportunity to strike. As Yuna formulated her strategy, Odean felt sweat dripping down his back. This was his deck's ultimate move, and if Yuna could overcome it, Odean would undoubtedly lose. Even Merrick and Ishizu have trouble defending against this strategy without using the Egyptian god cards, so Odean can't imagine Yuna finding a way. However, no matter how much he reassured himself, Odean couldn't feel confident at all. I draw and have to discard a card from my hand due to the six-card limit rule, too, then I banish the Dark Flame Dragon and Paladin of Felgrand in my graveyard to summon Light Pulsar Dragon from my hand. A white portal manifested out of thin air, and a slim dragon with obsidian scales emerged. The monster landed in front of Yuna and shrieked, despite the unfavorable situation, Light Pulsar Dragon roared with triumph at being summoned for battle. Ligat Pulsar Dragon, 2500 attack, 1500 defense, then I will use Wing Beat of the Giant Dragon, returning Light Pulsar Dragon into my hand and destroying all traps and spells on the field. Not so fast. Odean shouted, I activate Judgment of Anubis to negate your spell card and, in doing so, destroy all monsters on the field, and the owners will receive damage equal to half of their attack stats. While Mystical Beast of Circuit wasn't affected by the destruction, both Odean's Royal Keeper and Light Pulsar Dragon imploded as the duelists suffered from the blast. Odean Ishtar, 3750 LP and GT, 2950 LP, Unisano, 3600 LP and GT, 2300 LP, three more traps left. Odean thought anxiously, but he didn't let it show on his face. Since a dragon monster has been sent from the field to the graveyard, I can special summon the Keeper of the Shrine from the graveyard. Keeper of the Shine, 0 attack, 2100 defense, when Light Pulsar Dragon was defeated, I can summon one level higher or dark monster from my graveyard. Return to me, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 attack, 2000 defense, with Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, I can target one special summon monster you control, and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon will gain attack stats equal to that card. I will choose your Mystical Beast of Circuit. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 2800 and GT, 6700 attack, 2000 defense, then I use Quick Attack and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, destroy Mystical Beast of Circuit. Odean growled in anger as Starving Venom Fusion Dragon howled, charging towards his monster. Forcing to make a play, Odean begrudgingly activated the trap he saved for later, I will use Mirror Force. You Starving Venom Fusion Dragon will perish here. The dragon's claws struck a tough barrier, and the accumulated pressure was reflected into Starving Venom Fusion Dragon's face, creating a massive explosion. Odean scowled and swiped the air, clearing the smoke around him. Glancing at his field, where only two traps remained, he couldn't relax, particularly since there were still three cards in Yuna's hand. I will enter my second main phase and activate Return of the Dragon Lord, summoning Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Suddenly, Odean sensed a suffocating pressure that was even larger than Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. A golden dragon descended from the sky, unfurling its wide wings, and its scales glistened under the moonlight. It's here, the second spirit. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, sh asterisk t. He angrily exclaimed, I will use solemn judgment. Paying half of my life points and negating the summoning of your Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Before Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand can land, an old man appears before the monster. He held out his hand and launched a lightning beam into Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's chest, and the dragon disappeared in a flash of light. One last trap. Odean sweated nervously as this final trap could determine the outcome of this duel. I will use Monster Reborn. Yuna shouted, 
reviving my divine dragon Lord Felgrand. Again. Odean exclaimed, I won't let you. I'm activating magic drain, and you must discard one spell card, or your monster reborn will be negated, Yuna gritted her teeth, and Odean knew that a spare spell card was something she didn't have. Yes, does this mean I won? He thought with anticipation but soon realized that was far from the truth. Odean glanced at the opposite side and noticed Yuna's confidence didn't crumble, her smile had grown even further. Now, there's no more traps. Yuna yelled, my move. I will first summon Herald of Creation. She said as a young sorceress appeared from a blinding light. Herald of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, but you ran out of cards, you can't use her effect. Odeon pointed out. However, Yuna smirked and ignored him, then I activate Starleach Seyfert's effect by banishing that monster from the graveyard. I can add one level 8 dragon monster from the graveyard to my hand. She showed Odeon the divine dragon Lord Felgrand, and his expression turned sour, then I will use Herald of Creation's effect, I will discard divine dragon Lord Felgrand and add Art Brave Dragon from the discard pile. Yuna dumped her divine dragon Lord Felgrand away and retrieved another dragon, leaving Odeon confused, finally, I will use ruins of the divine dragon lord in my graveyard and discard Art Brave Dragon, adding this spell card to my hand. Once again, Yuna discarded another card, but instead of a dragon, this time it was a spell card. What are you up to? Odeon questioned. Have you not realized it? Yuna tilted her head, and Odeon trembled. He immediately began to reflect on what transpired. Retrieve Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, discard it to retrieve Arc Brave Dragon, then discard Arc Brave Dragon to retrieve ruins of the Divine Dragon Lord. Wait. Discard Arc Brave Dragon. Odeon's eyes widened, no. Yes. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will be reborn on your next standby phase, and your mystical beast of circuit is done for. Tisk. Odeon clicked his teeth and glared at Yuna, so no matter what I do, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will be summoned. He was deeply impressed by Yuna's thorough planning, and in his heart, he accepted defeat. But, despite this, Odeon will still fight with everything he gets. Without fear, Odeon drew his card and frowned. He stared at the new card with a complicated expression. Do I have to play it here? Odeon thought and gazed at the card he drew earlier. As Odeon reached for it with his other hand, he froze. His head spun wildly, and his surroundings warped. Suddenly, he stood behind a throne in an old, musty temple. Master. Odeon gasped and immediately knelt on the floor, prostrating at the man sitting on the throne. What do you think you're doing? Merrick questioned nonchalantly, it's the first day, and you're already using that card. I apologize, Odeon said nervously, my opponent is simply too strong. You're not a bad duelist, Odeon. Merrick pointed out with curiosity, who's the one that can even back you into a corner? Under Merrick's gaze, Odeon hurriedly explained his situation. As he talked about Yuna, her sudden arrival and the dual king's status, as he spoke, Odeon noticed that his master was listening keenly. Merrick stroked his chin and hummed, so there's another variable to my plan. Odeon, Merrick said sternly, don't play that card for now, we still couldn't pinpoint who owns Obelisk the Tormentor, and even if it's a counterfeit, I don't want to reveal its existence yet. Odeon's face instinctively scrunched up, what? Do you think I should do? Forfeit, Merrick responded as it was the most obvious answer, it's only a game. Understood. Odeon answered and suppressed the fighting spirit in his heart. Satisfied, Merrick disabled the link, and Odeon returned. Everything that transpired only lasted for a second in the real world. He glimpsed at Yuna, who was smiling as she raised her hand. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, Bonnie. Odeon, I surrender. Yuna POV, I let out a weird sound as what he said caught me off guard. Odeon closed his eyes in contemplation and sighed. Eventually, he reached into his pocket, and my body tensed with suspicion. Suddenly, Odeon threw something, and I hurriedly caught the item in my palm. When I opened my hand, I was surprised to see a locator card and beside it was the mystical beast of circuit. You have won this duel, by rules, you will take my locator card and rare card. Odeon turned his back, it's just a suggestion but I recommend you to forget what happened tonight. 
I shivered and nodded frantically, my head bobbing up and down like a bobblehead on a turbocharged spring. Odeon hummed and stared into my eyes in silence. Finally satisfied, Odeon quietly left, and his figure disappeared into the dark alley. When he's gone, I let out the breath I had held this entire time. Geez, I should stop getting myself killed. Suddenly, I froze when I heard footsteps approaching from behind. I sneakily reached into my trousers, where I placed my taser. When the stranger was close enough, I spun around and stabbed at the figure with the stun gun. Psst, I felt the end of the taser plunging into the person's skin. However, to my shock, they grasped my wrist and pulled me towards them. Losing balance, we crashed against the wall, and I groaned as my hand scraped against the floor. W, what are you doing? My eyes widened, and I lifted my head. I stared at Kaiba, who glared at me while gritting his teeth in pain. I was still stabbing the taser into his left shoulder and quickly pulled the weapon away. Kaiba took a deep breath and rubbed where my taser struck him. I stared at him in disbelief, why? He snorted and let go of my wrist, I heard that some suspicious individuals may hinder the Battle City tournament prowling in this area. Kaiba picked up the locator card and mystical beast of circuit, seems like you have already dealt with them. Out of the blue, Kaiba fell onto his knees. Realizing that the taser had done more harm than expected, I tried to support him. Injured, I pointed out, need rest. And whose fault do you think that was? He sharply retorted, and I averted my gaze out of guilt. Sorry. I muttered pitifully. I felt his body stiffening before he sighed exasperatedly, something like that is nothing, however, you're much more wounded than me. Kaiba pointed at my hand, and that's when I noticed the cut below my palm where I grazed my hand. The wound was red, and it was oozing blood. Thankfully, I had brought bandages for emergencies, but applying them with only one hand was difficult. Noticing my struggle, Kaiba took the bandages and began wrapping them around my injury. I watched with disbelief as his action caught me off guard. Why? I asked and stared at him in confusion. Clearly you're struggling and it's pitiful to watch, Kaiba answered. Despite his rough attitude, his movement was extremely gentle, as if he was very experienced with something like this. Sensing my thoughts, Kaiba explained that when he was young, Makoba tended to hurt himself falling, and he had to be the one to attend to his injuries. Makoba. Lucky. I said with a small smile. Kaiba shrugged as he finished wrapping the bandages, it's what was expected of me as the elder brother. That's. Nice. Of you, I praised him sincerely as it's probably one of the few good points about this guy. He seemed flustered by the compliment and stood up, leaving me confused as he began walking back the way he came, not. Chase criminals. If they would still follow the tournament rules, I will overlook it for now. Not knowing what Kaiba was thinking, I followed quietly, and our journey was uneventful. When we exited the alley, a black limousine was waiting for us. I gulped in awe as Kaiba urged me inside. There's so much space if I lay flat on the ground. There's still enough room for me to spread my arms. We sat across each other and the soft leather seat made me relax my guard. Kaiba knocked on the black tinted windows behind him. The car began to move as if right on cue, and we left the dark street. The ride was eerily silent, and I glanced at Kaiba, crossing his arms and resting with his eyes closed. With nothing to do, I fiddled with my dual disc and noticed the blood stain from my cut earlier. Trying to clean the device, I reached for the tissue box across the table between us. Is it comfortable? Kaiba asked out of the blue as his eyes snapped open and stared at me. I flinched in shock, and I was visibly startled. Luckily, I managed not to fall out of my seat. Kaiba snorted in amusement while I glared at him annoyingly, what? The dual disc, he gestured, was it to your liking? I realized that Kaiba was talking about my dual disc. I took the dual disc off and placed it on my lap. This dual disc was amazing and only possible thanks to Makuba's kindness. It's great. A soft smile appeared on my face without me realizing. However, I hurriedly turned my head and hid my happy expression. Kaiba nodded with satisfaction, good. Finally, the car stopped at the entrance of my apartment building. At this point, I couldn't bother to ask how he knew where I lived because he managed to take control of the entirety of Domino City for a card game. Speaking of knowing my address, 
didn't Makuba arrive at my front doorstep not so long ago? I exited the car and stared at Kaiba through the window, thank. You. Instead of thanking me, you should be begging for forgiveness. Kaiba dismissed my gratitude with a snort, do you know how much I hate when people waste my precious time? With nothing to refute, I could only stare at the floor in shame. Kaiba scoffed and rested his chin on his hand. He sighed and tapped with his finger, next time, don't go somewhere so dangerous. Huh, what did he say? Before I could respond, the car drove off, leaving a white trail behind them. Scolding me then telling me to stay safe. I seriously can't get that guy. Yuna's POV, it was the last day before the Battle City's second round will begin. The rulebook said I must have six locator cards to find the place for the finals. Beside, I also have so secure Silfer the Sky Dragon before the end of the day. So much to do and so little time. Currently, I am trying to find Yugi because where's Yugi was also where the rare hunters will be. He has split off with his friends to participate in the tournament alone, so finding him in this big city is difficult. I could also go where the rare hunters would appear from the show, but that's also a problem. First, I had no idea where to look as there were many similar locations across Domino City. Second, with my presence in the storyline, things may have changed, Yugi may have already dueled against those rare hunters or that Merrick won't even mess with him in the first place. However, with no better options, I continued. As I walked briskly, I felt a sudden vibration in my pocket. Taking out my phone, I pressed the accept call button and brought the device to my ear. It's Sido Kaiba, we need to talk. The young president's snarky voice reverberated from the speaker, causing me to frown, I've sent you the coordinates. Meet me there. I'm not taking no for an answer. Kaiba briefly hangs up, leaving me at a loss. What the hell does Kaiba want to do with me? Does he wish to duel me right now? I thought about ignoring his demands but ultimately complied. Placing the address he sent into the map app. I started making my way there. Thirty minutes later. Getting a taxi, I arrived at the designated meeting location. The first thought that came to my mind was whether or not I was in the right place. Before me was a vacant warehouse by the docks, and no one else seemed nearby. Something's fishy. My phone vibrated again, and Kaiba left a message urging me to hurry up and enter the warehouse. Yep, that's too suspicious. I should get out of here. As I pondered on my escape plan, a black car drove around the corner. It screeched to a halt beside me as the door opened. To my shock, Kaiba emerged and he doesn't seem pleased. What do you want? Kaiba hissed. I titled my head and didn't understand his question. Detecting my confusion, Kaiba pinched the bridge of his nose and snarled, Are you an idiot? You called me here suddenly, and now you don't know why. But. I muttered, You. Called me. Ha. Kaiba sighed exasperatedly, No, why would I call you? We stared at each other in confusion as realization set in. If we haven't called each other, then who? Something is amiss. We should leave this place this instance. Suddenly, as Kaiba placed his hand on the car's door handle, the vehicle drove off, leaving us stranded. Stunned, he didn't know how to respond as his hand was still suspended in the air. Ah, the driver is probably bribed. I thought with pity. Sensing my thought, Kaiba looked away to hide his shame, I will have him fired as soon as possible. Simultaneously, with a loud bam, the entrance to the warehouse swung open. It was as if beckoning us to enter, and we stared at the opened warehouse cautiously. Who's there? Kaiba shouted and crossed his arms, come out now, and I will show you the consequences for crossing me. We waited as the silence felt suffocating. When I thought it was all an elaborate joke, a raspy voice resounded from the warehouse, making my skin crawl, enter. Humph, the young president snorted, as if I do something like that. The silence returned as the mastermind crafted his response, I didn't know the infamous Sido Kaiba is a coward. I smirked. Were they dumb? As if a simple provocation like that will ever work. Tough luck, but you need to try harder than that. Right, Kaiba? Kaiba? When I turned my head, Kaiba had already disappeared and was walking angrily towards the warehouse. I hurriedly pulled on his sleeve to stop him, danger. He shook my hand away and scoffed, 
hiding in an empty building to lure out your enemy is nothing but a spineless move. Step aside, I will deal with this. To think that taunt actually got under his skin. Biting my lips, I followed him and entering the obvious trap. As soon as we stepped inside, the warehouse door closed from behind, filling the space with darkness. Suddenly, the center of the room lit up, revealing two figures beneath the light. Both wore matching outfits of purple robes with a hood. They also wear a mask, one with a different design to another on one side of their face. The man on the right wore a dark red frowning mask, and the one on the left had a white smiling mask. I'm Loomis, the mask of light, the person on the left introduced himself. I'm Umbra, the mask of darkness, the one on the right followed suit Loomis slash Umbra, we were the rare hunters sent by Master Merrick to deal with the two of you. Our faces scrunched with wariness, Merrick have finally sent his people after me. Which means he sees me as a threat and wanted me gone. Merrick. Kaiba spat with disgust, he's the one that woman warned me about. So your masters possess two of the Egyptian god cards. That's right, by the time we're done with you, Sido Kaiba, our master will regain Obelisk the Tormentor and use its power to rule the world. Loomis laughed. So enjoy it while you can before we banish you both to the Shadow Realm. Umbra declared. Shadow Realm, I gritted my teeth. That term always sounded hilarious when I watched the show, but now, I couldn't afford to laugh when I was threatened. The two rare hunters revealed the dual discs on their wrists and in unison, they activated the device. Kaiba. I called out to him, and he nodded. Let's crush these fools, Kaiba said confidently, and our own dual discs came to life. I was still quite surprised that he agreed to work with me this easily. Was it because of what happened in Legendary Heroes? It doesn't matter, I don't care what he's thinking as long as we make it out alive. Yuna slash Kaiba slash Umbra slash Loomis, duel. Yuna Sano, 4000 LP, Sido Kaiba, 4000 LP, Loomis, 4000 LP, Umbra, 4000 LP, I will go first. Loomis announced when the light on his dual disc illuminated, I will set two cards, it's your move, Duel King. Until all of us have played, nobody can attack. I should first see what they're scheming, I will summon Dragon Knight of Creation, set one card and end my turn. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, it's my move, Umbra said with a smile. I summon Shiny Abyss. A peculiar winged being appeared by the rare hunter's side. The monster resembled a blue golem with the lower body of a sphere. Attached to Shiny Abyss's back was a pair of golden wings that flapped fervently, lifting the monster in the air. Shiny Abyss, 1600 defense, 1800 attack, then I will activate my spell, Mask of Brutality in equipping it to my Shiny Abyss. With the mask's power, Shiny Abyss will gain 1000 additional attacks but will lose 1000 defense points. A crude mask appeared on Shiny Abyss's face, and I felt the mask emitting energy into the monster's flesh. Shiny Abyss, 1600 and GT, 2600 attack, 1800 and GT, 800 defense, a monster with 2600 attacks on the first turn. Kaiba exclaimed and gritted his teeth. Unfortunately, while Mask of Brutality is on the field, I must take 1000 damage in each of my standby phases. Umbra smiled, but my brother can do something about that. Now let's see what you're capable of, Sido Kaiba. I will also set two cards and summon Vorse Raider in attack position. He said calmly, and before him rose a wicked beastly warrior wearing a black pointy helmet and vest. In his hand was a large double-sided blade, and the monster ran his nails along the edge, creating a disturbing sound. Vorse Raider, 1900 attack, 1200 defense, Kaiba and I glanced at each other, sharing the same thoughts. Our turns were rather lackluster compared to Umbra, and now, our opponents could begin their assault. First, I will activate the Mask Doll, Anime, Spell Card. All the self-inflicted damage that Umbra and I will take will be negated as long as this card is on the field. Between Loomis and Umbra, there appeared a mannequin, suddenly, a metal stake pierced through the doll's chest and seemed to be draining an ominous purple wisp from the Mask of Brutality. Loomis, then, I use Mask of Accursed and equip it to Dragon Knight of Destruction. A strange mask attached itself to the Dragon Knight of Creation's face. No matter how hard the knight was to pull, he couldn't remove the mask. While a monster was equipped with Mask of Accursed, that monster couldn't attack, 
and if it's the only monster on the field, then we can attack you directly and you must take 500 damage in each standby phase. Loomis cackled like a madman before smiling at me with a disgusting grin, I will end my turn. As I drew a card, the mask of a cursed fired a dark red beam and struck my body. It was uncomfortable, but I endured and glanced at my dual discs, where my life points dropped drastically. Unisano, 4000 LP and GT, 3500 LP, my turn. I shouted, I will activate ruins of the divine dragon lords. While this continuous spell is on the field, once per turn, I can destroy one of my cards and summon a dragon lord token. I will destroy Dragon Knight of Creation and special summon the token in defense position. Dragon Knight of Creation calmly transformed, shrinking into a shiny orb floating in the middle of my field. When the Dragon Knight of Creation was attributed, the mask on his face shattered and erupted in flames. Good, at least I don't have to take any damage for the time being. Dragon Lord token, zero attack, zero defense, then, I summon Starleach Seifert. Sending my blue eyes white dragon to the graveyard and adding divine dragon Lord Felgranto to my hand. Starleach Seifert, 1800 attack, zero defense, finally, Starleach Seifert, attack Loomis. That won't happen. Loomis interjected as Starleach Seifert flew towards him, I'm activating mirror force, when Starleach Seifert attacks, I can destroy all your monsters that are in attacking position. Before the dragon could reach Loomis, an invisible barrier reflected its attack, directing the power back into itself. Starleach Seifert roared as all the damage returned to its body, ultimately leading to its defeat. I will end my turn here. I muttered. Humph, Umbra snorted, looks like it's my turn. I will attack Kaiba's Force Raider. Tisk. Kaiba clicked his teeth, I activate Ring of Destruction, destroying your Shiny Abyss while we both take the same amount of damage equal to Shiny Abyss's attack. A shackle appeared on Shiny Abyss's neck, there were multiple grenades without pins around the shackles, indicating they would go off at any second. I won't let you. Loomis shouted from the side, revealing his hidden card, I will use Curse Transfer. Your Ring of Destruction will be negated, and Curse Transfer will gain the effect of your Ring of Destruction, and I will use it on your Vorse Raider instead. To Kaiba's surprise, the shackle around Shiny Abyss disappeared before reappearing onto the neck of his own Vorse Raider. Damn it, I will use Ring of Defense, all traps that inflict damage towards me will be reduced to zero. Kaiba shouted. Unfortunately, Luma seemed to have a counter to that also. In response, I will use my second set card, Spell Transfer, and I can negate Ring of Defense like Curse Transfer. My spell card will take the effect of Ring of Defense, protecting myself from the Ring of Destruction. Kaiba. The grenade unleashed a devastating explosion that engulfed both duelists. However, before the explosion occurred, I saw a shield appearing before the rare hunter, protecting him from the damage. Sido Kaiba, 4000 LP and GT, 2100 LP, Kaiba, you imprudent. Now, now, Umbra wagged his finger, no need to get personal, let's continue, and since a battle hasn't occurred yet, Shiny Abyss can still fight and attack Kaiba directly. Shiny Abyss closed in, and I hurriedly activated my own trap card, I will use Negate Attack, stopping Shiny Abyss from attacking and ending the battle phase. Kaiba, are you alright? I asked out of concern. He nodded and regained his calm as Umbra passed the turn to him, I draw, he shouted, drawing his card from his dual discs dramatically. I couldn't discern it from the distance, but he seemed to have drawn the card he had wanted. Kaiba smiled, you two have truly crossed me, now get ready to face my wrath. I will use Monster Reborn, special summoning the Blue Eyes White Dragon from Seno's graveyard. To my surprise, my Blue Eyes White Dragon, which I discarded earlier, was summoned onto Kaiba's field. His cloak flapped wildly even if there was no wind inside the room. Behind him was a beautiful white dragon that roared with vigor and I subconsciously held my breath. Cool. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, Blue Eyes White Dragon, wipe shiny abyss off the face of this earth. The dragon unleashed a white beam. Struck by the deadly attack, shiny abyss was destroyed without a trace. Umbra, 4000 LP and GT, 3600 LP, just wait, you will lose a lot more than a monster, Kaiba warned. Unheeding to the threat, the two rare hunters laughed, keep talking, soon, you won't be doing it much longer. My turn. 
Loomis yelled, first, I will activate the Mask of Dispel, attaching it to your ruins of the Divine Dragon Lord, he said to me. On the stone foundation of the statue appeared another mask with a ghost-like appearance, while Mask of Dispel is on the field, the effect of your continuous spell is negated, and you will take 500 damage on every standby phase. Then, I summon Grand Tiki Elder and attack your dragon token. Umbra said as he summoned a green ghoul monster onto the field. The monster's face was covered by a native-like mask with various ornaments strapped to its neck. Grand Tiki Elder, 1500 attack, 800 defense, Grand Tiki Elder lunged without hesitation and shredded my weakened token into pieces, then, I'm setting one card to end my turn. It's my turn. I announced and instantly took damage from Mask of Dispel. Unisano, 3500 LP and GT, 3000 LP, staring at my new card in hand. I felt a sense of ecstasy at finally gaining a chance to make a move, I will use Card of Destruction. All of us will discard our entire hand and draw the same amount of cards from our deck. Following my instruction, we all discarded our cards simultaneously. I glimpsed at Kaiba for his reaction, and he seemed rather delighted at removing what I assume was a brick hand. Then, I will use Return of the Dragon Lords to summon a level 7 or 8 dragon monster from my graveyard. Reveal yourself, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Roar I heard a roar erupting behind. Without turning around, I feel the comfortable presence of Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, and a sense of relief washes over me. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, I will use Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability to banish your Grand Tiki Elder, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will gain 100 attacks for each level Grand Tiki Elder has. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand fired a golden beam, engulfing Grand Tiki Elder whole. My powerful dragon then consumed the energy, and its strength rose sharply. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3200 attack, 2800 and GT, 3200 defense, now, attack Loomis. I yelled, and following my orders, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand lunged. Striking the rare hunter with his claws. I activate Mask of Impregnability, Loomis said calmly, presenting a new mask in his hand. Placing it on his face, the attack was blocked by an invisible force and pushed Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand backwards, with this card's effect, all damage I take from my opponents this turn will be zero. Annoyed, I clicked my teeth, I will end my turn here. Umbra glanced at my Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and whistled, impressive, Loomis. We should start to get serious now. Agreed. The other rare hunter nodded, we can't let Master Merrick wait any longer. With a creepy grin, Umbra revealed the cards in his hand, I will use the ritual spell, Curse of the Masked Beast. Curse of the Masked Beast. Kaiba exclaimed. That's right, Umbra smirked, with this card's effect, I will discard Mask of Darkness and Rouget Doll from my hand, allowing me to ritual summon my strongest monster, the Masked Beast. An ominous darkness overwhelmed the field, and a humongous creature rose, with a height so tall that its head grazed the ceiling. It has the upper body of a humanoid, but its lower body consists of a beast, with the legs of an insect and a thick tail on its rear. Stretching its muscles, the monster raised its massive staff while unleashing a devastating scream that could shatter someone's eardrum. The Masked Beast, 3300 attack, 2500 defense, Umbra, now, Masked Beast, destroy Blue Eyes White Dragon. The Masked Beast stumbled towards Kaiba and swung its weapon. Blue Eyes White Dragon shrieked as the sharp tip of the staff pierced through the dragon's chest. Sido Kaiba, 2100 LP and GT, 1800 LP, Blue Eyes White Dragon burst into light upon death, and Kaiba was blinded momentarily, you bastard. As Kaiba cursed at the two rare hunters, I couldn't help but feel nervous. His life points were worrying low, and he had nothing to defend himself. While I still have my divine dragon Lord Felgrand on the field, it's still weaker than the masked beast. Was helping Kaiba summon Obelisk the only way? I will summon Kaiser Seahorse in defense position, set a card and end my turn, Kaiba muttered grimly. A blue armored monster was summoned onto the field. Peering through the helmet, Kaiser Seahorse huffed with dissatisfaction before kneeling and planting its sword on the floor. Kaiser Seahorse, 1700 attack, 1650 defense, looks like you're running out of steam. Loomis cackled, first, I will summon Melchid, the four-faced beast. A large pulsating flesh appeared out of nowhere. 
Gradually, masks began to grow from each area of the flesh, representing different emotions, happiness, sadness, anger and fear. Melchid, the four-faced beast, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, then, I activate my trap card, call of the hunted and revive Umbra's shiny abyss. Shiny abyss, 1600 attack, 1800 defense, finally, with two monsters on the field, I can summon my strongest card. Loomis placed his hand on the floor, and I felt much more intense energy than the masked beast. A purple circle was formed on the floor, absorbing Melchid the four-faced beast and shiny abyss. He laughed and spread his arms as an ominous figure rose from the circle, with a brown-colored body, purple limbs, a green quivering heart exposed on its chest, a pointy head and three eerie blue masks protruding on its face and both sides of its neck. Masked Beast Descardius, 3300 attack, 2500 defense, now, Masked Beast Descardius, destroy Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Bill O.M. with an astounding speed, Masked Beast Descardius leapt across the field, pouncing onto Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. In midair, the two monsters fought, desperately trying to kill one another. However, despite the disadvantage in strength, Masked Beast Descardius was repelled, and the monster was sent back to Loomis's side, much to the rare hunter's dismay. Unisano, 3000 LP and GT, 2900 LP, I will use the effect of return the dragon lords in my graveyard. I explained, if one of my dragon monsters will be destroyed, I can banish the card instead. Regaining his composure, Loomis huffed, fine by me, but you're not getting away that easily. I will use my spell card, Mask of Accursed. Damn it, again. The disgusting mask reappeared on Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's head. The dragon roared and shook its head, but the mask wouldn't budge, in case you forget, Mask of Accursed made it so your pathetic dragon won't be able to attack, and if it's your only monster, we can attack you directly. Third POV, this concludes my turn, Loomis said with a slick smile. As soon as it was Yuna's turn, the two masks parasitizing her cards drained away her life points and brought her closer to defeat. Yuna Sano, 2900 LP and GT, 1900 LP, in this situation, she was at a loss for what to do. In her hand, she has nothing but spell cards and those spells won't be able to save her in this scenario. Yuna glanced at Sido, who was also as frustrated as her. Was there a way out of this one? What if? A realization dawned on Yuna as she stared at her teammate with a complicated expression. Was this the only way? Resolve settled firmly in her heart as she began to play, I will use card exchange, and I can switch a card with a player I choose. I will pick Kaiba. She approached Sido and presented him with a single card, take it. Why are you giving me this? Sido frowned, staring at the card in her hand. Disgruntled, Yuna leaned in, their face close against each other. The young president was visibly startled by her scent tickling Sido's nose. However, he has no chance to care about these useless thoughts as Yuna's next words shock him. Yuna took a step back and waited with anticipation. Sido's face shifted through various ranges of emotions. Finally choosing annoyance, he scowled at the girl standing nonchalantly before him, are you insane? She shook her head, it's our best choice. You call that the best? Sido felt like he was going crazy. However, before he can object, Yuna slips away, taking one of his useless cards with her. I will end my turn here. Yuna declared. Is that all? Umbra remarked, looks like this is the capability of the Duel King. Now, Mask Beast attacked Yuna Sano. The Masked Beast charged, and Yuna closed her eyes. Being a shadow game, Yuna thought it would probably hurt. However, she knew that unless Kaiba didn't lose, she shouldn't die. Stop. Suddenly, Yuna heard, and the masked beast's rampage stopped. Opening her eyes, she stared at the young president with bewilderment as Sido crossed his arms and scoffed, Before you attack, I'm just warning you whether you're making the right choice. What are you saying? Umbra growled. By attacking her, it will be my turn immediately afterwards and can you and your teammates survive what happens next? Your provocation won't work. Umbra pointed out, so cease these futile actions. I'm only stating the obvious, and it's laughable that I have to point it out to you. Sido continued before raising one of his cards into the air, and the two rare hunters gasped in unison when their gaze fell upon the card in his hand. If you attack her here, I will easily summon Obelisk the Tormentor onto the field. 
Sito announced, then your lives will truly be over. Impossible. You only controlling one weak monster. There's no way you can summon Obelisk in time. Loomis yelled as sweat dripped down his face. Sito laughed haughtily as if he had heard a good joke. However, that expression disappeared, leaving a freezing coldness that shook Loomis and Umbra's hearts, try me. Umbra stared at the field with anxiety and couldn't discern whether Sito was telling the truth. Umbra, don't listen to him, he's lying to you. Loomis shouted, causing a wrinkle to form. Quiet. Umbra snapped, I need to think. Eventually, after minutes of contemplation and urging from Sito, Umbra finally shouted with rage, You swine, I won't fool for your tricks, attack the dual king now. The masked beast resumed its stampede. But to his surprise, the monster ignored Umbra's order and began running toward Sito's Kaiser seahorse. I will activate my trap, anime, attack guidance armor, onto my Kaiser seahorse, changing the attack target of your monster. Sito said, flipping over the card he placed earlier as if I would let you do what you want. Damn you. Umbra cursed, I will use my strike slash, and masked beast will be able to deal piercing damage this turn. Despite being in a defense position, Kaiser Seahorse was mercilessly blown away and Sido saw his life points going down. Sido Kaiba, 1800 LP and GT, 150 LP, Yuna was in disbelief, she couldn't understand what Sido was thinking. The plan, their last strategy, he has completely thrown it out of the window, your plan is too stupid for me even to consider it, Sito said while staring ahead, that's why I will win through my methods. I draw. His voice echoed through the warehouse, with a swipe motion, a card magically manifested in his hand. Sito peeked at the card between his fingers and smirked, I will use Pot of Greed and draw two cards from my deck. Then, I will use Double Summon, allowing me to normal to summon twice this turn. Kaiba yelled and slapped a card onto his dual disc, I summon Sagi the Dark Clown. Sagi the Dark Clown, 600 attack, 1500 defense, after that. Sido muttered and glanced at his stunned teammate, I will use Return of the Dragon Lords, special summoning Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand onto the field. The Golden Dragon was revived, and the monster roared. However, it soon realized it was currently serving under the wrong master, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand snarled with discontent. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, then, I will banish your masked beast Desgardius. Reluctantly, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand attacks, banishing Loomis's monster and stealing its strength. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3600 attack, 2800 and GT, 3600 defense, next, I use mind control to steal your masked beast. He said to Umbra. Strange electricity struck Masked Beast's head, and the monster convulsed before stumbling toward Sido like a zombie. Three monsters. The rare hunters thought in unison. Now. Sido took a deep breath, one final card left, using the Masked Beast, Saggy the Dark Clown and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, I summon Obelisk the Tormentor, rumble the three monsters vanished, and a gigantic figure slowly rose from a portal. Unleashing a terrifying aura, Obelisk the Tormentor emerged, and the entire building shook under its cry. Obelisk the Tormentor, 4000 attack, 4000 defense, what kind of monster is this? Umbra muttered. It's not a monster. It's a god. Sido answered calmly, now Obelisk, obliterate him. The Egyptian god raised its mighty fist and brought it down on Umbra. The rare hunter screamed, and he was sent flying across the room. Umbra, 3600 LP and GT, 0 LP, Loomis's body refused to move as Obelisk the Tormentor slowly turned its head, locking eyes with him. Loomis lowered his hand as his cards fell to the floor. Staring at the unconscious Umbra, fear finally crept in. Ah! Ah, save me! He screamed, running for his life. However, as soon as his hand touched the door handle, he collapsed like a puppet with its string cut. It's over. Sito observed. As soon as Loomis ran away, he officially ended the duel and forfeited their souls. But, to his surprise, Loomis and Umbra simultaneously stood up with lifeless pupils. On top of their forehead was a glowing eye, and Yuna instantly realized what was happening. Yuna, Merrick. Yes. Umbra and Loomis's voices combined together, creating an eerie symmetry, 
I believe this is the first time we met. Ha 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 ha, Merrick chuckled, both of you have truly been a thorn in my side. But don't worry, I will deal with you too soon. For now, there's a certain pharaoh I needed to defeat. With a wave, the connections between Umbra slash Loomis and Merrick have been cut off, and the two rare hunters slumped to the ground. Yuna and Sido bathed in silence, not knowing what to say. Eventually, Yuna glared at Sido with annoyance, why? Why? Shouldn't you be thanking me? Sido retorted. However, Yuna wasn't ever bit pleased, could have lost. You risked us. Idiot. Having seen Sido's hand earlier, Yuna understood how dire their situation was, and if he hadn't drawn double summon, they would undoubtedly have tasted defeat and lost their souls. Are you mentally insane? Sido spat, grabbing Yuna by the shoulder, calling me a fool, yet you were so willing to sacrifice yourself. But. Winning duel. Yuna complained, causing Sido's forehead to furrow. Yet to gamble your own life. He shouted ragefully, stop being so stupid. Yuna bit her lips as her body shook. Why was she the one getting scolded? Didn't Sido threaten to kill himself when he dueled against Yugi? Yet right now, he's being nothing but a massive hypocrite. So why does he have the audacity to spout nonsense like the importance of life? This wasn't fair. Unable to control herself, Yuna finally snapped and shoved his body away. Why, care? Yuna yelled at the top of her lungs, always selfish, always prideful. So why care? Sido was speechless as Yuna's outburst caught him off guard. Why does he care that Yuna will risk her life? For the years he has been alive, he has thought about no one but himself and his brother, so why does it irk him when Yuna suggests the ludicrous plan? Sniff suddenly, a whimpering noise brought him back to reality. Sido slowly stared at Yuna's teary face as she hurriedly wiped, making her eyes swollen. He smacked his lips, unable to utter a single word. She was scared. She knows it's stupid. But it was the only thing she could think of. Sido, I. Enough. Yuna screamed and turned around, unable to bear this atmosphere any longer. Marching out of the building, Yuna angrily stomped her feet, creating a sharp sound with each step and leaving a trail of tears behind her. Acting out of instinct, Sido grabbed her hand, stopping Yuna in her tracks. Where are you going? Find Yugi. Yuna hissed. Yugi. Hearing his name ruined Sido's mood. Out of anyone, why him? Why does Yuna want to find someone like him? Why Yugi? Sido muttered, gritting his teeth. What? Yuna snarled, why does it have to be him? He questioned. Yuna gazed into his eyes in silence and answered with confusion, Yugi. Danger. Reminding Sido of what Merrick told them a few moments ago. TSK. I'm coming with you. Sido declared brazenly. Fine. Yuna left, leaving Sido alone in the warehouse. He stared at his hand, where the sensation of her fingers lingered. Clenching his fist, he sighed, how vexing. Twenty minutes later. No matter how much she wanted to admit, thanks to Sido's help, they managed to locate Yugi quickly. Arriving at the familiar bridge, Yuna had seen through the show, and they stopped beside the sidewalk, watching Yami Yugi dueling with a rare hunter at the foundations below the bridge. How is this possible? Strings, the rare hunter controlled by Merrick, muttered in disbelief. He dropped to the floor, losing all the ungodly amount of cards in his hands. Behind the rare hunter was a humongous red dragon, to lose even with a god. It's over now, Yami Yugi said, you have lost. Impossible. He mumbled as Yami Yugi picked up Strings' locator card on the floor, he approached the rare hunter and grabbed Slifer the sky dragon from the dual disc. With this, Slifer, the sky dragon is mine. Yami Yugi announced, raising the card into the sky. Watching this nostalgic scene, Yuna felt her face going pale. Digging her nails into her palm, she felt her stress spiking to a worrying degree. With this, Yami Yugi has officially secured Slifer the Sky Dragon, ruining Yuna's plans and leaving her empty-handed. SH asterisk T. 13. Yuna's POV, I stared at Yami Yugi, observing Slifer the Sky Dragon in his hand, and I felt all my intricate plans crumbling into pieces. Without a god card, what should I do now? Should I quit early, 
even if I couldn't fight against an Egyptian god. Kaiba, Sano. What are you doing here? Yami Yugi questioned, jolting me out of my thoughts. Immediately, Kaiba leapt into the air and with a crisp landing, he pointed at Yami Yugi and declared loudly, Duel me, Yugi. That god card will be mine. Now's not the time, Kaiba. Yami Yugi shouted, During my duel, Merrick said my friends were in danger, I have to save them. Humph, so you're running away from my challenge then? Kaiba scoffed, the last time I remember, declining a duel was against the rules, and it's enough to have you forfeit this tournament. Fine by me. Yami Yugi retorted fiercely, unbothered by the threat, my friend's safety was way more important than a battle with you. Ouch. Please apply cold water to the burned area. Kaiba blinked like an idiot and experienced a roller coaster of emotions, evident by the constant shift of expressions. Coo 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 coo, an eerie laughter interrupted the two's arguing. We glanced at the rare hunter lying on the floor. He was staring at us, and a golden symbol of Anubis's eye appeared on his forehead, to think the three banes of my existence are all gathered here. Merrick. Yami Yugi growled with disgust, what have you done to my friends? Don't worry, they are fine, for now, he said as the rare hunter grinned, but if you want to see them again, I suggest you meet me at the Domino City shipyard. Better be quick. The clock is ticking. You. Yami Yugi scowled, you won't get away with this. Chuckling, the rare hunter gazed at Kaiba, I suggest you come along too. Why should I listen to a trash like you? Kaiba crossed his arms arrogantly, unbothered by the threat. Then, do you know where your little brother is right now? Twitch Kaiba and my body trembled simultaneously. Instantly, I took out my phone and dialed Makuba's number. To my horror, I couldn't receive a single response, no matter how many times I called. Damn you! Kaiba roared and lifted the rare hunter by the collar, do you think you can get away with this? However, there was no response as the rare hunter's head rolled backwards. Kaiba clicked his tongue and released the rare hunter, and the thug collapsed onto the floor in a comatose state. Nodding at each other, Yami Yugi, Kaiba and I wasted no time as we sprinted towards the direction of the shipyard, hoping to rescue the people we cared about. Ten minutes. That's how long we've been running for. However, with so much tension, that duration felt like years. Arriving at the shipyard, we entered through the unlocked metal gate. The atmosphere was quiet as a church mouse, and all of us were extremely anxious, worrying about the fate of Merrick's captives. When we ventured deeper, a figure sprang out of hiding, stepping before us, another rare hunter. Yami Yugi muttered, possibly to Yugi, resting in his body. Sido Kaiba, the rare hunter smiled, I've been awaiting you. Damn it, where is my friends? Yami Yugi demanded, tell me now. It's not my business to reveal anything to you. The rare hunter glimpsed at the pharaoh with repulse, Master Merrick told me that you will find out soon enough if you go a little further. Bastard. Kaiba cursed and breathed deeply, go ahead, I will deal with this buffoon. We nodded and ran past the rare hunter. I could hear the voices of Kaiba and the enemy behind me as they began to duel. Despite the hiccup earlier, I couldn't help but worry in this intense situation. Eventually, Yami Yugi and I arrived at a crossroads leading into two separate areas, where should we go? He asked. Suddenly, a speaker attached to the top of a wooden pole came to life, and Merrick's voice began reverberating from the device, Pharaoh, I recommend you to go left, and as for you, Duel King, your destination awaits you at the right. With no choice, Yami Yugi and I split up. I sprinted continuously for five more minutes, finally stopping at a cement dock stretching around 300 meters long. On the left of the dock was a massive cargo ship that generated a massive shadow, on the right stood a short figure. I nervously approached the figure as they pulled down their purple hood, M.O. Makuba. I bit my lips as the person dressed in the rare hunter uniform was none other than Makba himself. Welcome, Duel King. Merrick's voice resonated from a speaker on the side, before I explain, please take a look at their ankles, he instructed, and I immediately glimpsed at Makuba's leg. There, I noticed a long, heavy chain with shackles binding Makuba's shins together, and behind him, the chain was tied to a heavy anchor. Listen closely, Merrick instructed, the two of you will duel for your lives. Whoever life points ran out first will be dragged to the bottom of the ocean. Before you can say anything. 
Merrick's voice turned extremely cold, I believe it's in your best interest if you comply. Grasping what he's hinting at, I reluctantly approached a set of chains he provided, and with a click, I locked myself to the spare anchor slowly lifted by a crane. Oh, by the way, Merrick said nonchalantly, the child cannot hear you, so just duel and accept your fate. My heart aches when I meet eyes with the brainwashed Makuba. He readied his dual disc to Merrick's command, and I was forced to do the same. What are you waiting for? Let's begin. Makuba, duel. Duel. I muttered weakly. Unisano, 4000 LP, Makuba Kaiba, 4000 LP, I will go first, I said, I'm setting a monster face down and end my turn. My turn. Makuba announced in a dull tone. I summoned Crocodilus and attacked the hidden monster. On the field appeared a humanoid cartoonish crocodile. The monster stood on its hind legs and raised its arms into a boxing position. Crocodilus, 1100 attack, 1200 defense, the crocodile charged and punched my card. The set monster revealed itself as my guardian of Felgrand, and the warrior was blown away from the strike. Ending his turn, I gritted my teeth. I summoned Dragon Knight of Creation and end my turn. I declared. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, never in my life of UGO have I been in a circumstance of not wanting to damage my opponent. But right now, I couldn't even afford to land a single hit. Dragon Knight of Creation is stronger, so I should be safe. However, I soon realized that I was wrong and was forced to face a terrifying situation. Crocodilus, attack. Makuba ordered. To my shock, Crocodilus charged as my Dragon Knight of Creation swung its sword, cutting the monster cleanly in half. Makuba Kaiba, 4000 LP and GT, 3300 LP, W, Y. I stuttered in disbelief. Unisano, do you think I will make it this easy? Merix laughed, there will only be one person amongst the two of you that will survive. No way. It doesn't matter how I play. Makuba will always attack, and either I take damage or he will. After all, the results will always be the same, with one of us dying. I will set a monster and change Dragon Knight of Creation into defense position. Then I end my turn. Makuba drew a card and stared into my eyes. I couldn't tell his thoughts, and his gaze unsettled me. Was there any way for him to wake up? I will use Meteor of Destruction and inflict 1000 damage directly, and then I will summon Alligator Sword and destroy Dragon Knight of Creation. Alligator Sword, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, I looked up and watched as a meteor crashed into where I was standing. Thankfully, being an illusion, I wasn't harmed physically. Unisano, 4000 LP and GT, 3000 LP, afterwards, a monster resembling a fantasy lizard man was summoned onto the field. Alligator Sword charged and swung its saber at the kneeling knight. Watching the Dragon Knight of Creation fall helplessly. Makuba, please get a hold of yourself. I begged, but to no avail. I will set a card and end my turn, Makuba murmured, ignoring my plea. No matter what I do, Makuba will either defeat himself by throwing his monsters carelessly at my own, or I will lose as he attacks me relentlessly. Was there any way to wake him up? I will first use graceful charity to draw three cards while discarding two from my hand. Then, I set two cards face down and end my turn. Makuba, I tribute my alligator's sword to summon Sword Stalker. As alligator's sword vanished, a tall purple demon with horns and wings replaced its original position. In the demon's hand was a massive scimitar as tall as me, and the monster lifted the weapon effortlessly. Sword Stalker, 2000 attack, 1600 defense, Sword Stalker, attack, Makuba ordered and the demon rushed towards me as a black dragon with flaming breath appeared to my defense. Komori Dragon, 1500 attack, 1200 defense, I activate my trap card, Wabaku, and my monsters won't be destroyed this turn, nor will I take any damage. Beside Komori Dragon appeared a priest dressed in blue robes. Raising her arms, she generated a force field that deflected Sword Stalker's attack, driving the demon away. My turn ends here, Makuba mumbled, unbothered. Clicking my teeth, I ran my finger through my hair, stalling means that you surrender. Are you forfeiting Unisano? Makuba said without a void of emotions. Big sister, I growled, and the child tilted his head, call me like you always do. Makuba nodded with a trace of confusion, are you forfeiting, 
big sis. Suddenly, Makoba clutched his head in pain, and his pupils trembled erratically. Out of instinct, I almost ran towards him. However, with my leg restricted to the anchor, I was forced to watch Makoba's suffering. He peeked at me through his fingers, and I finally felt a glimmer of hope. In that brief moment, life returned to his eyes, and I could see his desperate struggle to fight Merrick's brainwashing. Makoba. I yelled, please keep fighting. Ark. Makoba groaned in response. Unfortunately, much to my dismay, Merrick seemed to have regained control as his emotionless personality returned, let's continue, you. Big sister. I grimaced, it was not enough. I needed to do something to wake him up completely. Grimacing, I desperately tried to think of a solution. I will end my turn. I summon Luster Dragon in attack position. Makuba declared without hesitation, now, attack Komori Dragon. A medium-sized dragon covered in sapphire crystal-like scales dived down from the sky. The dragon landed and snarled like a beast and scratched its body with its claws. Luster Dragon, 1900 attack, 1600 defense, Luster Dragon leapt across the dock and lashed out with its claws. Komori Dragon roared and tried to defend, but it was too weak and was defeated. Now, Sword Stalker, attack. The demon rushes towards me, thrusting its sword. I stumbled as the virtual blade stabbed into my chest. I patted my body and sighed as the realism of these projections startled me. Unisano, 3000 LP and GT, 1000 LP, you disappoint me, Unisano. Merrick mocked, come on. Where is it? Where is your divine dragon? Divine dragon. Merrick's words repeated in my head as if urging me to retrieve it. Damn it, whatever it was, as long I can help Makuba, it's fine by me. I will summon Starleach Seyfert. I shouted, summoning a small dragon made from levitating obsidian plates. Starleach Seyfert, 1800 attack, zero defense, after summoning Starleach Seyfert, I will use its effect to discard two Keeper of the Shrine from my hand. Then I can add a dragon monster equal to the total level of the monsters I use Starleach Seyfert's effect, as the dual disc automatically searched through my deck before presenting the card I wanted on the top. I glanced at Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand as Merrick's words became louder and louder in my head. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Divine Dragon. Felgrand. A sudden realization struck me, and my eyes widened, this might work. However, my expression instantly dimmed, but would it? Doubt sprouts from my heart as my resolve wavered. However, I hurriedly slapped myself in frustration, what was I thinking? Do I have the audacity to lose hope now? I'm sorry, just wait a little longer, I will bring you back. Third POV, everything was dark, Makuba thought as he wandered mindlessly. He can't remember how he got here or why he was here. However, despite being in this ominous area, Makuba doesn't feel like leaving. It was as if a paranormal force convinced him that staying was better. Makuba. Suddenly, he heard a familiar voice calling out to him. Makuba turned around, and there was a white light. Makuba subconsciously touched the light, and it expanded into a glass plane as a live video began to play. It was him, but he's dueling. Yuna. Makuba, Yuna shouted again, and Makuba's body trembled, please keep fighting. He was confused, and Makuba couldn't understand what she meant. But to his shock, the Makuba on the screen responded in a dull tone as the sword stalker on his field charged and plunged its sword into his big sister's chest. Good, a scary voice echoed in this empty void, kill her, and the dual king will no longer be a problem. Kill big sister. Makuba muttered in disbelief. He doesn't want that. First of all, how will he kill her in the first place? His eyes wandered to the chains attached to her leg, and he watched as Yuna's life points dropped and the crane holding an anchor began to move, dragging the chains into the water. No. Makuba yelled in panic and punched against the screen, stop. However, his body outside did not listen and continued to duel. With each battle, both of them inch closer and closer to death. To Makuba, it was a horrifying show, every time Yuna summoned a monster, Makuba would throw his creatures at her, regardless of their strength. If Yuna summons a strong monster, Makuba will summon a weaker one and attack, forcing Yuna to switch, and Makuba can take this chance to damage her. 
As he watched their anchors grazing against the sea surface, this back and forth terrified him. Unisano, 400 LP, Makuba Kaiba, 600 LP, eventually, their life points were worryingly low, and Makuba panted tiredly. No matter how hard he screamed and punched against the glass, it wouldn't break. Beforehand, when Makuba heard Yuna's urging to call her big sister, he felt a sense of strength, but that had long disappeared. Big sister, I'm too weak. Makuba muttered, depressed and fell to his knees, I can't do it by myself. Makuba. His big sister shouted as he weakly glanced up, do you remember the card I gifted to you four days ago? Four days ago. He said to himself. When you received it, you were so happy, and we both laughed when you told me that Kaiba acted like a jealous child. Of course, I remembered. Big Brother's face was really funny that time. Back then, I said the reason I gave you that card was merely proof of our relationship, but it's more than that. She yelled. It was? You were always supporting me, helping me without a second thought. Yuna released her feelings, you were always bright and cheerful, and your bravery motivates me to work hard. Even if we're not related, I'm glad to call you my brother. Makuba's eyes widened, and he touched his chest, where his heart beat erratically. Standing up, Makuba clenched his fist, sister is fighting so hard, I should as well. Asterisk bam he punched against the glass with all his strength. His knuckles hurt, but Makuba didn't give up, and cracks finally began forming. With the thirtieth punch, his arm went through, generating the sound of glass shattering. Grotum his teeth, he tried to move his arm, which felt extremely cumbersome and looking at the screen, his right hand was gradually following his motion. That card. Yuna shouted, please show it to me. Glancing at his hand, Makuba saw the card his big sister was referring to. However, no matter what, he couldn't get his fingers to move. Not sure what it is. Yuna asked, then I will jog up your memories a bit. I will use Return of the Dragon Lords and Summon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, a bright burst of light glistened on the water as an intimidating golden dragon appeared out of nowhere. The dragon glared at Makuba, unleashing a devastating roar that made him squint. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, then I will banish your sword stalker in your graveyard, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand will gain 600 attacks and defense. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3400 attack, 2800 and GT, 3400 defense, come on, Makuba. Yuna urged, wasn't this big enough of a hint? I'm trying, he shouted, and he felt the weight on his arm became lighter. Whoosh suddenly, Makuba collapsed as his right hand was pressed to the floor, and Merrick's restraint strengthened. Watching himself on the screen, he drew a spell card, and Makuba's face turned pale. Quickly, use the Hinotama spell card and kill her once and for all. Following his instruction, his brainwashed body reached for the spell card. I won't let you, Makuba screamed. Enduring the intense pressure, Makuba stood up with wobbling feet and moved his arm. The hand moving to Hinotama changed trajectory towards a card beside it. Makuba watched as his hand slowly reached for the spell, and he frantically shouted with all he could. To Makuba's relief, his hand stopped, and he heard Merrick's angered tone. No, what are you doing? Merrick roared. Big sister, you want me to respond, right? Makuba smiled wryly, then I will answer. With everything he got, Makuba pushed against the light, and cracks formed. Come on, meanwhile, Yuna watched Makuba raise a card into the air, I will. Play. Hino. I will tribute my two monsters and summon Felgrand Dragon, the two monsters Makuba controlled disappeared as Makuba called upon a dragon similar to Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. With a smaller and less intimidating presence, Felgrand Dragon roared, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand snarled in response. Felgrand Dragon, 2800 attack. 2800 defense, see Makuba. Yuna yelled with a smile, you can overcome Merrick, I believe in you. Let's send to me you imprudent brat. Merrick bellowed, stop with your act and use the spell card and end her, in Makuba's body, Makuba clutched his head, no I will not harm big sister, he was slowly winning against Merrick's control. However, he knew it wasn't enough, and his time ran out. If he doesn't do anything, Merrick will regain his body. Glancing at his Felgrand Dragon, determination burned in his eyes. Felgrand Dragon, attack. Makuba smiled, 
if Big Sister won't defeat me, I will do it myself. Outside, Yuna shrieked in shock and disbelief that Makuba wished to sacrifice himself, Makuba, stop what are you doing, Felgrand Dragon threw itself into Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, and the two dragons attacked each other, scratches, bites and flaming breath, both monsters utilized any weaponry in their possession. However, being the superior version, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand won. Makuba Kaiba, 400 LP and GT, 0 LP, TSK how useless. Merrick spat, looks like you can't save him after all. With a snapping sound, Makuba found himself back in the real world. Confused, his eyes darted around before settling on the horrified Yuna. Ha! Huh. Oh, big sister, I'm back. I'm. Suddenly, his body lurched forward as the anchor dropped into the water. Yuna screamed as the shackle binding her was freed, and she sprinted towards the edge. Reaching her hand, she tried to grab him, but their fingers touched, and he plunged into the sea. Sano. Yuna's head swung around as she heard Sido shouting from behind. He threw a tiny shiny object in the air, and Yuna instantly caught the item. Unfurling her head, she saw a key and without hesitation, she followed Makuba below the waves. Using the chains as a guide, she pulled herself into the depths and gradually reached the bottom of the ocean. There. Yuna spotted Makuba holding his breath while he desperately tugged against the lock. Swimming towards him, Yuna hurriedly unlocked the shackles binding his legs as they swam back to the surface. Suddenly, a strong current sent Yuna spiraling through the water. Her back hit the seafloor, knocking the air out of her lungs, and she instinctively ingested a mouthful of water. Yuna's body gagged, and more water entered her throat. Her vision darkened, and she last witnessed Makuba swimming away, unaware of the horrible event behind him. Above, Sita watched with bated breath, his heart praying for his brother's safety. After successfully defeating the rare hunter in his way, he managed to secure two keys. Just in time, the remainder of Yugi's friends, Tristan, Duke and Joey's sister Serenity, arrived on the scene, and he could pass one of the keys to them. Arriving at where his brother was, he witnessed Makuba being pulled underwater. He hurled the key to Yuna, and she dived into the sea to rescue his brother. That all happened one minute ago, but to Sido, it felt longer than that, Puha, suddenly, Makuba's head burst through the water, and Sido felt a huge weight lifted off his chest. However, Makuba's panicking expression didn't put his mind fully at ease. Makuba frantically looked around, his face contorted in fear, Big sister. Big sister. Calm down, Makuba, tell me what's wrong. Sido frowned. Sido, Big sister is still down there. He yelled. The young president's eyes widened in surprise. His body stood still, unsure what to do, but he was brought back to reality under Makuba's urging, please save her. Makuba's cry triggered Sido to act, and he moved instinctually. Taking off his coat, he fearlessly plummeted into the water. With his athletic arms, Sido swam through the murky waters, reaching the depth at a fast speed. There, he spotted Yuna floating, unconscious. Gritting his teeth, Sido grabbed her by the waist and pulled her to the surface. Emerging from the surface, Sido placed Yuna's body on the ground. Yugi and his friends appeared as T and Serenity moved to resuscitate her. Palpable fear hung in the air as the surroundings radiated nothing but anxiety. Cough cough after what felt like years, Yuna vomited a mouthful of water and wheezed for air. Yuna slowly opened her eyes, and everyone finally let go of the breath they had been holding. Big sister. Makuba cried. Yuna weakly sat up, trying to remember what happened. However, her body was suddenly lifted into the air before she could reflect. In shock, Yuna was picked up as her leg was loosely on the side and her head leaning against something hard. Wah! Yuna whimpered. We will be leaving now, Sido said with Yuna in his arms, Makuba, let's go. Ha ha, yes. Makuba said with fluster as a helicopter Sido called earlier landed before them. Getting on the helicopter, Sido glanced at Yugi, just wait, Slifer, the sky dragon will be mine. The vehicle took flight as the figures on the ground became more distant, and all this time, Yuna remained in Sido's arms, too embarrassed to utter a single sound. Yuna's POV, guess who's back in the hospital again? Of course, it's yours truly. With the first case of vomiting blood and the second time for almost drowning to death, 
I'm racking up quite a record. Thankfully, my injuries were not as severe this time, and I just needed to rest. Fighting against Umbra and Loomis and then rescuing Makuba, today has been very hectic, and it has taken a lot of toll on my stamina. Knock knock with the sound of knocking, the door to my room opened. Unsurprisingly, the two Kaiba brothers arrived. Eagerly, Makuba ran to the side of my bed and smiled with sweetness. Big sister. He said with a cheery tone, and I felt my heart melt. Patting his head, I glanced at Kaiba, who was snorting in discontent. When he noticed my stare, he sighed and reached into his coat. With a flick of his wrist, he tossed three locator cards. Why? I muttered in confusion when I realized that these locator cards weren't mine. Two of those were from the rare hunters we dealt with, and the last one was from the fool in the shipyard who thinks he can stand a chance against me. Then. I held out two of the locator cards, it's. Yours. Since it was a tag team duel, Kaiba and I should each receive a locator card, respectively. But Kaiba was also the one who defeated the rare hunter blocking the path, and by following the rules, I must give it back to him. I held back a sigh, and if I requested an early discharge, I think I could get two more locator cards in time. However, to my surprise, Kaiba refused to take the cards, I already have more than enough, so it's useless in my hand. But. I frowned and took back one of the cards, yours. Through Kaiba's words, I still felt reluctant and could only take one through the justification that I take both locator cards from the tag team duel. It will only gather dust with me. Kaiba said in a slightly louder voice, don't think you can avoid the qualifiers, we will duel, and I will defeat you. With his relentless coaxing, I had no choice but to agree and placed the three locator cards on the bedside table. Then I watched Kaiba approaching the desk and placing my dual disc and deck. With the deck protection system I've implemented inside the dual disc, your cards were left unharmed, and the damage to your dual disc was repaired. My eyes widened in shock. I had completely forgotten about my deck. I hurriedly grabbed the stack of cards and frantically flipped through all of them. When I was sure that not even a drop of water had stained my prized possessions, I let out the breath I was holding. When I dived into the waters, I never had the time to store my deck in my system. So, the fear of knowing they may be destroyed overwhelmed me. Before I realized, tears of relief trickled down my face. In the world of Yu-Gi-Oh, a dual monster card was more than just a card. Instead of a piece of printed cardboard, they were a tool to channel spirits to fight for you, so carelessly destroying them, especially the powerful ones that actually have spirits residing in them, was unforgivable. This was particularly crucial for me as my sentiment towards Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand can't be described between a duelist and their card. It was a dragon that decided to choose me as its master and the one that was keeping my soul alive. Wiping my tears, I gazed at Kaiba gratefully, thank. You. So much. Hearing my heartfelt gratitude, Kaiba's body stiffened. Regaining his composure, he scoffed and avoided my gaze, it was nothing. What a massive tsundra, I thought with a smile. Finishing his objective, Kaiba moved to the door, Makuba, let's go. He said and left. Waving goodbye to Makuba, I was once again left alone in the hospital room. Reaching into my jacket hanging by the side, I grabbed the rest of my locator cards. Remembering the instructions, I stacked all six of the locator cards together. Immediately, the LED light on the corner of the card came to life, and a map began to form. It wasn't long before the device had finished, and I instantly recognized the location. Domino City Airport, that's where I must go. However, I set the locator cards down. Can I even win? Kaiba, Yugi and Merrick each possess an Egyptian god, but I don't even have a card to fight against it. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, maybe? But I needed quick attack, or its ability to gain attacks on the turn it was summoned would be useless. As I was lost in despair, a blue virtual screen appeared in the corner of my vision. Task number 6, make it to the final of the battle city. Locator card, 6 out of 6, reward, 1000 x duelists defeated, status, complete. Oh yeah, I still have this task. As I was going to click away, another panel overlapped the first, and I was surprised. Congrats, you have discovered a hidden bonus. Defeat rare hunters, 2 out of 1, reward, 2,500 credits, to think there were hidden bonuses. 
Using my hands, I dragged these notifications to the corner and expanded the main menu, name, Unisano, title, King of Games slash Dual King, credits, 12,100, task, inventory, shop, with so many credits, my pupil sparkled, and I instinctively pressed the shop button. An array of cards appeared before my eyes. I scrolled through the cards haphazardly, buying the useful ones, however, none could help me defeat a god. Just wondering, if I search for the name of a god, it won't appear, right? My body stiffened with anticipation as I nervously typed the name of the Egyptian gods. To my absolute disbelief, as I pressed the search button, instantly, the list of cards was shortened to three different cards. What the hell, it's really here. I tapped on Slifer the Sky Dragon, and I felt my heart pounding with adrenaline. However, as if there was a bucket of cold water poured on top of my head, my mood was dampened. Locked, card unavailable, a bright red text manifested before me in an intimidating manner. Swiping the notice aside, I grumbled with annoyance. Fine, Slifer, the Sky Dragon may not be available, so how about Obelisk the Tormentor? Locked, card unavailable, don't worry, who wants Obelisk anyway? Everyone knows the strongest Egyptian god was none other than the Winged Dragon of R.A. Locked, card unavailable, ahem. Looks like the Egyptian gods were out of the window. Wait, that must mean that it already existed in this world, right? So, how about a god that no one possesses? Cook, 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 fine, then let's try the Egyptian gods' counterparts, the wicked gods, locked, card unavailable, locked, card unavailable, locked, card unavailable, that's alright, that's alright if you can't pick the exact replica and its counterpart. How about a knockoff that's just as powerful? That's right, I'm talking about the sacred beasts. Locked, card unavailable, locked, card unavailable, locked, card unavailable, N, Norse gods. Stop trying, alright. Dejected, I sank into my pillows. What am I expecting? Of course, it's not. As simple as that. What am I going to do now? As I covered my head and let out a heavy sigh, I noticed something between the gap of my fingers. Sitting up, I gazed at a card that appeared out of nowhere. I was sure that I tried the entire list, so why was this card here? Out of curiosity, I tapped the card and was brought into its details. However, it was a decision that I soon came to regret. Immediately, a black corrosive gunk began to spread on the corner of the screen, and the system started to glitch, creating a horrible grating noise. Unintelligible words filled the screen as the substance began to spread on all parts of the system, destroying it. Error, error, presence of, at hashtag, dollar, y and, asterisk. Detected, removing all essence of, at hashtag, dollar, y and, asterisk. Restarting system, restarting progress, 10%, restarting progress, 46%, restarting progress, 76%, restarting cancelled, action override by overseer, an array of rectangular blue panels appeared one by one, so much so that it flooded my vision. Hundreds of questions filled my head, and the questions were increasing by the second, but none of them were answered. Yet, there's one thing I'm sure of. I have encountered something I should never have accessed. The substance has now covered the entire screen, but only the bright green button lay untouched, enticing me to interact with it. Purchase card. Cost. I froze at the cost, why is it just question marks? Shouldn't it be a number? However, I had no time to think as the liquid left the screen and was actually dripping onto my body. Wincing in pain at the acidic sensation of my skin, I frantically wiped the residue away. So I really have no choice, huh? I muttered, fine, if you want me to press it so badly, I will. Bye, I shouted and pressed against the button with all my might. Instantly, the rectangular screen transformed into a black hole, and I was sucked in. Dragged into an unknown place, my back hit the floor. Opening my eyes, I found myself in complete darkness. Huff suddenly, a heavy breathing sound echoed behind me, and I shivered. Anxiously, I turned around and was face to face with a massive eye. My entire body froze in fear as the golden pupil blinked. It was a monster covered in shadows, except for its eyes, I couldn't discern any other features. The monster's head moved, and I followed along with my gaze. What is a human doing in my domain? A deep, chilling voice growled curiously. Before I could react, the monster reached out with its claws. 
I felt a sharp pain when its nails dug into my flesh, and I was lifted into the air. Don't make me repeat myself human. What is a mortal doing here? The monster snapped. Terrified, I bit my lips. Knowing that the longer I hesitate, the thinner the beast's patience grew, and sooner or later, I will be killed. Don't. No. I see. The creature muttered in contemplation, then begone. Instantly, the monster dropped me back to the ground. It opened its jaw, and I witnessed an intense light glowing from its throat. Ah. I'm going to die. I thought, and the monster fired a blinding beam in my direction. However, before the attack reached, a figure blocked the laser with its wings. Bulmai covered my ears as the resounding explosion struck against the figure's flesh. Quivering, I glimpsed above me and gazed at Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. The dragon nudged its head against my face, and I smiled with relief that I was able to survive. Unfurling its wings, we glared at the giant monster that tried to kill me. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand roared, and its radiating scales blew the darkness away. It's you. The monster mumbled in surprise, what are you doing in my domain? However, before it could receive an answer, a second dragon darted through the darkness, spewing purple flames from its mouth. Annoying. The monster mumbled and swatted the attacker like a fly. The dragon was knocked to the ground and crashed beside us. Shaking its head, the monster hissed, and I ran towards the dragon with concern, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Are you hurt? Starving Venom Fusion Dragon shook its head and slapped its tail against the ground, eager to keep fighting. Why are you protecting this human? The monster asked. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Starving Venom Fusion Dragon roared simultaneously, arguing with the enormous being. Interesting. Then show me how deep your resolve is. With a speed unbefitting its size, the monster swung its arms. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand carried me into the air, and the area where we were previously standing was utterly destroyed. Riding on Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's back, I watched as Starving Venom Fusion Dragon engaged in a fierce battle, darting around the monster's massive frame and attacking through the gaps of its dense scales. Aim for its eyes, I whispered, and Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand grunted in confirmation. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand dived towards the creature's face while Starving Venom Fusion Dragon tried to gain its attention. Noticing us in the corner of its vision, the monster ignored Starving Venom Fusion Dragon entirely and snapped at us with its jaw. Twisting its body in midair, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand narrowly dodged through the space between the beast's teeth. Now Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. I shouted. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand howled and swung its claws, leaving a trail of blood spraying out of the monster's eye. We heard a thunderous screech, and the creature howled in agony. Quick, it's weakened, let's finish this in one move. Together, the two dragons gathered in the center. They puffed up their chest, gathering all the energy into their mouth. In unison, my dragons unleashed their breath. B.O.M. the entire space rumbled as one side where our opponent stood was littered with explosions. Our visions were blocked by smoke, and I couldn't spot the monster's figure. Suddenly, a rageful roar burst my eardrums, congratulations, now you have my full attention. It was like a switch had been turned on, and simultaneously, the dragons were smashed into the ground, their back being pressed by an invisible force. I was thrown into the air and landed a few meters away from them. Gritting my teeth, I glared at our opponent. Its injuries that we have dealt with earlier have been completely healed, not even a single scar remains. What's worse, the pressure I was feeling earlier intensified, and I found myself having trouble breathing. Peering into my face, it snarled, I don't understand how you made these two obey you, but it doesn't matter, now die. The monster raised its arms, and I closed my eyes out of fear. However, the pain of getting my bones crushed never arrived, and I hesitantly opened my eyes. Just a few inches away from my face was its sharp claws. Sniff sniff the monster sniffed with its nostril and bared its fangs, why do you have her scent? What is your name, human? It asked. Why, Yuna? I murmured, trying my best not to anger the already pissed off dragon. Yuna. The creature hummed, so it's you. You're the one she's was talking about. Confused, I couldn't understand a single word as the monster chuckled to itself, you must have come to seek my power, correct? No. Rather, she dragged you into this. 
recalling one of the messages from the system was having the control overridden. I subconsciously nodded. The monster laughed, how fun. So you wanted to defeat my children? Simply referring to the Egyptian gods as their children made my jaw drop. Just who the hell am I speaking to very well, I will give it to you. Use it well, and be sure not to waste it. It said, after all, I will only give you one opportunity. At the tip of its finger was a small orb. It gently guided the orb, and I felt the essence being absorbed by my body. I felt a comfortable feeling, and I hurriedly checked my physique to ensure nothing had changed. The creature then glanced at the two dragon spirits and released their constraints. Instantly, they sprang to their feet and rushed to my side. Humph. A tenacious bunch. The monster remarked. Who? Are you? I asked when I noticed the atmosphere had become calmer. The monster didn't respond and smiled, revealing rows of sharp teeth, you will find out when you wake up. Don't disappoint me, I will be watching you. With a loud popping sound, I found myself back in the hospital room. I blinked in disbelief as everything that happened felt like a dream. Suddenly, I felt something in my hand. Opening my palm was a single card. What is this? I muttered in shock. What was this doing here? Reading the card's text, I couldn't believe my eyes at its absurdity, was this really the monster I was battling against? Rubbing my fingers along its surface, my system activated out of nowhere. This time, the corrosive substance has disappeared, returning to its original visuals. Warning, card. Should be used only once. Exceeding the usage limit is not advised. Recalling that thing's warning, I sighed and stored the card away. Just what in the hell did I get myself into? Third POV, hours later. Makuba, is everything ready? Sido asked while impatiently glancing at his watch. Yep, they should arrive any second now, Makuba nodded, tapping away at his tablet, everything is on standby awaiting your orders. Sido hummed with satisfaction. Subconsciously, he glimpsed at the woman standing quietly behind them. With her long black hair and immaculate brown skin, her beautiful appearance was further enhanced with the golden headwear with an emerald embedded at the center of Shizu Ishtar, that name already put him in a bad mood. The first interaction Sido had with her was when she gifted him Obelisk, the Tormentor, to convince him to host this tournament. Other than that, he knew nothing about her, and Sido thought she was highly mysterious. You still haven't explained to me why you're here, Sido remarked coldly. My brother's inner darkness has run out of control. Ishizu answered, I will have to stop him myself. So you don't have to involve yourself in my family's matter any longer. Your family's matter. Sido growled and stomped towards her, what Merrick has done was enough of a reason for me to put him six feet under. Killing a tomb keeper is a great offense, Ishizu frowned in displeasure, can you bear the responsibility for your actions? Responsibility. Sido scoffed. He suddenly grasped Ishizu's cheeks, forcing her to stare into his eyes, you should pray that your brother will live with his limbs intact. Letting her go, Ishizu scowled and ignored his glare as she took a step away from the young president. Thinking about the chaos Merrick has caused made Sido's blood boil. What happened with Makuba was truly unforgivable. If Yuna weren't present at that time, he wouldn't know if he could save Makuba alone. Yuna. Sido clicked his tongue, why do things always lead down to her? He couldn't understand, they had been crossing paths a lot of times already, and Sido couldn't simply wrap his head around it. Suddenly, Makuba's face brightened, look, big sister is here. Following Makuba's pointing, Sido turned his head and watched Yuna calmly approaching them. Dressed in blue jeans, a white tank top and a black leather jacket, she walked with a calm stride and stopped before Sido. You've arrived, he said. Why, yes. Yuna smiled awkwardly, others. They're not here yet. Sido said while frowning, I hope I won't be disappointed. Not knowing how to continue the conversation, Yuna let out a weird cough. Thankfully, Makuba jumped in and managed to keep the entire discussion alive. Not sure how long she had waited, Yuna finally spotted a group of people sprinting towards them. Took you long enough. Sido grunted as Yugi and his friends collapsed in exhaustion. After the Merrick incident, Yugi's group spent the rest of the afternoon desperately trying to collect the remaining locator cards. Encountering Might along the way, they dashed to Domino City Airport, which was all the way across the city. 
We're. We're here. Yugi said while gasping for breath. Pathetic. Sito muttered, and Yugi smiled helplessly, I wasted enough time waiting, Makuba, we will end the qualifiers here. Stop anyone. Ah, did we make it in time? Suddenly, interrupting Sito, two young men arrived on the scene. One had white hair and brown eyes and was dressed in a blue open shirt over a light blue and white horizontally striped t-shirt. The second had dark skin, white gold hair and purple eyes, he wore a sleeveless purple hoodie, golden necklace, black pants and shoes. Bakura, what are you doing here? Joey asked in surprise. Me? Bakura laughed, well, I'm here for the qualifiers. He held out his arm, showing everyone the dual disc on his wrist, I also have six locator cards as well, so isn't this enough? Sido glared at Bakura silently and glimpsed at the young man beside him, then is he a duelist as well or another stowaway? Oh, he's a friend I met recently, Bakura introduced, his name is Namu, and he's also a duelist like us. Stepping forward, Namu smiled, hello, everyone, it's nice to meet all of you. Yugi and his friends naturally warmed up to Namu's friendliness, and thanks to Bakura's introduction, they began to engage with him. However, only Yuna knows what's really going on. Big sister, what's wrong? Makuba asked as she blocked him with her arm. Avoid. Him. She muttered in a solemn voice. Yuna's seriousness tunned Makuba as he noticed the hand holding him tightened, if big sister said so, okay. Relieved, Yuna visibly relaxed. We have enough people, Sido muttered observantly, let's begin the. I apologize for intruding, but I would appreciate it if you wait just a bit longer. A deep voice echoed. TSK, what now? Sido snarled in annoyance for being interrupted the second time. Everyone simultaneously turned their heads to the sound of leather shoes striking sharply against the floor. There, they saw a tall man dressed in purple robes with a cape, golden earrings, green eyes, bald head except for the strand of black ponytail on the back of his head. However, the most prominent feature of his appearance was the tattoos of hieroglyphics on the half of his face. Without hesitation, the man approached Yuna, we meet again, Miss Sano. Yuna stared at him uncomfortably, and Sido suddenly stepped between them, before you start snooping around the place, how about telling us who you are? The man calmly observed everyone's tense expressions, very well. Listen closely. My name is Merik Ishtar, the one that will unite all three Egyptian god cards under my control. It was like time had stopped. Shock, disbelief and finally, anger appeared on everyone's faces. Sido's arms sliced through the air like the deadly strikes of a serpent, his fingers clenched around Merik's collar, so it was you. You really have the nerves to show yourself now. His chest heaved with rage as he raised his fist, ready to give Merik the worst beating of his life. Sido had never felt this much anger before, and this was the first time that he wanted someone dead. Before he could break Merrick's nose, Yuna grabbed his shoulder. Glaring at her, Sido hissed, Why are you stopping me? Let go, Kaiba. Yuna muttered worriedly, Don't. Looking further ahead, Sido finally noticed Makuba, who was terrified at whatever was about to happen. Realizing that he was going to commit violence right in front of his little brother's eyes, he wavered. Gritting his teeth, Sido lowered his fist and shoved Merrick aside. Patting his wrinkled robes, Merrick retorted in a calm tone, I always thought the renowned Sido Kaiba would be a bit less barbaric than this. What are you saying? Sido scowled. Merrick smirked and revealed his dual disc, let us settle this as we always do. Unless you want to break your own rules. Yuna glimpsed at Sido, and she could hear the sound of his teeth grinding against each other. Not wanting to damage his pride, Sido turned around and pressed a button on his phone. A minute later, a loud engine sound roared in the wind, and Yuna spotted a massive airship flying through the air. With a resounding boom, the ship landed at the entrance, opening and generating a whistling noise. Stepping onto the ramp, Sido suddenly stopped and glanced at the group of people, that reminds me, seems like there's an odd number of duelists. Makuba, Sano and you. Sido spat the last part while pointing at a shizu, let's go, the rest of you all, go and work something out. I don't care how you do it, but one of you won't be advancing. Hey, hold on, how come Sanosan and that lady gets to go with you? Joey complained, speaking off, aren't you participating too, so why do you have a free pass? 
because it's my tournament, and these two were the only ones professional enough actually to make it to the qualifiers on time, Sido said while trying to hold in his anger. Without waiting for a reply, Sido entered the airship. Glancing at Yugi apologetically, Yuna could do nothing but smile. Don't worry about us, Sanosan. We will work something out. He said reassuringly. Urged by Yugi, Yuna nodded as she quickly chased after Sido into the airship. Yuna's POV, an hour later. So you're telling me that Merrick's real name is Odeon, and the person called Namu was the real Merrick in disguise? Kaiba repeated to make sure he got everything. I nodded with vigor as he stared at me in doubt, then how did you obtain this information? Overheard. From Duel. I lied, and Kaiba nodded, seemingly convinced. He knew that I had a battle with Odeon on the first night, so he was able to construct a fake plot that sounded logical in his mind. It doesn't matter, Kaiba eventually snorted and stared at the windows, no matter who's the leader, they will all be destroyed. What a Kaiba thing to say. I thought and was going to leave. However, before I took one step, Kaiba suddenly grabbed onto my wrist and lifted my arm into the air. There, the sleeves of my jacket fell, revealing the bandages wrapped around my limb. What happened? He questioned with a scrutinizing glare. Crap, I have completely forgotten about those. It was back in the hospital that I discovered the wounds on my body, and it gave the doctors quite a scare. The source of these injuries was from my battle against the god, and what I thought was only my consciousness being dragged into its realm turned out my physical body was brought along as well. So all of its sharp scratch marks and the bruises of the tumble were evident for the world to see. Noticing that Kaiba was still demanding an answer, I said the first excuse I could think of. Fell. Off the bed. Kaiba, bullsh asterisk t it's. True. I insisted, and he eventually let go. Fine, he spat reluctantly, have it your way. Kaiba seemed really irked. Was my lying disturbed him that much? Not wanting to bother him any further, I hurriedly sneaked away and entered the room personally assigned to me. Collapsing onto the bed, I groaned in comfort. I could feel the airship slowly taking off from the ground, and I was surprised by how little shaking there was. That's what a multi-billionaire company can do for you. Opening my system, I planned to buy a few more cards before the end of the tournament. Expecting a large amount of unused credit waiting for, what appeared was. Credits, zero, huh, where did all my credits go? I yelled. My fatigue instantly vanished. Standing up, I racked my brain, thinking about where my credits could have gone. Suddenly, my eyes lit up as realization dawned upon me. So it was you, I shouted at the card in my hand, the heck are you hiding it for? Instead of saying question marks, say all of my hard-earned income and potentially my life into the mix. Raising my hand, I wanted to toss the card to the ground. However, when I remembered who it was that was behind this card, I sighed and stored it away. Suddenly, I heard knocking on the door, and Makuba's voice rang from the other side. Big sister, we will begin our takeoff. Big brother said that everyone should gather at the top of the airship in about ten minutes. Makuba, I called out, Yugi's friend. Who left? Ah, uh, Makuba instantly understood, they decided to host a small tournament, and my valentine has been eliminated. My ha. Huh. Typically, I would have felt bad for her, but since we barely interacted with each other, that feeling lasted only for a moment. Makuba soon left to help with Kaiba, and I was once again alone. Deciding to take a whiff of fresh air, I exited my room and strolled through the empty hallways. Leaving my room, I walked through the empty hallways and glanced out the window on the side. Exploring through the massive airship, I spotted a young girl with brown hair peeking at something around the corner. That's Joey's sister. Recalling that she and T were the ones who brought me back from drowning, my attitude towards her was naturally good. Sensing my presence, she turned her head, and her pupils lit up. With an eagerness I've never seen before, she crossed the distance in a flash and grabbed me by surprise. Hello. She chirped, I've always wanted to meet you. M, me. I uttered. Unha, she nodded, how could I not want to meet my savior? I heard from Joey that you were the one who paid for my eye surgery, she said with a voice full of emotions, to think there's someone so kind. Ah. She yelled, how rude of me. I haven't even introduced myself yet, I'm Serenity Wheeler. 
If I have to describe Makuba as a puppy, then Serenity felt like a hyperactive gerbil that was begging for attention. I pointed at the corner, wondering why someone like her was alone. Understanding my intentions, Serenity dragged me around the corner and told me to look. There, I saw Namu leaning against a wall, seemingly absorbed in his world. No matter how friendly he is, I couldn't help but be suspicious. Serenity scrutinized, you must feel the same. Impressed with Serenity's detective observations, I stayed with her and watched. Suddenly, at the end of the hallway, Ishizu appeared. She calmly stopped beside Namu, and they exchanged a couple of unintelligible words. Whatever their conversation was, Ishizu seemed slightly shaken, and she quietly left, going back the way she came. Opening his eyes, Namu glanced our way. Eep. He's coming towards us. In a panic, Serenity hugged me against the wall. Her face buried into my chest, like an ostrich sticking its head into the ground in danger. What were you doing? I screamed in my head, trying to pry Serenity off of my body. However, all my efforts only made her dig deeper, and I was beginning to hear her making some questionable noises. Namu appeared around the corner and stared at us strangely. Please, this wasn't what you were thinking. Covering my blushing face, Namu eventually left, leaving us alone. I sighed with relief, and I glanced at Serenity, who had her arms around me. I tapped her shoulder to notify her that she was in the clear, but no matter how much I nudged her, Serenity refused to budge. Mufufufu. So soft. She mumbled and rubbed her face against my chest heat rose to my face, and I hurriedly pushed her away. Serenity pouted and flexed her fingers, but the divine pillow. Serenity. I called, trying to talk some reason into her. My back was pressed against the corner as the perv. No Serenity approached me with a mischievous smile. I tried to block her, but Serenity ducked under my arms and began to tickle me. Unable to resist, I laughed uncontrollably as she continued her ticklish barrage. B.A.M. Suddenly, a fist arrived out of nowhere and struck Serenity's head, I took my eyes off you for a second, and now you're defiling someone. Joey scolded. But we're just playing. Serenity pouted. Oh yeah. It doesn't look like Sinosin is feeling the same. Joey said and glanced at me worriedly. As Serenity released me, I collapsed on the floor and hugged my body, traumatized. It's over. Who would want to marry me now? I apologize on my sister's behalf. Joey bowed apologetically, she recently was able to step outside of the hospital. So she's very excited. That's right. Serenity grabbed my hands, it was all thanks to Yuna's kindness. You're just like my brother. She praised with pride. He said that in the duelist kingdom, he felt bad for besting you in duel monsters and decided to forfeit and let you advance into the finals. Joey suddenly flinched and smiled nervously, hey. Hey Serenity, it's rude to boast. But I'm not boasting. You said that Yuna already knows about it. Stop talking, Joey screamed and covered Serenity's mouth, ahaha, she doesn't know what she's talking about. He laughed awkwardly under my glare. What the hell were you telling her? Anyway, I heard that we will decide our opponents soon, Joey desperately tried to change the subject. Good, then I will really show who's the better duelist. Understanding my evil thoughts, Joey gulped nervously. Serenity pulled me up, and together, we walked to the top of the airship, where the rest of the people were waiting for us. Looks like everyone's here, Kaiba said and opened the door. Immediately, a vast gust of wind blasted our faces. Walking with hesitant steps, we emerged onto the top of the airship with the clouds right below our feet. What appeared before us was a flat field that was slightly elevated from the ground, similar to a boxing ring. Surrounding the dual field was a walkway used for spectators. Arriving at the center of the field, Kaiba pressed a button on a remote, and the airship visibly slowed down. On command, a man with green hair, a black suit and glasses pushing a projector screen. Good evening, the man greeted courteously, my name is Roland, I work as the business advisor of Kaiba Corps and the MC of Battle City. I will also be acting as the referee. If there are any questions regarding this tournament, please refer to me. I stared at Roland's face with fascination. Despite being a side character, 
he's a little famous among the Yu-Gi-Oh community for being so unfazed by the paranormal activities of the dual monster card game, like summoning an actual god to fight your opponents, which was just an ordinary Tuesday for him. Also, something I haven't noticed. Being the business advisor of Kaiba Corp meant that Kaiba trusted him a lot, which was surprising considering that Kaiba's employees betraying him was the norm. Now, please pay attention to this screen. Your first opponent will be randomly chosen. We watched with bated breath as the projector flickered to life. Instantly, two columns of names were formed beside each other. Yuna Sano vs. Bakura Ryu, Yugi Muda vs. Merik Ishtar, Sido Kaiba vs. Ishizu Ishtar, Joey Wheeler vs. Nam Usad, I glanced at Bakura, who was smiling at me. However, that smile transformed into a sly smirk, and I realized that I was no longer facing the Bakura I was familiar with but the evil spirit hiding within his Millennium Ring. Yuna Sano and Bakura Ryu, please prepare yourselves, everyone else, please step out of the dueling ring. Returning to his smile, Yami Bakura walked past me, but he stopped midway, his lips close to my ears, you warned Pegasus about me, didn't you? Not responding, Yami Bakura grinned, it doesn't matter. I will make sure to kill you in this duel. Freezing, I glanced at Yami Bakura, who calmly strolled to his side of the field. Rubbing the chills crept along my arms. Taking a deep breath, I regained my composure. Sorry to disappoint you, Yami Bakura, but I don't plan on dying anytime soon. With a new confidence, I made my way to the opposite end of the field. Activating my dual disc, I glared at Yami Bakura. Are both duelists ready? Roland asked. Yes, Yami Bakura said with a cheerful voice while I nodded in silence. Good, then the first match of the Bale City Finals will now begin. Duel. We shouted in unison. Yuna Sano, 4000 LP, Bakura Ryu, 4000 LP. Third POV, Hey Yugi, who do you think will win? T asked while staring at the two duelists on the field. It should be Sanosan, right? Tristan chimed into the conversation, she did defeat the other you after all. I don't want to choose a side. Let's watch and find out. Yugi said while rubbing the best of his neck. It doesn't matter. Serenity said with confidence, Yuna will win no matter what. Under their warm gazes, Serenity cheered with passion. Sensing something strange, Yugi glanced behind him and noticed his best friend, Joey, patting his chest. Is there something wrong? Yugi asked. No, it's just I'm relieved. Joey muttered, I think I managed to avoid getting killed. Yugi. Gesturing for his friend to come closer, Joey began to whisper what he said about Yuna earlier. Gradually, as the story progressed, Yugi's frown deepened, and he stared at Joey in disbelief. So you got to keep it a secret. Joey begged, clasping his hands together in a praying motion, my dignity as an older brother is on the line here. Sighing exasperatedly, Yugi patted his best friend's shoulder, as your friend, I want to help you, but whatever happens between you and Sinosin is entirely your undoing. What's this about Yuna? Serenity suddenly appeared between them and questioned curiously. Oh, nothing. Joey said in a panic, we're just discussing who will win the duel. Ah, big brother must have insight on how this duel will turn out, right? Serenity exclaimed with sparkles in her eyes, after all, Big Brother said he's stronger than Yuna. Silence dominated the spectator field as everyone turned to the embarrassing Joey in shock. T, you really have no shame, huh? Tristan, I can't help but pity you sometimes. Joey couldn't help but smile, although his outlandish claims had attracted the attention of two people he least wanted to encounter at the moment. Makuba, from what I remember, that's not how you and Big Sister's duel turned out. Sito, what a piece of. Trash. Usually, Joey would have argued against the arrogant Blue Eyes enthusiast, but in this situation, he could do nothing but bite his tongue. Detecting this awkward atmosphere, it doesn't take long for Serenity to feel suspicious, what really happened in that duel? Well, you see, your goofball of a brother here got trashed so badly he... Suddenly, Joey lunged at Tristan before he could speak further. However, he had already said too much. Joey Wheeler. Serenity pouted, you lied to me. Wait, Serenity, I can explain. There's nothing to explain. She said sternly, once Big Sister finishes her duel, you better apologize. Big Sister. 
Joey croaked and collapsed. Listening from the side, Sito hummed. No matter how much he despised Joey's presence, eavesdropping on what they were saying, he couldn't help but glance at Makuba and feel that they had something similar after all. Yuna's POV, I could hear a commotion from the sideline, and I felt myself being embarrassed when my name was mentioned numerous times. But that anxiety vanished as I stared at Yami Bakura. Let's not keep them waiting and begin. He smiled, and the shadow beneath his feet expanded, covering the entire field. I felt the ominous darkness enveloping the ground and subconsciously cringed in discomfort. There's no need for me to explain what's happening, right? Yami Bakura taunted, we will duel, and only one of us will make it out of here alive. I will go first. Bakura proclaimed, I summon Headless Knight. From the shadows, a suit of armor rose from the ground. It was armed with a massive sword and shield while its head was missing, reminding me of a Dullahan. Headless Knight, 1450 attack, 1700 defense, Yami Bakura then ended his turn and gazed at me with anticipation. I was a little confused by his lackluster turn, but since the opportunity was presented to me, I will finish this as early as possible. I summon evil's warm Zahak. Appearing on my field was a dragon with three heads, wings and a long tail. Its body was covered by some futuristic machinery while exposing some of its purplish flesh. Evil's warm Zahak, 1850 attack, 850 defense, interesting, it's a card I have never seen before, Yami Bakura commented. Don't worry, there's more in store. I retorted, evil's warm Zahak, attack the headless knight. The three reptilian heads snapped at my command and, in unison, opened their mouth. Unleashing a deadly red beam, the headless knight was instantly incinerated. Bakura Ryu, 4000 LP and GT, 3600 LP, I will end my turn, I declared and observed Yami Bakura like a hawk, eager to know what he had in plan. Yami Bakura calmly drew a card from his dual disc, I will summon the gross ghost of fled dreams. BAM suddenly, a bed appeared out of nowhere and dropped onto the ground, creating a loud sound. There was a very pale person sleeping on the bed, and the man seemed to be convulsing as if he were possessed. Gradually, a horrifying spirit wielding a saber emerged out of the man's chest. The gross ghost of fled dreams, 1300 attack, 1800 defense, then I will set two cards and end my turn. Another normal monster. I thought in bewilderment. There were two set cards this time, but still, I expected more. I summoned Dragon Knight of Creation. I shouted, summoning my reliable noble knight, now, my monsters, attack. Dragon Knight of Creation, 1800 attack, 600 defense, the knight rushed towards the ghost, its blade shinned a golden light, and he cleanly sliced the spirit in half. Yami Bakura, 3600 LP and GT, 3100 LP, then, upon destroying your monster, I will activate Dragon Knight of Creation's effect and send one level 8 dragon from my deck to the graveyard. Now, Evil's Warm Zahak, continue the assault and attack Bakura directly. On command, Evil's Warm Zahak fired another barrage of lasers, this time towards Yami Bakura. He gritted his teeth as the lasers exploded beneath his feet, dropping his life points considerably. Yami Bakura, 3100 LP and GT, 1250 LP, finally, I will use Dragon Knight of Creation's second effect to discard my Keeper of the Shrine in my hand, and by sacrificing my Knight, I can special summon one level 7 or 8 Dragon Monster from the graveyard. I shouted and raised my hand into the air, I will special summon Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Placing his sword into the ground, the Dragon Knight of Creation burst into a wave of light. The light expanded and dispersed, revealing the form of a massive golden dragon. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 attack, 2800 defense, using Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand's ability, I will banish the Headless Knight in your graveyard, and it will gain 400 attacks and defenses. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, 2800 and GT, 3200 attack, 2800 and GT, 3200 defense, I will end my turn here, I said as Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand roared with vigor. Unfortunately, I didn't have any traps I could set, so my back row was empty, but with Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, my safety should be secured. Yami Bakura stared at his low life points and smiled, perhaps it's time to begin. Drawing a card, Yami Bakura began to yell from the other side, first, I will use Foolish Burial to send the portrait secret from my deck to the graveyard. After that, I will use Graceful Charity. 
Adding three cards to his hand while discarding two, Yami Bakura said in a calm tone, Finally, I will banish the portrait secret, the gross ghost of fled dreams and the goblin zombie I discarded through the effect of graceful charity. With these three sacrifices, I will be able to summon my trump card, Dark Necrophere. Three wailing souls burst out of Yami Bakura's dual disc and dived into the ground. Together, they began to merge into the shape of a tall humanoid. The shadow dispersed, and what was revealed to me was a tall female demon with blue skin, a bald head and pointy ears. In her arms was a half-broken doll resembling an infant. The doll's body moved, and its beady eyes stared at me, causing my body to shiver. Dark Necrophere, 2200 attack, 2800 defense, now, Dark Necrophere, attack evils warm Zahak. The demon suddenly appeared behind my dragon and raised her arm. There, I saw the gleaming reflection of her metallic claws as she swung the weapon down onto my monster's back, killing it. Unisano, 4000 LP and GT, 3650 LP, upon destruction, I can activate Evil's Warm Zahak's effect to destroy one level 5 or higher monster on the field, and I will remove the Dark Necrophere. Beep a loud audible alarm sounded from Evil's Warm Zahak's body, and the beeping became more erratic by the second. Too late to retreat, the monster exploded, and Dark Necrophere was caught in a sea of flames. Additionally, I will use the Keeper of the Shrine's effect in my graveyard. If a dragon monster leaves the field, I can special summon this card. Keeper of the Shrine, 0 attack, 2100 defense, watching his strongest monster getting destroyed, I couldn't help but be wary as Yami Bakura's reaction was calm. Too calm. When Dark Necrophere dies, I was able to activate its effect. He smirked, I will be able to activate the field spell Dark Sanctuary directly from my deck. Rumble akin to an earthquake, the ground behind him shook as a tall, red castle emerged. Instantly, the darkness enveloping us was washed away, instead, it was replaced with a bloody sky that felt way more intimidating. Finally, I will set a monster and end my turn, however, with the effect of Dark Sanctuary, I must tribute a monster in my end phase, or else it will be destroyed. Yami Bakura shrugged, naturally, I will choose the set monster. I really can't wrap my head around Yami Bakura's plan. Right now, it was apparent that I was in a more favorable position, and his life points could easily be wiped out from one attack. But still, my instinct was telling me that I should remove Dark Sanctuary as soon as possible. I will activate Pot of Greed. I shouted, which allows me to draw two cards. Next, I will activate Polymerization, showing the Herald of Creation in my hand, I pointed at the Keeper of the Shrine and declared, Using these two monsters as materials, I will fusion summon Mysterion the Dragon Crown. Plummeting from the sky appeared a warrior dressed in flashy golden armor and her mount, a gigantic eastern dragon. The dragon's size was so big that it wrapped around the entire blimp, creating an unreal feeling. Hearing the gasps from the crowd, I remembered that Yugi and his friends hadn't seen this card yet, and all of a sudden, I wanted to brag. Mysterion the Dragon Crown, 3000 attack, 1500 defense, then, I will use quick attack. Allowing Mysterion the Dragon Crown to attack the turn it was summoned. I pointed at the set card, now, Mysterion the Dragon Crown attack. Gathering energy in her hands, the rider fired lightning out of her palms. But before the attack could land, Yami Bakura instantly flipped over a trap card. Yami Bakura, I will activate Call of the Haunted to revive the monster I tribute earlier, Earthbound Spirit. Earthbound Spirit, 500 attack, 2000 defense, the lightning struck the monster, and the Earthbound Spirit erupted in flames, turning into ashes in a span of a second, your field is empty. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, finish him. Following Mysterion the Dragon Crown, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand unleashes an orange breath that will ravage Yami Bakura's entire field. However, to my shock, instead of reaching him, the breath suddenly changed trajectory and struck me. What? I mumbled and staggered backward. Staring at Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand, I noticed something emerging from its chest. A ghastly spirit reveals itself and wanders back into the bloody castle. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand patted its body in confusion, and it didn't know how something this ominous was hiding inside. You must be confused, but it's straightforward. Yami Bakura began to explain, once per turn, Dark Sanctuary will create a spirit called the Ghost of Dark Sanctuary. The ghost can possess one of your monsters, and if that monster attacks, 
you will lose life points equal to half of the monster's attack state while I gain life points equal to that amount. Truth to his words, my life points began to drop while Yami Bakura's life points rose. Yuna Sano, 3650 LP and GT, 2250 LP, Bakura Ryu, 1250 LP and GT, 2850 LP, I. I will end my turn. I fumbled at my words, and his grin widened. How about we make this duel more exciting? Yami Bakura smiled, before your turn ends, I will play my set card, Destiny Board. 1. Beside Yami Bakura, a black smoke manifested in midair and a skeletal hand burst out of the cloud, tearing the smoke away. There stood a floating skeleton covered by a robe, and in his hand was an Ouija board. With Destiny Board's effect, during your end phase, Destiny Board will create a spirit message I, N, A, and L in this order. Once all letters are placed, I will win the duel. I gritted my teeth as the situation became more troublesome than I thought. I helplessly watched as the skeleton began to move the plank on the Ouija board, directing it to the letter I, and the alphabet appeared in a bright color. Three more turns to go, Yami Bakura smirked, will you be able to defeat me by then? So I only got three turns. I only have two options, either I deplete Yami Bakura's life points until then, or I should find a way to remove the trap card entirely. My turn, Yami Bakura said while adding a card from his dual disc, I will set a card and a monster face down and end my turn here, but due to the effect of Dark Sanctuary, I must sacrifice a monster to keep the spell activated. I will tribute my face down monster that was placed earlier. Yami Bakura smirked with confidence, and I frowned. His arrogance was really annoying, and I would do anything to wipe that smile off his face. Three more turns, Yami Bakura reminded once again, so enjoy your life while it lasts because it will be all over soon. It's my move. I muttered, deep in thought, first, I will use card of sanctity and draw until I have six cards in my hand. Then I will use card destruction, sending my entire hand into the graveyard, and I can draw the same number of cards. Discarding my cards, I drew the same amount with a calm expression, Next, I'm using my spell card, Return of the Dragon Lords, to summon Blue Eyes White Dragon from the graveyard. Thunders illuminated the dark clouds as a third roar pierced through the arrow. Contrary to the golden color of my two dragons, an elegant silver dragon landed between them. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, with three powerful dragons on my field, it's enough to brute force my way through Yami Bakura's defenses. While he could still use the effect of Dark Sanctuary, I could tank the damage, and my remaining monsters could finish him off. Go! Mysterian the Dragon Crown, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand and Blue Eyes White Dragon, attack. In unison, my monsters charged, eager to be the first to tear my opponent apart. Yami Bakura gritted his teeth and hurriedly activated his set card, I will use Fiendish Chain and bind your Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand. Chains appeared out of nowhere and wrapped around the massive body of my golden dragon. Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand struggled desperately, but it wasn't able to escape its binding and roared helplessly. While Fiendish Chain is on the field, Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand won't be able to attack or activate its effect. Yami Bakura announced. Tisk. Ignoring the strange sense of deja vu, I clicked my teeth, I will end my. I won't let you, Yami Bakura shouted, first, I will use my second call of the haunted to revive the monster earthbound spirit in defense position. The muddy minion returned, and I swear it was smiling smugly at me. Earthbound spirit, 500 attack, 2000 defense, then I will activate battle root. If I control a monster, you must attack no matter what. I cursed as blue eyes white dragon ignored my orders and charged, lunging at the souls of the forgotten. However, as expected, Blue Eyes White Dragon suddenly swung around and struck me with its claws. Yuna Sano, 2250 LP and GT, 750 LP, Bakura Ryu, 2850 LP and GT, 4350 LP, Mysterian the Dragon Claw, destroy that ugly guy. I snarled. Finishing what Blue Eyes White Dragon can't do, Mysterian the Dragon Crown wiped away Earthbound Spirit from the field. With nothing left to do, I set a card face down and reluctantly ended my turn. Immediately, the floating skeleton moved the plank to the letter N. Two more turns left. I will first summon Sangon. Yami Bakura's voice brought my attention back to the duel. 
There appeared a small brown furry creature, and the best description I could give was that it looked like Kiribua's weird cousin. Sangon, 1000 attack, 600 defense, then I will activate Monster Reborn to revive my Dark Necrofear in defense position from the graveyard. Dark Necrofear, 2200 attack, 2800 defense, finally, I will enter the battle phase and pass on my second main phase. Yami Bakura announced, leaving slightly confused, I will set two cards and replace my Dark Sanctuary with Savage Colosseum. The bloody castle disappeared, and what took its place was a massive Roman stadium. Yami Bakura laughed and spread his arms, with Savage Colosseum, you must attack if you can or else monsters that don't attack will be destroyed. Also, the controller of those monsters that attack will gain 300 life points. I see, so he's intentionally ended his battle phase to avoid the effect of the Savage Colosseum. I quietly uttered a curse. Now, Yami Bakura has forced me to battle. With Divine Dragon Lord Felgran still being locked down, I can only fight using two of my dragons and both targets aren't that great. Fine, if you want me to attack, I will. I shouted angrily, Mysterian the Dragon Crown, attack Sangon. Before that, I will activate my trap, two-pronged attack, tributing my Sangon and Dark Necrofear to destroy Mysterian the Dragon Crown. Dark Necrofear and Sangon threw themselves against my monster. Together, they created a massive explosion, killing them. Sangon's effect has been activated. I can add a monster with 1500 or fewer attacks into my hand. Yami Bakura explained. Damn it. Blue Eyes White Dragon, attack while he's defenseless. You can certainly try. Yami Bakura yelled, I activate Dimensional Wall. All battle damage will be transferred back to you. It's over. Blue Eyes White Dragon struck a barrier, and the area illuminated an ominous hue. Swiftly, the shield launched a laser at my face. Boom Yami Bakura laughed in delight as he found enjoyment in watching me cause my own downfall. Unfortunately for him, though, I'm not going down that easily. I activate Wabaku. My monsters won't be destroyed this turn, nor will I take any battle damage. While I'm not focused on Wabaku's primary effect, the trap card's second effect managed to save me from destruction. I will set a card and end my turn. I gritted my teeth as the letter A manifested in the corner of my vision. I got good news, with Savage Colosseum on the field, if you attack, you can actually gain 300 life points. Yami Bakura teased, so be grateful. Unisano, 750 LP and GT, 1050 LP, I crossed my arms and ignored him. Yami Bakura glanced at the Ouija board, grinning with ecstasy, I will activate Monster Reborn and revive my Dark Necrofear. Dark Necrofear, 2200 attack, 2800 defense, then I summon Jaojin, the spiritualist. A monster that resembled a Buddhist monk was summoned onto the field. The monk was dressed in a white ceremonial robe, and he slammed his staff onto the floor, creating a jingle sound with the bells. Jaojin the Spiritualist, 200 attack, 1300 defense, I will activate Jaojin the Spiritualist's effect, Yami Bakura yelled while sending a card into the discard pile, by discarding a random card, I can destroy all monsters that have been special summoned. Jaojin, the spiritualist, swung his staff and fired an array of magic, destroying my blue eyes white dragon and his dark necrofear. As intended, when dark necrofear was sent to the graveyard, it allowed me to activate my second dark sanctuary. Yami Bakura grinned, rise again, my sturdy fortress. The bloody castle re-emerged from hell, replacing the savage Colosseum. Once again, the sky was plunged into a deep shade of red. Finally, I will use Card of Demise to draw until I have five cards in my hand. Yami Bakura said, to make sure, I will play the Dark Door. With its effect, we can only attack with one monster. Damn. Another troublesome card has surfaced. As Yami Bakura set two more cards and ended his turn after tributing his Jaojin, the spiritualist, I couldn't help but praise him for pushing me this far. But I think it's time to end this once and for all. I will draw. I shouted. First, I will use Foolish Burial to send one monster from my deck to the graveyard, then I play Monster Reborn to summon Paladin of Felgrand in attack position. I shouted, and a young blonde knight appeared on the field. Paladin of Felgrand, 1700 attack, 600 defense, I activate Paladin of Felgrand's effect to equip Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand to himself. 
I quietly caught my breath, then I will play Ruins of Divine Dragon Lord and use its effect to turn Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand into a Dragon Token. Dragon Lord Token, zero attack, zero defense, then, with Paladin of Felgrand's second effect, I will tribute him and the token to summon Arc Brave Dragon from my graveyard. A bright light engulfed the Paladin of Felgrand and the Dragon Lord token. Gradually, the light dimmed, and a small green emerald dropped onto the ground. A few seconds gone by, the emerald glowed, constructing a massive figure of a gold and white dragon. Arc Brave Dragon, 2400 attack, 1200 defense, with Arc Brave Dragon's ability, when it was summoned from the graveyard, I can banish all the traps or spell cards on the field, and it will gain 200 attacks for each card. Arc Brave Dragon puffed up its chest and unleashed a green beam that covered the entire dueling arena. However, to my dismay, no matter how much I waited, none of the cards actually disappeared, and Arc Brave Dragon's attack did not increase. Do you think I haven't thought of that? Yami Bakura smirked, I activate my set card, Imperial Iron Wall. While this trap is active, we cannot banish any cards. I bit my lips as my first plan was thwarted. However, I won't give up now, there's still more I can do this turn, and I will genuinely give Yami Bakura a run for his money. I will activate the effect of Keeper of the Shrine in my graveyard to special summon him, I said, getting as many materials on the field as possible. Keeper of the Shrine, 0 attack, 2100 defense, I will use my second card of Sanctity to draw until I have 6 cards. I said and shamelessly filled my hand, then, I activate Return of the Dragon Lords and summon Darkstorm Dragon from my graveyard. A considerable tornado arrived on top of the blimp, and the illusion felt so real that I thought it would really hurl me into the air. On top of the tornado was a black dragon with a skinny frame but massive wings that were almost as big as our aircraft. Darkstorm Dragon, 2700 attack, 2400 defense, Darkstorm Dragon is a Gemini monster, which means that currently, it's treated as a normal monster. I explained, however if I sacrifice my normal summon this turn, I will able to transform it into an effect monster. Hearing my words, Darkstorm Dragon howled at the sky, and the membrane on its wings flashed brilliantly. Darkstorm Dragon's Effect I will send my ruins of the Divine Dragon Lord to the graveyard and destroy all traps and spells on the field. The statue of Divine Dragon Lord Felgrand shattered as a Darkstorm Dragon flapped its wings, sending a cascade of wind towards Yami Bakura. Damn you! He growled. I will use Solemn Judgment and pay half of my life points to negate the activation of Darkstorm Dragon's effect. Before the wind reached him, an old man dressed in a white robe stood in the center of the field. He spread his arms and reflected the sharp wind towards my dragon and destroyed it. Bakura Ryu, 4350 LP and GT, 2175 LP, what are you going to do now? Yuna Sano. Yami Bakura shouted. What I'm going to do? I smiled, this is just the beginning. I will play double summon, allowing me to normal summon twice this turn. Tributing Arc Brave Dragon and Keeper of the Shrine, I will be able to summon my last trump card, White Knight Dragon. My two monsters on the field vanished, and a new dragon revealed itself. It has glistening blue scales that resemble crystals, wings, jagged spikes that run along its body in a thin head that lacks pupils. White Knight Dragon, 3000 attack. 2500 defense, now, White Knight Dragon, attack Bakura. You fool! Yami Bakura shouted, have you forgotten Dark Sanctuary's effect? You will. Before he can finish his sentence, he hears something crumbling behind him. Turning around, Yami Bakura gasped as the bloody castle began to fall apart. H. How? He muttered. It's White Knight Dragon's effect. If a spell or trap card targets this card, it will be destroyed instead. White Knight Dragon dived towards Dark Necrophere. The dragon raised its slender arm as Yami Bakura closed his eyes, looks like I have been outplayed. Boom, Bakura Ryu, 2175 LP and GT, 0 LP. Bakura Ryu, 2175 LP and GT, 0 LP, Yami Bakura stared at his life points. His fingers twitched, and several complicated emotions ran across his face. Following the rules of the Shadow Game, Yami Bakura will have to suffer the consequences of losing. I don't know the exact details of the Shadow Game he has set, but it does look pretty painful. If I truly know the details of this Shadow Game, will I be able to play as calmly as before? I sighed. 
Ignorance was indeed bliss sometimes. Do you really think this will be the last time we meet? Yami Bakura dragged his body towards me, and we glared at each other with intensity, I will return, and this time, I won't lose. So this is goodbye, for now, Yunasano. The millennium ring on his chest flashed as Yami Bakura suddenly collapsed. In a surprise, I hurriedly caught his falling body, and he eventually reopened his eyes. Huh, where am I? Bakura mumbled in a daze, Sanosin. Realizing that Bakura had returned to normal, I tried to help him stand as he thanked me in a weak voice. Glimpsing at the millennium ring, Yami Bakura's last words echoed in my head. It may be best to keep it away from Bakura. I thought and reached for the millennium ring. However, as soon as I touched the millennium ring, an electric shock coursed through my body. Unable to bear the pain, I immediately retracted my hand while gasping for breath. Sinosin, is there something wrong? Bakura asked as sweat dripped down my face. I shook my head and regained my composure. To think it has a built-in anti-theft system. Noticing that Bakura was still waiting for my answer, I mustered a wry smile, you. All right? I think so. My head is a bit dizzy, I might need to lie down a. Eh? Bakura's body slumped forward, unconscious. Worried, I moved him off the field, and the medical team soon carried him away on a stretcher. Yugi and his friends naturally followed. However, Serenity broke away from the group and ran towards me while pulling Joey by the ear. With a push, Joey fell onto his knees while trembling in fear. Serenity cleared her throat, and Joey visibly flinched as he shakily raised his head. With a deep breath, he bends forward, kowtowing and screaming at the top of his lungs. Yuna Sano, you are a much better duelist than me. And? Serenity growled, causing Joey to tremble in fear. He mumbled something, and his sister nudged him with her foot, we can't hear you. And compared to you, I'm garbage. Joey shouted before whimpering like a hurt animal. He stared at me as if begging for his life, and I figured out that if I didn't say something soon, Serenity might really kill him. It's okay. I said, hoping it would alleviate even a little bit of Joey's suffering, but unfortunately for Joey, the agony was only the beginning. Yuna Sano, you are a much better duelist than me. And compared to you, I'm garbage, Joey's voice began to play from Kaiba's phone, and he closed his eyes like it was music to his ears. Ah. I'm sorry, Joey. I stared at him with pity, looks like I have to be the one apologizing to you. Before he could say anything, Joey was dragged away by the collar. Being left to my own devices, I found myself instinctively moving to the two Kaiba brothers. Strangely, I feel more comfortable staying with them than with Yugi. It's probably because I have spent a lot more time together, and honestly, the events that we went through can't be overlooked. Big sister, you're awesome. Makuba cheered eagerly, what were those two new dragons? They looked so cool. I really thought you might lose there, but then pow. You keep playing card after card and completely wipe him clean. She did really great, right, big bro? Makuba asked while tapping Kaiba's chest. I stared at Kaiba with anticipation. He scoffed and turned his head to avoid my eyes. Realizing that he chose to stay silent, I frowned, not about his rude attitude but more so at feeling a little disappointed. I smiled wryly and patted Makuba's head. Even if one brother was rotten, at least the other one didn't turn out so bad. Strong. Huh. I suddenly raised my head. Kaiba was gazing at me and said in a solemn voice, You got stronger. Good. Wah. Wow. I uttered flusteredly. Before I could inquire further, we were interrupted by Roland's announcement, the next match will begin shortly. Ishizu Ishtar and Sido Kaiba, please make your way to the dueling arena. Good luck, big bro. Makuba said while giving him a thumbs up. Kaiba smirked but soon turned to me. I was still a bit stunned, so I nodded blankly. Without waiting, Kaiba soon left to duel while Makuba and I stayed to watch. Instinctively, I clenched my fist, third POV, the wind prickled against Sido's skin, creating an irking sensation. However, his mind was so focused on the woman standing before him that he could barely feel it. Typically, if it were any man, they would be attracted by her significant beauty, but her presence created so much discontent that Sido could barely bear it. In fact, was there even a woman who captivated him? 
Shaking his head to remove this impulsive thought, Sito activated his dual disc. The outcome is already set in stone, so we should get this over with, Sito said with absolute confidence. I agree. Ishizu retorted calmly, my millennium necklace has already prophesied your fate, and obelisk the tormentor will return into my possession. Being provoked, Sito frowned, enough talk. Let us begin. Ishizu, gladly. Duel, X2, Sito Kaiba, 4000 LP, Ishizu Ishtar, 4000 LP, at the start, the battle was leaning towards no one, with both sides relentlessly exchanging blows with their monsters. Ishizu managed to gain a lead in life points as she disrupted Sito's strategy using numerous traps, but the young president was able to push back and land a hefty blow. Dark Gremlin, attack her directly. Sito shouted, and an evil imp leapt across the field, slashing with its claws. Ishizu Ishtar, 4000 LP and GT, 2400 LP, watching her life points drop gives Sito a sense of ecstasy, but that was immediately ruined by Ishizu's calmness. Next, I will activate Crush Card Virus. It will destroy every monster in your field and deck with 1500 attacks. Unfazed, Ishizu took out a portion of the deck and sent it into the discard pile. Despite the massive advantage, Sito wasn't satisfied as Ishizu wasn't seemingly phased, as if she had expected something like this to happen, and soon, he had his answer. I will activate exchange of the spirits. Ishizu declared, I will pay 1000 life points, and both of us will switch our decks with the cards from our graveyard. Sito, all the cards he had sent into Ishizu's graveyard were instantly brought back, while Sito had to discard the majority of the cards and switch with his discard. Now, with only six cards in his deck, the table has completely turned. Big sister, Makuba muttered worriedly, Big bro is in a pretty bad situation, isn't he? Unable to deny him, Yuna smiled helplessly and patted Makuba's head, trust. Him. Makuba nodded weakly and stared at Sido with concern. Gazing at his frustrated expression, Yuna sighed and hoped this would go the way she expected. Forcing to continue to play, Sido found himself getting more desperate as Ishizu began to bombard him with monsters. However, Sido already has a plan, a strategy that will end this duel once and for all. I activate Soul Exchange. Sido shouted before smiling triumphantly, this card allows me to use your monsters as tributes. I will tribute your Zalga, Kelbeck, and Agido to summon Obelisk the Tormentor. The sky instantly darkened, and thunder began to form. Floating down from the clouds was a massive blue giant with wings, and the monster's roar felt like it would break the sound barrier. Obelisk the Tormentor, 4000 attack, 4000 defense, it's over, Obelisk the Tormentor, a blighter. Sito suddenly froze, unable to complete his sentence. Instantly, a sharp pain in his head made Sito drop onto his knees and memories that weren't his own began to surface in his mind. His pupils darted wildly as Sito grasped his head, trying his best not to scream. Watching this scene, Ishizu frowned and felt something was wrong. She couldn't understand why he wasn't attacking her with Obelisk the Tormentor. Does he know? Ishizu thought and quickly shook her head, it's impossible to change one's destiny. Obelisk the Tormentor will attack, and he will trigger the bomb I planted within the god. It's over. Sido's pupils flickered. Everything was blurry, but he could still make out various images. There, with each picture, a soft and alluring voice echoed in his ear. Ah, good morning, Sido. Ha ha ha, Sido, Sido, watch out. Say, too. I, love. The voice stopped, and Sido's eyes snapped open. He touched his face where a single tear left his eye. Sido couldn't believe it. Why was he crying? Who was that voice? Nobody could answer his questions. Subconsciously, he glanced at the card in his hand and a resolve burned in his heart. Slowly, he stood up, and the Shizu noticed something had changed. I will first play double summon, allowing me to have one more normal summon. Sido shouted, then I activate Silent Doom and summon Gadget Soldier in defense position. Gadget Soldier, 1800 attack, 2000 defense, Gadget Soldier and double summon. Ishizu muttered, and her eyes widened, wait, don't tell me. Using Obelisk the Tormentor and Gadget Soldier as tributes, I will summon my pride and my soul, my blue eyes white dragon. The two monsters burst into light as the particles floated toward the atmosphere. 
Another thunderstruck, illuminating the clouds and revealing the figure of a ferocious beast. The creature dived down from the sky, flashing its majestic white scales. Sito smiled, he was sure now that it was the right decision. The unknown memory urged him so, and every cell of Sito's body told him that this was the only way for him to win. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3000 Attack, 2500 Defense, earlier, you said that my fate is already set in stone. But who decided that? Sito growled, only I get to choose my destiny and nobody else. Now, Blue Eyes White Dragon, finish her with burst stream of destruction. Blue Eyes White Dragon howled and unleashed a deadly white beam. Izisu stared at the incoming projectile with a solemn expression. To change one's destiny. She muttered and was engulfed by the white beam. Ishizu Ishtar, 1400 LP and GT, 0 LP, ending the duel, Sido regained his confidence. He glanced at the spectator area and spotted his little brother celebrating vigorously. Turning to face the girl beside Makuba, Sido couldn't help but remember that abnormal scene. Gazing into each other's eyes, Yuna eventually broke into a small smile, and Sido felt his steps lighten. Wait. Ishizu called out hesitantly, you managed to overcome the fate that my millennium necklace showed me. How? Like I have said. Only I will choose my destiny, not you and not anyone else. Sido replied, I won this duel for the same reason I will win this tournament. My skills will surpass all duelists, and anyone who stands in my way will be crushed. Perhaps, Ishizu smiled, but I seem to have learned a valuable lesson in the nature of fate. She glanced at her brother, Merrick, despite what the Millennium Necklace told me, I will have faith that there is still some good in you. I will gladly accept my loss. Ishizu bowed, your strength is undeniable. Being praised, Sido's ears twitched as he snorted, of course. Yuna's POV, witnessing Kaiba remembering a moment in his past life and tributing Obelisk the Tormentor sure was a spectacle to watch. It was always a breathtaking scene, but being here right now. I don't know how to feel. Big sister, is something wrong? Makuba asked. Nothing. I shook my head. There was no way I was going to explain my current emotions right now. It simply felt like it's something I should keep to myself. Kaiba approached us with a satisfied expression. Crossing his arms, he looked at me as if he was anticipating something. Grasping his intentions, I covered my lips to hide my smile. You. Did, well. The young president grinned. Puffing up his chest, he hummed while bobbing his head up and down with pride. This guy is a little too easy. Big sister. Suddenly, I heard Serenity's cheerful voice getting louder from behind. Wait. Big sister. Why were you calling me that as well? Staring at her with bewilderment, Serenity eagerly hugged my arm and pressed her face against my body. Before I could register what was happening, Serenity was suddenly pushed away and blocking her path was an angry Makuba. Who do you think you're calling Big Sister? Listening to Makuba, Serenity's expression turned sour, why can't I call Yuna Big Sister? You just can't. And why is that? Because Big Sister is mine. Makuba yelled with embarrassment. Oh really? Serenity tilted her head innocently, you're not even related. How can you make such bold claims? But you're not related as well. Yes, you're right. To his surprise, Serenity agreed easily. But soon, she smiled, and I felt a bad premonition in my heart, then, to solve that problem, I will just have to marry Big Sister. Wait what? Come one, Serenity, what were you saying? That's not actually going to happen. I smiled awkwardly as strange thoughts began to fill my head, and I pictured myself in a wedding dress with Serenity in a black tuxedo. Hold on, officer, it's only an imagination. EEP, what were you doing with those handcuffs? While I'm drowning in my paranoia, Makuba's face scrunched up in dismay, you're too young to marry her. Yes, good point, Makuba. That's something I definitely won't do. Well, then I will just marry her when I'm older. Serenity declared, since you're younger than me, I will be taking her first. Makuba's eyes widened in shock, and I desperately shook my head to assure him that it was never going to happen. However, Serenity's words have provoked him to the extreme, and he gritted his teeth, trying to think of the perfect counter. Finally, a light bulb seemed to light up on the top of his head, 
and he smirked, I won't let that happen. Serenity, oh yeah, what are you going to do about it? Suddenly, Makuba turned around and patted Kaiba's shoulder, because my big brother is much older than you. Kaiba. W W what? My lips trembled, and I felt the stutters I tried so hard to suppress were resurfacing. Unaware of our flustered expressions, the two continued to argue fiercely. What are you implying? Serenity asked with a smile that didn't reach her eyes. What do you think? Big bro and big sister are around the same age, so they're more suited for marriage than you. Ha! Huh. Serenity's smile cracked, so what if they're around the same age? That doesn't mean that they're close. Oh, they are. Makuba smirked, much closer than you think. Prove it then. Serenity yelled, on a count of three, let's both say the closest thing your brother and I have done with big sister. Bring it! Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Makuba, big bro and big sister have key. Serenity, I have touched big sisters. Bam x2 the two winced in pain as my fists were brought down onto their heads. Thankfully, my fists of justice were fast enough, or else I would have jumped off this blimp. I glimpsed at Kaiba, who was gazing at me in a daze, not sure whether to be shocked by Makuba's outlandish declaration or the fact I just smacked his little brother. Won't. Mary. You. I muttered and squirmed in embarrassment. Kaiba blinked like an idiot and made a stupid sound, yeah. Joey Wheeler and Nam Osad, please gather at the dueling arena. Roland's voice blared through the intercom, cutting through this atmosphere. Simultaneously, we turned towards the field, and Joey was already waiting as Namu entered the arena. Are both duelists ready? Roland asked, and he continued to speak after receiving their confirmations, then let's. Stop. Kaiba's shout caught everyone off guard. Was there something wrong, Master Kaiba? Roland inquired. Namu Saad, have broken the rules of using aliases during this tournament. Kaiba explained to everyone's confusion, although I will overlook this matter, change Namu Saad's name to Merik Ishtar. They all gasped in unison and couldn't comprehend what they were hearing. Kaiba marched onto the center of the field and smirked, so, are you going to stop hiding now? I don't know what you're talking about. Namu calmly denied the claims, didn't Merik already reveal himself? He said and gestured at Odeon. Kaiba frowned and announced loudly, additionally, Merrick Ishtar have also broken the rules of using aliases, so Roland, please change his name to Odeon Ishtar. Finally, there seemed to be some reaction with Namu, Merrick, and Merrick, Odeon. The young man closed his eyes as the grin on his face became more profound. Wuxi a burst of energy suddenly emits from Namu's body as he digs into his vest, revealing a thin golden rod in his hand. I don't know how you found out, Namu said in an eerie voice, but I congratulate you for doing so. You're finally revealing yourself, Merrick. Kaiba snarled as Namu, no Merrick, opened his eyes, and a golden symbol of the millennium I appeared on his forehead. Merrick laughed in delight, I was planning to reveal myself anyway, but it's even more enjoyable being called out like this. Enough with your tricks, Kaiba warned and returned to my side, the match will continue. Roland cleared his throat to get everyone's attention, sorry for the interruption, Merrick Ishtar and Joey Wheeler. Are both duelists ready? Ah uh, yeah. Joey said nervously while Merrick merely smiled. Then let's begin. Duel, X2, Joey Wheeler, 4000 LP, Merrick Ishtar, 4000 LP, in my heart, I sincerely prayed for Joey's success in this duel. However, some part of me already knows that the outcome wouldn't be what I had hoped. Third POV, Joey stared at Merrick with nervousness in his eyes. He expected to have a duel with Bakura's friend and not an egotistical villain who was hellbent on taking over the world. Suddenly, Merrick laughed, catching him off guard, is it true that your sister would have become blind if it weren't for the help of one of your friends? He asked with a sly grin. Joey frowned, and he felt a bad premonition in his heart. He didn't know how Merrick was aware of Serenity's situation and knew whatever Merrick was going to say wouldn't be good. Say, didn't you also get saved by your friend when I brainwashed you? Merrick pointed out. What are you planning at? Joey scowled. Nothing really, Merrick shrugged, I'm merely wondering whether you're simply an incompetent man. He turned to Serenity, and his grin widened. 
pointing his millennium rod at her, Merrick said in an ominous voice, What will happen if I take your sister? Will you be able to do anything about it, or do you need one of your friends to do your job? You. Joey snarled. Don't listen to him, Joey. He's only trying to provoke you. Yugi shouted, snapping Joey out of his anger. Listening to his best friend's advice, Joey took a deep breath and slapped himself to calm down. Once he relaxed, Joey glared at Merrick with annoyance, stop with your tricks, let's duel. Merrick, gladly. Joey and Merrick, duel. Joey Wheeler, 4000 LP, Merrick Ishtar, 4000 LP, before we begin, how about we make this duel a little more interesting? Merrick suddenly proposed and waved the Millennium Rod. The artifact shone brightly and emitted a darkness that enveloped the entire field. Joey suddenly felt a strange sensation as he watched a faint thread appearing out of his chest and connecting with his dual disc. This duel has now been transformed into a shadow game, and the rules of this game were very simple. Merrick explained, this game is no longer a mere illusion, with every battle, the damage we feel will be real, and the pain our monster will feel shall be shared. You're insane. Joey gasped. There seemed to be fear in your eyes. Merrick noted, the fear of losing and having your soul sent to the Shadow Realm is very much evident. Shut up, Joey muttered, and their fight began. The battle started slowly as both duelists didn't have the cards they needed in their hands. However, Joey soon summoned Panther Warrior and activated scapegoats to summon four sheep tokens. Panther Warrior, 2000 attack, 1600 defense, sheep token, 0 attack, 0 defense, x4 with Panther Warrior's ability, it must tribute a monster to make an attack, which was why Joey used scapegoat, and the tokens acted both as fuel for the monster as well as a shield for himself. Being forced on defense, Merrick soon summoned Helpomer using the effect of tribute burial. Helpomer, 2000 attack, 1400 defense, however, Joey soon countered the strategy by summoning Rocket Warrior and attacking Helpomer. Despite having a lower attack, Rocket Warrior's effect activates and reduces the battle damage to zero, and it won't be destroyed. In doing so, Rocket Warrior will lower Helpomer's attack by 500. Helpomer, 2000 and GT, 1500 attack, 1400 defense, now weakened, Panther Warrior was able to attack and land a blow on Merrick's life points. Merrick Ishtar, 4000 LP and GT, 3500 LP, Merrick breathed deeply, suppressing the lingering discomfort of Panther Warrior's attack, Helpomer's effect has been triggered. As long as this card is in the graveyard, after each of your battle phases, you must randomly discard a card. Now it's my turn. Merrick muttered, first, I will set a card and then activate Premature Burial by paying 700 life points and summon Drillago from my graveyard. Drillago, 1600 attack, 1100 defense, Merrick Ishtar, 3500 LP and GT, 2800 LP, next, I will tribute Drillago and summon Legendary Fiend. The monster, with dozens of sharp drill heads protruding from its body, disappeared, and what rose was a demon with light blue skin, legs covered in black fur, for arms where two of those limbs had the heads of serpents and two massive wings on its back. Legendary Fiend, 1500 attack, 1800 defense, Legendary Fiend has a special ability. With each of my standby phases, the monster will gain 700 attacks. Merrick warned. Then you're telling me I should destroy it now. Joey yelled, I will tribute one of the scapegoat tokens, and Panther Warrior will attack. Not so fast. I activate Nightmare Mirror. By discarding one card, I can reflect the attack to you, dealing 1000 damage. As the Panther Warrior rushed towards Merrick, a black round mirror intercepted the attack. The monster was absorbed into the mirror, and a few seconds later, it was shot out of the mirror, and this time, the warrior charged at Joey. To his horror, Panther Warrior swung his sword, and Joey grunted in agony at the feeling of being cut with a blade, and he momentarily fell onto one knee. Joey Wheeler, 4000 LP and GT, 3000 LP, he touched his chest where the weapon had slashed him. There didn't seem to be any wound, but the pain was definitely real. Are you already giving up now? Merrick taunted, how disappointing. No. Joey stood back up, we're just getting started. First, I will play the spell card question. You must guess the name of the monster that was first sent to my graveyard. If you guessed wrong, I can special summon a monster from the discard pile. Naturally, 
unable to remember, Merrick's answer was wrong. Then Joey was able to summon one of his trump cards, Jinzo, onto the field. Jinzo, 2400 attack, 1500 defense, as Jinzo was summoned, I can destroy any trap cards you control. Joey shouted as Merrick's trap cards erupted in flames. Next, I will summon Baby Dragon. Baby Dragon, 1200 attack, 700 defense, now, Jinzo, Baby Dragon, Rocket Warrior and Paythair Warrior, attack. Jinzo brought his hands together and launched a purplish orb at the demon. The projectile exploded upon contact, leaving Merrick's monster's field empty. Merrick Ishtar, 2800 LP and GT, 2000 LP, Joey, now you're defenseless, let's end this. Fool. Merrick mocked, I will activate my spell, Dark Wall of Wind. This turn, I won't receive any direct damage from monsters. Merrick's figure was shrouded by darkness, leaving Joey's monsters confused. Joey gritted his teeth and ended his turn, annoyed that he wasn't able to finish Merrick off. I have to admit, Joey Wheeler, your skills exceeded my expectations. Nonetheless, my expectations weren't that high to begin with. Merrick snickered. It's time for you to watch everything burn. First, I will summon Plasma Eel and equip the monster to your Panther Warrior, while attached, Panther Warrior will lose 500 attacks in each of your end phases. Second, I tribute Jinzo and Baby Dragon to summon Lava Golem to your field. The two monsters erupted into flames, and lava began to flood the field. Merging together, the magma transformed into a massive monster. Lava Golem, 3000 attack, 2500 defense, I will set two cards and end my turn here. Merrick declared. My turn, Joey shouted, now, Lava Golem, attack Merrick directly. The golem charged, dragging its liquid body across the field. Merrick smirked and instantly activated his set card, I will play Relieve Monster to return Plasma Eel that was still attached to Panther Warrior back to my hand, then with its second effect, I can special summon Plasma Eel from my hand. Plasma Eel, 500 attack, 1200 defense, Lava Golem unleashed its punch but was blocked by Plasma Eel's body, Plasma Eel has another ability. While on the field, it couldn't be destroyed by battle. With nothing else to do, Joey helplessly ended his turn. During your end phase, Lava Golem's effect has been activated, and you will take 700 damage. Joey Wheeler, 3000 LP and GT, 2300 LP, Joey gritted his teeth as he endured the feeling of getting burnt. As the battle prolonged, he was slowly getting exhausted from fighting against the pain. Although both duelists suffer under the same condition, Merrick stands proudly, shrugging away from the pain as his past suffering is a lot worse than this. My turn, he smiled, I will activate machine duplication, anime, to target my plasma eel and summon two more plasma eel from my deck. 2, plasma eel, 500 attack, 1200 defense, x2, then, I will attach two of my plasma eel to your lava golem and rocket warrior, and in each of your end phases, they will lose 500 attacks, and then I end my turn. My move. Joey shouted, desperation in his voice, first, I will play graceful dice. Boosting your monsters again. Merrick scoffed, it's not going to help you. I know, Joey smirked, that's why I will use the spell on your own plasma eel. A little EMP magically appeared on the field. It rolled a die in its hand, and the die landed on the number 6, increasing Plasma Eel's attack by 600. Plasma Eel, 500 and GT, 1100 attack, 1200 defense, now, since Plasma Eel's attack has exceeded 500, machine duplication's effect will be cancelled. The two Plasma Eels attached to Lava Golem and Rocket Warrior imploded, freeing them, finally, I will activate Guilford the Lightning in my hand. By tributing Rocket Warrior, Panther Warrior, and Lava Golem, I can summon Guilford the Lightning. The three monsters dispersed into a wave of light as thunder struck the field. As the lightning vanished, standing in its place was a tall and mighty warrior. He wore a flashing silver chest plate and a helmet with horns. On his back was a blade as large as him, and the warrior unsheathed his sword, creating a dominating aura on the field. Guilford the Lightning, 2800 attack, 1400 defense, with Guilford the Lightning's effect, once I tribute three monsters, it can destroy all the monsters on your field. Guilford the Lightning raised his sword towards the sky, summoning the Wrath of Thunder that struck down Merrick's plasma eel. Now, your field is left open, Joey shouted with excitement, 
Guilford the Lightning, finish him off once and for all. It's quite unfortunate that's not going to happen. Merrick sighed, I will reveal my trap, negate attack. Ending your battle phase. With Joey ending his turn, Merrick drew a card, and his smile widened, looks like it's over, he said and revealed the spell card in his hand. I will activate Monster Reborn, allowing me to summon one monster in my graveyard. Joey suddenly felt a horrible feeling in his heart as he felt the air around him seem to shift. Merrick raised his hand into the air, and a beam of light shined down from behind him. I call upon you, the strongest of the three Egyptian gods, the dragon of chaos, the winged dragon of R.A. With the sound of an earthquake, the light disappeared and behind Merrick was a humongous golden beast with feathery wings, dragon-like scales and a sharp beak. Winged dragon of R.A. Attack. Defense, Joey couldn't believe his eyes as he stood before the god, and his heart beat with anxiety. Merrick laughed, behold the power of the god. Now I. Suddenly, Merrick's body convulsed as he collapsed. Holding himself up with one hand, his pupils shook with disbelief as a searing pain slowly sprouted within him. The Millennium Rod clattered onto the floor and rolled to his side. The artifact glowed ominously as Merrick grabbed the side of his face and howled. Gradually, an eerie voice entered his head. Fool, do you really think you can control a god by your lonesome? It was never meant for you. You're merely a mortal calling upon a power that's not yours. Soon you will die. Merrick couldn't believe the words as he felt the pain increase by the second, and the voice continued to speak. But I can stop that. All you need to do is accept. You know you can't resist my guidance. Let me help. Let me help. Let me help. Let me help. Let me help let me help let me help G-A-H, Merrick groaned as he desperately ignored this voice pounding against his head. However, with the roar of R.A., a surge of power made his lungs collapse as his body lost control, and he reached for the Millennium Rod. Instantly, he froze, leaving everyone confused. The hand clutching his head loosened as he stared at the night sky. In this quiet silence, Merrick's eyes suddenly snapped open, bloodshot. A deep, off-putting chuckle escaped his lips. With a newfound energy, Merrick stood up, clenching and unclenching his fists in wonder. What the hell is going on? Joey mumbled, catching Merrick's attention. Merrick smiled as he continued to duel, I will activate Ra's ability. Now, transform and present us with your proper form. I call upon you, R.A., the Egyptian god Phonix. 3. On command, winged dragon of R.A. howled with rage. Its golden scales ignited, covering its body in flames and transforming the god into a flaming phonix with golden feathers and fiery red eyes. Egyptian god Phoenix, zero attack, zero defense, then I will activate the Egyptian god Phoenix's effect by paying 1000 life points, when Egyptian god Phoenix attacks, it can destroy that monster no matter what. Merrick smiled, now, Egyptian god Phoenix, destroy Guilford the lightning. The phoenix screeched, its voice echoed throughout the entire airship. The monster flapped its feathery wings, conjuring a bloodred tornado. The tornado engulfed Guilford the lightning, and immediately, an indescribable agony overwhelmed Joey's entire soul. The sensation of being burnt alive made him scream in suffering as his eyes rolled up to the back of his head. As the tornado gradually faded, Joey stumbled on his steps. Merrick raised his eyebrows, impressed, to think you're standing after facing divine punishment, your willpower is truly commendable. Joey didn't respond as his vision darkened, the fact that he was standing was nothing short of a miracle. Now, in my end phase, R.A. will return to my graveyard, Merrick explained calmly and waited with anticipation. M. My. Turn. Joey's breath was shaky as every time he moved, it felt like needles stabbing into his heart, I, I, slump Joey's legs gave out, but he still tried to play. However, finally, unable to endure the suffering and collapsed. There was silence as people couldn't register what they were seeing. B, big brother. Serenity stuttered, covering her lips with her hands. However, Joey refused to respond, and with each second, everyone was starting to feel increasingly worried. Joey Wheeler will be given two minutes to recover. Otherwise, Merrick Ishtar will win this duel. Roland announced on the sideline. His friends screamed for him to wake up, but no matter what. Joey Wheeler won't open his eyes. The two minutes have passed, and due to being unable to continue, 
Merrick Ishtar wins and will advance into the tournament. Merrick cackled as he stepped down from the field. As he walked away, Merrick passed Ishizu, who stared at him with concern. Brother. She called out hesitantly. Merrick stopped and smiled, displaying his white teeth, your brother is gone. Her eyes widened in horror, then who? Sensing her fear, Merrick. No. Yami Merrick smirked, Merrick is probably already dead. I will use this body nicely. With boastful laughter, he left, leaving Ishizu alone. Yuna's POV, an hour later. Big brother, please wake up. Serenity cried while shaking Joey. However, no matter how much she nudged him, he wouldn't open his eyes. Big sister, what's happening? Why wouldn't Joey wake up? She sobbed while clenching my sleeve, how could a card game do this to him? Unable to give her a reasonable answer, I embraced Serenity as she soaked my clothes with her tears. Gazing at Joey's comatose state, a sigh escaped from my lips. If someone like Joey got hurt this badly, what would happen to me? This worrying thought made me doubt my abilities. However, I glanced at Serenity, and it was something I couldn't just sit idly by. Trying to comfort her, I hesitantly wiped her tears and mustered a smile. Can save. Joey. I said to reassure her. Really, how? Serenity yelled impatiently while holding my hands. Beat. Merrick. I answered solemnly. But won't that put you in danger as well? Serenity yelped. Smack I gently flicked her forehead, won't lose. That you must promise. Serenity insisted, forcing me to nod along. Suddenly, Serenity tackled me, and I felt her arms wrapping around my back. I chuckled as I patted her head while she tucked her face into my chest. Wait. Serenity, mafu mafu smack she shrieked as I unleashed my fist of justice for the second time tonight. Rubbing her head, Serenity swiftly broke away from the hug. Although she seemed to be in pain from the punch, her mood was much more relaxed than before. Ah, uh, is Big Sister leaving now? She asked as soon as I stood up. I nodded, and Serenity smiled wryly, wishing me a good night. After returning the gesture, I stepped into the hallway as the familiar system appeared before my eyes. Task number 7, Defeat Merrick Ishtar. Reward, 10, 000 credits, I stared at the task given to me, deep in my thoughts. There's still a chance that I won't be able to duel him if he's ever matched with Yugi or Kaiba. Still, if the possibility of me ever fighting Merrick, it will be a motivation for me to work harder, well, if the fact that I would once again put my life on the line wasn't motivating enough. As I was planning to return to my room, I heard a voice hesitantly calling my name. Turning around, I was shocked to see Ishizu standing behind me. She awkwardly rubbed her arms and spoke in a polite tone, I can't help but overhear that you will duel against my brother. If so. Ishizu took a deep breath and stared at me, I ask you to please save him. Before you say anything, first listen to what I'm going to tell you, Ishizu said and straightened her body. Three thousand years ago in ancient Egypt, its civilization was being attacked by invaders, leaving countless deaths in its wake. The pharaoh at that time, Akhenamkhenen, sought mystical means to protect his people, which ultimately led to the creation of the Millennium Items. There were a total of seven artifacts made, each with its unique abilities, the Eye of All-Seeing, two the Ring of Guidance, one the Scale of Judgment the Key of Perception one the Necklace of Prophecy one the Rod of Manipulation two and finally, the Puzzle of Leadership. With these seven Millennium Items, Akhenamkhenin quickly overturned his enemies and brought peace to the land. Then, the items were passed down from generation to generation, granting their wielders extraordinary powers. However, Ishizu paused, with these millennium items, there were three that were particularly weak to the intrusion of evil, the rod, I and the ring, which attracts spirits that can possess the user. These past few events led me to believe that my brother, being the wielder of the millennium rod, has been overwhelmed by his darkness and an alter ego formed in his soul, taking over his body. Suddenly, Ishizu bowed gracefully, I know that it's an unfair request, but please save my brother. If you do, the Ishtar family will be in your debt. Flustered by Ishizu's pleading, I stared at her blankly, unable to form a response. Eventually, in the unbearable silence, I nodded, and Ishizu's shoulders relaxed. I thank you, young hero, Ishizu smiled, you will have my forever gratitude. 
Finishing her bow, Ishizu left, and I returned to my room. Falling onto my bed, I stared at the ceiling and sighed, after this is Noah's virtual world. Thinking of the shenanigans that will be happening in the future, I frowned. Despite only being semi-related to Battle City, I knew that it was something I should attend. Joey, who was supposed to participate in Battle City, was now left in a coma because of my interventions, so it would probably be best if I put some effort into helping out. Right now, Yugi should be having his duel with Odeon. But with everything already revealed, I doubt that it will be worth the watch nor I have the stamina to stay awake. Soon, my exhaustion from tonight has caught up, and I closed my eyes, drifting off to sleep. 1. Lava Golem This card is summoned to the opponent's field by sacrificing two of their monsters. Each turn, that player takes 700 damage. ATK slash 3000 DEF slash 2500, 2, Machine Duplication, when a monster with 500 or less ATK is in play, the effect of, Machine Duplication, can special summon up to two copies of the same card from your deck. If you do not control a monster with 500 or less ATK, destroy this card and the special summon monsters. 3, some may wonder why there is no chant, well I want to save it for later. Also, cue the god's anger theme. Smiley face. Yuna's POV, next day. I woke up early in the morning. My body still felt a little stiff, probably due to being in a different bed than I'm used to. Other than that, I also had a weird dream. I dreamt about being in a dark, gloomy space, and I fought against someone in an old dueling arena. I can't really recall what happened in the duel, but it's probably nothing. Sighing, I combed my hair and changed into fresh clothes. Exiting my room, I decided to wander around to kill time as everyone else was still asleep. Unknowingly, after walking for ten minutes, I stumbled upon the control room of the airship. Understanding that this was probably a place I shouldn't be, I tried to leave but was suddenly stopped by Makuba's eager voice through the speakers, Big sister, good morning, feel free to come in. The door opened, and I hesitantly entered. Inside were a dozen men in suits, operating on keyboards and monitors that I couldn't possibly comprehend. Overlooking the men was Kaiba as he stared at the large screen in the center of the room. Big sister. Makuba called excitedly as he spun around in his seat. Smiling, I patted his head, and his nose twitched with pride, saying that this was something he could brag to Serenity later. A chuckle escaped my lips, and I subconsciously glanced at Kaiba, who was gazing at me with a raised brow. However, he chose to remain silent and continue observing the screen that was displaying the path ahead. M. Morning. I mumbled. To my surprise, instead of ignoring me, Kaiba nodded in greeting. Although he didn't say good morning back, this was already a pretty significant development. Following Kaiba, I turned my attention to the large display, and we watched as it showed the real-life video of the sun rising, and the water's surface perfectly reflected the image of the bright red star. As we flew further, I began to spot a tall, dark structure in the middle of the ocean. It was a massive monolith made of steel with a dark black color, casting a shadow through the sun. That place was where Kaiba Kor was born. Kaiba said, sensing my curiosity, it was built from the ruins of my stepfather's empire, and it symbolizes the triumph of the new over the old. That place will be where the finals of Bat City will be held. I watched with bated breath as the airship flew closer and closer. Knowing their background, I understood how significant that place was for the two brothers and I was excited to be able to set foot on this sacred ground. Suddenly, the airship groaned as the transport did a sharp left turn, throwing us off the course. Being caught off guard, we were hurled to the side of the wall with great force. Sliding across the floor, my back struck the wall, and I winced, imagining the bruise I would get later. Opening one of my eyes, I spotted Makuba spiraling towards me, and I managed to catch him from the fall. However, in doing so, we were sent crashing against one of the windows. Sano. Kaiba shouted my name. He reached out his hand, and I instinctively took it. With insane strength, he managed to pull me and Makuba to him moments before several heavy objects crashed into where we were. Tell me what's happening, damn it. Kaiba shouted at his subordinates, and they hurriedly examined the systems of the ship. Sido, look. Makuba gasped and pointed at the window beside us. In unison, everyone turned their heads and witnessed a humongous building emerging from the waves. 
It was like an underwater fortress, and its intimidating appearance sent slight shivers down my spine. As we stared in awe, the central screen flickered brightly, replacing the image of Kaiba Core Island. There appeared an image of a young boy with teal-colored hair, blue eyes and sharp features. He was dressed in a white long-sleeve jacket that gave him a professional look. If it isn't Sido Kaiba. The boy smirked. Identify yourself. Kaiba snarled. Still as demanding as always. The boy laughed, you and I gone a long way back. Kaiba clenched the handrails, his knuckles turning white, someone shut this thing off. I'm sorry, sir, one of the employees apologized, our mainframe has been breached. That's impossible. Makuba yelped, Kaiba Corp's security system is top-notch. There's no way it can be hacked. But unfortunately, it can. The boy taunted, and I'm sorry to say that I'm putting a stop to your card games. The airship churned once more, and it began flying towards the sea fortress. Kaiba angrily ordered the men to take back control, but nothing they did worked. Eventually, the airship reached the fortress, and the structure opened up, revealing an internal hangar. Though and the rough landing made us stumble on our steps. The computer screen flickered, and the boy returned, Welcome to my humble abode. Now, as your host, I insist on leaving this airship. Kaiba, and what if we don't? Suddenly, the hatch doors on the hangar walls opened simultaneously, revealing dozens of turrets. In unison, the barrels of the weapons aimed at us as the red lasers on the tips of the guns pointed at our heads. As if right on time, Yugi and his friends burst in, attracted by the commotion. However, they instantly froze when they came face to face with the automatic weapons. If you don't, I naturally don't explain what will happen, right? The boy warned. With no choice, we stepped out of the airship with the guns still trained on us. Good. Please enter the door to the right. He instructed as the automatic door unlocked with a hiss. Sir, what should we do? Roland asked with a solemn gaze. The rest of you wait here, Kaiba declared, I will go alone and put an end to this farce. B.A.M. as soon as he took a step, one of the guns fired, inciting the screams of several people. The bullet struck the floor before Kaiba, stopping him in his tracks. I didn't say just you, did I? The boy uttered in an antagonizing tone, your subordinates can stay, but the other people will be coming with you. Kaiba scowled, and I could hear the sound of his teeth grinding together, fine. Let's go. Please wait, a voice interrupted Kaiba, mind if we join you. We all simultaneously turned around and were surprised to see Ishizu and Odeon standing on top of the ramp. Calmly, the two tombkeepers stopped before Kaiba and stared into his eyes, I hope there won't be any problems. Stop with your jokes. Kaiba spat, do you really think I can trust you? You don't have to, Ishizu shook her head, we were merely stating our intentions. Don't make me repeat myself. Kaiba warned menacingly, go. Back. The atmosphere was getting increasingly tense as the two sides refused to back down. I sighed and finally decided to step in. Let them. I said in a silence. Kaiba turned to me in shock, what? It's. Fine. I insisted, and his face contorted into various emotions ranging from anger and annoyance. I also detected a tiny hint of betrayal. Suit yourself. Kaiba growled and walked away as the rest of us were inclined to follow. Walking through the dark corridor, I stared at Kaiba's broad back as he marched in front of the group. I wanted to ask what happened earlier, but it's best if I wait for now, as he's clearly pissed off. I glimpsed at Ishizu beside me, why? I couldn't help but voice out. Miss Sano agreed to assist the Ishtar family. Ishizu smiled, it's natural for us to help as well. I nodded with relief. After the duel between Merrick and Joey, I was worried whether some things would change in the virtual world arc. I assumed that it should be fine with me to replace Joey. However, if Ishizu and Odeon agreed to help, things would be much easier. Eventually, we arrived at a dark and empty room. There was silence except for the sound of our breathing. The light flickered to life, and the sudden change of brightness momentarily blinded my eyes. When my vision cleared, standing before us were five men dressed in business attire. Makuba and Kaiba's eyes widened upon realizing their identities. It's the big fives. Makuba exclaimed, what are they doing here? 
The members of the Big Five smiled. Stepping forward, the leader of the Big Fives, Gan Zili, smirked, Looks like we meet again, Sido Kaiba. And Yuna Sano. His creepy grin made me shiver, and I subconsciously hugged my body. However, before I could return my glare, Kaiba stepped forward and blocked my view. Hey, I want to see too. But much to my displeasure, Kaiba ignored me and continued to stare at the big fives, I thought I had dealt with you scums, yet you cockroaches seem to be still clinging to life. Yes, Ganzili growled, although our physical bodies have been lost, in our last encounter, our minds were transported into the virtual world, and now we have returned to exact our revenge. Kaiba smirked, so you're going to kill us? Quite the contrary, Ganzili retorted, instead, we want you to suffer the same fate as us. Once we're done, you will become merely a senseless data trapped in this virtual world while we will take control of your bodies. Ha ha ha. No, thank you. I don't want any smelly old man controlling my body. It was obvious that everyone shared the same sentiment as me, and they glared at the big fives with anger. I like to see you try, Sido snarled. Indeed we shall, Ganzili clapped his head. The lights in the room brightened, revealing the rows of machinery mounted on the walls. Responding to Gansley's clap, the devices came to life, generating a loud noise as they powered on. Let's see if you can survive what comes after next, the big fives laughed. Suddenly, a wave of dizziness struck me. My knees buckled, and I glanced at the rest of our group. Similar to me, their complexion was pale, and they were clutching their head in pain. So it begins, virtual world arc dam, when I wake up, hopefully, I'm with someone, I thought before embracing the dizziness, and everything went dark. Some uncone time later. Gradually, my consciousness returned, and I opened my eyes. My head was still a mess, but it was much better than before. Taking deep breaths, I was able to relax thoroughly, and I looked around to grasp my surroundings. I seemed to be resting on a chair, and the walls resembled an office. In front of me was a wide wooden desk, and I noticed that there seemed to be a man sitting on the opposite of the furniture. Slowly, I raised my head and took in his appearance. The red business suit, white shirt and black tie. His fair-colored skin, gray hair and mustache. The atmosphere of a calm but deceitful man. Good morning, girl, the man opened his mouth, and a deep voice left his throat, you may be wondering who I am. Then let me indulge you. My name is Gozaburo Kaiba, the former CEO of Kaiba Corps, also Sido and Makuba's adoptive father. F asterisk CK. I cursed while showing a composed expression. The virtual world arc has only just started, and I'm already sitting before the final boss. In the office, Gozaburo and I stared at each other in silence. I can feel his scrutinizing gaze, his pupils scanning me from up and down. Gozaburo hummed as his finger tapped against the wooden desk creating a rhythmic sound, do you know why I summoned you here? His sudden question made me jolt, and I awkwardly shook my head. Well, usually I wouldn't pay attention to a girl like you, but the way you acted around my sons caught my attention. Gozaburo explained, also, I heard that you're the one that contributed to my subordinate's exile. Ah. Ha, huh, I averted my gaze. Was it too late to apologize now? So, I did some digging, Several documents manifested in Gozaburo's hand, and he slid it across the table for me to see. Yuna Sano, born from a family with no backgrounds. Above average academic skills and no other noteworthy expertise. General, a run-off-the-mill person from the streets. Each word felt like a sharp knife stabbing into my guts, and Gozaburo chuckled lightheartedly, you're really nothing special. The only thing that makes you stand out is the ability to play a card game. Yet, his voice turned cold, how you still manage to get close to them is beyond me. But, knowing those failures, it's no wonder that you wormed your way into their inner circle. Gozaburo scoffed, it was a mistake to bring those two in. My weapon industry was transformed into something that makes games. I should have left them in the orphanage too. Pack I angrily smacked the table. Hearing them being insulted like this generated an indescribable rage within me, and my body moved on instinct. Apologize, I scowled, inciting his laughter. Oh, I will do no such thing, Gozaburo smirked, instead, how about we play a game? Beside Gozaburo appeared a stack of dual monster cards. Shuffling the cards, he smiled, 
despite what I said, I can't find this game to be a little interesting, so would you want to have a wager? Under my suspicious gaze, Gozaburo stood up and walked around the desk, W, Y. Gozaburo shrugged, and a dual disc magically appeared on his wrist. Sliding his deck into the device, how about if you win, you will earn your freedom. But if you lose? It's best if you don't know. Fine, I sat up from my seat, I will make sure you take back what you said earlier. I readied my dual disc, but soon, realization dawned upon me, I'm not wearing one. Remembering that I was in a virtual world, I began to panic. Heh, yeah, Gozaburo glanced at me with amusement. He swiped his arm, and suddenly, a dual disc manifested on my wrist, for your deck, I will allow you to use any cards that you know. But Egyptian god cards are obviously forbidden. I froze upon hearing his declaration, and I tilted my head in a daze. What do you have a problem with that? Gozaburo smirked. No, it's just. I glimpsed at the system screen that randomly appeared. Task number 8, are you sure about that? Make Gozaburo Kaiba regret his words, reward, 5000 credits, special condition, all cards in the shop will be temporarily unlocked. Third POV, Gozaburo smiled as Yuna stared into space. Despite being known as the Dual King, he heavily doubted whether Yuna could best him in a game of strategy. Trapped in this world, I have studied this card game and created, in my opinion, the best deck that can ever exist. Dual King or not, the outcome is already set in stone, Gozaburo thought quietly. However, Yuna quickly snapped out of her daze and asked worriedly, You. Sure. Gozaburo frowned, what is that supposed to mean? Of course, I'm sure. Promise? Are you taking me for a liar? I, Gozaburo Kaiba, will never go back on his words. Unconvinced, Yuna went to the table and grabbed a pen. After scribbling on a piece of paper, she handed it to Gozaburo, contract. Gozaburo. Suddenly, he didn't understand why, Gozaburo began to feel slightly nervous. Unfortunately, what was said had already been said, so he cautiously signed on the piece of paper. Making sure that it really was his signature, Yuna nodded to herself before choosing her deck. Soon, a stack of cards appeared in her hand, and she inserted it into the dual disc. All right, Gozaburo regained his composure, let's begin. Gozaburo Kaiba, 4000 LP, Yuna Sano, 4000 LP, warning, the following content may be triggering, insulting, and possibly traumatizing for the UGO players out there, you have been warned. I will go first, Gozaburo declared as he drew five cards from his deck. Glancing at his hand, his smile widened, first, I will activate painful choice. I can choose five cards from my deck, and you will have to pick one while I discard the rest into my graveyard. Gozaburo approached Yuna with a smirk, presenting the five options to her. Exodia the Forbidden One Right Arm of the Forbidden One Left Arm of the Forbidden One Right Leg of the Forbidden One Left Leg of the Forbidden One Unit gazed at the card silently and picked out the right leg of the Forbidden One. Gozaburo took the card into his hand and moved back to his side of the field. Next, I will activate Graceful Charity to draw three cards from the deck, and then I must discard two cards. Drawing another three cards, Gozaburo then slid two cards into his dual disc. When everything was ready, Gozaburo's laughter filled the room, to think luck shines down upon me today, my preparations are completed, and this duel will end swiftly. I activated my contract with Exodia. The floor seemed to shake as a colossal statue of the head of the Exodia rose from the ground. The eyes on the statue light up, and the stone structure opens its mouth, unleashing a yellowish breath. When there are all of the pieces of Exodia in the graveyard, I will be able to play this card. Gozabura explained, using 2000 of my life points as a sacrifice, I will be able to summon a monster stronger than a god. I call upon you, Exodia Necros. Instantly, the eyes on the statue transformed into pure darkness, and the yellowish breath became murky like mud. Boom an arm burst out of the disgusting substance as a peal of coarse and deep laughter entered everyone's ears. Yuna took a step back as the oppressive energy intensified to a dangerous degree. With its mere presence, the walls surrounding Yuna and Gozaburo were blown away. With enough space, the monster fully revealed its proper form. With a height as tall as Obelisk the Tormentor and its skin as black as the night sky. The monster that resembled Exodia stood up fully and released a chilling roar. 
Exodia Necros, 1800 attack, zero defense, although it may seem weak, Exodia Necros has a unique effect in that it would gain an ability for every Exodia piece in the graveyard. Exodia the Forbidden One, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Right Arm of the Forbidden One, whenever this card battles an opponent's monster, it gains 1000 ATK at the end of the damage step. Left Arm of the Forbidden One, this card cannot be destroyed by the effects of other monsters. Right Leg of the Forbidden One, this card cannot be destroyed by trap cards. Left Leg of the Forbidden One, this card cannot be destroyed by spell cards. Gozaburo spread his arms with a face full of confidence, with these effects, there's no way for you to defeat Exodia Necros. It's a being superior to the Egyptian gods. So it will be your turn. Gozaburo said in a mocking tone, how will the best dual monster player get out of this one? Yuna didn't respond but gazed at Gozaburo silently. The man sneered as he thought that his opponent was freezing in fear at the power of his Exodia Necros. However, he couldn't be more wrong. Ah. I seem to have a bad hand. Yuna muttered disappointingly and uttered possibly one of the most cursed things you can say in a duel, I will just set five cards face down and my turn. Gozaburo, you called that a bad hand. Yes, Yuna nodded honestly. Gozaburo stared at the five placed cards, and all of a sudden, he felt a slight chill, I will draw, hold on, Yuna stopped him, I will first activate Guzan Match, we can only have one attribute of monsters, and if we own any other monsters with a separate attribute, we send the monsters to the graveyard. Then, I activate Rivalry of the Warlords, we can only control one monster type, and if we own any other monsters with a separate type, we send the monsters to the graveyard. Are you done? Gozaburo asked, but to his horror, Yuna shook her head. I will also activate Summon Limit. We will only be able to summon two monsters per turn, and then I also play Skill Drain. By paying 1000 life points, we can no longer activate monster effects. Yuna Sano, 4000 LP and GT, 3000 LP, is that all? He muttered gravely, and Yuna finally nodded. Gozaburo pinched the bridge of his nose as he felt a migraine developing in his head, don't worry, there's nothing to worry about, I still have Exodia Necros, so everything should be fine. Despite the skill drain, its effect has already been activated, so it doesn't matter. Now, Exodia Necros, attack. The monster roared and unleashed a devastating laser. Struck by the laser, Yuna gritted her teeth and endured the damage, unbothered by the sharp drop of her life points. Yuna Sano, 3000 LP and GT, 1200 LP, unfortunately, Exodia Necros didn't battle a monster, so it can't gain 1000 attacks. Gozaburo explained, it's your turn. There's nothing to worry about, just one more hit and I will win. The earlier move may have scared me a little bit but it's only empty threats. Gozaburo eventually regained his composure and boasted, fool, are you aware that your trap cards affect you too? You have just shot yourself in the foot, good luck destroy. I will special summon Game Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, from my hand. Its effect allows me to tribute one of your monsters and special summon this card onto your side of the field. Gozaburo, come again. Exodia Necros suddenly burst into millions of pieces and was replaced by a giant turtle monster that seemed to be taunting him. Game Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, 2200 attack, 3000 defense, ha. There's nothing to worry about. The monster you gave me is still powerful. How should you defeat it? Um, I will play my last trap card, Eldlixer of Scarlet Sanguine. This card allows me to special summon my boss monster, Eldlick the Golden Lord, from my deck. Whoosh the ground in front of Yuna trembled, and a tall figure donning golden armor emerged. Flaunting the purple cape on its back, Eldlick the Golden Lord crossed its arms and stood with an imposing atmosphere. Eldlick the Golden Lord, 2500 attack, 2800 defense, now, Eldlick the Golden Lord, attack, Please, Yuna ordered as the monster charged, destroying the sea turtle with one punch. Gozaburo Kaiba, 2000 LP and GT, 1700 LP, ah. Ah. Words refused to leave his mouth as Gozaburo wanted to tear his hair off out of frustration. What the hell was this? This was pure evil. That woman was definitely a demon. He drew a card, and his expression somewhat brightened, I will play special hurricane. I can discard one card and destroy every special summon monster on the field. 
Gozaburo hurriedly dumped one card into the graveyard, and he watched with delight as Eldlick, the Golden Lord, got smitten by lightning and perished. I will end my turn here, Gozaburo said with determination. He was safe for now. As long as he gets a monster on the field before her, he can win. Oh no. My Eldlick, the Golden Lord, Yuna mumbled, anyways. I activate Eldlick the Golden Lord's effect in the graveyard, and I will destroy my skill drain. Then I can add Eldlick the Golden Lord back into my hand and special summon a zombie monster from my hand. I choose the Eldlick, the Golden Lord. Eldlick the Golden Lord, 2500 attack, 2800 defense, immediately, all the hope drained from Gozaburo's face, and he collapsed onto his knees. As if the wound wasn't deep enough, Yuna then grabbed the metaphorical knife in his stomach and began twisting it. Then Eldlick the Golden Lord's second effect allows it to gain 1000 attacks. Eldlick the Golden Lord, 2500 and GT, 3500 attack, 2800 defense, now attack. Gozaburo, oh for fuck. Boom, Gozaburo Kaiba, 1700 LP and GT, 0 LP. Third POV, Gozaburo Kaiba, 1700 LP and GT, 0 LP, Gozaburo blinked in utter disbelief, the card slipping from his grasp. Just one turn. It took her only one turn to secure victory, leaving the ultimate strategy he had so meticulously crafted in complete shambles. Why, you? He growled in a surge of rage. However, Gozaburo's expression grew rigid as Yuna presented him with the contract, prominently displaying his sizable signature on the document as if silently conveying, I told you so. Never in his life had he experienced such humiliation, and his body trembled with anger. Noah. Suddenly, a boy with light teal hair materialized beside Gozaburo. Sensing the man's foul mood, the boy named Noah hesitantly bowed in respect. Why, yes, father. Deal with her now. Gozaburo roared, his finger accusingly pointing at Yuna. Noah nodded and fixed a menacing glare on Yuna as she anxiously took a step back. Our deal. Gozaburo laughed menacingly, I'm an entrepreneur, we never uphold a commitment. Now disappear. With Gozaburo's command, Noah firmly gripped Yuna's wrist, causing her to vanish into a black void. Noah began to manipulate the space around her, a thought forming in his mind, father wants her gone. I should lock her consciousness. When bringing victims into this digital realm, Noah had the facility's drones place each individual inside a virtual pod, effectively transferring their consciousness into this alternate dimension. Within this world, their subconscious became a complex array of data and code that could be manipulated. Typically, a person's mind was heavily locked, but it could be unlocked by breaking their will to resist. For instance, they might experience the consequences of a game of dual monsters, with the loser genuinely believing that the punishment was real. Noah also possessed the power to influence a person's mind forcibly, but it required intense concentration, and it came with its own set of risks. Nevertheless, this was an order from his father, and he had to carry it out. Reappearing before Yuna, Noah extended his hand and placed it atop her head. With this touch, he began to intrude into her subconscious mind. Soon, Noah found himself in a dark, damp room within the depths of her psyche. Unfazed, Noah tapped the limestone walls of the subconscious realm, causing the area he touched to transform into an intricate display of binary numbers and codes. Noah wore a confident smirk on his face, it would take time, but he was patient enough to eventually conquer and manipulate this space entirely. Where am I anyway? Noah muttered to himself, his childlike curiosity taking control as his eyes roamed around the room. Despite the darkness, he had adapted his data to see through the night, and he spotted a door. Unable to quell his interest, Noah made his way to the door and attempted to open it. It's locked. Noah muttered in disappointment as he returned to check on the progress. However, his expression froze in disbelief when he realized the codes had entirely disappeared. Her mental strength is more formidable than I anticipated, Noah mused, genuinely impressed as he restarted the process. Clack clack Noah swiftly turned around at the sound of an object colliding and dragging across the ground. To his puzzlement, there appeared to be nothing behind him. Clack clack the sound repeated, now much closer, and Noah's hair stood on end. Asterisk clack clack. The frequency of the noise increased, and Noah hurriedly pressed his back against the corner of the room. His pupils darted wildly, 
trying to locate the source of the sound. But unbeknownst to him, by putting himself in the corner, the young boy unfortunately missed the two long arms emerging from the walls. A minute later, the door to the room swung open, and a woman with white hair entered. Immediately, her gaze fell upon starving Venom Fusion Dragon, holding a twelve-year-old boy in its arms, ready to devour him at any moment. Ahem, what are you doing, the woman called out, and the dragon froze, caught in the act. Put him down this instant. Reluctantly, starving Venom Fusion Dragon released its grip, and the unconscious boy tumbled to the floor. The woman knelt beside him, waiting patiently as he slowly opened his eyes. When Noah regained consciousness, his mind was still in disarray, and the events of the past few minutes seemed like a blur. Sitting up, he noticed a woman beside him, her upper face concealed by a shawl. Even from just seeing her lips, Noah could deduce that she must be stunning. Are you alright? She inquired, and Noah instinctively blushed. However, he soon spotted a dark figure lurking behind the woman. When his eyes finally focused, his skin paled with fear as he remembered everything. In a panic, Noah screamed and fled, exiting the space with no trace of him left behind. Staring at the spot where he had been sitting, the woman scowled and directed her glare at starving Venom Fusion Dragon, which had already retreated to avoid her scolding. Outside, Noah gasped for breath, his body still trembling from fear. Tap tap, hey bitch, stay away. He instinctively yelled and quickly moved away from whatever had touched his shoulder. Turning around, Noah paused when he realized it was just Yuna, he sighed with relief. Regaining his composure, he soon adopted an antagonizing tone to mask the anxiety in his heart. F. Father wants you gone. So I'll leave you here forever. Goodbye, he declared, generating a portal and making a hasty escape. Yuna's POV I observed with surprise as Noah screamed like a little girl and hastily dashed into the portal. If I had to guess what had happened, it was likely that starving Venom Fusion Dragon had paid him an unexpected visit while he was attempting to take control of my body. Well, it seemed that Noah must have been somewhat traumatized because he left the portal open. With no better plan in mind, I decided to follow him through the portal, and in an instant, I found myself in a completely new area. Calmly examining my surroundings, I discovered that I was now in a luxurious bedroom. A king's eyes bed occupied one of the walls, there was a cozy lounge area nestled in the corner, and shelves were brimming with books and various expensive stationary items. Immediately, I spotted Noah standing at the end of the room with his back to me. I concealed myself behind the couches, observing him as he seemed engrossed in watching something on a multitude of displays mounted on the wall. Squinting my eyes, I managed to discern the images on the screens and realized that Noah was spying on Yugi and the rest. It appeared that he and T had already defeated two of the Big Five, and they seemed to be steadily making progress. The remaining members of the Big Five weren't faring any better as they were being soundly defeated by Kaiba, Ishizu, and Odeon, respectively. Wow, bringing them here turned out to be a better decision than I had imagined. I thought while Noah nervously chewed his nails. Suddenly, a second portal materialized, and Gozaburo emerged, walking resolutely toward his son. Noah quickly straightened his back and saluted. F. Father. Have you dealt with that woman like I instructed you to? Gozaburo inquired sternly, causing Noah to flinch. Yes, Father, I have trapped her in a place where she can't escape, Noah answered. However, Gozaburo didn't seem pleased at all, I don't think you understand what I meant when I said that I want her gone. Noah froze, I, I, slap, you disappointed me. Gozaburo scolded harshly and slapped his son across the face. Noah didn't react and could only helplessly lower his gaze as his cheek turned red. Gozaburo glanced at the screen, and his brows creased further, seems like your plan on using the big five is failing as well. I will make sure that they won't interfere with your plans. Humph, Gozaburo scoffed, don't disappoint any further. Gozaburo returned to the portal as it closed behind him. Despite being left alone, Noah refused to move as he continued to gaze at the floor absent-mindedly. Sniff Noah sniffled and wiped his eyes with his sleeve. Biting his lips, Noah tried to subdue the sadness, and he returned to his calm expression. Approaching the screens, Noah pressed a button, and a terminal appeared. Noah typed on the keyboard, and he soon pressed a second button, summoning a portal. Staring at the portal, Noah gritted his teeth and entered as it disappeared behind him. Once he left, 
I emerged from the hiding place and hesitantly approached the terminal. Watching the group fighting passionately on the screen, I knew that Noah must be going to intervene in the battle personally, so I must chase after him. But. How the heck do I operate this thing? Remembering what Noah did, I carefully pressed the keys. Woosh not understanding what I did, I was caught off guard as a portal magically manifested before my eyes. I really hoped that I had entered the commands correctly and not created a portal to the center of a volcano. Screw it. I grumbled. It's either I risk it or stay here forever. After lightly slapping my cheeks, I rushed into the portal. Third POV, meanwhile, in another part of the virtual world. Sito's face furrowed with a frown as he stared at the modest white building in front of him. Memories, tinged with nostalgia, flooded his thoughts as he stepped inside. As he made his way through the deserted hallways, Sito eventually pushed open the door at the end of the corridor, unveiling a compact classroom. The desks were clearly designed for young children. Almost instinctively, Sito's feet guided him to the room's far corner, where he discovered a chessboard resting on a small desk. Absently, he picked up one of the pawns, his thoughts drifting as he hummed softly. Unexpectedly, Sito's sharp ears detected a sound, prompting him to cast a cautious gaze at the door. The closed door inched open, revealing a face peering through the frame, causing Sito's eyes to widen slightly. It's you, he muttered as Yuna entered the room, her eyes darting around curiously. Where? Yuna mumbled, her gaze fixated on the chessboard atop the desk. This was the orphanage that Makuba and I once called home, Sito replied, and her eyes widened in realization. Sito couldn't help but scoff at Yuna's reaction, a familiar response he often received when revealing his past. Yes, Makuba and I are orphans. Do you have a problem with that? he retorted, his tone laced with annoyance. Yuna quickly shook her head, avoiding direct eye contact. No parents. Either, she whispered, her gaze drifting to the floor. Car crash. When young, Yuna explained with a wry smile. Alone since. The room fell into an awkward silence as Sito contemplated the shared experience. Yuna moved around the desk and, with curiosity in her eyes, asked, last name. Do you have one? I don't remember, Sito replied honestly. Ever since I received the name Kaiba, I've sworn to bury my past. The room returned to its silent state. Eventually, she fiddled with one of the chess pieces and spoke out, Gozaburo. Met him. What? Sito exclaimed but then frowned, yes if it's him, this all made sense. Earlier, Sito had found himself moving through several terrains, each representing something from his past as if it was here to remind him of something. He knew that the boy who threatened them shouldn't be aware of these things, but if his father was involved. But what is my father doing here? Sito questioned. His tone was a mixture of confusion and disbelief. He died years ago, and what about that boy? Gozaburo. Called him son. Yuna added, and Sito's fingers grazed his chin as he delved deep into thought. Yes, Sito nodded in self-realization. I can recall now, it was when Makuba and I were first brought in that I heard from a servant that my father used to have a biological child that died. I see. Sito's smirk revealed a hint of bloodlust in his eyes. Looks like being overthrown wasn't enough. I will wipe him out once and for all. Hate him? Yuna inquired, prompting Sito to sneer. Humph, hatred isn't a strong enough word for the feelings I have for him, Sito muttered, clenching his fist. He extended his palm and sighed, revealing the crushed chess piece. Anyone would think that being brought into a rich family would mean a life of luxury, but for me, it was absolute hell. Hours, days, I was compelled to be someone I wasn't, and disobedience meant punishment, Sito recounted, his gaze distant. Sinking into a small chair, Sito sighed, even when I collapsed, I wasn't spared from the harassment. Why? Tell me this. Yuna frowned. Because your curious eyes are getting on my nerves, Sito replied. So I might as well tell you now. Yuna flinched, sorry. Sito observed Yuna quietly as she awkwardly rubbed her arm. Finally, he stood up and moved to the door, we've wasted enough time. We need to find Makuba. Yuna nodded in agreement, yes. Together, they left the classroom, walking side by side down the hallway. Their silence was palpable, and Yuna, 
with a hint of nervousness, finally spoke up, your childhood. Was it difficult? Sido glanced at her peripherally, keeping his gaze forward. He replied, you could say that. But even when I felt on the verge of collapse, Makuba was always there to support me, bringing me back from the brink of death. How about you? Sido inquired, his tone still retaining its characteristic bluntness. Aren't you an orphan too? What was your life like? Upon hearing Sido's question, Yuna touched her lips with a wry smile as she delved into her past memories. It was lonely. Sido couldn't help but probe further. Does your speech have something to do with it? Yuna's eyes widened in surprise at the abrupt personal question. Realizing that she, too, had been somewhat intrusive, she let out a helpless chuckle and remarked, children's innocence. Is cruel. Oh, Sido murmured, uncertain of how to react. He stole a glance at Yuna and observed a sense of melancholy in her expression. Feeling Sido's curious gaze, Yuna offered a smile, but it was clear to Sido that her smile was strained and forced. Forget about them, Sido blurted out with a hint of condescension. Only a true fool would let other people's opinions dictate their life choices. Yuna flinched at his scathing tone but then sighed. Understanding that Sido was offering advice in his way, her eyes curved upwards, and her lips shifted into a genuine, warm smile like a crescent moon. Thank. You. For the first time in his life, Sido watched Yuna's sincere smile, his usual indifference momentarily shattered, and his heart skipped a beat. 